like ish, two ish, <laughs> one ish, however long it takes for Dream Labs to tell everybody I'm alive. I don't know, probably now ish. Probably now. Now ish. So go on, Chad. Why, why oh. do you hate women? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was going to say is you know, today is my birthday. Oh, happy oh, 50th, man. It is, it is. Yeah, I'm turning like, I don't know, uh, 64. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, we're going to go to a restaurant for dinner. And you know what I'm going to order, ah. Paula? God, what are you going to order? I'm going to order some beautiful spaghetti bolognese. Oh my. And I tell you what, I tell you what, if they come out and give me shepherd's pie instead of spaghetti bolognese, I don't give a damn how good that shepherd's pie is. I want my bloody spaghetti bolognese. You just say it. If they do that, fuck them up. I have, totally will. Permission. I will. Like, I don't want shepherd's <laughs> pie. I want bloody spaghetti bolognese. Those creatures. What do they know? Gosh. You know, because spaghetti bolognese is this, and shepherd's pie is that. And when you want this, you don't want that. Just saying. But it's important. Dad, all words are made up, so oh, who cares? How dare you? <laughs> language is exists for a reason, okay? I was, I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you were saying there. Were you kind of language? Yeah, yeah, I was. Shame on me. There's also, no as isn't spaghetti I mean, bolognese you know, made for kids, though? <laughs> Why are you so, are you so excited about that silence? <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> uh, I'm also back from the dead. I found out. I, I didn't. I I wasn't aware that I had died, but I had died. Um, All right, you and, died in uh, the memes. chronicles. Yeah, the chronicles of the epic Spooderman wars. <laughs> um, like <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, whew, but don't worry, I'm back. I, I forced myself. Back from the grave, Excellent. so I can have my spaghetti bolognese. <sighs> um, yeah, you were saying something about Captain Marvel, and I rudely interrupted you. I didn't know if you wanted to carry on with it. What was <laughs> I saying? Oh, yeah, just that I'd like her powers defined. Um, because, like I was saying, it looks like she's been given a significant power increase in the MCU. She's stronger than what I saw her depicted in both the comic books and cartoons that she's appeared <sighs> in, and uh. Can she like literally fly fly across space now? She, well, she, the, can do, the she has the power of interstellar travel. Because um, that's that's insane. When did that come? To, power come out. Like, and that kind of I power could definitely find... be repurposed for other things. It really I can. Like, if you can, well, if you can fly. Sorry, <laughs> don't be the cut off. Speed of, if you can fly at the speed of light, just fly at the speed of light through Thanos. Cool, you win. Jacks like the Earth. It's like oh, that's. Yeah. It. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, the the entire thing of like travel, cap. So light speed engine. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's like light speed is not that fast if you're going on an interplanetary, you know, level. Like if you're traveling across the galaxy, it's not that fast, but it has to be for the story to work. So she flies faster than the speed of light. Dude, I love the, the implication. The, they watched Way like faster. they went through a couple of sci-fi tropes just before they did their thing. They're like, "What's this? What's this hyperdrive, warp, starburst, <laughs> uh, time jump or jump points? Like, what is all this nonsense? Why don't they just go at light speed?" Yeah, it's just like <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> like all the other shows, look at them like, what the "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I uh, I do wonder because if you write something like that, it, it's it's um. Have you ever watched any science fiction TV shows or movies before? Yeah. They all go out of their way to explain that, like, light speed isn't good enough when you're trying to travel between different solar systems and, you know, planets or galaxies. But, you know, who cares? That movie's terrible. We don't need to yeah, get into that obviously. again. That's not the well, only the other reason, broken right? thing... Because, like, you know, I, I like science, guys, and uh, I only have a rudimentary understanding of it. But even when you just uh, do a surface-level kind of uh, um, study on it, you find out some pretty significant implications, like the amount of energy needed to accelerate anything with mass up to light speed. It's infinite. You need infinite energy. So even yeah, if you're traveling, yeah. like... A, a fraction under light speed, the amount of energy that you have to produce and is contained in this thing is insane. And that's why there's so much power if you ever impact anything moving at light speed with mass into anything else. The the energy release, the kinetic energy it release is just 
it, planet destroying. It's crazy. Well, that that's the thing is with uh with a lot of these science fiction things, you kind of just have to like go with it because uh, often reality kind of ruins science fiction stuff. Uh, like uh. Or not not that it ruins science fiction, but more that it's like, oh, we can't do that. We can't do that. Oh, man, I can't tell my story now, <laughs> like, necessarily. And then you try oh, and find creative ways. Well, there, there are definitely ways around yes. it. I mean, like, the, the wormhole thing is the uh, is the most obvious one. It's like, oh, we're using wormhole jumps. It's like, wormholes are theoretical, as far as I can remember, but uh, but that can still work. Or just like, yeah, we, we've just found a way to make it work. But... Captain Marvel, just a human being flying, like, how can she breathe in space? Like, when was that <laughs> thing that she could do? Like, I don't yeah. understand. It's just like, cool, I guess I can d- do this now and not die. How'd she know that she could even do that? She flew back into space, yeah, but she didn't know. Fundamental about <laughs> Captain Marvel. She doesn't learn how to use anything. She just does it. Yeah, like when she's falling from <laughs> space, it's like, cool, I guess I can fly now. How does she even know that that's something she could do? As Rags like, why would she... in our Lord of the Rings coverage, Mary and Pippin learn how to use a sword for longer than, well, Ray didn't yeah. handle, but it would, the same applies to Captain Marvel. She trained how to do hand-to-hand, <laughs> hand, which she doesn't use at all. I no, Yeah, we were, really. when we were watching Lord of the Rings for, may, maybe for an upcoming EFAP movies, I won't hmm. confirm or deny any of that, but we noticed that uh, while we were watching it, we were like, oh, hey, Mary and Pippin had more training than Ray did, and we're not even yeah. being silly. That's actually true. <laughs> and even the even the early fights are a form of training. Like, if you look at the first real fight they get into in Mordor, they're not fighting that well, but they're just managing, and they're learning from that, and then they're a bit better in the next fight, and it's a gradual progression. Yeah, it's almost like it was well-written. <laughs> They have <laughs> no, scenes specifically where boring story. It'll just be boring emotionally. We all know that. Uh, well, people are I, illogical. You know I'd love to see Shad and Just Right have that argument. That would be so funny. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I'm open hey, to Shad, what, any. What do you, what do you think about this statement? You should be more focused on emotional payoffs than you should intellectual consistency. See, I like. I find so many contradictions in that statement because what you don't think intellectual consistency is a necessary component to have good emotional payoff. Like, yeah, like it, it goes hand in hand. Like, well, come off it. It's a, it's a very yeah. like, and if you if there's no intellectual consistency for the emotional payoff. It, it robs the emotion. It doesn't make sense. Like, and I, I shared this example with you just before, Mall, and I'll say it again. Like, you know, that scene between Rose and uh, and Finn at the end of Last Jedi, where it's trying to be all emotional, and and then she says something that is contradictory so stupid. and stupid, and then and then just the the whole thing lead up to it, where you know Finn was actually going to potentially do something very heroic and brave and save everyone and then she starts she's she's it's like a villain I was, move. Uh, I, was, stop, stop. I was really looking forward to that because i was like wow is he wow this might actually be something here this might be yeah. something and i would have just something like, to nah. say about finn's journey if he had died there oh I've, sure I've, yeah i've had something in terms of a defense for him i'd be like at least you know dot 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 but yeah, she delivers probably the worst line in all of Star Wars, just because it's probably the most blatant contradiction that he's ever. And you cannot like, understand how this what? went through so many different systems of like, or like layers of, you know, the actors say the writing, the the re-edits, the, the actors saying it, the people watching it back. Like, what do you get? There's a big laser destroying everyone. In the yeah, background. can you imagine being the VFX guy? It's just like you see that line, and then you just start making the laser blow up the place. <laughs> He's just like, okay, all right. Oh, yeah, just... <laughs> Everyone dies. Oh, good one, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> and you want that explosion like a... right after she says it? You don't want to give it a minute? No, no, we she says it. <laughs> Fucking kill everyone. <laughs> So people might actually look at that scene and feel a lot of emotionality and stuff. And in my opinion, it, like I feel that would be because you're not tr- really thinking about what's happening, what the meaning, you know, the actual meaning behind what she says and stuff. Because when you do, you're you're like, oh, oh, yeah. Well, that's if, just if they said, dumb. Like, oh, no, I love it because it's so true that you should. Oh, the only conflict in life should come from defending those you love rather than attacking those you hate. So it's, I mean, it's profound, and you'd be like, like. That's not even the conflict in the film, though. Like, most of it. To be, well, do you to call be what honest. Holdo did? Defending those she loves? <laughs> Why didn't she hyperspace earlier? 
<laughs> like, it actually she watched them die. <laughs> it actually contradicts a moral philosophy that has existed for a long time, and it's that the only thing that evil needs to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Which is basically, if good people don't oppose evil, evil will triumph and stuff like that. So well, you, I mean, you know, you it's it's a completely unrealistic mentality to have, like. It, it would be like saying, we shouldn't be invading Normandy. We need to just tell them that we love them. It's like, Yeah, like, don't, okay, go, anywhere near, don't go anywhere near Germany. Leave Germany alone, but defend the places Germany come after. And it's like, guys, not gonna... They'll just regroup. <laughs> <laughs> you got, we gotta stop it. You gotta do something. And, uh, I mean, and yeah, and if she said that Holder was attacking them in order to defend those she loves, it's like, so what the fuck do you think Finn was doing? Exactly! Yeah. <laughs> and, and, so and, and, you know... When I was watching that scene, all I thought was, you could have very easily killed both of you. <laughs> like, you, know, you could have easily blown yeah. yourself up while crashing into him. I was like, what I, good's that? I'd never been so deflated seeing a hero get <laughs> so And, like, yeah. literally, like, in the, I remember sitting in the cinema and, like, wanting, because the film, I was so confused what was going on. And then all of a sudden, it seemed like there was a bit of emotion here. Someone was going to get killed. And then she... Crashes into him, and I remember, like, oh god, okay, yeah, so I was I was confused. Confused. Yeah, it took a while for it to settle. I was like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a real shame that she didn't crash into his helicopter thingy or whatever the fuck it was. And she's <laughs> like, no, Finn, I'll do it instead. And then she runs off and just throws herself at it and does nothing. Yeah, like it would have been really <laughs> she... awkward to film, but if she bashed him out of the way and took the hit herself, I'd have been like, oh. Right. Took what hit? <laughs> like if she went into the also laser herself. To stop it. Do you think? Do you think she kissed him against his will? Just, just. She didn't oh, ask did you for see his face? Sure, that's a yes because he has a crush on. <laughs> well, what would you do if Rose just Rose Tico just <laughs> went up and kissed you? How would you feel? Probably not grand. It's <laughs> <laughs> like you know, with all this uh, me too stuff is like, hmm. Well, what about Finn? Duncan. All the, I all like the, the aliens in the galaxy, and this is the one that had to kiss me on the lips. Fuck. I like that that was the best take, and the look on his face is he's horrified. <laughs> and they just, yep, that's a wrap. That's the one. <laughs> we got we got to go to lunch, guys. <laughs> all right, wrap it up. And then the realization that he dragged a dumpy corpse all the way over the field. <laughs> he just dragged. Yeah, nobody, it nobody. That don't take an old like, day. Hey, should we just, should we just like blow up those two guys there? <laughs> Like, nah, no, like, let while, them struggle uselessly. While Kylo and Luke are having this standoff, you can just see him pulling her in the background. Everybody <laughs> 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 was right next to him. They were like ten feet away, and they had this wait and stop. It's like, sorry, sorry, give, give, give us a second. Give us a second. We're almost done. <laughs> she like, oh, like, almost there. there. Oh, almost there. there. Oh, there. What were they, when they were dragging past? Were they just trying to ignore what was going on? Were they watching what was going on? Like, it's just. Yeah, I always yeah. find that must be Yeah, go Luke! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're, does, does Finn know who Luke is? I forget. I can't remember if... Um, they're, like, aware of him, but seemingly nobody is aware of the original heroes. They're all, like, legends for some reason, even though their name should be well-known and widespread, because all this sequel trilogy does is say that everything that they did didn't do shit. That's this whole trilogy. Yeah, coming to it's a like, full head in the new episode with Palpatine returning. It's like, um... Yeah, it's like, didn't cool, they didn't even beat the big bad guy. Thingy. And then we can see, you know, nunchuck lightsabers. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, everything's oh. back. You got a bigger vision of the Death Star came back. The Emperor <laughs> came back. The Star Destroyer We got a thousand Star back. Destroyers. <laughs> J.J. Abrams, man. Not even once. You did I it. think a thousand's underestimating. I think it's going to be more. It's going to be a Where'd billion, they come a from? trillion. <laughs> no, Where'd it's going to be from? infinite. Have you heard the rumor that they're Death Star destroyers? That yes. each one has the power of a Death Star and can destroy a planet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's like a kids oh. thing, doesn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm strong as infinity plus one. Yeah, uh -uh, I'm Emperor strong as infinity plus Death, two. Death Snoke star lasers galaxy bomb. Death <laughs> we've, done, we've done a giant Death Star, now we'll do a thousand Death Stars! And they're all gonna point at Luke, and he's gonna break the moral <laughs> force. <laughs> and JJ will be like, see, that's what they wanted, that's what the fans wanted. And then you'll get all those video essays that are like, this was terrible because you gave the fans what they wanted, you gave in to them, instead of doing what Ryan did. What? what? Just ruining everything! <laughs>
<laughs> they, they treat it like it's a dichotomy, don't they? Do you remember all those hyperbolic arguments that were like, oh, everyone wanted Luke to just jump around the battlefield and destroy everything. That's what they wanted. But Ryan wanted well, I mean, to take an you artistic know, way. I, I would have yeah. preferred seeing Luke actually do something. Yes, <laughs> I would have preferred that. Yes, you, you, you cracked the case. Are you mad? Like, you want to see a Jedi be a Jedi? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I, 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 do terrible. Like, I do like the implication that there are only two possible ways to make a film. Make it <laughs> bad and what people want, or make it good and nobody likes it, apparently. The, is the, only the best way. version is that is if you talk about the originals getting together. In, in, in any scene whatsoever, that would have been the worst thing possible. Like, there would have been no way to write that that was exciting and good to see. It just would have been pandering to the audience and terrible. And it's well, like, I, mean, I don't like, know. I, just... I feel like you could have introduced new characters without ruining the old ones. What can I say? <laughs> you know, maybe that was possible. You could have told a story that wasn't just undermining the entire point of the original trilogy. That that's kind of the reason you, why you I went to watch the original ones. Filmmaking. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Has to evolve, Fringy. If if it's yep. to survive, yep. it really has to evolve. If it's to survive, it has to evolve. They say in a world where Call of Duty exists they, and is like the say, biggest selling game every year. They say as Riot is stabbing Star Wars in the heart repeatedly. He has I to have evolve. to change it. I'm saving it. Can't you see? I'm saving it. Help and. Me. He, I think uh, I think I've mentioned this to a couple of people at this point because his his new movie is coming out called Knives Out and it's getting really good reviews and I kind of just don't buy it because he hasn't really made anything good from a writing standpoint. Everything good that he's made, someone else wrote. So I, I don't bit, really. I'm I'm unconvinced of saying, his ability. But he's but saying all the right things. It has a literal Nazi in it, so that oh, is that, to be a why, Nazi is from that the why it's getting good reviews? Well, they taught themselves to be a literal Nazi from the internet. Oh. That's one of the characters. And then you to the forums that don't like Star Wars and like, oh, they, these are Nazis, um, right? Apparently the Emmys watch, are tonight, yeah. by the way. Uh, they are. Let's see if Game of Thrones wins for best writing. Wouldn't that oh, no. be great? Well, I know oh, no. someone's <laughs> going to send me an article saying Game of Thrones wins X amount of Emmys, and I'll just be like, it only matters if they win the writing one. I don't mind them winning anything else. If they win the writing Emmy, let's cross What the about line. direction? What about um, direction? Yeah, the... What about choreography? Is there a choreography Oscar? No, I don't know. It'd just be it'd just be directing. I don't um, know, but what if they made one just for Game of Thrones? <laughs> oh, well, the reason yeah, why I'd probably I, be, uh... the thing is, I'd be I'd be ups annoyed with those ones, but the writing that's like, you know, <laughs> this is like... well, the, you know, I um last night I was rewatching the you know battles from Lord of the Rings, um, and I was just so thoroughly impressed by them, and then I think about the Winterfell one. I'm just like, yeah, you don't deserve to win anything for that. <laughs> yeah, you got great sets and you got good special effects, but like, what is happening in this battle is absurd. It was the bad. Oh, was but there's plenty bad. of progression. Do you need for a fight scene to be? What what progression was there? That the, they ran in a suicidal charge in complete and utter blackness you and died. I think Closer Look would have argued <laughs> that is progression. Oh, okay, in fact, so I might how is there no progression? progression. In... It's just because progression yeah, how... is almost nebulous. Like, yes, things happened. And yet he said there was no progression in Endgame, despite a very clear objective of getting the gauntlet to the time machine. Wow, Fringy, why are you trying to hate on someone who's just trying to share their opinion? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to mention today, I don't know if uh, this, this will be... I know that Rags and Fringy will care about this. I'm not sure if Robo I care. will. But um, Randy Pitchford saying on on Twitter that um, Borderlands 3's peak players is more than twice Borderlands 2's on Steam, and so um, I okay. And he said, "Wow, you guys are great!" Like he's he's basically doing a victory lap. But like, like I read that, I was like, "Hang on, first of all, Borderlands is a really successful like franchise, so naturally the the players will increase uh, if it's you know healthy." But um. Where are these numbers from? Who confirmed these? Because I don't think Epic don't have their numbers public, do they? No, I'm curious. Also, do. I'm hearing a lot about quality issues with Borderlands 3. I am too. Yeah, I'm hearing uh, frame rate issues, performance issues across all platforms. That's what I've been hearing. And the irony is that we expect that one to be the one that's going to be high performing and it's pissed everyone off this year. And then vice versa, Call of Duty. The laughing stock of yeah. games most of the time is, is proving to be quite fun this it's time around. It's pretty fun. Like, hmm. yeah. yeah, I've already got a bunch of people saying, oh, play the beta with me. 
Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's I actually fun. I've been, I've been playing it. To be honest with you, I'm pretty much sold. I'll probably buy the game when it comes out. Yeah, same here. It, it feels like... It oddly feels like um playing back in like 2008, 2009. It, it does feel like the older ones. I was enjoying it. And it did, it did feel like a blast from the past. And I mean... It's weird, because COD was supposed to be dead as far as I was aware. Like, I thought it was an embarrassing sort of franchise that was... Well, it has fighting. been. It has been for a long time. Like, I think the last one I bought was Black Ops 3, and the last one I actually enjoyed was Black Ops 2, and that came out in 2012. The last one that I played and enjoyed, I think, was Advanced Warfare. I didn't I mean, really like Advanced Warfare. Um, yeah, apparently that was, that, was pretty, that was pretty mixed. I just liked it because it was really new and silly. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it depends on if you play campaigns as well, because the campaign for that game is very much wasted potential. It presents an idea that's interesting and then just ruins it by being a big, you know, blockbuster kind of thing. Whereas with this with this Modern Warfare, they seem to be going a little bit more grounded. From Like, you may have been hearing the articles, right? But IGN, uh, they they posted an article where they were very negative about the, the campaign. Because yeah, the oh, and it was... It. Um, it was um... I know that Venture Beat wrote an article whining about it, and it was uh, Dean Takahashi who wrote that. The of, uh, of Cup Fame, okay. uh, of Cup Fame, Cuphead Infamy Cuphead fame. of Cup Fame, <laughs> Cup Fame. No, oh, that I mean, the thing is, is um, when I read the article and they said what it was about, I'm like, this actually sounds interesting. For the first oh, yeah. time in a long time, this sounds interesting. I was like, this um, might be interesting. I, I might like to play this. It's not just oh, there's our tanks and there's their tanks. Kill their tanks. Well, I mean, from what I from what I read, it's actually being like it seems like it's gonna be very critical of um of the means by which, you know, goals are achieved in modern warfare. That seems to be the the point of the story based on the things that it's mentioning, like, you know, ch children having to you know survive in a town that's being raided by soldiers and special ops forces, you know injecting themselves into a combat zone where there are civilians and it's nighttime and everything's happening too quickly to, you know, make the right decisions. So that sounds really interesting. And, you know, I don't want you telling them that they shouldn't be trying to do that because it offends you. Like, fuck off. I, I want to see this. Um, <clears throat> outside of our wonderful Plague Doctor, did everyone here get, get told that they were going to be unverified at one point in the past week? Yeah, I did. Yes. Am I the also... only one who who was not told this? Like... You actually might be the only one. That might actually uh, be because you, you're a published yeah. author at this point. It could be that that's why it they could didn't do be. it. Mm. Because I was wondering why, like, uh, and I feel a bit we like, why? Why am I getting any special treatment? Because, and you're I think a real it, person. I, you're well, a I real must person. be right. I or, or I just uh, I'm under the radar. But it it could be the fact that I'm an I'm published now. And if you Google my name, a couple of hits come up. So that might be it. Um, but man, what a stupid decision, though. Holy I know, right? Crap. Yeah, uh, upon further inspection, you're not who you said you are. <laughs> Sorry. Even though even though we literally <laughs> mailed you a plaque with your name and everything on it, we can't really be sure that you're who you say you are. <laughs> it's bizarre, debate. and the reasons they were giving, because there is such good utility in you know having the verify thing particularly if another channel comments on one of your videos and you they stand out it's like oh because i heard uh, someone mention i forget who it was but like they really like um seeing other creators comment on their youtube channels because it means that you know um you get to know who's watching a potential opportunity for collaborations and things and uh, that's the exact same thing for me uh, it's a it's a really useful important feature they flipped quicker than I thought they would. Well, I was, yeah, was going to say so. They flipped, period, which surprised me. Developed yes. into Susan saying, To our creators and users, I'm sorry for the frustration and hurt we've caused with our new approach to verification. And I'm just sitting there like, what did you expect? <laughs> what, what, what did you think? People were going to be okay with this? I think I said this to uh, Rags the other day, but I was like, how many creators did they expect would not appeal? How many creators did they well, yeah, think would it, go, every I'm not single, appeal. Literally every one <clears throat> would would be like, no, I earned that shit. You can't just take it away. Um, but yeah, the original said, reasoning was that it had caused confusion. Isn't, <laughs> isn't that what they originally said? That's like, so that, like giving dumb. Out the, yeah. But I mean, so we're going to take it away. I heard that um, 
and I, this isn't verified, this is probably rumor, but there is some validity to it, I think, that YouTube might have been concerned that the tick could have been interpreted as Approval. YouTube approving yeah. of the content. And uh, and therefore, they didn't want that, you know, to happen. They didn't want to, because, oh, yeah. anyway. Well, then, no, just some people out the there are stupid enough, maybe. <clears throat> change the name to YouTube social credit system. And then, you know, that that's all you need to do at that point. Because it's, it's probably going to be the same thing as Twitter, where you can have somebody who's got like 2,000 followers and they're verified. And then you have someone with 400,000 who's not verified because they didn't go on TV, you know, a few times. He said... Uh... Yeah. I... Oh, go ahead. Well, yeah, I'd just like to get some uh, feedback and be hard to find out about who was unverified and who was verified because it seemed very arbitrary. Like there were huge creators, million subs and stuff getting unverified. And uh, and I wonder if it is public profile that uh, keeps them verified. But all to debunk that, all we would need to find out is anyone with a prominent enough public profile to say, no, I was unverified too. And then it really comes into, well, who the heck is determining or was determining who was going to be verified and who was going to be unverified. Did you see the comparison screenshot where they had um, the official Pingu uh, YouTube channel was still verified and YouTube wasn't? Uh, <laughs> 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 Pingu. Um, he said, while trying to make improvements, we missed the mark. And as I write this, we're working to address your concerns and we'll have more updates soon. And when I read that, I was like, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be the kind of fix where it's not actually a fix? But, um... Yeah, uh, she said, we heard loud and clear how much the badge means to you. Channels that currently have verification will now keep it without appeal. We'll continue reviewing those channels to ensure we're protecting creators from impersonation. Um, yeah, I, again, like, it was really b bizarre that they gave you the option to try and prove that someone might impersonate you, and it's like you realize the verification was protection from that, right? Yeah, I, that's so, so naturally, bizarre. There will be more impersonators if you take the verification away. So it doesn't even matter how many there are now, there will be more. Because I've seen it happen. Um, do you remember that time, I want to say like three or four years ago, where a lot of people's accounts were being like faked with spam website links? It was happening to a lot of Let's Players where people just invent um, the channel name. Like take Markiplier, for example copy the name, copy the, the image, and then just post loads of times, like, you know, hey guys, happy to see you on my comment section, I'd really appreciate it if you check out this link, because it's gonna blah blah blah, and it was just like, it's terrible, and it was like, yeah, and they had to start saying, like, don't trust any links that don't have a tick on them, and it's like, oh, that's clever, and it's like, by taking the tick away, you open this all back up again, you idiots, <laughs> like, why would you do that? And then to say that the intention of taking away the tick was to protect against, you know, um, false accounts, duplicate accounts. It's like, no. <laughs> it's, it's, what? Well, they're just saying things. They're just like, yeah, this is good for you. It's like, but how? Is this is good for you? No, no. Explain. It's this is good. This is, shut <laughs> up. It's good. And then she went on to say that you just need 100k subs and you'll be eligible to apply. And so everything's back to normal. Though I imagine they're going to be much more um, difficult to get verification slots. Oh, now. cool. I <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Right? Hey. Like, all channels who are working to... Like, there's going to be a whole bunch of channels out there who are on 90k, and they're like, oh, great. Like, uh... Thanks. Yeah, they took it back Worst entirely. There's channels that hit 100k the, the day it happened. Yeah. <laughs> At least they got to keep this now. Like, I'm happy that they've taken it back. I was just kind of like... People are putting on their tinfoil hats because they're like, they don't usually take ba things back. Is it like, did they do something absurdly stupid and then take it back to try and gain favor? Like, we listen. You reckon? Hmm. I don't know. They do make a lot of changes where they just don't give a damn and let, you know, sections of YouTube burn as a result. Like, you heard about the uh, upcoming changes for children's content that's happening? Uh, yeah. Like, that is no, just I, I didn't actually horrifying. Well, they're what, basically... What uh, so, it, for children's content, they're basically going to nuke most monetization, which means targeted ads. And it's because the FTC fined um, YouTube, Google for an insane amount. Um, and the exact reasons were because of uh, 
they're breaking some laws in regards to uh, um, advertising to minors and stuff. And so YouTube, as the, to try and uh, you know avoid another massive fine, basically are turning off all targeted ads. Because like if you look at traditional TV, there is there are really strict stipulations about advertising for children. For instance, one of the stipulations is that they can't have a product advertising something that's related directly related to the TV show that's playing. So you can't advertise Pokemon toys on while Pokemon the TV show was playing or He-Man toys when He-Man was playing and stuff. I don't think these stipulations are actually in place back in the 80s, but that's what it's like now. And so it's really strict. And they uh, have found YouTube uh, breaching a lot of it. And so targeted ads are ads that are uh, appearing based on people's watch history and other things like that. Right, which and, is how uh, how internet monitor like internet advertising works at this point. Yeah, yeah, like, and right. that's what most of the ads are. Um, uh, that I've heard, you know, people who uh, are in the thing that's like either seventy percent or uh, and higher. Most ads on YouTube are these targeted ads, and that's where most of the monetization comes from. They're val they're more valuable. You get more money for targeted ads, but basically for any content that is made for, I forget the. The, the well, age, they're, valid, they're more valuable, like you get more 12 or 13 or something. And sure. uh, yeah, and so uh, children's content, they're not allowed any targeted ads on their channel. They do not get notified. They won't get notifications anymore or comments, which is just like absolute execution on, on so many channels. And, and they target this not based on the watch history, but based on if the video is determined to be made for children. And this could hit Minecraft YouTubers, like uh, so a lot of gamers can be hit, let alone the uh, heap thousands of YouTubers that just make content sp specifically made for kids. And uh, and I know a lot of YouTubers that make kids content that this is going to impact massively. And so... It, like it's basically almost the end of YouTube monetization for them. It'll be, it, we will yet to see how much, how well the monetization will go with non-targeted ads because they do get just regular ads. But if they're going to get less money for those ads, they're already going to get a massive hit. But the largest impact comes from the fact that notifications will be turned off for their whole channel and no comments either. That's, oh. That'd be insane. And, yeah. Not that, a that, like. Yeah, if you're making kids content, that basically means your channel is dead. Like, if you're if you're not going to get notifications when you upload. Now, I could be, you know, painting a much more apocalyptic result of this, but this is just what I'm kind of seeing as the result. It'd be nice if it isn't as bad when these changes roll out. But it's basically YouTube saying, "Now these are the changes we're making," and I can see that their hand is forced a bit because of the FTC. But basically, content uh, kids content creators, yeah, this is happening. Sorry, screw you. We can't do anything about it. And and I I guess as an official message from EFAP, uh, fuck kids. <laughs> we hate them. They're terrible. We despise all children from around the world of all colors and uh, religions. We don't, don't, don't have worry, anything kids. to do with them. Is, is it? Was that fuck sorry, kids? kids is not fuck kids. You. Fuck kids. <laughs> <laughs> was that a command for the EFAP audience? Yeah. Oh, no. hang on, hang on. Am I the only just one here who has chat. kids? Just, yeah. just throw you out. Yeah. All of the EFAP chat is my are my children. Oh, uh, and that and you sense, heard what there. Rag said to you. Fuck them. <laughs> um, Rags, talk about how you released your video on Brown Table to the EFAP audience. I did release my video on Brown Table to the EFAP audience. I did do that Jeez. a few days ago. Um, it took like. Two weeks uh, just to show how how much it gets pushed back in the video. It says, hey, we just got done with episode 50. And then by the time it got released, you know, obviously, you know, it, it shows episode 50 being the last ones on Mueller channel on the Mueller channel. Uh, yeah. But it took it took about um, oddly no copyright hits for all the, the Marvel clips. So that was strange. Uh, but I'm glad of it. I got stymied by the monetization where they said it wasn't approved. And so I had them appeal and they said, yeah, it's still not approved. And then I had to go through the creator support thing and had them look at it again. And then they said, all right, we'll pass it on to our internal team. And that took another basically two weeks. Like that video was ready to release when Mahler's last video was ready. I was just coincidental there, but it only was able to, I was only able to get it out when I got it out. Well, either way, been long awaited and you annihilated him like it was almost <laughs> biblical one could say 
uh, approach the argument pretty much in every way. And for the loyal, wonderful EFAP audience, they can check it out if they want to. I just put it at the top of the description. There's the link. You could watch it now and come back, or you could watch it Hooray. after EFAP. Either way, actually put them both up and listen to them both at the same time. That's the peak way to uh, experience a Rags video on EFAP. Oh yeah, people were upset only, that you said... Go ahead, what did you say, Retard as much as I did. I was just going to say... I've only just started uh, Rags' new video, and uh, I think we got about half uh, 20 minutes in, but it was just good to see the beautiful Don's face again, so <laughs> I, I was happy already. It's a pity you couldn't gush over him more, Rags, but you have to be <laughs> clinical when it comes to, to working things out in like a courtroom setting. Like If you were his lawyer, you'd be like, we all know he's very handsome and wonderful, well, but we can't talk about was... that right now. <laughs> if I was going to go into the lore, I mean, how much, how would you even start new people up on the lore? That would have been its own, like, that's actually a kind of a big undertaking and would have taken a lot of time. And I don't even know exactly how I would have gone about it. So I just kind of. like trying to explain a religion to someone quickly. It can't be done. Yeah, to explain his heroic exploits in his whole life, it's not easy. That's a 10 hour video right there. Um, but yeah, people are upset with you because you said Doctor Strange was objectively the worst MCU film. Do you want to develop that so people can be less angry? I want you, I want, oh, are people angry about that? I saw a couple comments that were like, explain yourself, that's a ridiculous claim. How could you say that when you have Thor 2, Iron Man 3, uh, Captain uh, Marvel? Those movies, those movies make sense, sort of. Captain, or Doctor Strange's story just doesn't make sense. Like, it's well, literally you, nonsensical. You watched it's it like, ooh, magic. You watched it for the first time with Mauler and I, didn't you? I think yeah. So. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I remember as I was watching it, I was enjoying it at the start, but then about halfway, it started to collapse. Like, it just fell apart completely. I was really surprised, actually. I was like, wow, this is not holding up well at all. I'll never forget the ghost I'm fight. surprised. I didn't... I, yeah. I thought it wasn't bad. Well, I'm interested I mean, to hear your thoughts, but that this could derail like the whole it. stream. Yeah, the, the ghost fight, fight in the whole... <laughs> <laughs> Dormammu reset time thing. It's all, it's nonsense. It's None of the rules seem to make sense with the time thing. People can break out of him rewinding time. How is that possible? How can you possibly do that? You can't have a coherent thought to break out of the time reversal if time is being reversed on you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying there. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, because. Marvel can play pretty, uh, you know, uh, loose with uh, how they uh, follow through with certain established things. But I found that with the magic that was being played around with Doctor Strange is that they established basically how something would work, even if the way it worked doesn't really make sense, if it is working that way specifically, and then they just stay true to that standard that they established, you can have the magic be far more satisfying. And in most instances, probably not in every instance, but in most instances, it seemed like that they were sticking with that, that Doctor Strange learned a limited number of spells in that movie, and that these were the spells that it was always reverting back to, and you kind of got to see their strengths and lengths of what they could achieve in the in the fact that when we got to see how they were being used and what would overcome them, he got the shield thing, he had the whip thing, um, he had the portals if he was holding the ring, but if you lose the ring, you can't do the portal, so you need to get the ring and stuff. And those worked decently enough for me, they, they satisfied me. <clears throat> I think uh, I think the ghost fight was a good example of where it doesn't, like, because they're ghosts, but they seem to interact with physical objects completely arbitrarily. I can't not lie like, uh, the sequence. Well, it's like, you know, they get punched into a vending machine and then something happens to the Sorry, you broke out you broke out there. You broke up. Fringy! Ooh. Bring Daddy G. He's dead! He's dead! Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I thought it was Is this not working? Oh, are you back now? Go. Oh, okay. Uh yeah, no, it's like this is, it's... This, this is almost as arbitrary as the ghost scene. Yeah, no, Sorry. the the, <laughs> the the ghost scene. It's like what what affects them seems to be completely inconsistent because they like grab onto the ground when they go through it, but it's like you're a ghost. You can't interact with the grounds. You you don't exist in the physical realm. Oh, you just skip to the big retarded finish where 
the what, where oh the electrocution zap somehow translates into the astral realm and then he a blows him up. On the unconscious <laughs> Doctor Strange, which sends electricity from his body into his astral form into the other astral guy, who explodes him and kills the unconscious guy. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> my See, brain falls like, out of my I, head with that. I way. get it. That it doesn't make sense. But if that became a rule that you can train, like electricity can be sent into the astral plane, and then they were consistent with that rule, I'd be like, okay, if you're consistent, if I, I, it doesn't make sense as to why. But if that's the rule and you stay true to it, you can work with it, and it can be satisfying if they kind of revert back. Oh, we can do this. This is, affects the astral thing. But the unfortunate thing is, is that. Marvel, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be consistent to that. That's just I'm, uh, lost in the ether. I'm, I'm watching the I'm watching the fight right now. So right at the beginning of the fight, <laughs> like Doctor Strange punches the other guy. He grabs onto the floor. The other guy comes back and punches Doctor Strange into a wall, and he hits the wall like he hits it as though he were in the room. And then he, two seconds later, he throws him through another wall like he goes through it. Why did he not go through the first wall? <laughs> He just decided what, not to, I guess. What if what if it was triggered by thought that the, the ghosts can only interact with the physical realm when they when they actively focus uh, on on interacting with it and when they're not sorry, I don't know why I get in uh, sorry David but okay. Attenborough just he comes out sometimes I can't control it. <laughs> um and then when they're not when they're not focusing and everything, they don't have interaction and they and they go through. Now that would make I mean, it arbitrary because it's like whenever they're not they're touching and interacting, they're clearly not focusing. But that could be in a, like if they explained it, and that could be an explanation or an established rule within the universe that you know you need to focus to interact with the physical world when you're in the astral plane. Now, just I will having I will say this though. Filling in the gaps like this after the fact and have it not having explained in the world is is a big flaw in the writing. It's a problem. Oh, for okay? sure. The, the audience yeah. should not have to explain plot holes after the fact. Um, but I do feel if sometimes, sometimes if the explanations are easy, I can go ahead and like, all right, I can accept, accept it. If I have to jump through too many loops yeah. to find an explanation, especially if it doesn't make sense and the uh, connections you're making are very um, unintuitive and stuff, then it's like, nah, nah, it's stupid. I think um, I think the thing, because I, I kind of subjectively, I like Doctor Strange because I like Doctor Strange, the character. That's like, right. I mean, really entertaining. The, I, 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 what is, what I, I, I like, thought his character was the one of the weaker parts of the movie because he's just a jerk. No, but he he has a very straightforward arc. Like it's a straightforward arc, and it works because he's 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 an asshole at the beginning, and then he becomes a better person by I, the end. I, I think it works, and I, I think it's carried by myself Benedict. with his uh, most, if not all, the hero movies. I'd have to go through them to make sure. There's a moment where they'll have to make an important choice. His choice was really stu uh, silly. She tells him, like, you can either go back to being a surgeon and being the best, or you can commit to being a defender of the universe. And I'm like, you know that Dormammu is on the way. He's going to destroy everything. So if you became a surgeon, the world gets destroyed. Like, there's no real choice there. Like, the idea that he's like, I'm going to fight for Earth. It's like, well, of course you are, because otherwise you're dead. <laughs> like, why <laughs> would you do anything else? <laughs> But but the thing is, from his perspective at that point in time, he would have no idea he would have the power to stop Dumamu. He thinks he's an untrained like, and because he's selfish, I actually think that's an inconsistent kind of thing where he would decide, sure, I can save the world. I'm just a surgeon. I have no powers at this point. Well, if he in time. doesn't, then he can't be a surgeon. Well, it's that's true. But you would think he like from his perspective, if he's a selfish character, he would have more faith in these trained wizards to be able to stop Dormammu oh, more than himself. They never take the time stone off him. You guys remember that? He just has oh, like, yeah, the most, imp right. the most destructive it, yeah. and important weapon Earth has, and he, they never take it off him. He's just got it. He's their novice trainer, and they're like, "Hey, what are you doing with what is essentially a giant nuke?" And he's like, uh, and then they just. Oh, it's really silly, but, you know, so that... Is that at the end? Are you talking about the end of Doctor Strange? It's, like, from the point? middle to the end. I can't remember when he first gets the, the stone, but they're, like, outraged that he has it, partially, and then they just let him have it. <laughs> like, it's not quite like the cloak, or, or whatever it is, um, where, where they're, like... True, uh, true. They've ch it's chosen you. He literally stole the type stone <laughs> from its, like, <laughs> little place. <clears throat> 
And yeah, I mean, because it makes sense to me that all right, we'll let you keep it because you defeated an inter, you know, dimensional yeah, being and fact, stuff. Right. But it's after, yeah, have, have, like, yeah, entrusting him with it before is like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're like. Why? I was like, what did he do to get it? He just took it. It's like, <laughs> for all I know, he's just some dude. <laughs> like, it's what if he just decided? Dude. Yeah, but what I mean is just like, what if he said, um, all right, I think I'm done. See you later, guys. And then just like, you know, disappears. It's like, okay, okay. I guess we just lost that but time this, stone. There, there is an argument that this could be answered by the ancient, what the ancient one says right. in Endgame, Actually, where she had was, the foreknowledge that. that he was going to be the best of them, the, the strongest ever. And so if yeah. she knew ahead of time that he was yeah. supposed to have it. <clears throat> that could explain why they let him keep it when he took it. I did just think of that when you mentioned it as well. I'm like, oh yeah, but then again, we're talking about a scene that breaks Endgame, so I'm not sure how much credence we should uh, we should offer that scene. Uh, Razorback said, "Watch the movie, Mola. He earned it. Mola, uh, strange is your uh, spider boy. Are you talking about the the time stone? He didn't earn it. He just picked it up. Yeah, he just basically yeah, he just kind of walked in and picked it up. The kind of lacked security, honestly. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah." Um, I need to watch like a movie a, again. It's like a lock long. on it. And the idea but, that and, he and then the, the cloak thing as well. He's just fighting the villain and it decides to go for him. That's another thing I thought would have been cool to give us more reason for why it would have chosen Strange. I do like that scene though, how the cloak like just the sort too. of like starts beating him up. Thing, I actually like <laughs> Doctor Strange, I do. There's just a lot of I'd like it, it too. Like, we haven't yeah. even talked about fucking Mordo going evil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So poor. <laughs> he's just evil because <laughs> literally Doctor Strange saves the universe and he's like, we shouldn't be so reckless with such power. And it's like, I mean, dude, we uh, <laughs> the universe is about to be eaten. I don't know. Oh, you're talking about the dude who like cripples that guy and it's just like, I guess I'm evil now. <laughs> oh my god. It's yeah. Not yeah, isn't it? So we're talking about the black guy that goes evil in the after credit scene, and he says, yes, but, uh, too, too many wizards yeah. in the world." Yeah, yeah. Uh, his, his logic, that was that was admittedly baffling to see. <laughs> his his logic makes no sense. It's like, dude, the universe wouldn't exist if he didn't do that. <laughs> Are you so suggesting bad. that that would be a better option? Just don't exist anymore. But like Doctor Strange is invested in not using the time stone unless it's absolutely necessary. It's like, why wouldn't you agree with that? Why wouldn't that be? Mm -hmm. Seems like the thing to do. Also, another thing, doesn't Doctor Strange fall over and then the time st reversal stops and he's like, oh no. He's like, I have to come up with another plan. And then I remember being like, can I just do it again? Can I just <laughs> rewind again? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> See, I can't even remember that scene. It's been too long since I've watched the movie. I, mean, I will say, though, I don't know that I'd say it's objectively the worst MCU movie. I don't think movie. it's the worst. No. I don't know about that. I don't think it's the worst. It's got flaws, for sure. Um... We, we, what would you say is worse than it, Fringy? Uh, Captain well, I mean, Marvel. Captain Marvel is definitely <laughs> worse than it. Iron Man 3 is worse than Iron it Man as well. Iron Man 3 was, and, is, uh, is horrible. <laughs> yeah, and I think Black Panther is worse than it too. Is, um, that's a good, that could be a conversation. Movies, well, it's just because sure. all three of those movies have like fundamental story-breaking issues, whereas with Doctor Strange, they are pretty bad. Like, it does have problems, but there are other things that it does well, whereas I can't think of many things that the list of movies before did well. It's really interesting the moments that cause you to just check out of a movie, and sometimes they're really small. But for me, with yeah. Iron Man 3, it's when they're, like, making their hands so hot that they can melt doorknobs that their clothes are perfectly <laughs> fine. I was like, sorry, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I mean that entire thing, like the whole the whole system that they have, is absurd. It's like, what are your abilities? I make things hot. <laughs> 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 so stupid. It was really dumb. Hey, I'm Iron Man. This is where I live. This is a good idea. Oh, whoops. Guess I'm dead. Hey, guys, there's a missile heading to the house. I can see it on the news. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> That was when I, I was taken out myself. I remember when I first watched it, I was like, how would he possibly have been notified by the news that there's a missile heading towards his house? How does the news yeah. even know that there's a missile coming to your house? And <laughs> they, they just got, got like helicopters five is, is right behind the missile. <laughs> We're just here at Tony Stark's house. It's uh, it's a nice, you know, Thursday night. Um, sun setting, and then like 10 minutes pass. Oh, what's this? We got like some helicopters coming. Ooh. It's like, why well, they just spend the whole night outside the house waiting for something to happen? Yeah, he's Tony <laughs> really? Stark, man. 
<laughs> Something's bound to happen. You know what's sad is that film had a lot of potential. It did. Like I was so hoping they would have actually doubled down on the Mandarin and actually made him a proper villain instead of just abandoning like the concept of a terrorist who targets superheroes. That's a really cool, you know, kind yeah. of take on how to do yeah, that. You know, what's um, better than that. Mandarin. A joke that just makes it nothing. You know, it's better yeah. to ruin all this potential for one simple joke. That's not even that funny. <laughs> Ben Kingsley like nailed he it, had menace. He like, did it, the, the trailers, the way they were depicting the man, uh, the Mandarin. It really showed him with menace, and Ben yeah. Kingsley or whatever was Whoa. do it like that way of doing it. I was like, oh, okay, this is looking uh, you cool. Know I wonder. You know, if Ryan like, Johnson was watching that, just going, <laughs> oh, yeah. "Yes, <laughs> this is good. That's how you this do it. Great." <laughs> I, I do wonder if, like, when they cut the trailers and everybody's like, oh, the Mandarin's going to be so cool. Like, they were sitting there in their office. Hey, they're like, shit, yeah, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's going to be great. You guys will love him. I get in their expectations of it. We'll be fine. He he takes a big poop and says it's smelly. That's what the Mandarin does in the film. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we wanted to see him do, you know? And, you know, watch a soccer game and just start cheering. Just not giving a shit. And again, it shows Ben Kingsley's rage, because he nails both parts. It's oh, like, what the yeah. fuck is he doing in this movie with this role? Like, what is what, this? What is why happening? didn't you just let him do the Mandarin <laughs> properly? It would have been great. Uh, that's one of those, can we do it again movies? Like, can we do it again? <laughs> we'll keep a couple things. The thing is, that the thing that I, one silver lining for me, you can actually take Iron Man completely out of the MCU continuity, and most of it, it's perfectly fine still. Like, well, the next thing Iron Man appears in is what Age of Ultron and yeah. they basically don't even nod to the right, whole right. destroying whole, his Iron Man suits and all that stuff and giving up being Iron Man. No, he's still Iron Man. And so yeah, just a uh, fun fact. Uh, I think I've talked to Fring about this before, but Joss Whedon was like not in the in crowd when they decided to make Winter Soldier. But when they decided to dissolve Shield, he was like, um I have a TV show called Agents of Shield. <laughs> fucking rams, like, and so they were like, "Oh," and he has to, he had to like work around it and stuff. But um, on top of that, he was making Age of Ultron. It's like, yeah, here's your cast. You got Iron Man. Uh, he's destroyed all his suits, by the way. He'd be like, "What? <laughs> what, <is this? laughs> what, what am I meant to do?" Because uh, when I watched Iron Man three, I'm like, "Is this the end? Is this like, is he done?" Yeah. I was so confused. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so glad they just ignored that part and in a, a just just right like, no, still Iron Man. Yeah. And then it isn't it so a I shame though, you know, isn't it a shame that the three most successful standalone MCU movies are the worst ones? Iron Man 3, Captain Marvel, and Black Panther. They're the three most successful standalone ones, and they're the worst. Well, see, if that's the case, I didn't know they were the three best, but it's I feel it's evident to see why, and it's not because the movies are good. It's based on what came before it and the expectation it's, and hype. That I think it's uh, I think it's what came before and after. Yeah, because Black yeah. Panther was the lead into Infinity War, and Captain Marvel yep. was the lead into Endgame. Yep. I don't know if those movies and plus like Black Panther in particular had a lot of the. Like, I'm pretty sure Black Panther in the domestic domestic by US actually outperformed Infinity War, but Infinity War performed way better overall and international. I just or, find it interesting. Or we're wrong, and those films are all very good, but we just have a very bad take. And um, and Shad probably won't like that Far From Home is the most successful Spider-Man film uh, by box office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> isn't uh, isn't well, Spider-Man like, the least successful as well? Which is a it shame. is, and that's a damn shame, because it's probably the best one. That's great. Yeah. It's it's really good, um, but I think it's just indicative of uh, of the market. It's like you can have this really great, innovative, but really strong story, and people just won't watch it. And yet, you know, Captain Marvel makes one point two billion dollars or something. That's what I feel like about Battle Angel Alita. That movie should have. That was so good, and uh, it should have. I mean, you, so prob much you probably don't want to get me talking about Alita Battle Angel. I don't think it's as bad as I think Wolf said to you, but I. Uh, yeah, I think Wolf that doesn't got like a lot it. Of problems. I well, I, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying I really liked it. It was a good movie. Oh yeah, fair enough. I I can see why people like that movie a lot. Um, and I I would say that it's probably you know. The thing is, is um that movie, even though I don't, I don't think it's particularly good. I think it still ranks pretty highly compared to a lot of other films that have come out this year, which says a lot. <laughs> it's just like you know, See. this is one of the better movies of the year, and it's like sure. I don't even really enjoy it that much. <clears throat> We've not had a great selection the last two years. 
No. Well, the other thing that I think just made the movie appeal to me. I'm not sure if you're that. Sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> uh, you just get a text message. I just got a text message, guys. I'm uh, ready. Is it? Uh, 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 um. Is it someone saying, yes, it's someone saying happy birthday. I thought it would be. Oh, uh, that's, that that's nice. nice. Now, I, you ago. know, this is, a, <laughs> this is a completely unrelated, but it's actually my birthday tomorrow. I find it interesting. <gasps> wow. That, there uh, you go. Happy birthday. Yeah. What are, what are the, well, thanks for the preemptive one. Yeah. <laughs> what are the odds, though? Well, so, one in preemptive. Fourth, if yeah. we follow the logic, <laughs> if we follow the logic clearly, that means Robot Head's birthday must be the day after. Happy birthday, well, man! Interesting, <gasps> interestingly enough, interestingly enough, Top Hats and Champagne, a YouTuber who I'm friends with, his birthday is actually the day after mine too. So it's in rapid your session. Yay! He, well, he lives in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't count. He has to have been born there, otherwise this whole system falls apart. All right. All right. <laughs> and Fringy, we could still be doing this stream when it's your birthday, so. It might oh, yeah, I mean, who knows? It might last all 24 hours. God. So before we go too far off topic, uh, just going yeah. back to what I was saying about Elite <laughs> is uh -huh. the, the thing on, that- it was you that sent us off topic. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> screw you. No, let, let's yeah. let's go down the Elite one. one. I, I, I'd like to hear about this, actually. Well, no, it's yeah, just that I liked it, uh, or it struck me as uh, finally- uh, going back to the roots of what makes a good heroic female character i mean and it's not something we haven't seen before that, yeah. but lately lately it's not something that we've seen where you have a female protagonist who is also distinctly feminine and vulnerable but also can kick butt i was like yes thank you. this is I, uh, how you can do it i i definitely see that and i think that's probably the reason why a lot of people like it i don't think there's my thing is, I don't know if I can say there's much wrong with Alita, but that's kind of the problem is because I don't think there's much for me to latch onto. She's very blank. Like, she's a good guy because she is, and she, you know, she has these abilities that she got back a long time ago, and we're not going to see. And, um... And it's not, it's not really a problem, because they do explain why she's got all these abilities, which is fine. And, yeah, I, I, goodness... I think, yeah, you know I how you're saying her, she's good because she's good, but I think that's very like clearly explained and evident by the fact that she's just she's got a good, kind heart. She's innocent and naive, but that naivety actually works against her in the movie. And so, like that's that's a good, com more complex character because of that, in my mind. Where um, you know, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, at least she fails. Like, there's that. She does fail. She, yeah, and she, she makes, makes mistakes. She makes, she, she yeah. falls head over heels for the wrong guy because she's too trusting and she's too innocent and unaware. And that yeah. and her, the whole experience makes her harder and a bit more world savvy and things like that. And yeah, it's, it's all good. I, I enjoyed that. Those elements. I uh, I guess I was left wanting a bit more. The movie probably could have stood to be a bit longer. I think I think they needed to explain the world a bit better because I haven't read the manga, so I don't I don't really get it. I don't understand like the the state of the world. Manga. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you have to pronounce the comic book names correctly. But uh, I say, but I, I will I I would agree that it's um that it's probably I I, I need to pay more attention to it. Like I need to watch it again. I think. Yeah, the character won me over with Alita, and I mean, beautiful animations and you know expressions. Oh yeah, no, the, the special and... effects is kind of like without. It's probably the best um, special effects I've ever seen. Hmm. Um, yes, we do and... prefer it to Captain Marvel. Fine, yes, true. <laughs> of course, we do. <laughs> You'd hope so, right? There's some yeah. people out there who think Captain Marvel's great. You know, it's funny, there, there's this conspiracy that the whole Elita versus Captain Marvel thing was pushed by either alt-right, white nationalists, yeah. everything like that. It's like, come off it! No! It's because one movie was good, and one movie was crap! And okay? also, I don't get it, like, uh, Rosa Salazar is not, she's like, Latin American, she's not white, so <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Well, well. That uh, doesn't that just uh, change. Robot, are you are you talking? Because robot said maybe we can't hear him. Oh. Are, you, are you speaking? Oh, I can't hear him. Uh oh, huh? Uh oh, oh no. yeah. Oh yeah. Robot no! head. No robot. Tran transceiver. Put in different screws. It's robot head. You see. 
properly functioning. I'm. He. Oh, we could have missed some tr like great pearls of wisdom. Yeah, he, I, I. I always hate to feel bad about that because I feel like for them <laughs> this whole time they've been trying to speak and just people ignoring. Them. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> you guys, you know, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Feels bad, bad. He's he's trying to fix it. When are you gonna get a new avatar, Robot Head? I don't know how I feel about the one you got now. The Destiny well, face. From and Destiny. The, 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 I don't. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's giving you Vietnam flashbacks, it's, it's right? Kinda, I'm. I'm a bit late well, to do that. Yeah. He's, it's all over his stuff now. Like it's in all of his videos. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what was all over the face of? Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> the, listen. There was, um, there was a certain flag all over a certain about, country. Oh, okay, so so you think they're just like, oh, I guess we we can't have another Roman emperor because the old one's face is all over the coinage. Well, okay, robot head. If you if you if you don't say anything, we'll take your silence as saying you hate rags. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> oh right. wow. Okay, jeez. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you offended him then, Rax. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. My back. Slightly. Yes. Say more things. We heard you Smartly? Can you hear me? No, okay. yeah, we, can. we can hear you. We can hear you. Ah, oh, very good. What do you have to retort back with r to rags with? It's not even a retort. I wouldn't even make fun Fuck of him. Fuck him up, robot head. Fuck him we'll, up. We'll... You can try. You can try. So many others have tried. What hope do you have? <laughs> <laughs> He's the head of Here's the robot. A when when I found this head and and I changed no, it a bit, I, found I this... didn't know where it was from. <laughs> Is it is it Cade Six's head? I, I don't uh, know. I think it's I just an three, exo he head. No, he doesn't even know. I needed a three dimensional head for a video, and I thought, oh, that that head looks pretty cool. I found it, and uh, yes, yeah, I mean, so the art the art direction in Destiny is really good. It's just a shame that everything else is awful. <laughs> and I'm then sure yeah, yeah, people kept start asking me about the game, and I thought, oh, I, I might have <laughs> fucked up here. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's awkward. <laughs> like you must love it. You're like, uh, yeah. This uh, this kind of reminds me of um, you know, when Bering used the bear from Total Drama Island, yeah. and like every time I watch this video, I'm like, oh, this is like the bear from that show, and then eventually it became an issue. Yeah. And I keep meaning to find. I need to find an artist to do me a new one. That's just mine. But um, yeah, it's got out of hand now. So now I just have to go with it. So. <laughs> Have, uh, um, have some you EFAP, can always change EFAP memes might, yes. might, you may sort through the EFAP memes you might find something in. yeah yes. question if you change would that make you a trans robot no he could still be a male robot well he doesn't even have a gender because he's a robot so can a robot even yes. be trans I but, have all the attachments I can actually be anything we can be a transformer <laughs> so <laughs> what are your preferred pronouns sir what you just said um, so. <laughs> it yes <laughs> Tripod. Um. The correct nomenclature when you don't have the pronouns is to say, "What is your? What are your pronouns, creature?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Life form. They prefer it when you say creature. I was trying to say when no one was listening to me, and I thought you're all being rude. That Alita, I think, shows how bad the competition is. That, like, I understand people liking that film, but I, I think people like it because the other films out at the moment are so fucking terrible. I think if it came out in like the eighties, it would be an average action film. Probably, like because there were some other yeah. really good contenders for you know strong, strong the, the strong female characters. But I'm talking about actually proper, you know, good, well written female well, heroes. We're, talk, we're talking like uh, you know Ripley, Sarah Connor, you know those types yeah. of characters. Um, I don't enjoy it, but I see people loving it, and I think they're they, they're latching onto it because they fucking hate Captain Marvel and well, they're, they're, I, they're I think, um, out their shit. I think part of it is it's it's a really straightforward movie and there's probably value in that when you have mm. movies like The Last Jedi that are just a complete mess because they're trying to, you know, be really profound and they just don't understand the fundamentals. Whereas that movie is like, it at least, even though I don't think it fully nails it in that regard, I, I do see a, a grasp of the fundamentals of like, you know, a straightforward character arc and hero's journey, stuff like that. You know, it's it's sort of like basic general things that people tend to like yeah and even things that shouldn't really be a feature become a feature because of this like did you hear the controversy over alita having too perfect a physical you know uh body basically she's a robot she's too, her she's eyes too, are too slim 
Yeah, like, and that she was too slim, and you know her body was too fit, and that's that's evil. And I was like, she's a robot. Yes, yeah, so, so <laughs> such a non-controversy. But the fact that yeah, well, they one day care about the outrage and is like, screw you, we're gonna make this you know female action hero be attractive, uh, you know, in the proper conventional sense. Proper? How dare I say proper? Oh, I'm oh, gonna be burned for that. I want my uh, phone fat and ugly. <laughs> I uh, I actually I'm curious about this because I often sizes. see people say I do see people say things like how come in video games like female characters are tending to skew like a white because I think the th the problem with video games before was that basically all female characters were over sexualized and now it's like you can't make sexualized female characters in video well, games they went from or at least like one to zero instead of uh, acknowledging well a huge I, plethora I think, uh, between I, those two numbers. I think I think Mortal Kombat 11 was a good example. Every male combatant in Mortal Kombat 11 has a topless variant, um, but none of the female combatants have any like you know just bikini variants. I don't really care either way. Like I don't care, but it's just interesting that that's like with the men they can be completely <laughs> topless and it's fine, but with the women they can't. And I kind of feel like that's weirdly. going. Isn't that just going backwards? Wouldn't it be better if everybody was like everything or nothing? <laughs> you know. No. <laughs> That's all I've said. You just yeah, think just feminism is yeah. about equality? <laughs> I I, oh, uh, for, with content that is uh, generally more geared towards a male audience, and action movies generally are, and uh, generally men tend to like action movies far more than romances and stuff like that, what is wrong with then making the characters appeal to that demographic? There's nothing wrong. It's like trying to shame men, essentially saying, no, you're not allowed to be attracted to attractive women. And we were going to force you to just shame look at shame men. There's a lot of women out yeah. there who are like, want those parts and like being yes. let's say, <laughs> appreciated for the, the work they do on their body. Then they have people being like, dress yourselves for goodness sake. <laughs> like, respect yourself. Uh, I remember MK9 with uh, Melina having the bandage outfit. I mean, um, I think I think Mortal Kombat 9 has really bad character designs, to be honest with you. I'm just <laughs> but, saying that but... that's, that's as close as they could pretty much get before being a new yeah. character. And then nowadays, it's like, that would be outright offensive. Yeah, I'm not even talking about, I guess, levels of modesty. I'm, yeah, just general uh, physical appearance, how fit they are and stuff cool. is also... And you see this in Marvel comics. Have you seen how a lot of the female characters are being drawn? And just pick up any Captain Marvel comic, right? Have a look at how she's being drawn now compared well, to how she that, was drawn in the 80s and the 90s. The thing that I don't really... Because I think with comics, it's like there are... I... In the 90s, like, I... <laughs> I'm not a big fan of comic book art from the 90s where people just are downright unrealistic looking to a degree that is off-putting. Um, yeah, I'm, I tend I'm the to same way. Yeah. yeah. I tend to prefer... When you say when, unrealistic, uh, in what way? You talk because, like, well, comic have books you, are you, meant to depict a, yeah, like, a, like a a, an extreme yeah, but where the male characters are buff right. beyond belief and then the female characters also have... Well, and, yes, they're unrealistic proportions, but, the, it, like... That's kind of the whole thing about comic books. Have you supposed uh, to be godlike characters? Um, I mean, it depends on what comics we're talking about. I mean, comic book is just a format. I think you're just talking about superhero comic books. I'm talking about like just in general, I guess, uh, okay. viewing it as a as a medium. But yeah, like when we're talking about superhero comics, um, you, you know, like Rob Liefeld, the artist, um, who a lot of people consider to be very bad, despite the fact that he was like the artist on some of the best selling comics of all time. Um, he did that Captain America one where, like, his chest is puffed out to an extent that is just insane. Oh, And okay. where, like, when... female characters, you can see their butt and their boobs, like, facing towards the, okay. the, yeah. the, the camera. The... And it's just like, <laughs> how is that possible? If you, Because, yeah, I think you were talking about there is there's unrealistic proportions and then there is bad proportions where it's just, like, a mutated mess. Right. It's just a result of um, bad comic book I mean, art. Yeah, I, I think, I think where, where I was... Uh, because when it comes to comics now, I think the issue I have is not necessarily that the way that characters are drawn is bad necessarily, but more that they tend to all be drawn the same way. So it's very homogenous and boring. Like like the way that a lot of uh, characters are drawn now is it's like 
they're they're lean. They're not too you know shapely in any one way. They're just sort of like lean or slim or buff, and and like that's it. If you know what I mean, it's 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 kind of like boring to see them all look very similar. Yeah, uh, very similar uh, facial see, features. Like even if all the say the body shapes are similar, I don't think that detracts from the 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 core experience of what say a superhero comic book is meant to portray at, at all. I feel it actually enhances it. Like, I, I, uh, I just find it boring. Be, See, I, okay, I'm, like, I'm a fan of novelty. If the, but, but like for comic books, I reckon you're there for the action, the story, and stuff like that. And having yeah. you know the superheroes depicted in a heroic way, I I don't think that detracts from what the the, the action and the heroism and the story in any I, way. I, I don't think that I, I don't know if boring. it detracts. I just I don't like it personally. I, okay, uh, okay. Like, uh, look it, like grotesque. Then it's well, it's hard you, great. To- all right, if you want to think of like an example of the standard I refer to, you should look up J. Scott Campbell's comic book art. And uh, uh, one yeah, of his best works is Danger Girl, okay? And he is one of the most amazing comic book artists like in history, in my mind. Yeah, and no, I read, I'm looking at it. It's pretty good. It's, he's uh, it's he's insanely good. talented. But the thing, key feature about his art, he makes his characters look beautiful, both the men and the women. They are just astoundingly attractive right and that's the whole thing about comic books and stuff that's the that's one of the draws the features and and like i could i could read a j scott campbell comic book even if the story was crap because it's just so beautiful but like danger girl is such a hilarious kind of parody send up um of the james bond spy kind of you know um tropes and stuff and it's over the top hilarious and uh, also beautifully drawn see that that picture fringy just uh yeah um, rob lightfield that, that's, yeah, that's a horrible <laughs> picture um, that's a horrible that's, picture can we bring up like a the James biggest Scott tits era? i've ever seen that's like a meme <laughs> picture you don't even have to watch meme meme that that's uh that's rob lightfield right there <laughs> Yeah, uh, he wrote the best-selling comic of all time. He wrote uh, he wrote and illustrated X Force number one, and it's bad. It's really bad, but it's like the best-selling comic ever. All right. See, there's that. Now bring up that a picture so from J- Yeah, p- p- bring uh, up a appara- picture from um, uh, Campbell. One. This is a, uh, apparently a J. Scott Campbell fine art print of Captain Marvel. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not realistic, gorgeous. but it's 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 uh, it's it's. it's I, I, think, I think the main thing is um, when it comes to art, it's like realism is not necessarily the objective. It's more so that um, it's consistent. It's consistent within itself. So like no, you look there, at this one, there are like, certain objective qualities. If we could bring up the Captain Marvel picture on the um on the EFAP screen, um, there are consistent objective qualities that make this just gorgeous. And part of it is the amount of motion that like, this is a static oh, pose, it's, it's, yet it's, it uh, feels really like there's motion, like there's movement in it. Then there's the flowing lines. I don't and know curves if I'd call that. A, I don't know if I'd call it an objective quality there. I would say that there are certain things, certain principles of design that tend exactly. to work. Um, That's what I'm talking say... about. And you can duplicate it and they consistently work really well. And then if you put it in the correct proportions and balance to each other, I mean, one of my, like, it's not a goal anymore, but I used to want to be a comic book artist as a career ambition. And, and so I, studying you know comic book art was a big thing and i got to a competent level not nowhere near as good as campbell but you can actually look at my comic book art on my deviant page we should probably bring that up but if you got he was one of the that, artists yeah on my deviant page one of my um yeah sure I'll take a look actually at that. Yeah. Up- upload one of my comic book um uh, character pictures because it was also an outlet for my writing and so mm. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Where's Captain um, Marvel's speak to the manager haircut that she had in Endgame? <laughs> I, uh, I I don't like the the short haircut that she has in the comics now. I like long hair. What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, oh, when I, she came I, I don't in mind. Endgame, I, I don't thought, really care if it's long or short on a chick. In the comic, it looks alright, but in Endgame, it was like Christ. I didn't think you could make me dislike her anymore, but you have just know. with that haircut. Here's a question in universe. So, how can you cut Captain Marvel's hair? <laughs> right, because it's, it's impervious to fire with her teeth. He's more, po- she's powerful enough to affect herself. What, what could possibly be it's strong enough Superman to cut problem. Captain Marvel's hair? Yourself, guys. 
Guys, don't you like this cover for Cable and Deadpool where, like, Cable's arms are bigger than his head several times over? <laughs> Isn't this great? <laughs> like, so, look at that like, last <laughs> one. <laughs> like, how is <laughs> So there's one of my um, drawings there, guys. It's not bad. It's not, not bad. It's not bad at all. When you're closing so... your YouTube channel to draw babes. I mean, I mean, her, her waist, she doesn't have ribs. That's the only problem. Well, that's but... kind of the thing. Like, like, you draw them in the proportions to make them look beautiful, but also to try and convey a level of, uh, um, you know, movement and flow to it and stuff. Yeah. And one um, of my big influences was J. Scott Campbell with just how gorgeous he makes. And, like, yeah, clearly her thighs are as wide as her waist, obviously. But part of it is to do the, uh, you know, overly... Um, uh, yeah, like extreme proportions to get the kind of look. Um, yeah, I think I think there's an extent that you can push it to, but where the line is drawn, I think is it depends because I prefer it when they look like real. If you know what I mean, like I prefer it when the character looks like a real person who could ex like like we looked at that Captain Marvel one before. It's like I do like that a lot. Um, people don't like the the proportions are not anatomically correct though but that's fine because they're kind of consistent within themselves you know like it's, yeah it, there's nothing in there that makes me go nah, this is absurd like it's well, um do you know what jay uh Sk oh, sorry jay scott campbell campbell he's actually been receiving heat recently as a terrible sexist for drawing Why? women in a in an attractive sexy manner and How so is that, whole... isn't that positive that heartless bastard nope that's <laughs> negative that's the male gaze and uh, and so when uh, well, just hearing about the the you know uh, um a Twitter attacks that's been lumped on him recently, I was I was I was disappointed to hear because he's a comic book legend in my mind back in the day, and he was one of the core inspirations for my own artwork just for how good he is. I and mean, how I uh, me. when it comes to like the artists that I like in comic books, a lot of them are the older ones, like the 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 veteran ones, you know, like um like. I mean, I guess you could call Greg Capullo a veteran at this point. He's been working in comics for like 20 years. I think he's really good. Um, I like uh, Jim Lee as well. But that's kind of an obvious one. Oh, yeah, Jim like Lee. Jim Lee, he's really good. Um, and Frank Miller, I think, is really excellent. But his is more so from like composition is what I find really impressive about him, the way that he just constructs a comic book. I mean, I, th I think he's the best. I think he's I, the best. Um, like, I like I Monet. Sorry. Yeah, nice, nice flowers. Nice All right. Waters. Uh, my favorite is um, Bayo in the Dragon, up and coming comics. I like him because he draws tits, <laughs> and I like tits. I was actually going to say another this is... phenomenal artist was Michael Turner. He's passed away now. May he rest in peace. But he was an amazing artist. I think. Uh, I think what I'm interested in in the in the comic landscape now is because a lot of the people who are really good like you know the really sort of venerated were working in it in the 90s and the 2000s and you know now they're like getting into their 40s and 50s and they're still around and they're still working um but what was that it's who burped that was probably robot head <laughs> rags trying to do a stealth boot because he usually says belch trying to sneak that one past us did it rags yeah, so I guess my my whole point is like comic books are meant to be gorgeous and beautiful. They're they they're drawings, okay? And if the drawing is crap when you're reading it, it detracts from the experience and stuff. And so part of having the beauty in the comic books is the beauty of the characters in make them as, you know, idealistic as possible, especially for superheroes and stuff. And what you see now being spat out by Marvel is just trash. I mean, I'm sure there's still some good artists that are still doing good work, but a lot of the stuff I'm seeing nowadays it just absolute garbage. Well, do, but do you mean do you mean bad from like an actual art standpoint or bad both, from a both both art standpoint, standpoint and the way that they're depicting the superheroes because they can't be too unrealistic and stuff like that when they're superheroes. I mean, I sake. mean, I feel like there are because I don't know if I fully agree with that. I think that there are. I think there are. There is a lot of good art in comics still. Um, uh, and maybe I'm just seeing the crap ones. There could be a well, lot of good it, ones there. I uh, I think getting a because uh, I'm a big fan of Daredevil. This is no surprise, and and I I read like uh the Daredevil comics, and they've had good art for a while. 
there was a there was a run that was not so good. Uh, the Mark Wade run. Um, I didn't really like the art for that at all. It was really simplistic and and bland. But um, but the recent stuff has been really really impressive, like really impressive uh, art wise. Okay. Um, well, cool. But admittedly, I don't like I don't read as much as much in terms of comics as I used to because it's kind of like an expensive hobby. <laughs> uh, someone mentioned Moon Knight. Moon Knight had some really cool art as well. Moon Knight's really cool. No Flame is easily the best though. Who, who's that? <laughs> someone, someone Gary you made from Nudrotic introduced me to. No, it's like a short-lived comic series created by somebody where the, the superhero is powered by cocaine. <laughs> he takes cocaine, oh, that's what dude. gives him his power. I was like, oh my god, I'd watch that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Let James Gunn make it. That'd be funny. I think it'd be Oh yeah, is there is there a video we're meant to be watching? Well, I was actually going to say it, it it does quite oh, well. Oh yeah, well, be... I I just kind of jumped into this. What what actually was happening? That was the intro. One hour and twenty oh. minutes. Oh, <laughs> one hour and twenty. Job, How late did you guys start? <laughs> well, I mean, we had to start quote unquote late for the Australians, right? Uh, not late regard. Well, it's late for us, but you know, for them, for them it's nice. Yeah, I thought you started. Early. Oh, I thought it's you started early. at normal time. No, uh, sorrily enough. Struggle to get things on time. These people like, oh, gonna, oh, <laughs> we have to sleep. It's like, what? What, what is that nonsense? <laughs> what is sleep? <laughs> um, Snap. But yeah, I was gonna say this works pretty well as a sort of segue, if you will. Um, with all of you objectifying women, as you were doing just there. I love objectifying uh, women. Uh -oh. With as Rag said, the male of gays. Um, mm -hmm. But we we have a video that was that was highlighted to me, and um, I've only I only saw this the introduction just to see if it was real. It is real. Uh, the, the guy is serious, at least. Oh, really? Fortunately, uh, it is titled "Men Are Ruining Star Wars." Um, men? Oh. Men. Oh. I mean, just by the title, that's so profoundly sexist. Hey, just reverse it. If there was anything that said "women ruining something," the reeing that would come as a result is just. It's not really sexist, yeah. is it? Because sexism is only possible with a higher power versus lower power. That's why I've been. <laughs> That makes total yeah, sense. That... It's not confusing at all. It also implies that every man is more powerful than every woman. It's Which like I get. Sense. We need. We need. Wait, women that makes to a lot of sense Star because Wars. you know, home, like men are far more likely to be homeless than women, and yeah. So I mean, you know, I'm I'm a lot more powerful than Hillary Clinton. I mean, right now maybe she could be like a empty skin suit on the floor. I don't know what she's up to. We need women to save Star right Wars. Now. From the evil men who destroyed it. So, isn't that um, what um isn't that wasn't that the, the point of that Jonathan McIntosh video? Like The Last Jedi is about men learning to trust women's men, judgment. Yeah. It's like, how did you get that? <laughs> Where'd that come from? Men need to trust. Maybe if women we made better judgment, women. we'd trust them more. <laughs> I mean the, the, that video was basically that in reverse. I mean and what's weird about this, right, is it's forcing people to look at everything through the spectrum of gender. And mm. and so by their logic, would you then say, well, George Lucas, he was a man, he created Star Wars. So that means Star Wars is great because of men. And that's just a stupid thing. What if Star Wars is good because George Lucas, instead of being a man, just had a great idea and, you know, he had the ambition and uh, he made something amazing, okay? And it's gender had nothing to do with it. It's never that simple. <laughs> Not in upside down land. It can never just be an obvious Things answer. Things can't just be good. <laughs> no, there's always some underlying reason for it that has nothing to do with any creative enterprise. So is everyone ready to hear this incredible log? No. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this wonderful guy. Here we go. Hey, Dale here. And Who? I want Dale? To talk to you about oh God, he look. Oh, he looks like he, he looks like a. <laughs> what, right? What does he look like? What does he look like? He looks like a <laughs> faggot. <gasps> Not to say those he words like a, He looks like a creep. I, mean... I might regret this, but that that T-shirt's not helping me not want to slap him across the face. I'm so fly. <laughs> I'm so fly. I never. Please. I feel so bad when we do this because probably outside of the video, I'm sure he's a really nice guy. Absolutely. I'm not sure. If he says things that I I'm disagree with, I'm gonna... you're not sure? <laughs> well, we don't know. what Rags just said. He, he's a piece of shit. Well, if he's comfortable like saying that men are ruining Star Wars, I imagine it would be tough to get along I, with him. I'm, gonna, I'm already leaning probably on the side like, of he's an asshole. 
we'll have to f we'll find out in the video, I guess. I was gonna we'll say find out. His, his slight came first because we all we are all of of the team men here. That is, that, that, this is true, and uh, for some reason, by virtue of what's between my legs, I'm ruining something. I thought I thought you actually had to do something to ruin something, but okay. Well, no, you yeah. exist, and that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's what you do. It's what's between your legs that's ruining something. Ruining something. <laughs> You're just doing it wrong. I want to talk to you about one of my favorite things, Star Wars, but I want to talk to you about how I think men are ruining <laughs> Star Wars. Ruining oh, men. <laughs> Does he have like a Disney umbrella? Network 1901. I'm sure you're like, Dale, you're a man. Doesn't that mean you're ruining Star Wars? Well, yeah, it's possible. I could be ruining Star Wars. I'm... <laughs> what? I'll say, hang on. Like... Coming from the video? You don't, you're open to yeah, the idea is. that you can be convinced that you are destroying Star Wars. All right. I mean, if what truly kind of believes that? statement is that? I guess you could oh, be like... unaware of your destruction towards Star Wars as well. That's... Jeez, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what it is. He's like, you're ruining it. You're like, oh. Wow, yeah. I don't know, really. See, I, I was going to say, how do people of such a mindset have any self-esteem? But the answer, of course, is he is virtue signaling. Like, by yeah. admitting my own guilt, I am so moral <laughs> and stuff. So I'm going to get me. so much pussy by telling all the ladies I'm ruining Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it, I mean, the natural implication is, is he going to argue women are saving it? Is that going to be, we go in there? I don't know. <laughs> we can still find out. find out. I could be ruining Star Wars. I'm, I'm open to that. Um, I, it's just more. Oh, okay. and I know I'm there's open to other, that. There's a lot of great men out there. Oh, Don't worry, men. There's a lot of great men under... out there. Well, then why is Tyler on this way? Thank you for that generous allowance that there are many great men out there. Asians <laughs> are ruining <laughs> Star Wars. Now, before we get started, you know, there are a lot of great Asians out there. But, it's just like, yes, <laughs> in case, this in case you didn't know, in case you didn't know, the status quo is that men are so horrible, I need to tell you there's a lot of great men out there. Just, lot, some men are great. There are, some men are I, not what, what is the point of these statements? Like, hey, you know, humans are bad, but there's a lot of great people. It's like, so what the fuck are you even saying? Like, just but say he's something saying it like, bad. He's not one. Like, yeah, he's talking he about some other. Fuck you. I'm, I'm an great. ally. I'm you know, I'm an I'm ally. I'm, a, I'm an ally. I'm a great guy. I'm, I'm trying. You know, that's all I can do. I can, I can try. Oh, you know. It's so hard being a man, you know, who hates women. <laughs> Just by default, I guess. You want me to write it down. What would I say for Goodell? I mean, like, <laughs> all men are evil. Some of them are great, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even hard. know. It's just... Like, thank you for the generous allowance that not all men are shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, would, you would hope. You would hope that would be the default, but it's not, unfortunately. Well, not from his perspective. Like, if you meet someone dependent on their gender, if they're male, okay, you should expect them to be bad because that's yeah, the deep most men, but, but some are good. But because only s some are great, you should expect this guy oh, or this no. person you're meeting because they're a oh. male to be a jerk. Well, the thing is, I would like to ask him his numbers, because when he says a lot, I'd be like, how much is a lot? Give me a percentage. And if he said anything less than, like, 90% or 80%, I'd be like, okay, Jesus Christ, you have a very unfavorable <laughs> view of humanity, don't you? Guys, what neighborhood guys, are you living in? Guys, he has yeah. a Lando Calrissian Funko Pop. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, and no. it's it's the new version as well. Oh, I think no. I don't think that's the old. Oh, oh yeah, no. that's the that's the uh, Donald Glover one. Yeah. What have we done? <laughs> Who is this? Still, just cons just consume product and be excited about next product. I'm sure he loved Solo. I'm sure he he's a huge fan of Solo. Solo is his he has a Star fucking Wars. Lando Calrissian Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh yeah, no! Funko Pops don't tell you everything about a bit. <laughs> yes, they do. They <laughs> yes, actually they do. do. <laughs> All right. Attack, if, just so you don't need to defend yourself. There's something different about <laughs> yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, only now. the Hang shitty on. ones will if defend themselves. You're not allowed to enjoy it for more than a couple. Like, I'm not attacking you. Have you seen the title of the video? <laughs> title, title, title. I'm getting mixed messages. <laughs> you're a cunt. I'm not attacking you, all right? Oh. Even though the title is you're a dick. Bags. He's <laughs> already set this up to be if you counter this video or respond to this video, or anything like that, then you're one of the bad ones. 
And if you're a real good man, you will just accept this video and move on with your life. You won't disagree yeah. with it. Faulty premise. Um, is there any chance to say you can pull up the chat, Rags? For, for a weird set of reasons, I can't actually ban people myself because of the way that I've got my chat set up, but... um. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna. I was gonna say if you can keep an eye. They're not too. There's not too much. Mainly coming All from right. singular accounts. So should... I don't want the chat to have their experience ruined. Poor folk. Um. Let mm -hmm. me click. Yeah, let me click the button. Fuck them up, Rags. You... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> also, yeah, Fringy. If you want to say something, um, I can give you the the wrench as well. You probably should. Have oh, here one. we go. All right. No, I'm 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 all right. Okay. Well, I mean, so that you can slap people if you want. Do you not want to slap people? Oh yeah, give me give me whatever <laughs> wrench. Yeah, give me a wrench. Uh be yeah, like ratchet go. and clank. Yeah, there we go. I gotta I gotta pull up. That'll be that'll be good. Um if you just say something in chat so I can grab your name. Oh. Alright. All right. Makes it nice and easy for me. You saying Catman Joe right. has I, your address? I was meant to write right? hello, but I accidentally wrote hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I choose to interpret that. that in some way. Oh hell. He just he misspelled hello. I did. Oh, right. that fellas need slapped. Oh, there you go. I can get Das Bullshit into wrench mode. <gasps> das Bullshit is not moderated. There you go. Now Catman Joe is not going to be able to have your address. What is that spam? Does anyone know what that is? <laughs> I don't. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? What's the... Re Why? Okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, back on with this wonderful man. This great man. Yourself. There's something different about Star Wars now. It, <laughs> you're not allowed to enjoy it for more than a couple hours before reviews. Well, don't read the out. reviews then. Don't read the reviews. Yeah, and just don't read the reviews. Ruined your just day so it. much. Then just enjoy it. Just enjoy. Hang on. Like he's saying, you're not allowed to enjoy it, and I, I mean, I think he's taking this from the fact that. When people try and say, for instance, Last Jedi is good, I would generally say, no, it's, it's, it's a pretty bad movie, or I felt it was bad. That's not saying you're not allowed to enjoy it. You're allowed to enjoy stuff the, that's yeah. crap. But I, that seems I to be what are. is interpreting that, that, that by people saying something is bad, he interprets to mean we're saying you're not allowed to enjoy it. When has yeah, any yeah. of us said I think, that? I think no, what being a victim is important. Well, yeah, it's all about being a victim. I mean, I do think is... um, I think the implication is that by telling people how something is bad, they won't like it anymore. But to, to me, it's like, yeah, that's you. You decided that. Yeah, it has nothing to do with us, and really. They're... Like, you know, yeah, don't be so weak. Like yeah, whether like it as much as you want. Whether or not your emotional state will change in terms of how you see this art uh, uh, once you've heard a selection of facts slash statements from us, it's just like, what are we supposed to do? We can't control that. Mm, sorry, man. You feel that way, but. You're just gonna have to learn to be your own fucking person, I guess. Yeah, and and I I think this is the classic though. The so you take a conversation, someone says, "Oh, I liked Last Jedi," as long as I didn't like it. That that's as far as the the feelings conversation goes. And then one of them says, "I don't know. I just really like Poe's arc because it really showed that he learned a lot from that initial fumble to the end." And then that second guy explains like, over the course the of up. like. 20 minutes, how that makes no sense whatsoever. You can't even make that statement because that's just not true. And then you'd be like, wow, you just don't let me have my feelings. Don't let me enjoy it. It's like, that's not what just happened. No, you can have your incorrect <laughs> feelings. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. It's like, luckily, people don't <clears throat> choose their beliefs. And what I have said right now has already planted its seed. And it is growing <laughs> slowly but surely inside of your mind. And before you know it, you will hate this movie as much as I will. I do like just... how he says... I'm not allowed to enjoy things. I'm not allowed to hate things, dick. Yeah, like, it we're, goes we're, both ways. <laughs> yeah, because we get That's stuff like this. True. It's like, guys, stop being toxic. Guys, can you keep your opinions to yourself? You're like, oh, this seems fair. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Let's, let's carry on with how he's not allowed to feel. Like I said, I've never understood this argument anyway. How can I stop you from feeling stuff? Well, it's because people associate um, like with good. They think yeah. if they yeah. like it, it must be good. It's like, oh, no, you can like stuff that's objectively bad. I really like some of the Fast and Furious movies, and they are really bad. Um, yeah, like, but the reasons why I like them, I think you could objectively quantify for, you know, for certain yeah. um, things, like, uh, you know, just the, the silly fun of it and stuff. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, 
when someone says I like it and, and then they try and quali qualify it and then you're just like, well, no, th those are bad reasons. You're making the, me not the, like it. You can like it. The thing like, is, I like, don't when, have when that ability. Says, yeah, exactly. It's like I'm not a mind. I'm not a mind manipulator. I can't like telepathically make you choose to dislike the movie yeah, now that you know that it's earlier? not good. You, we spent a while trying to explain all of our issues with with Doctor Strange, and then we all like shared the. Oh, by the way, I like Doctor Strange. Yeah, like, <laughs> it doesn't take away really our ability easy. to like it, it. It's really easy. I like Venom, and Venom's awful. <laughs> it's really <laughs> bad, but I like it. And so yeah, well, we have a big conversation all about Venom, but then, then Freaky adds it with, "Guys, just don't let people like stuff." <laughs> like, yeah, why are you letting me like it? You're allowed to like things, and. I feel really dumb saying it, because like, I never had the power to take that away from you anyway, but thanks for giving me that power, yeah. I guess. It's like, I know, we can't make you not like stuff, that's just your brain, man. That's just, that's all you. What's annoying they strangely, is that... They, they strangely attach their personality to what they like, and so they're, they're personally attacked like Funko Pops. let them like <laughs> them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just well, I mean, look at all the stuff in the background. Man. Look, look at his Zelda stuff. Like, he probably is not like it's probably a part of his identity. So if you were like, "Hey, Twilight, it, guys. I'm super Twilight cool. Princess cool. isn't great," you know, <laughs> he might he might get really upset about that. Uh, is he framed a comic book back there as well? He has. He's in frame the Infinity Gauntlet uh, arc. All right. Is yeah, that a family and, picture. Uh, That's the nice bit of the whole selection, I think. Yeah, that photo frame looking... doesn't say anything about him. I mean, What's that, like, really abstract see. piece of shit that he's got in the background there? <laughs> <laughs> How <laughs> dare <laughs> you? Oh, modern art. If he's a fan of Dude, modern that art. that actually looks like a skid mark. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, modern art is so meaningful. The infinity skin mark. <laughs> You know they always make jokes <laughs> in comics and stuff about how you put a piece of poop on a pedestal and everyone like appreciates. It. I was like, oh god, we're getting close to this now. <laughs> like, we're, we're... Yeah, this is this is a, that's a poo painting. That's a poo painting. That's a poo painting. Online and trolls are attacking and calling out like calling it liberal feminism and saying you know it's not my star wars and people asking for jar jar to come back now yeah because yeah, yeah. even jar jar is better than what we're getting now <laughs> that's how bad it's gotten that's how dire it is Dude, i think jar jar would be an actual like you'd have a sort of like oh look it's jar jar <laughs> <laughs> how are they gonna kill him yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he'll get blown out in the airlock. It's like, oh, Jar Jar's dead. Cool. All right. <laughs> Do you notice he did the little well, redneck actually... voice in there? He did a little voice in there. He did the redneck voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because all, all the rednecks hate it. <laughs> out of any character that they'd be willing to kill off, Jar Jar would be the one that would probably make me happy. You know, actually, that that redneck thing, I. If you were watching a video on, like, it was a British person and um, they were speaking, you know, a proper sort of Westminster British accent, and then when they were, like, talking about an opinion they didn't like and they just went all cockney, that would be all really cockney. obvious. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it would be. It's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, tea and, and, and uh, I don't know, tea and uh, what, 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 what are other fancy British things? Scones I don't know. and biscuits <laughs> and <laughs> scones, scones yeah. and, and fish and scones, chips. You know. Oh, this ain't my this ain't tea. my Star Wars, you know. Oh, this ain't it, this ain't it, boy. You know, this ain't my Star Wars. Tea. It'd be like, oh, that's uh, that's crumpets. a bit of a dick thing. Crumpets and biscuits. Crumpets yeah. and biscuits and stones and tea. Uh, and uh, and colonialism, you know. Hello, Good old governor. Colonialism. I've <laughs> I've added. I don't know why this has to be the case. I've added Cat Bad Joe to my blocked words now. So hopefully <laughs> <laughs> I will remove it one day because who knows what it'll take if someone's like, Mola, remove Cat Bad Joe in order to prevent criticism. <laughs> I'd be like, no, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully that makes it automatic eventually to give my moderators a bit of space. Automatic. Yes. Uh, now, Not the I queen. will. I, I, uh, I will be back in like 10 minutes, just a heads up. I'll, I'll just well. be off and I'll be back in like 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 you bet. All right. Sure you thing. shall be oh, missed. Yeah, comes back. Anyway. I got a pee any I got a pee anyway. So, you know, just... Uh, you know, well, if we're having a break, I might take that opportunity. I mean, <laughs> uh, I guess it'll we'll just be me and Robot Head chilling. <laughs> just, um, I'll, I'll wait until Rags guy. comes back. Rags, Rags, I'll do a tag team. He goes first and then he can tag me out when he comes back. What are you, uh, are you looking to get a drink or... 
uh, bathroom. Yeah, go 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 for it. It's alright. It makes more sense to do it while they're doing it because then we'll all come back at the same time. Okay, okay, you go, go. You. So, robot head. Oh head no, life. robot head's cutting out. You're gonna be by yourself. I can do it. <laughs> also, I'll talk Am to I chat cutting out? Am I okay? Like can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, Here's good. a pause. <laughs> So they can't do the, uh, gone the lower class voice in Australia. We've all got the lower class voice. You're all a bunch of prisoners. <laughs> yes. Yeah, how, is, how is prisoner life going well? Yeah, it's good. It's good. We get to go to the beach and have barbecues, put shrimps on the barbie, have you, drink fosters. Here's a question. <laughs> have you read the, um, the episode nine leaks? Uh, normally, I avoid leaks, even if I don't care that much, just to enjoy the film. But this one, it's <laughs> it's too much fun reading them. Like it's just because it's like anything goes. Just, just I could read anything and believe that it's going to actually be in this film. There's nothing too out there or too crazy. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't know if I've I don't know if I've read them, read them all. If I'm up to date, but whenever I see them, it's just yeah, it's too tempting to just hear what craziness they're going to come, who are they going to try and bring back or who are they saying they're going to bring back? Or So I think the last one I heard was about um, um, uh, Leia doing the training. So, right, uh, which is bizarre. Of all the times to yeah. have training, you're doing it in the finale. It's like, <laughs> okay. Better With the dead than actor. Never. <laughs> and, and does she need it? She, no one can beat her. I think, I think she's okay. Oh, she's that'll be the right. obvious thing. If she builds up in order to beat Kylo, we're all going to be like, why? <laughs> it was me all along. I killed Kylo Ren. Me. I can, I can imagine her turning up to him being like, I have trained. I'm far more powerful than before. And he's just like, Jesus Christ. Like, My really? cocaine powers. Imagine him just being like, it's... you know what? I give up. I don't want to do this. Enough. I, I just like how anything goes with the rumors, but no one knows what actually we're going to watch this film for. Like, well, there's no, we've got know. a point in Star Wars where we're like, no, that's too crazy. They wouldn't do that. That would be silly. Because <laughs> like when we're you know Return of the Jedi, we're like, you know, where will Han survive? And was it really his father? And all these questions we wanted answered. And with this, it's just like they can say anything. We just have to believe it because there's no <clears> no point to even going to see this film. We don't even know what's happening. I can't wait for episode nine for yeah, all actually, the wrong. Remember Rags as well. I feel like I'm spoiling it, but people will forget by the time it comes. But um the end of fellowship is like, oh my god, the potential. This we, we know so know, much right? here we go, so much to look forward to. And it's like direct comparison with TLJ, it's like, uh I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I d I don't um <laughs> Uh, uh, just, did anyone watch the Gremlins review from Red Letter Media? I did, yeah. When they talk yes, about how Gremlins 2 night. is like Gremlins but on like steroids in Looney Tunes land in a good way because that's the idea that they're going for. And then they they like, have we ever seen that with like other franchises? Like, I don't know, Star Wars? They're like, oh yeah, TLJ is the Looney Tunes of the Star Wars <laughs> series. <laughs> <laughs> like Looney Tunes. <laughs> They have more digs at Last Jedi in other reviews than they do. Yeah, the it's like every Jedi. video now. Yeah, yeah, they, they just mention I, it every video. I'm so happy. It's almost ubiquitous with with a lot of the critical reviewers that TLJ is just the the jump the shark. It's the movie. It's the go to. Like, oh, you don't want to be like TLJ. <laughs> <laughs> what a disaster. Um. I mean, uh, Fringy will probably be back soon, but you guys want to we'll kick on with this? Yeah, we can. Well, if he's going to be, well, if he's going to be back soon, Mahler. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. he said he'll be gone for ten minutes. Ten full minutes. Do you know what that is? An EFAP time? Thirteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know. <laughs> it's like, how did you how did you work that? What was your formula? And I'm like, I keep my secrets to myself. <laughs> um. Well, well, we'll play it. He's only going to miss a couple of, of like, ten seconds at most. Uh-huh. Like, uh, and I love what Disney is <gasps> doing with Star Wars. I bet you do. In the sense, Ugh, like, I, I want a Star Wars movie every year, I think. No! That's oh. not the focus at all. That shouldn't be the In focus. what scale was it too early? <laughs> I like oh. the idea that we're all like, we want good Star Wars movies. And he's like, no, 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 we want Star Wars movie every year. And it's like, No! <laughs> They could take I mean, three, four, five years between each one. I wouldn't mind. Just take your time, get it right, you know? 
But, but they also when pretend that if something was fantastic, it couldn't come out every six months. Like Solo was too early. You know, it was it was brilliant. It was just too early. They loved it. It wasn't the right time. People didn't. Yeah, understand it just wasn't. Solo's they weren't messages. ready for such a masterpiece. People, people yeah. just aren't ready for a Black Lando Calrissian. <laughs> <laughs> It's so interesting that you can get an idea of how good someone is at, you know, objective criticism based on their opinion of The Last Jedi. If they say it's good, you instantly know, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, oh, oh you, yeah. you like Disney Star Wars. Oof. Okay. All right. So you like I'm... terrible things. <clears throat> well, I mean, th this is the thing. I mean, there are, like, reasons people can like it. And still, you know, they can admit that it's a bad movie. So I should, I should qualify that. It's like I'm not saying that if you like it, you don't, you can't pick out the flaws in it. Well, the Yet, inter the interesting part comes in that if you have someone who's very critical of movies and they're like, the LJ is, you know, it, it has its flaws, but it's pretty good. And you're like, okay. And then they come to like other movies with similar flaws. You like try and cross reference and see them be like, yeah, but. It, you know, TLJ yeah, that's and, true. And exactly. The most common one you'll find is like, yeah, but TLJ is a. Bigger movie, it has bigger ideas, it's talking about bigger things. This movie's just crap. Uh, do people actually use that argument? Themes, man. Like, it's all about them themes. The, are you kidding? Because, <laughs> from my mind, if they're saying, if they're dealing with bigger themes, that just means there's far more for it to fall from and to fall short of. And it really did. And so that just means it's even worse if you're going to say that was supposed to be big, grand, and epic. It's like, well, that just means it failed harder. I mean, but this, there's a sort of like unwritten understanding from people where I guess they would be like, if your theme is, um, uh, what's it like to 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 be in a relationship or something like that, a relationship that's one sided. It's like, oh, that's your theme throughout the movie. That there's a lot of different characters going through that sort of um, journey or story or whatever. And then some other film is like, we're tackling the meaning of life, so we're automatically bigger. You know, and and, and no, it's, oh, it's it's like oh, it's really about what? how you do both of those. It's not really about yes, what exactly. You the the theme important. doesn't mean spit. It's how you execute it. If you actually pull it off and uh, address the theme in any measure of satisfaction, or you know, uh, d depict it accurately, create some interesting questions and thoughts and stuff like that. Is it's all about execution, <laughs> not just the fact that you attempted it. What's well, like in the Olympics, whenever you've got a diver about to attempt to dive, what they're attempting to do will influence their their top potential score. So the harder the dive you can do, the more points you can score, but the more difficult it is to point it off. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. But even watching someone do a bomb can be more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> watching like a really big fat dude... One leggedly hop off yeah. the thing and spin around, go oh! As he lands into the water, can be <laughs> hilarious. This is very true. It's all about your point of reference, how what you're judging it against, and what the movie is meant to be or are trying to achieve and stuff. Because you would think uh, it's just funny. The Last Jedi it tries to be serious in some moments, or you know, try and. Uh, convey the uh, epic themes of the other movies, you know, the great battle between good and evil, which is so undermined by the flippant humor and bad jokes and stuff throughout the movie. I mean, if you're going for like an intense threat that this big, you know, giant ship is coming to destroy the rebel base, having a pilot do what type of joke did he do against the um thing? Your mama, mm -hmm. your mama jokes. Joke kind classification would be under your mama. Oh. <laughs> <Why me? laughs> I, I remember watching it being like ah. you know that because it's right at the beginning of the film so you're still like that was strange it's almost like a blip in in, in the straight line you're just like oh that was what I don't want that, was, you know, that was unusual okay. that they did that in this scenario just their whole you know cause rebel alliance is on the verge of being destroyed and uh, there's no, they're like, he's not even worried. He's just like, yo, mama. As, as Ryan Johnson said about that scene, he wanted to, he wanted to inject a bit of Monty Python. That was just like Monty Python. That's why everyone loves it. <laughs> it's just well, he also amazing, saw though. Hux as a comedy character, didn't he? He thought Hux was a... Was he always saw Hux as a, a comedy comic really. character. It's like, how? <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> I think Solo was a little bit too early. I don't. I don't think that was well timed, and I think they <laughs> yeah, are, are a little to learn from that. But I just I see so much anger and hate 
and fear. And fear. 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 Like anger and hate. I get. Like you know, I'm a little angry, and I hate the last Jedi. Like I. And I feel that the, these are justified things, okay? Uh, but but fear? I, I fear for the future of entertainment and Hollywood. <laughs> what we're well, gonna get. Yeah, That's where my fear lies. Okay, there you go. It's justified, I guess. I, I was really confused for a second. I was like, afraid of what? Afraid of what comes <laughs> next? Maybe. Maybe I don't. I don't actually know. J Jason, I hope he, he tell me. This is just a matter of him listing like what Yoda says in episode, episode two or three, probably. I don't know. Either way. Oh, wait, episode two, the whole no, the hate leads to leads this, to leads anger. to mayonnaise, leads to honey leads to bottom. Mayonnaise. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, this is actually touching on a deeper pet peeve I have that actually is a deeper philosophical kind of idea where people instantly associate hate with bad or immoral. And it's like, no, 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 no. Hate, and most emotions, in fact, are neither good nor bad. It's dependent on what they are focused on. For instance, I think it's pretty good to hate rape. Just just putting that out there, okay? No, I, I, I love say, rape. Oh, really? <laughs> love me, I love we... me some raping. How can we not like, reference the great philosopher Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight? At least rapists <laughs> believe in something. Oh my God. <laughs> I, are, you, are you aware I of this? I can't believe that night when we found this tree. <laughs> at oh least, my God, Boogie. at least Nazis and rapists believe in something. How is that framed? <laughs> How is that? Like, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 I know it's amazing. Line. Oh. Uh, the At context, least Nazis and rapists are doing something they believe in. The context makes it worse. <laughs> he's talking about how bad internet trolls are. And he says... Oh. That, <laughs> At least internet trolls aren't like Nazis and rapists. Exactly. <laughs> and he's like, you guys, you guys want to see the destruction of chattels you don't believe in. You know, you're, you're, you're without... A, p a purpose beyond hurting people. You know, at least Nazis and rapists, they believe in something. <laughs> yes. oh, it's God. amazing. Normally, the more context you apply to it, the more you understand it. It's the opposite with Boogie. The more context, <laughs> the worse it gets. Well, I, f I feel sorry for the guy. He like Because that is such a gaffe. Like, yeah. think think about what you're saying. Let's just, just, just think a little bit. Um, but yeah, so when people say that there's too much heat in the world and we need more love, it's like, you like, no, okay? Hate isn't inherently a bad thing. If you're hating bad things that need to be end, that, it's good to hate them, okay? Hate rape, hate murder, hate evil, okay? And how about we not love, you know, these bad things? Let's not love greed. Let's not love rape and all those things. Yeah, so the whole... It's such a shallow kind of virtue signal. We need more love, and there needs. There's too much hate in the world. It's like no, and it's perfectly fine to hate a horrible movie, especially if the movie is actually almost offensive in some of the ways it depicts certain things in the world and stuff. I love people on Twitter that say they're sick of the hate, and from now on they're going to be more positive. And I think, first off, well, you can't be on Twitter good, and then yeah, say I'm going to sick of the hate. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah, in, exactly. you're in downtown hatred on fucking a hate going into the hate it. building and being like, I want to be more positive this time around. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was going to say that came up with Just Right, because he said that um, he's he's evolved as a critic to the point where he's realized that if you're dealing with good content, celebrate it. If you're dealing with bad content, try and find the good, because ultimately you don't want to take people's enjoyment of the bad away because taking enjoyment out of the world is bad. And it's very interesting, because you're like, oh, what about enjoyment oh, of, you know... The that's why I brought up, that's why I brought up the things. Holocaust with DX. Yes. <laughs> right, right. That went well. <laughs> it's like, what about people who enjoy the Holocaust? Like, is that yeah, I know, right? Some but, people but just like right it. took away took away his own job with that crap. Like, yeah, he's saying he doesn't want critics in the world. Like, he doesn't want people to judge things, but he wants a YouTube channel judging things. It was just such an odd Well, he, he said that he kind of, um, his Hobbit videos were, I think, his big break originally, and uh, he said that if anybody stopped enjoying the Hobbit films thanks to his videos, that's a bad thing. <laughs> and whereas <laughs> yes, my position is, oh. whatever happens, happens. If they watch my video yeah. and their emotions have changed as a result, that's 
What are, what are we going to do? That's, that's how things go. It, it seems so. like it's, there's a desire to just abandon the concept of quality, like true quality. What makes a, a movie good? Because if there's a bad movie, you can't judge it and then establish it as bad in other people's minds because everything must be valued because someone worked on it. Like, look, I get that people it's work the really It's participation hard. award. And Everyone yeah, I admire that award. they try, but I'd rather people try and succeed instead of try and make mediocre or bad even. But the only way you can help people succeed, honestly, is by trying to establish what is good and what is bad. I mean, when I started out writing, all right, I needed to learn that the first stuff I wrote was absolute trash, like horrible stuff, okay? And the only way that I could do that is by critical review, honestly, look, and getting and getting really harsh, honest feedback from other people. But thank goodness that happened because then I could get a little bit better. And after, you know, what I was like um, 12 years, 11 or something years of me working at it, I was able to write a half-decent book. And actually made you know a success out of it. Got a good bit of amount of there was a good bit of money as well. I'm all just saying on the side, and that was and it all money comes bad. from being critical, right? And and trying to improve and get better at stuff. Why? But I just I I can't stand this idea of a, just abandoning what the uh, pursuit of quality. Like you can't criticize it. Well, now that you've just said that, I kind of want to make you aware of a tweet from Chris Stock. Sorry about this, Shad. With it, this. Oh, oh, I was just thinking of this. I know what you're going to show here. Chris, I actually talked Chris, about this on a different nothing personal, podcast. Nothing personal, buddy, but I mean, I mean okay, well, I'm mean, i sure you can disagree with me on do you, wanna, do you want to read it out for him, Rags? All right, let's do it. I mean, yeah, I've got to click it. the link to the full thing. Without the filmmaker, there is no film critic. The filmmaker takes all the risks, spending years in their life crafting something. The film critic spends 90 minutes in a theater and maybe a few hours in front of a computer. Even when we hate a film, it's good to remember that. Chris, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what right, a so worthless I, thing to say. I mean, I can kind of get that is saying you can admire the effort people put into it. But if he's trying to say as a result of that, you can't criticize it. I was like, no. I doubt he's saying no, that. No. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's relatively unclear what the overall specific statement is, but I think the implication, at least one of the implications I got, was that um, the effort to make a film is always going to be greater than the effort to make film criticism. Which I would disagree that, with. So, yeah. Well... Yeah, I, I'm... I... I would say that's, sure, but that's I'd a more that's yeah, irrelevant. like dare I say, subjective thing because I can guess it depends on how much effort people put into a film versus how much effort people put into. Well, technically, we have uh, a mathematical formula for work, but yeah, I mean, you you could quantify the individual review based on the individual movie to well, determine. You get, you get directors who turn up to yeah. set with a coffee and they're like, "Go, uh, yeah, that'll be enough for today. See you guys." You know that sort of. Like the lowest common denominator, and then you'll have critics who are obsessed with getting every detail right. Who work pretty yeah, hard I mean, production values. I, I've no way of knowing this. I've no way of knowing this, but I, I, I would hazard the assumption that perhaps I probably put in a bit more effort into my book than the script of the Last Jedi. I mean, when you look at the script, you just wonder how much review did this go through? Like, was this just something someone brain vomited onto a you know a screen and just said, yeah, "Yes, it is. let's do it." I think Chris should go further back. Without cinemas, there would be no film. So <laughs> I mean, if your cinema's carpet's covered in cum and they spit in your popcorn, don't complain. Well, the without problem them, is he's implying you can't watch the film. Like, you know, you need you need the them in order to have let's just say us for the sake of this argument. The problem is that a lot of filmmakers start because of film critics. Yeah. Um, mm. They get inspired. And so it's this is just a really awkward tweet to me. I'm just like, what are you trying to say? Are you upset that like some critics are a little bit, um, I don't know, up their own ass a bit, maybe? Is that it? And this it's taking like saying... risks thing, it's like you artists create something they want to create for fun, and at the worst, it gets forgotten, and at the best, it gets rewarded and celebrated. So yeah. those risks. There's a lot of filmmakers that make crap fucking films, and then oh. they get more money to make more films. Like, I, I just get sick of this risk-taking mentality. No, no, they want to be filmmakers. They want to do something. Any artist that wants to oh, do something, they're meant to be doing it for the love. And if they get rewarded, that's great. But they don't guarantee a reward. Interestingly, all of us can uh, definitely 
be a little bit pissed with the, the statement that the film critic spends 19 minutes 90 minutes in the cinema and then a few hours <laughs> yes. at the computer it's like maybe because we're not as lazy as you chris like i can't yes. help but be like chris you're the dude who does that okay not all critics Some of us do give that. a shit because he wants to be a filmmaker doesn't he yes he does actually yes. he wants yeah. to be that's how I reckon he's just setting up future when people come at him that he'd criticize things. This is he's laying the groundwork for uh, it's his safety net to say, Well, no, come on, I was on the filmmaker side if all along. He's made two shorts. If any of them are released publicly or at least available to sell, we'll totally do an EFAP movies for Ooh. like let's test it out. I tell you what though, I tell you what, just to give I guess a perspective from the other side, um, when my book released there was no point in my life where I felt more emotionally vulnerable than at that time. And uh, it was, it was a eye opening experience because when you do make something that you put your blood, sweat, tears into, um, and then it is open to uh, the, like just come, you know, everyone's thoughts, the whole world is now open to criticize it and stuff. Oh boy. You, it's a nervous, it's, it is a nerve wracking experience. The problem is that, when you get criticism that's of really high production value, it essentially converts into a new form of creativity, like a product or a it, thing. That, That's true. And when I was saying that, I'm not saying, therefore, people should not criticize people's works or my, even my work, because that's hand in hand. That's part of the thing. It's an in factual fact that's an essential part of creating something. And trying to create something good because if you did make something bad you do need to know about it and it's when people give you the feedback that you know and uh, i was lucky because the book has done really well but that doesn't mean it's flawless people have been able to point out things that i could do better it's like all right now i know when i'm writing the next book i know certain things that i can improve on and i'm better for it um <clears throat> so yeah like yeah i, I just can't uh, yeah, i guess it'd be hard to it's never occurred to me ever to be like, but I put so much work into it, but I worked so long on it. You must you love know? it because I worked so hard on it. That's no, that's not right. It's just insane. I, I, that's never Everyone even does come it. into my mind as a defense. It's like, but I work so hard. Mm. Respect the fact that I took all those hours to make something. Like the, the work that you put into it is, is basically irrelevant. It's just whatever the final product is that's important. You can appreciate commitment if you want to. I mean, it's, it's up to the person judging, I guess. But when you're trying to specifically judge the final product, how much time it took to make it is only going to be relevant to arguments in relation to how much time it took to make it, if you know what I mean. Like, it's... Sometimes. The all amount of effort, you know. Well, for example, like, if you look at something that has really bad special effects... Um, I just read least... something in chat. Sorry, I just read something in chat where someone said Hitler worked really hard, too. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Oof." laughs> That's correct, yeah. Um, yeah, I was gonna say when you look at like really really old um, low budget movies or something and you find out like certain things just couldn't be done um, people it, like automatically expect you to take that into consideration in terms of you can't say it's bad because there was never a chance of them being able to do anything else or something it would just be like well, well I mean in that instance, you could say, well, it was good for its time, but because quality standards have improved if you're measuring it against the standards we have in the modern day I'm sorry, it doesn't hold up. I think that's fair to say. I think that it all matters with uh, contextualizing all of it. And I just don't like the implication exactly. that critics aren't creating, dare I say it, art themselves. When I watched the Plink of videos on the prequels back in the day, I was like, holy shit, this is a new type of, of like criticism video. I, have, I watched it like a movie. I was like, what is going on here? This is weird. I was entertained. It was funny. It had like a through line, like a narrative. And, and I loved the character and the stupid skits. Like, I was like, what is happening? You know, it's go this is going beyond just um, recording a vlog where you're like, yeah, I thought the movie was cool. I liked some of these bits. I didn't like some of these bits. Like, this is a full on art form now. And then he gets critics. There'll be people responding. Like, what, what we're doing right now. <laughs> like, that's what EFAP is. It's <laughs> holding the critics to a critical light. And we all get the same thing. And so... Could you then make the argument that, like, hey, critic critics couldn't exist without critics. So, <laughs> you know, the critic takes all the risk by putting the controversial opinion out there and trying to get the right, accurate information and order it all up and get the maybe guests or, or production values all straight. All you have to do is watch their video and then record a vlog for 90 minutes where you just say, oh, I didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. It also but, seems to be a bit of a misplaced value saying, you know, uh, critics wouldn't exist without the filmmakers. Well, no, the film wouldn't be successful without 
critics being willing to judge it, hopefully on an objective standard, be able to tell other people if it's good or not. I mean, like a lot of people rely on the critical response, depending on which, not the Rotten Tomato score, <laughs> but the like audience score. So just but like it, if you find someone you trust, their opinion, and they're able to say, hey, this is a good movie, you might want to check it out. That adds value, and that lets me know of something that's good for me to watch that I didn't know previous to it, and that has tremendous value. You could say movies rely on that kind of thing sometimes. Good word of mouth. But they, they move the goalposts so much. All every one of these guys that wants to sit here and talk about hate and the haters will go to a screening of the room and cheer and clap and laugh and have a good time. I think and not yeah, but those are bad no. movies. Chris Tucker will probably say, like, you do have to appreciate that Tommy Wiseau did try to make a movie, put a lot of effort there. And I just be like, Chris, come on, dude. Come on. Yeah, like, they're not standing up, you know, screaming at the crowd, stop laughing. This is a, he put a lot of effort into this, you know. So it, it all comes down to what films they like, whether you're allowed to laugh and join in or not. It seems to also be, like, a... um extension of the cultural thing where you can't have any losers okay in a race everyone's a winner okay because you can't make people feel bad and stuff kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah and didn't chris dogman rip into the prequels as well so couldn't we just make the argument back to him it's possible yeah, and he does videos laughing at bad films too so I like exactly. I really appreciated his review on Robin Hood, where he just openly said it's a crap movie, and I was like, "Good." When you see crap, point it out. Like, <laughs> how could you? <laughs> they took time on that film. Like, <laughs> makes you wonder what time. Like, gosh. Ooh. The dark side has taken over Star Wars fandom. But I'm serious. The, the only people side. I really enjoy talking about Star Wars with now are women fans that are into it now. <laughs> but, okay. Because all women are the same. I thought you said there were some that great was men out there. <laughs> the, 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 that was interesting. They're, you're not getting laid, dude. What? I, yeah, sexist. He what? just thinks they were all the same. I don't see the connection of what he was talking about one thing, and then now I can only talk about Star Wars with fee with women. Are you saying sure. there is not one guy on the planet Dude, he must that have... shares your same views about Star Wars? Yeah, he must have a lot of guy friends who may have seen this video and been like, Dude, what the hell? This is crap. <laughs> I thought we were friends, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's got to so, be a Gadelb thing as well. Like, I could only very... talk about Star Wars with women these days. That, that is so loaded in many ways what he just said then. If he is <sighs> implying that only, like, only men dislike this movie and if the movie is legitimately bad is kind of implying without realizing that men are looking at this movie objectively and women are incapable or the women he knows are incapable of looking at this movie objectively because they like it and men don't is that what he's saying here? i guess like... he's well he's, he's gonna develop this i'm 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 beyond curious um they could be fan old fans or or new fans you think you think because... he would like talking about star wars with anna Oh, you probably hate talking about it with her. Yeah. She's not the wrong. I guess she's just the wrong kind of woman. I guess. Imagine I she like explains all the problems with it. Then he goes, "But you're a woman. You're you're actually a trans." <laughs> I, I, I wonder if it from his perspective because. It seems like he likes Star Wars and Last Jedi. He said he loves what Disney is doing with it. And so he might be thinking he's making a big compliment to women, is, you know, virtue signaling again, because it seems like women, they get it. They understand the, 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 why this movie is good, and men don't. So ergo, women smart, men stupid. Is that what he's saying? Uh, I, I mean, I'd have, we'd have to wait for him to actually get close okay, to something like yes. that. I assume he's saying men are being too toxic. Uh, that's the word people like to use. We'll see. Is, oh, is yeah, this his pickup line? I mean, like, is it? Is he yeah. trying to pick up with this? Does he think someone's got to touchy touch him because of this? <laughs> touch him. <laughs> they, they put a hand on his shoulder, and he's like, <gasps> uh, <laughs> "It happened! It happened! Dear diary, today um, I got the touch. It was everything <laughs> that they said it would be. It's exciting. It I get to like." talk about characters and it's fun and it's like oh this cool like metaphor that you could look at or dissect this it's like oh yeah sweet like this is a lot of fun but I there are plenty of guys do it go talk to pop culture detective exactly. or jack saint the whole... or there's plenty of them yeah, it... go talk to these beta males the his yeah, premise like, here girls is undermined fun. girls are fun like, yeah it's, it's totally fun. undermined by the fact that i have fun with my movie guys. <laughs> There are guys that share his same opinion and girls who 
viciously disagree with them and hate the movie too. So like it's that's debunked from the get go here. Yeah, Major Lee, Eric Taxon, as people, uh, Patricia Taxon. I find that when I'm talking with um, some guys in the real world, uh, you know, at a comic book store, or when I read comments on the internet or Twitter or whatever, and it, it's just so negative all yeah, the time. Yeah, because the movie And so you guys love the film. This is bullshit. Mm. What is he talking about? You, you would think, like, I'm starting to, like, get the impression, though, that most people seem to dislike it. Like, the larger majority have caught on to that, yeah, this movie is just trash. You, there, are, there, are, there are chambers, dare I say echo chambers, filled with thousands <clears throat> of people who adore the film. <gasps> mm -hmm. If I was to be completely honest, I still think it's pretty divided. I don't, I don't know about 50-50, yeah. but, but in my experience, yeah, TLJ... Because the, the comparison I always try and bring up is uh, Season 8 of Game of Thrones. Nobody liked it, as far as I can tell. A few outliers, sure, but that's one where I would be like, it's like 95%. But oh, with TLJ, 60-40 is probably as far as I would go in terms of hate-love. Well, maybe it's my own echo ch chamber. Yeah, like this is kind of just the impression that I get from interacting with my own audience and uh, mo most of my, the, my the, sorry, the subscribers on my channel don't like it. There are a few that do, but most certainly seem to just despise the movie. But I don't know, maybe people who like swords are. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he sword said lovers so typically hate the odds. <laughs> I think he said talking Star Wars. There's people like on Twitter that absolutely hate Last Jedi. But then they'll get onto the OT and be talking about old characters and the books and, and loving it, you know, and getting right into it. So, like he said, you know, he, he can't talk about Star Wars at all to any men. Like, you know, it's, a, it's one film that we mostly hate. How many men does he talk to? Is it like three? And they were all from like the same <laughs> group of people? Were they us? <laughs> it's just this podcast. It's like five just dudes listens to this. all hating and ruining Star Wars. <laughs> so critical and it's always like comparing it to what you used to have and you know yeah weird we do that when it's you know a sequel <laughs> like, what? can you believe that yeah but Mahler, it's only a sequel if you interpret it to be a sequel uh, we might be covering that next week oh, <laughs> that very yeah. fucking i would love quote. that so much. unless was that from his video on you or was that i can't remember anymore but i think that was his own video yeah well act no i think that was his video on me yeah totally a sequel if you he interpret unironically it that said way. that have, have you That's heard that amazing. one, Ray? Uh, sorry, uh, Shad, have you heard that one? I haven't. I, it's only it's a Ray's sequel probably still if you would... interpreted oh, that. Wait, was that one yeah. person saying that? Yeah, it was no. Quentin Reviews. Oh, no. of course. No. Professional film Quentin. critic, yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> it's such a, like, yeah, like, I can't even, even if I told, like, the average person that, I imagine they'd be like, what? I mean, the implication Imagine of that standard... watching it you hadn't seen yeah. the others. Watching that, it on that's... its own and trying to work out what the fuck was going on. <laughs> yeah, the implication of that statement is essentially objective reality doesn't exist then. Because you can interpret yeah, it and everything is valid and it's all interpreted. It's like, no, no, there is an objective reality. I mean, there is objective truth. Uh, oh, yeah. It's cast is the cast. Huge. That's insane. It really is insane. You, you just the more you think about it, the more it's that's a head scratcher right there. Oh yeah, Did that's you... the kind of that's the kind of thought you just you just sit in the shower and think about for a few hours. <laughs> Rags, did you see his that... weird tweet about himself where he was kind of like I'm? Uh, he implies that he's better than the quartering. Didn't he delete that? Oh, did he? Uh, I, he should have. I'm, 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 I'm back. Hello, Fringy. Oh, Fringy. Ten hello. minutes, mate. Update me. What what happened? Yeah, what happened I, to ten minutes, you someone... absolute plague doctor? Why? How long? How long was it? Like tw twenty five at least. Oh, okay. Outrageous. Sorry. Disgusting. Uh, but what 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 I miss? Uh, we were just talking about Quinton's hot take that his videos are better than uh, the quartering. Um, I find... mean, first off, first off, like, why the fuck would you make a meme about yourself that's positive? <laughs> that's just, you don't do that. Did he make, I don't that's know if he the made rules. the meme, but he definitely self-posted it, so it's just like, oof. Well, he shouldn't have done that, that's fucking stupid. I'll try and find a few, because I know I made a tweet. I think it's I posted going a make a meme with so many levels. Yeah, going back to that uh, concept, right, that, um, uh, 
the the whole subjective versus objective thing. I think it's it could be a matter of people just not really trying to break down what certain you know concepts mean when they say everything is subjective. I think they're, there's a, they're yeah. misunderstanding something. The the truth that could be found in that is that no, everything can be looked upon in a subjective manner, but that doesn't mean everything is subjective or undermine the objective reality of certain things. And so it, it, these statements can exist correctly together in the sense that everything is actually objective. There is an objective truth to, that undermines nearly everything that I can think of. And those objective standards can be viewed upon in, an, in a subjective way. And so everything can be viewed in a subjective way, but that doesn't mean the objective truth is subjective. That's the disconnect. And that's what I think people are like taking the, the, the concept that everything can be seen in a, a subjective way. Then they take it way too far and say everything is subjective. It's like, no, no, stop misunderstanding this concept okay well, i mean how who the fuck actually believes that everything is subjective is like the the real question that i have when i hear this stuff like nobody believes that nobody deep down believes that like everybody like, knows that's bullshit i know yeah it, 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 it makes me half want to go up and slap someone and they say you slap me i was like not from my subjective point of no view. no in my opinion <laughs> Like what? What you define as a slap, I disagree with. What I did was exactly. a global up, and that, that's that... what I did, and that's my opinion. <laughs> and it's a good thing, and that's my opinion, and you can't take that away from me. It's like, yeah, th this is not how the universe works. There are things that just are and aren't. Like I don't yes. know what to say. It, it is written in history as a permanent fact well, that I just slapped like, you. I, I you can't, can't fucking. That. You know, it's like, okay, there's gravity. I can't just, like, will myself to fly. Like, it's just, that's that just doesn't work. I'm not Captain Marvel. Well, I'm not Captain Marvel, but, like, you know, it. it's like, okay, so what does that tell us? Gravity works in such and such a way. Something that I would like to do, I cannot do. It's impossible. And, and that's not my opinion. It's not my judgment. It's, it's just the way it is. And everybody knows that. Everybody believes these things. Like, nobody believes that everything is subjective. Well, an interesting kind of qualifier to try and understand the whole argument, and I didn't mean to derail us onto this, but I blame Mauler because he brought up the uh, statement by Chris. How dare you? <laughs> Go ahead. Not on I, EFAP. Pretend, um, uh, like, Fringy, you're standing five meters away from me, and in between us is a wooden cutout of the letter six. Now, I push it over. <laughs> And so when I look at it on the ground, it is the letter six, but you're five meters away from me. When you look at it, it is the letter nine. Okay. And then mm -hmm. if you say, this is the letter nine, this is an objective fact. And I look at you and say, no, this is the letter six. That's an objective fact. These two statements are both objectively correct, but they're based on our different perspective. And that's, I think, is a very key point people need to try and figure out and realize is what mm -hmm. is the perspective that someone is uh, using to base their judgment upon, because if you can figure that out, you can then figure out the objective standard. And well, the, the idea what's is that I... about this, those are two objective standards that contradict one another, but are both <laughs> correct based on a different Everyone perspective. Everyone in chat wants to tell you that those are numbers, not letters. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I thought you were going. I thought I, I thought I thought you were going somewhere. I was with that. objectively wrong. I admit. No, that. no, that's, just say it's objective. I, mean. like, I, I, uh, I thought you were going somewhere with that because you said the letter six, and I was about to interrupt. I'm like, oh, oh maybe this is part of it. Maybe, like, maybe, maybe I missed this... it. I was doing three D <laughs> chess right there. Uh, um, but yeah, no, the, the, the whole idea bad. with uh, the whole idea with that analogy of six and nine is what we're trying to do is establish a common basis from which we can view you know media mm -hmm. storytelling so that we have like a <laughs> common understanding of what it is and once we establish the baseline we can go forward from there and the baseline should just be like what is a story what is a plot like what are characters things like that Exactly. And people <clears throat> seem to take the thing that because there are two different perspectives you can look and therefore judge something by those it's all subjective and you can't officially establish whether this number is a six or nine. It's like, no, you absolutely can just figure out what the standard is, the perspective you're judging it by then absolutely. But people don't seem to just follow the logic through and they say, I no, the it's all subjective. And I think the sun is a pop tart and that's my opinion. Uh, Theo's asked a I couple of times, not. he's asking, what does everything is subjective mean? And I'm assuming both of you would agree with this, but the idea that there is nothing that is um, that is definitive, everything is up in the air, everything is 
no element of any discussion of anything in, in the entire world. Because the English language <clears throat> was created by people. Language communication <clears throat> terms were created by people. And well, just the fact everything. that we are uh, we are limited conduits. We are just these fleshy entities that can only translate a portion of what reality in the universe is. So we're flawed at the core of being able to say what is objectively in reality. But it's just become the go-to for stop talking. I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> well, yeah, like, they really that's, say that's, that's it's, it's not even that deep. It's just yeah. everything's subjective. So stop point, talking, stop the... having an opinion. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, more to the point, if we're all flawed in the same way, then that's fine. Now we can just go from that point. Yeah, we're all flawed in the same way. So we're starting from the same place, same common mm, ground. Yeah, Great. Uh, it cool. sounds so like it's can't... a semantic issue at that point. I'd be like, okay, so we just need to change what objective means in terms of it's not... Uh, if there are things beyond our ability to perceive, then we're not including those. Mm -hmm. We can't. How would yeah. we even know they exist? Yeah, and the, the whole the you know everything is subjective is contradicted by the fact that that is an objective standard you've just established. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, like how, is how do you know that? Problem. For all they know, we are seeing reality to one hundred percent. Like we, if you include all the tools humanity has at its disposal and stuff. Not just our eyes, because we obviously know there are things our eyes can't see that are there. Um, but how would we know something is there without having known it was there already? You know, if you know what I mean. Like we can't. If we we may discover a new, uh, an additional plane or additional um, form level of, of, of reality. View, yeah. But until we discover it, we can't know that we haven't discovered it. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I uh, I also noticed that you were discussing Chris Stockman's because I was listening in the car. <laughs> Chris Stockman's tweet about film. I, I mean, what I find funny about it is it just it just says a lot about his process. He spends 90 minutes at a theater and then a few hours in front of a computer, and that's what he does. But other people put in more effort and time. And like way to under undervalue criticism as a part of storytelling. I mean, is is criticism not just like a fundamental component of creating stories anyway? Because you have to wow. criticize yourself. If you combine his statements with the idea that it's all subjective and we're just sharing our opinions, then criticism does become a little bit kind of meh. Who cares? What's criticism useful then why for? Why does he make videos? All... Just well, stop making videos. I'm sure he it's sees it as sort fun. of it's a fun. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah. While while it's filmmaking fun. is a much more serious endeavor with a lot mm. more effort and risk, criticism is just you know eh, you know you're just sharing your opinion. They are the masters of the universe. We are merely the critics, the slaves, the dirt pushers, and the shit the, pilers. At the, the thing bottom. is like. Feasting on the, the scraps reason why of what the <laughs> art is. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like, when I read this, all I can think is you're trying to pander to the crowd that you want to be part of. You want to make movies, so you want to distance yourself from the shit things you've said about other movies because you don't want to cut yourself out from the industry. Also, you know, be like, nice to me, critics, because remember, I said that thing. So And also, like, I'm, nice. I'm sure that he said that some movies are just complete shit. What is oh, he, he said that about the new Robin Hood movie. He just ripped it apart. And it was a yeah, great review. Like, like, what what if he sat down? Yeah, ex well, I mean, I don't mm. I don't really like any of his reviews personally, but the thing is, is um, you know what like that that that's that. But if he sat down in the room with the guy who made that movie, I think he'd buckle. I think he'd buckle immediately. Oh, I think sure. he'd just pull he back and not and not stand by what he said. Because he doesn't want to piss anybody off because he wants opportunities to make movies. That, this this is what I mean. This is why it just seems so cynical to me. It's like, hey guys, I'm one of you too. I'm a filmmaker too, guys. Like me. It's like fucking criticism is part of filmmaking. Holy shit, it's symbiotic. Fucking hell. Well, he does say it's only that part in, of filmmaking in, if you in the second part of the tweet. He says that it's a symbiotic relationship, but he goes on to then say that you have to respect each other. And I'm like, whoa. I no, don't you don't. Respect why do you have to no, respect each other? Have to. <laughs> You don't it, why like, really, and this this comes yeah. down to again how different different people look at respect in different ways how it's how it's provided or earned etc what it means yeah all right does but uh does he respect an implication the way there. yeah but there's also an implication where what is there an idea that if you dislike something therefore you do not respect the people who make it you can dislike something and still respect whoever made it and you could dislike and, something and not respect yeah. the person who made it as well they, they, yeah. these don't yeah, contradict yeah. one another actually very true well you the thing is it's like have crazy why are they tied here. together why why the fuck are they intrinsically linked as though like it, surely it should be apparent that when you're criticizing a film you're not actually criticizing 
Like the oh, character of the that, person who that, made it necessarily. People, the, the thing is, people take criticism as attacks, as their personal attacks. Yeah, uh, that's, that's their prerogative to do that. Uh, I know, but, but it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. People shouldn't take things like that personally. Well, it depends. If, if somebody Are you trying says to invalidate you, their feelings? Like, <laughs> like if somebody if somebody were reviewing your book, Shad, and they're like, "This book shit and Shad shit, fuck Shad." It's like that's you know. That, <laughs> I can take that personally. I agree. I agree. I can, yeah, um, exactly. But but, but but if someone said, but a lot like there are some uh, you know one or two reviews that are, are like they do they hate the author. They think I'm being a, a pretty evil thing, um, right. and so they just lost the plot. But then there are other people who say I really like Shad and like his content, uh, and but I didn't like the book. And so that you know that's a perfect example of people. People respecting the person who made it but disliking the thing most of the reviews are overwhelmingly positive so that's really great and, I, and that, that's like yeah, the best that's ever and i think that's that's the risk reward thing about creating anything okay is you're risking a huge amount of t investment of time and stuff and money. um f and money in the hopes that you would get the payoff of people liking it but that doesn't mean that people have to like it because you work so hard on it. No, no. Yeah. Uh, you, you're, it's the goal. It's How what you work you worked on it is irrelevant. You could work yeah. like not hard on something at all and make something really good. Like the time is not important. It's, it's, and, and this is the thing, like a lot of memes people who work in creative industries. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the reality the is a lot just, of... I slapped it together in 10 <laughs> minutes and it was hilarious. That's really funny. That fucking well, boogie the... beam rags. We lost our shit with that one. We actually did lose our shit. I have. I, I'm still looking Which for my shit that I lost. Are you, are you talking about the what the thing that he said? Yeah, or, being uh, made into a a, little, a quick meme. Oh, yeah, I, I do love that one. You know, at least rapists and murder. <laughs> at least rapists and Nazis <laughs> believe in something. It's like wow, good They're job. Like, that is true. They did believe in something. Good job, Boogie. You said it true. Um. Yeah, I was going to bring up, by the way, to to try and give him the best benefit of the doubt, the risk he must be referring to outside of money when making something is the risk of people disliking it. Because if there is no, yeah, but... like, potential for creating something awful, it's only that you create something that people may not like. Um, you, right. you, you wouldn't necessarily want to. And I guess that um, criticism is still useful in that he could look at the vast majority of it and see what most of them are looking for and then make something that appeals to it. But again, that doesn't seem like... Uh, I'd, I'd be like, you know what, you shouldn't try and make something just, like, according to everyone's specifications. If you know what I mean. Like, it sh it, I don't know impossible. if that's where it should originate from. Also, yeah, it's pretty much impossible. There, there um, is a hard reality that comes into criticism that I think is, you know, perfectly valid and important, but it is a hard reality that a lot of creative types need to kind of uh, be aware of if they're going into it. And uh, it's the fact that, like, say, uh, the best example I can give is my book, not like I'm trying to always re reference it, but say I wrote my Chad book. Chad wrote a book, legitimate. everyone. I wrote a book, people! Lies. Say it was legitimately <laughs> bad. It was legitimately bad. Okay? He put his own name and into the title. Yeah, and this is the thing, right? Uh, like, all the reviews, one star, even, like, there's people hating it, and it was legitimately bad. Just because I really want to be a writer and an author doesn't mean I should, okay? And the hard reality is that maybe this might not be the best thing for you to pursue yeah, if you're I think, good at it. I think that's, uh, I think, I'm glad you actually mentioned that, because that's the kind of thing that, uh, like, what, what I mull over, often when I'm working on something, I'm like, this fucking shit, fuck this, this is piece of shit. <laughs> like, the, the question that you need to ask, that you should be asking at some point is, now, I would like to do this, I would very much like to do this, but am I going about it the right way? Do I have the potential to do it? I mean, this is the same questions that people ask. It's like, I want to be an astronaut. And it's like, have you studied physics? Have you studied mathematics? Do you care to? Do you think that it's something that you can do? Are you of enough mental fortitude that you could last in complete isolation for several months, potentially? Like, if you were going on a Mars mission. It's like, no. Okay, well, yeah. You then you're not cut out for it. Yeah. You're not cut and out for the, it. You want to do yeah. it, but that doesn't matter. Exactly. And That's this irrelevant. is exactly the same as writers and even movie makers and stuff. The desire, even as pure and virtuous your desire is to be a filmmaker or anything, does not make it that you deserve to be successful yeah, you in might it. be you shit at it yeah you might you just suck. and and that, look if my book was really really bad and everything like that 
you know, I could say, all right, I'm going to work at trying to get better. And that's good. Okay. Oh, that's a good, you know, um, uh, goal. But there should be a time in which it, you might need to realize if it's even possible for you to get better at what you're trying to be successful at. If you're not improving and you're just completely just regurgitating crap, it might be time for you to reassess your life goals um, yeah, try and try else. and find something that you're good at and then try and be successful at that um, and then and start out on it. Because that's what I mean, it seems to be. It seems to be like people are making a lot of crap movies and people are saying, no, no, because they worked hard on it, you can't criticize like, no, okay. The, the hard reality is we would probably want the people making bad movies to, to stop making bad movies so we get good movies. And just, I mean, just how, how hard there. you work yeah. is irrelevant. It's, um, yeah. That's just not important. It's, um, it's something that you can definitely take into account. You know, like after the fact, you can be like, yeah, you worked hard, but it doesn't impact the quality of the actual work. It's, um, you know, somebody could spend one minute making something and it's really good. Somebody could spend their whole life making something and it's not good. It's like, yeah, I can appreciate that you worked hard, but that's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual product divorced from that. It's just, it's just not relevant. Yeah. Most things people work hard on like movies and TV shows and stuff that doesn't, it's not a factor. With any art form, it's the finished product that's all that should matter. You shouldn't know anything else about the creation of it, really. Like, because if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I couldn't give a fuck how long you spent on something because it makes no <laughs> difference in the... Well, that's an know. important point because there are some people who are just insanely talented that they don't need to put nearly as much effort into creating something as other people do. And what they make is so much better and it was so easy for them. Just because it was easy for them to make doesn't devalue what they made. You judge it yeah, based see, on the true quality of that, you know. Brian that Johnson thinks he's one of those people. He thinks that first draft will do. And we all saw the result of that. So some people should put some more effort in instead of telling us that <laughs> they only did, should. you know, one draft. Mm -hmm. you uh, I believe Mima yeah, Postor, I saw that one, one of our Mimas is Australian. <laughs> so you got the four of you I now. I saw that one. That's great. <laughs> well, I like that. I like it a lot. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> uh, I have to say this is... This Pretty awesome as well. I think you'll like yeah, this. Yeah, there we go. That's a good one. It's <clears> six, <throat> it's nine. It's <laughs> Man, they work oh, fast, don't they? I would never win that down, but it's so appropriate to the concept that's being talked about. They work fast. <laughs> that's oh. great. I love it. It's actually, it's an A. You, yeah, you could push for an A. Just, just it, yeah, it's a, a it could be an A. That's right. There we go. And then uh, Gavin Monroe. Uh, I, I think I he mentioned I'd missed this one previously. It was uh, just a little sort of piece of work for Wolf. I will try and uh, pass it on. <laughs> it's quite nice. That's cool. Um, and yeah, we should probably back to the video. Oh yeah, we got a video, <laughs> don't we? Poor guy. We're the problem. He, he's so enthralling. We can't. We forget we're even watching him. Of when you were 16, okay? It doesn't mean they were the best. It's just because you were at that age where it, it was the best. Or you're in a position in life where it is the best. And it's okay if Star Wars isn't the same anymore. It shouldn't be. Yes, that's my issue is that it's not you know, the same. Yeah, you know, we don't care and, if it's the same. We care that it's different and it's shit. And, and it's funny those other that... films came out when everyone was 16. Like they, they were loved around the world because everyone was at that certain age. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone in the world was sixteen. We've aged differently. And only sixteen-year-olds yes. liked it. Um, by the way, yeah. Empire and A New Hope are not the same. No. Yeah. Very different. Some might argue they're ghastly different, vastly different. Actually. And it's like, and it's like, is also implying that when kids like something, that means it doesn't like it isn't good. Like, like, well, is that what? No, I think. Because kids can like something that is actually legitimately good that adults would like as well. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't. And what's the same? Should it be like the prequels? Should it be like the? He just he just presented a counter argument to himself. Like <laughs> yeah. what even is the same? <laughs> He's like same as what? <laughs> old trilogy it's it just it's going to be different <laughs> and it's going to change and grow and not do things you want because you don't get to write it because you're not a filmmaker
Okay, this is what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Is saying I, I, that we dislike it because it's different? No, we dislike it because it's bad. No, it's because you're, it you're, you're not a filmmaker, Shad. You're not a filmmaker, okay? You're not a filmmaker. It's like, Audio. why is that I even? Just, I can't stand these people that just set up stupid <laughs> straw man like this and say, this is how people are acting, and you're dumb because come off it. Oh. I know, right? It's frustrating. Is that, is either, you is either what we got or what's in your head? Yeah, and you didn't get that, so this is the only other option. Exactly. Oh. I just, I just be like, are you a filmmaker? This guy. You <laughs> just liked it because it was different. Yeah, and that's okay. But there's just this attack on the internet. The internet, men being anonymous men. on the internet. Whoa. Man, yeah, there are, there, what the hell? What there probably are, there, there, there probably <laughs> are, you know, women who dislike the movie too. I would imagine, no, you no, know, that, no. Not really. oh no, it yeah. seems unlikely. They're all men, all the one hundred percent of them. Crazy. Replace men with literally any like of the Blacks. other word. Well, I was gonna say any word other than white, because <laughs> white, white would be okay too. But put put Asians in there, put Jewish people in there. Be like, Whoa. a bunch of black people just don't like this film. <laughs> A bunch of women just don't like this film. It's so fucked up, isn't it? Yeah. I hate this. It's it's so wrong. Like, it really it, upsets well, me. It bugs me. It's actually sexist. He's automatically defaulting yeah. that everyone who dislikes this movie is a man. That is such a sexist mindset. Yes, oh it is. Oh my goodness. And women should be offended by that mindset as well. I think a lot of women are offended by this. I, if, I mean, if they didn't like the movie, they're womening wrong. <laughs> well, we're yeah, menning wrong. Is men. more, we're menning right. This is more offen It's more offensive to women because he's just putting them all in one. Well, he's doing it to men too. Yeah, we're all the haters. That it, Star Wars Guild was here. She'd just be like, "This is bullshit." Just yeah, bullshit. <laughs> this guy. That is what I think is really ruining Star Wars. I'd say a shitty film because. Your opinion well, doesn't matter. Neither yeah, does yours. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yours doesn't matter. Neither does yours. Yeah, 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 here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's discuss how how. Does what does he mean? Happen? Your opinion doesn't matter. Like, I was what does say, he mean? Like, in reference to what and how and how does something matter? Because if, if it's box office, if you're talking about box office returns, then yes, the the opinions of Star Wars fans matter a lot. Not to mention yes, it does. There are YouTubers that if they give a glowing, they they, they can get them a whole bunch of sales. Like the. The opinion surely matters, even if it's to a small degree. It surely matters. Of course it matters. Well, it I mean, who are you making these films to. for? I mean, <clears throat> I reviewed Alita Battle Angel for the express, sorry, express purpose of trying to get more people to see it. And it worked, okay? That was, uh, you know, an well, opinion it, that had an effect. Imagine when episode 9 comes out that all five of us release a video that's extended that talks about the amazing quality of Star Wars Episode Nine. You really think we wouldn't get at least one ticket sold between us? Like, I think so. And then I think Disney would would be like, "Ooh, that looks like that." How can you say this when Disney have people paid to come out and watch these films and then report on them as a good thing? The whole yeah. all the shit with Collider. It's like, of course they matter. And e yeah, even opinions. Is... The thing is, even opinions that don't have huge, you know, far-reaching influences or anything like, even just mild influences and stuff. It doesn't in invalidate the opinion. Like, if the opinion is uh, for the individual, of course it matters. It's based on their own feelings and opinions. It might not matter to other people, but it's just a very but, interesting but, and loaded but, statement. Yeah, I'm just the curious. The girls he knows. Matters their to what slash who. That's what I'd be curious about. Mm. Well, yeah, what does he mean by that? It's like... What does he mean when he says it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter to who? To the if universe. He means <laughs> the universe is oh, not <laughs> Ten the bucks universe thinks the good him. opinions matter because the good opinions matter to him clearly, but bad opinions those don't matter. You're only allowed to like yeah. things. You can't not like. This things. is what I mean. He, he's a fucking hypocrite. If, well, if opinions don't matter, then fuck your opinion. I'm I don't assuming, care what you think. I'm assuming he's going to say his doesn't either. Let me just roll it back. See. Oh yeah. Does. Because your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. It it doesn't. It. You probably haven't even seen the movie. What? Uh, what? Uh, what? So I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> wow! You probably haven't even seen the movie. Okay. If you hate the movie, you mustn't have seen it.
Mola, I mean, without nobody seeing could it, watch it and not like it. It's that amazing. What the hell? Mola, without seeing it, you really guessed correctly <laughs> what happened in it. You did an amazing job of filling those hours by guessing, because you obviously didn't see it. Well, I mean, Casino Planet, I think that's, most people guessed that. Um, <laughs> like, just, Kamikaze to save the world, with, and most people guessed that. Luke being a coward, how could you not see that coming? Like, that's pretty much just a yeah, yeah, logical yeah. progression. We all guessed that. What a strange thing to say. <laughs> like, you know when people like really well, hate something and I think they might be off the mark? The last thing I'll accuse them of is you never even watched the film to begin with. It's like, of course they did. They hate it because they watched it. He's saying Why would they hate good, it if they haven't seen it? You couldn't have possibly gotta... seen it. Like, getting, you getting bad, something's you wrong, it. sure. Because everyone's going to get shit wrong. I'll get shit wrong. But, like, not seeing it, what are you... Like, why would he think that they haven't seen it? What if they've said things about the film? Like, as- that are in the film? <laughs> they just- I guess they just- it's uh, from a this trailer? So or retarded. they guessed right? Or This is- something? this is the most retarded thing. Like, <laughs> I can't I like believe it, you we said all that. guessed there was a Rose character. <laughs> and her I mean, last one, too, man. Amazing. And that she'd be worse than Jar Jar Biggs. We all guessed that. Well, what what is the time this video came out? Maybe it's like right after it came out, or well, that's. I mean, it's not. That's not even a defense. It's just maybe he thinks that it's so so soon afterwards that no one's actually seen it. Or darkness said, "Imagine how long Mauler's video would have been if he'd seen the film." <laughs> <laughs> I think he's referencing I mean, the um uh, the score people were putting on Rotten Tomatoes of if they were excited to see a movie, well, which they then later removed. The only thing you could possibly justify this with is there's a hate train and some people join it whether or not they've even seen the movie. Right. And there are some and that's, people. That's it. Sure, I'm sure there's some out there. There's who, enough people who. But, yeah, like people who hate Force where, Awakens yeah. and refuse to support Disney. They might say, yeah, episode, nine, uh, episode 8 sucks. And you'd be like, have you even seen it? And they go, I've watched reviews. But conversely, there might be people who are of the opposite view who haven't seen the movie but are I'd just it, on yeah. its side. But yeah, like I don't need to see it. I just know that I trust Disney. As as this guy said, it's like I like Disney's Star Wars. I want to see it whatever year. If you have seen the movie, great. Don't see the next one. That's, that's not uh, so. Well, that's <laughs> why the opinion matters. Is is that what he? Challenge accepted. The thing is, but with that, his right? logic there is: if you have an opinion, you probably haven't seen it. Don't see the next one; then your opinion will matter. What if someone like, said, so, wow. "I hated Force Awakens for what they did to Han Solo, but I will absolutely see Episode Eight because I love Luke Skywalker"? What would you say then? These arguments are shit, Mahler. I yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. Like the idea is like, if you don't like it. Don't watch it. People say that about Game of Thrones. They were like, why are you guys watching it if you didn't like episode 3? Why watch episode 4, 5, and 6? It's like, because I want to know what the fuck happens. Exactly. You don't know if it's going to be bad before you go into watching it. That's the whole point of watching <laughs> it in the first place. Because we're often hyperbolic about it, but episode 9 could be good. It's just a really low fucking percentage chance. Well, That's I mean, all. it would be so difficult to make it good that I'm reserved to believing that it won't be good. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I believe it will be a bad film, um, and I, I'm going to go see it for. You could have all kinds of. Well, reasons. I mean, the thing I is, you know how like in the several times, I, in I think I'm going to laugh too, and I, I enjoy but laughing. You, you, know, you know how like in video game discussions, a lot of the time people say things like, "This game is." Oh. That really dumb it. Oh. Wow, that was like a perfect cutout. <laughs> this, this game, game is. Uh, this game what did he say that you had to cut me out like that? That's true. The game is. It's the uh, you can hear me now, right? Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, the the common thing where they'll say like, "This game is going to be game of the year," and like they don't know that, and I kind of find it annoying when people say that. But nobody really gets on someone's back for saying, "I think this game will be good," but when you say, "I think it will be bad," they're like, "You haven't even played it yet. You haven't even watched it yet." It's like, yeah, but. Do, do you think there's a reason why I'm coming to this conclusion? I mean, what is the point of promotional material if not to make you form a judgment of something you know what, based on that promotional material? Something that we were talking about earlier, the whole, like, you're allowed... It's, it's much... Everyone's much You're allowed to have to, positive opinions. Yeah. yeah. So people who are like, oh, I can't wait to play this game. It's going to be so good. It's like, you haven't even played it. Yeah. But you don't you don't catch that that often, but you do catch plenty of, oh, I fucking... This game looks terrible. It's like, you haven't even played it. Well, I think Death Stranding is a good example of that. Nobody knows what that game is. <laughs> no, Nobody knows what ever. it's about. It's the best thing ever. And if you say, like, I'm not really that interested, it's like, 
Oh, come on. This stupid. You haven't played it. It's Kojima. He only makes good games. You know, God. I was like, that's, yeah, that's, that's not a very good argument. But, yeah. you know. But you can get a good so... idea of if a game is going to be good or bad based on, you know. That's the point. That's the whole point of promotional material. material. Yeah. That's the point. Yep. That's why it exists. Like, What's this is about? why I, I get annoyed. Know. What do you do? I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Imagine going through the world that week. Like he's saying, <laughs> you can love Star Wars your whole life, but if you go see a film that shits all over it and you hate, don't say anything because that doesn't matter. Well, you should None, just give up on the entire what, franchise. You should just stop thing. watching it because you hate it. Yeah. How are we supposed just to just walk away and be quiet? He's like supporting the idea. Yeah, but because like you know, we just said it's theoretically possible we could have. 11 teen. I'm making up a number for this. 11 teen bad movies <laughs> from Disney Star Wars, and then the next one's good. That could happen. And if you love yeah. the content of Star Wars, and you're holding out hope, is that not reason enough to go see it? You just, just admitted, you're like, you know, I really want this to be good, I really like Star Wars. And if he was just, just give like, up! He, uh, yeah, well, he's apparently here like, don't. you don't even <laughs> like the other ones, so why bother? It's like, oh. <laughs> I don't know, see, I'm almost like that with Star Wars now, like, the Last Jedi ruined so much that the continuity now is just broken, and anything building off that continuity, like the ne like a next movie, even if it's good, is trying to say that therefore what actually happened in that last movie really did happen, and I'm not sure I can allow that. <laughs> I uh, my, my it from my brain. My uh, my thing with Star Wars is I'm now basically only interested in side stories or like other things, nothing to do with the main story that's why i'm interested in the mandalorian that's why i'm interested in like the side content but i i I'm, i've lost all investment in like the main saga as it were because as much as i would like to pretend that the new movies aren't canon they are yeah. so it's ruined well like by, I, by any meaningful like what, of what canon is outside of your own personal take on what canon is like yeah it's canon well, yeah, I know. Is, um... I, I can't change the official status, but like, I will never, you know, buy the Last Jedi or anything right. like you, that. You can think to yourself, but, Luke wouldn't and, have done and, that. And like, yeah. I'll just think of the expanded universe, the uh, the you know, the the stories with Luke and all the, in the books and stuff. I'll say that that's that's uh, how Star Wars should have gone. Well, like, yeah, for it's instance, um, though, that's yeah. you have Disney giving uh, the writing to, let's just say. So, someone we typically have a lot of faith in, and then a director we have a lot of faith in. People who care about source material, and they talk publicly about how they're going to do a story that's completely unrelated to everything. Uh, we've seen the movies previously, but it's still in the Star Wars universe. I'd be like, all right, give me a good trailer, and I'm game, because I like Star Wars. Um, that doesn't mean I... Just because it's under Disney doesn't automatically mean it'll be a disaster, and I should never try and... No, I, uh, I'm I keen on The Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm quite keen on The Mandalorian. I think it looks cool. I like maybe some Space Bounty Hunter stuff, and the people who are attached to it, you know, pretty decent. Yeah, pretty we'll good track see. record. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Same for the MCU right now. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a bit, well, because you got like Taika Waititi, which is, you know, a good sign. He's doing some. A lot of people are hating but, him right uh, now because a lot of his. Yeah. A lot he, because of uh, that been movie. He's saying he'll crap on um, what canon or what's been established. Oh, yeah. Oh, he said he doesn't sorry, care about. Okay. Um, wasn't it myth uh, Norse mythology he said he's gonna... Uh, I mean, Norse we mythology is not very out. well respected in, like, Thor canon anyway in, like, the MCU, yeah. so... That's, it's not be fair and things. everything, but there's no need to be like, I don't give a shit. No, like, uh, okay. it's, yeah. It's, um, well, imagine if, like, you know, they were making God of War and they're like, yeah, fuck Norse mythology, we're setting it in, you know, Norse mythology, but fuck We're Norse setting mythology. it in Jamaica, man! <laughs> <laughs> The God of War, I come for you. Um, I mean, I I still like Taika Waititi anyway, just because I like I like Thor Ragnarok a lot, and if it's like Thor Ragnarok, I will probably enjoy it. If you can make um, me laugh my ass off, then I'm game. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, I guess the thing with the MCU Phase Four is it's like what what are we really looking forward to? Like what what's on the horizon that's really exciting from that? Um, mainly like Thor, and um. What, what are the other movies that are coming out? So we got Black Widow, Eternals, um, and then that Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah, Doctor Strange. That might be interesting. I, I like um, that they brought um, Scarlet Witch into that movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm really keen on that. It seems like a good pairing. That might be interesting yeah, to watch. It does. Anyway, back to the video. Then, yeah, we better yeah. get back to the video. <laughs> uh.
That's when your opinion can matter. Is when you you don't use your purchasing power to not purchase. No, nah, that purchase. is stop, stop. No, that's no. not a good argument. That's We've seen opinion public. Opinion. We've definitely seen opinions without money change influence things. This yeah, is I would just, just I would refer to YouTubers again. They could go and pay to yeah. see the movie like five times, but they, it still wouldn't compare to the amount of thousands they might stop from seeing. Is is that what he's saying though? Is he saying that if you don't like it, you can just not watch it, and that would affect? And that's it. Yeah, he's, he's implying that is that's that what? what you should be doing instead of hating yeah, on it. And not talk stop about it. it. Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. Once you don't like something, just abandon it. This is the thing. Like, I'm but sorry, the, but I don't know about you guys, movie. but in terms of franchises and series, the MCU. How many times do we watch a movie in the MCU and go, "Oh, that was bad. I hope the next was better." <laughs> like that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would also, like to reference they, Captain Marvel. We were all hoping, oh, I hope Endgame is good. <laughs> this is it's, so funny. It's, tr it's trying to say, if it's bad, don't watch it, but you need to watch it to determine if it's bad. I mean, that's if yeah. you don't want to go off the you know critical response and things like that. But generally, I avoid listening to uh, critics, uh, sorry, uh, reviews and stuff to a movie I'm intending to watch because I want to you know see it without any you know, preconceived opinions in my head. And so what it's saying just won't work. It's just, yeah. But also, even if we don't go, no one goes to the next movie, it loses money. Ryan Johnson is still a cunt. He's still <laughs> a fucking great Mark Hamill. Like, so we, we want to let him know that. Just not going to the next film oh. doesn't explain that to them. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, um... <laughs> You if know, anything, if, they'll if be the like, movie oh, it's failed. apathy. It's just like people are like losing interest. It's not people were absolutely insulted. Yeah, and if success in the box office was the thing that determined if a movie was good, well, then all the Transformers are brilliant. Same with Captain Marvel. And it's like, no. Okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> you think that what people thought of a movie would be important, and he's implying that it isn't important, which is absurd. I'm of a film critic. Also, opinions are worthless. It's like, yeah. oh, unless hey, you hard to play but all what right would be, what would be the reverse um so he's saying like your opinion matters when you stop paying for it Does, is, is the reverse of that your opinion matters if you're paying for it as well as in it's the affirmative and then like denying it if you know it, like he's almost implying that money is the thing that matters so if you continue right. to supply money to the franchise that is your opinion mattering still correct this is very it's pretty cynical isn't well it? yeah no but not just that but it just contradicts himself like because he's trying to say that if we continue to watch this franchise despite hating it, we're spending money on it, so that means our opinion matters still. It just doesn't matter in the way that we would want it to, according to him, but it would still matter. This is what I mean. It's all I mean, very confusing. He's saying just, we have I to find... send him broke. He wants us to send I... him broke if we don't like This is so bizarre. Like, I, I think of the video game industry and how many times people saying, yeah, this is bad, change it, has affected things without having to do anything with money. You know, like, what is patches if not listening to player feedback and implementing changes? Oh, it's yeah. not based on the wallet. It's not based on monetary statistics. I mean, the influence for doing it is monetary, but the actual opinion is, you know, relevant for informing it. I, uh, this is such a shallow interpretation of, like, communication. All that matters is your wallet. Is it weird? It's a weird take. I don't even know that he would stand next to it if he really, like, refined this. Well, he should have written a script. He shouldn't have just said this and then uploaded it. Wait. He, d he went through editing and was like, yeah, this is good. Well, in fairness, Fring, your, your criticism me, couldn't yeah. exist without him having made this video and taking the risk on it. Appreciate oh, yeah, that. that's right. Appreciate that. I, I respect you. I respect <laughs> you, uh, me so fly, whatever it says on his stupid shirt. Discussion or critical Why do analysis want to shave of their necks? the failings and successes of the characters. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, is it's that a thing people just... Not That's do. not where well, the bead goes. Leave, leave us, leave us alone, rags. Some people just don't <laughs> like shaving their necks. Okay, it's, it's not neck. like that. Shave your neck. <laughs> this is. I, I'm going to be the Jupiter of this. I'm, I'm, shave your neck. Okay, I'll shave. shave I'll neck, go shave my neck. We'll be happier in your life. Shave your neck, Bucko. <laughs> also, cool. don't do buy that. Lando Carrigian Funko Box. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I have friends do. That's what I go on to other shows and, and <laughs> talk about and do. That's enjoyable. That's fun. And so that is enjoyable, enjoyable. And if it's enjoyable, yeah. it's good. I, I was just saying. So what if I tell you that the reverse is fun for me? What happens then? Yeah. What if we have what fun talking fun about now? how shit it is? Yeah. <laughs> it feels like everything's falling apart now. It's like, oh no, fun.
Who would have thought fun was subjective? Who would have? Damn it! And and there's a lot of men that I talk about Star Wars with, but I'm just enjoying the conversation. Uh, women okay, no, there's, there's, there's no hate. Why, there's no hate. Why, why even say that? There's no hate. Like, uh, is he? Are you serious? That country. He just said what. When he talks about it with men, that they all hate it, and it only seems like he can talk about it with women. That... Imagine being that kind of person. I can only talk to insert by you know race say, like, or gender they here about movies. Us of being like racist in different ways that we're not even totally aware of. Like either you say you are kind of racist or you're unaware of it. That's like often their take, and I just be like, you didn't yeah. get that. You're so quick to judge men as an entirety. Is kind of like you, you got some prejudice you need to sort out there buddy well the thing is it's like clearly to him the gender of people is relevant when discussing media whereas for me it's not relevant i don't it's not important because why would it be it's it you can't choose it it doesn't affect your brain are you so saying you can't choose cares? your gender that is so oh, hateful. fuck sorry i that's what i mean i don't even know what i'm allowed to say anymore like, imagine, I'm so imagine he was like well they're probably mad if they hate it. They just don't realize it. <laughs> they like, don't okay. realize it. I just don't realize it. And ironically, yeah, there's not there's no contradiction in their I guess in the way that they view the world in there. Uh, literally, if I like Leet or L337. Sorry. Yeah. I have to defend yeah, because myself. that's a shit character, and you should, should feel ashamed of yourself. Do. So if someone tells me they like it, and I ask them why, I'm expecting them to be able to draw something of a reference from L337. If they tell me, I cannot, I have good feelings in relation to watching her, and I cannot tell you anything further than that, I'd just be like, alright then. But Maul, <laughs> you saying the words why is an attack. It's an attack. <laughs> You're attacking him. Someone should I shouldn't have to explain myself. And I see it in the reverse. If I tell someone something and they don't want to probe it whatsoever, and they rather just go, mm hmm, be like, okay, you, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, sorry that I wanted to pursue your perspective. Sorry that I tried to explore how you came <laughs> to your perspective. Instead, I should have just said, mm hmm. You oh, can't I help mean, it, Molly. You're, you're a man. It's an attack. <laughs> That's the thing, though, is it's like, um, you know, uh, is it not interesting to figure out why people like things? Like, I'm, I'm more interested in the why and the how as opposed to the conclusion, in the same way that I think most people are, you know, more concerned with the working rather than the conclusion. It, you know, it's the same reason why when, you, when you're doing a test, they want to know how you got the answer. What's this? What's that you posted? Someone, someone sent me that in Discord, and I'm not shocked in any way. When men complain about Mary Sue, you 100% always look dumb twice. First, you hate women. Second, you don't understand how to follow story narrative that you can't see yourself in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a second. He just asserts of course it. I don't see about... myself in a Mary Sue. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. <laughs> yeah. What kind of counter-argument uh, is that? <laughs> You hate well, women. Well, well, I, I love that part. You hate, you hate women. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna have to copy that word for word for good. It's help. such. Oh, if you just it's take a it's... disingenuous <laughs> argument that they can't argue things, so their ultimate response is, "You hate women because of this opinion." But it's just like... take out Mary Sue and replace it with shit character. No, and he, did, he didn't quote Mary Sue. The You're punctuation's dumb. all wrong. It's just like when men complain about Mary Sue, you 100 percent always look dumb twice. We like who? Yeah, like, who, yeah. Use oh, some the, commas. Oh, the, oh, the Use thing. some commas, oh. man. Like commas are your best friend. Use them. <laughs> but this commas is the interesting best friend thing about you. these statements. He's trying to say that a certain statement establishes certain facts when he's unaware that his statement is establishing a very prominent, you know, fact about his own mindset, and it's that. He can't argue with people who disagree with him. He would rather demonize and vilify them by saying, you hate thing. Why does he have to presume attack. what they think? You know, like, why yeah, is it always a presumption of where they because think? Because that's the only way the argument works. It's, yeah, it's it being intellectually dishonest. It's not having the confidence or even the 
uh, you know, intelligence of being able to argue with people just, you know, in a debate, just talking about pros and cons, facts, different points of what validates different views. Uh, and because generally uh, people lose those types of arguments if you have a stronger one on your, your own side, they rather avoid the issue and demonize you instead because if you're a bad person, that means your opinions are wrong. Right, because it's easier to engage with someone who you assume is a bad person than it is to engage with somebody who you don't make that inference and you just treat their argument. Like, it's it shouldn't be about the person making the argument. That's the main thing. Yeah. You know, like, what if they do hate women? What does that have to do with the argument? Like, what has that got well, to do with it? Well, we don't have to engage with them. I, 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 yeah, I was, was going to uh, try and correct it to make it sound better, and I was like, oh, no, I can just read this out because I'll just sound like a dumbass. It'll be great. <laughs> it is perfect. I, I wouldn't want to take it away from this guy. Thank you very much. What a terrible take, but it doesn't surprise me considering this video. Yeah. Character. Why? Just let me like the character. I didn't like Boba Fett. I never you got why like people whoever you hey, want. Fine. Why? Why? What? Why is he? You can like yeah, whoever you want. Sure. That's irrelevant. Yeah, like we're not. We're not talking about that. If you decide to dislike a character because someone points out issues with the character. Then, like, that's- you chose that. That was your decision. No, if you don't like Boba Fett, you hate men. How does- it, like, genuine question. Is it when he talks to women, he says, I don't like Boba Fett, from- from the OT, and they go, oh. I, uh, I oh. do like the TLJ, though, and they go, Um, not Wait. a fan of Jar Jar Binks. Hmm? <laughs> and then he comes away <laughs> like, that was a great conversation. We really got Sorry. to explore a lot. Did, it, the guy we're watching in the video, is he the one who made that tweet, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so based on his own logic, right, oh, it would be that him, as justifiable that to tweet? say to him, because he doesn't like Bobo Fett, he must hate men. Well, yeah, that's, men. that's that's that's, that's, why the, that's I, the exact same logic he's using there. There's nothing he can do. I think he does, though. <laughs> I'm sure he does. he not know that Gary Stu is a concept, though? Is he not aware yeah. of what a Gary Stu is? That... Exactly. Probably, there's a, probably, there's a full probably. male equivalent to the Mary Sue. Yeah. And I mean, just, the, the, it's criticized as much when it. Well, when it's, it's just media. as bad. It's just yeah. as bad. It's just that we haven't been seeing it as much lately. Like, and, and it's just not been as common. Depending on the critic as well, some people will refer to male I mean, characters as Mary Sues. I've seen but, people try yeah. to make yeah. arguments about Harry Potter being a Mary Sue. Wesley from Star Trek Next Generation is hugely criticized as being a really annoying Gary Stu character who's perfect in every way and uh, is an annoying character <laughs> because it's, again, perfect example um, of the Gary Stu. I, I, think, uh, I think I find the Gary Stu one interesting because ER made a video where he, he presented the argument that Gary Stu's are often not as bad as Mary Sue's. And his arguments, I can't remember exactly what they were, but one of them is that Gary Stu still have to work for it. Like, so, for example, John Wick is a Gary Stu, but he always has to work for the, the victory, at least in the first movie. Like, it's never easy for him, whereas with Ray, it seems to be pretty effortless. Yeah, well, this is the people. thing. There are ways to make Gary or Mary Sue's um, uh, workable yeah, in I a mean, narrative one punch and acceptable. One punch like, yeah, I'm look at Kavoth from the King Killer Chronicles, Name of the Wind. He's essentially a pretty strong, oh, yes, um, uh, you know, Gary Stu, but he makes so many mistakes and his own kind of confidence and arrogance works against him in so many ways that though it works beautifully and is an acceptable character because the idea of a prodigy character is just really talented in a lot of things can be a very workable character like yeah. but you need to justify it or work it in give some weaknesses you have them be challenged make them fail all these things and then it can come off brilliantly and so that can yeah. be applied to female Mary Sue's and male, you know, Gary yeah, Sue's equally. For clarification, um, for the people in chat, so Gary Stu and Mary Sue are actually, like, depending on your sources, can have different traits. Uh, uh. Some people see Gary Stu as the male version of Mary Sue. Some people see Gary Stu as it would be applied to males typically, but it, they tend to have a different set of attributes. Um, not entirely dissimilar, but... Again, I'm not sure. I'd have to check definitions. I, well, to me, they're well, equivalent. I always use them, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I use them as equivalent. Well, you, um, you just explained that ER didn't, and that you agree. Oh, uh, yeah, no, ER, ER has... I, I found it interesting. I'm not sure if I agree with it, because right. I, I think uh, I think the things that he says probably make them not a Gary <laughs> Stewart at that point. Yeah, and I don't like, if they have to work for it, you know, then yeah. they're not a Gary Stewart, I don't think. No. 
and I don't think that applies to say Wesley Crusher, one of the stronger Gary Sue's people point out in pop culture from you know Star Trek Next Generation. I don't well, see at least him he's not a cunt in real life, right? Well, uh, I, actually, I how about how about if we do because we we already know who we would cite as Mary Sue's, but what about a list of Gary Stews? Like, what what could we cite as a list of Gary Stews? And by that you mean male Mary Sue's? Yeah. Yes. See, at that uh, point, strictly. you could just say Mary Sue's that are male. I don't know, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, no, let's, uh, yeah, what, what do you reckon? Well, what One Punch on Man, list? but the problem is, yes, a lot of people include in the character. definition of Mary Sue that all the characters love them. Ah, uh, then that makes it basically <laughs> impossible. That does not apply I can't to think of many. Man. Well, yeah, because even Picard hates Wesley and tells him Well, that's, that's what I mean. I can't think of many male characters who are beloved by everybody. And you could, you, you could know, then be like, like, well, Captain Marvel isn't beloved by everybody. And I'd be like, yeah, so there are things here that... Scrawl. You have well, to... no, never mind. Well, I was just going to say, you have to do a few <laughs> concessions, <laughs> because a, a, if you stuck 100% to the definition of a Mary Sue, you might not be able to apply it to barely anybody. Um... Uh, well, I guess it would be the majority of the protagonists, right? It would be the, I, the I qualifier. Think, yeah, uh, I think it does apply to Captain Marvel because most characters have a positive outlook on her, for the most part. Yeah. Um, there's not many people who hate it. By comparison, One Punch Man, there's not many people who like him at all outside <laughs> no, of No, except for, like, Genos and, uh, yeah. Um, well, so, who else? Yeah. Let's, let's super, well, the, you, the other element we don't A lot of people are saying Superman. About. Superman, yeah. yeah, but Superman has kryptonite. Like he has that. <laughs> he has a weakness. No, don't, don't get me started on kryptonite. Actually, yeah, don't. no, I, know. I, I mean, I, I think Superman's probably the best example of uh of like because he's just got all the powers. Um, I just, I just and like he referenced a, kryptonite because the well, whole reason the it exists thing is thing about to try Superman and pre prevent that, the title of Mary Sue. Yeah, the interesting thing about Superman is the the strongest Superman <clears throat> stories are completely constructed around his. Mary Sue Humanity. nature of being perfect, that he is so powerful, so perfect, and then it's the contrast between him and humanity, and bringing in stories where he uh, is conflicted in a different way. And so that's kind of a feature, not a detriment, and that's what I mean. You can make Mary Sue's, male Mary Sue's, Gary Sue's, whatever, I'm getting terminology is all annoying now. Um, you can make them workable, okay? I'm not saying it doesn't, but there are examples when they're not workable and they're very poorly executed well i think uh, uh, i think the the through line is that G gary stews and mary sues are workable when you're making a story that criticizes that aspect of them mm -hmm. like uh like one punch man he works because it's a criticism of the unnecessary nature of like the big climactic fights in anime and stuff because it just doesn't matter he thing, wins every <clears> time. by the way that's worth mentioning and this is this is not important for Captain Marvel, but it is important for Rey. A lot of people like to specify that it's not that they can do everything or anything, it's that they, they happen to have... They can solve all the plot problems, basically. Whatever problems right, present themselves just... in the plot, they can solve them. For example, Rey can't, um... I don't know, she, she wouldn't be able to swim down to the bottom of a pool of lava to collect something for somebody, as far as we know. Maybe she could put a force field around it. <laughs> well... You know what I mean? Like, uh, she has... He's supposed to have limitations. The idea being that it's like she's not a Mary Sue, she's not a powerful Superman or something like that. I'd be like, oh yeah, it's not necessarily that he is a god. It's not a relative thing, yeah. It's that every problem is presented in the fucking Force Awakens, she overcomes it. And we're not talking about a couple of mechanical problems. It's like it's a shit ton of all kinds of problems. <clears throat> and yeah, yep. Theo's saying it's about how the world responds to the character, if you ask me. This is the problem. There's a couple of definitions. The the, the original one included it's an author insert, right? So there's supposed to be connections mm -hmm. from the character to the person who wrote them, as if they are putting themselves in there, having every character in the, in the story like them, and they're able to overcome the problems of the world, which is something that I think we could all agree is something we would like to have as an attribute, that we could solve all problems, but you don't. But in your own fiction, you could. And all writers mm -hmm. might be inclined to let that slip out. They might be like, "Oh, yeah, I could solve this one because I'm pretty, I'm pretty talented." I um, but yeah, <laughs> I think I think people are getting a little bit annoyed because like there's a lot of different definitions at the same time that uh, could be conflated. Yeah, but this is this is the value of discussion is figuring out where where to. It, you, why why are people discouraging discussion? This is great. I love this shit. Well, <laughs> most of what we just did was an attack in Finn. Ah, uh, right. And, you know, it I doesn't attacked, matter. What I we think doesn't me, matter. You anyway. attacked Shad. Shad attacked me. Like, it was... It's all an attack. It's so, all an attack. So attacked. I need to bandage my wounds, my hurt <laughs> feelings. <laughs> you know? Um, a bunch of people say, kick Jay. What did Jay do? <laughs>
<laughs> it's not even and hasn't he done? <laughs> what hasn't he done? Anyway, back to this wonderful man. Oh, yeah. Of Boba Fett. Uh, I didn't go around criticizing everyone for liking Boba Fett. I didn't you be like, you you're to. dumb and ugly because you like well, it. Hang you didn't on. have a good That's reason. Not a uh, it's another uh, man. You're dumb uh, and ugly uh, if you don't like Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> you're dumb and ugly, you're ugly if you saying. don't like Boba Fett. What is going on? Have, have you guys ever met anyone who actually says someone is dumb and ugly for <sighs> disagreeing with your opinion about a movie? Who says ugly. that? Ugly yeah, like, not ironically, because you can make off. jokes, but <laughs> fucking hell. I know, that, I think that I've seen comments, <laughs> jo like, in there, you know, done ironically and stuff. But, like, someone who legitimately thinks someone is... Uh... Now, having said that, I think, you know, if something is fairly blatantly bad, right, and you could uh, just quite strongly establish that, say, with Last Jedi, right... Uh, there could be, uh, you know, uh, a question raised about someone's intelligence who wants to deny the logic and the argument and say, you're, you're wrong because... Yeah, you could have some form of a through line there, but ugly, that's just... That's not... <laughs> yeah. Ugly. <laughs> How do you determine someone's ugly yeah. from and the it... preference of Boba Fett? <laughs> And even if you could, like, I, because perhaps there are, you know, the comments people saying, you know, a few people saying that, right? And that's not what I'm blowing my head off about, is the fact that he is establishing, it seems like, everyone who dislikes that it, it thinks that people who disagree with him are dumb and ugly. That seems to be the... Uh, the straw man is establishing here. And I was like, come off it! Wouldn't you guys just be like, like I would, I would happily dismiss it, like, stop being so childish. This is not, like, actual <laughs> yeah. criticism. This is lame. If you, I don't even know if it qualifies as criticism. Does criticism have to be relevant, or can it just be anything? I have no idea. I'd have to I'm check, sure. but, like, you know, if, if Fringy says one plus one is three, and then I go, well, you're ugly. Like, <laughs> just because even if Fringy's wrong, that doesn't mean my criticism was actually criticism. <laughs> <Just be> like... <laughs> you're ugly, and did you say something? You're ugly, and your math is shit. The, the, and the, the issue I'm taking with this myself is that it's, he's implying that that's what people who don't like TLG yeah, are doing. Yeah, the framing. Yeah, the framing. That... And it's like, come on. Boba Fett. Boba Fett isn't a very good character. If we you know. were to analyze oh, character that arcs like in a show or... Claim. Yeah, first off, your opinion Ooh, doesn't yeah, matter. But true. if it did, <laughs> you're, yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah. He should have just stopped what? watching uh, hey, The Empire because... Is he referencing... Like, how can he have this position? I'm assuming he's one of the subjectivity people. I mean, I'm, I'm interested sure by the fact is. that, look at that, he's got external conflict caused by outer problems, solution blocked by internal conflict, the theme is blah blah Like, I'm just like, oh, do you actually believe in this? Do you think that all films should apply to this? Because that's interesting. We could talk about it. Or we would that be an attack? I don't know. could apply the standard to a movie he likes, perhaps The Last Jedi <laughs> even, and see if it yeah. holds up to this scrutiny. Now our opinions don't matter. Oh, or a Character conflict caused by inner problem solution by misguided goal solution by external. Do you think he just Googled this and threw it up? Probably. Maybe? Plot plus he didn't come up with it. No, plot plus character equals theme. Interesting. Let me see. Plot plus character. Put it into a calculator. <laughs> I'm putting it into a calculator. It helps me with my letters. Ah, uh, yes. Yep, it's the first fucking thing that pops up. Where is this <laughs> theme? Where is this, uh, you know, thing determining theme? What does that have this... to do with defining how good a character is? What yeah, is I know. Is like, this... a character can be without theme. Like, that's entirely possible. Technically without plot. You could have a character just sitting in on the toilet. I mean, unless you define a plot as literally just whatever the character's goal is. So <laughs> right, so a character to... taking a shit. I mean, you can have a theme not related to the problem at all. It could be, you know, just the uh, idea that's being uh, talked about, the theme of love or relationships or the something. theme of love. Cool. Yeah. Like uh, I mean, Infinity I War, love, love. There's, there's a I theme of, like, putting so your loved ones above the safety of the universe, if you will, while all of that is, is just, like, the, the plot is prevent Thanos from getting the gems. Like, wow, everybody's... Uh, this is the film is saying something about familial love. I never thought I'd be watching some prick bring up a chart to show me why he doesn't like Boba Fett. <laughs> why he doesn't like Boba Fett? He's just fucking cool. Like, 
Yeah, well, yeah, like, if, this thing, if someone said he's not a... I, the, uh, he's not a good character, quote-unquote, I'd be like, do you mean he's not, like... He's not a contradictive character. character in any way, he's just really thin. Yeah, like, there's yeah, not like, enough there's not really that you can say. There. He's, not a, he's not bad in the sense that he's contradictory, yeah, like you said. There's just not much to really... There's not really much there, he's just evil bounty hunter man. Yeah. Yeah, the th there is a purpose that he needs to fill for the narrative, and it doesn't and need to be a complex it. character. It's to be uh, the bounty hunter that captures, you know, um, Han Solo. And so to achieve that standard effectively, it works that he's intimidating, that he's a bit mysterious, that he, you know, can do his job all right. He has an uh, Australian the... accent, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm, from yeah. I'm from the he space prison. He seems to fulfill no his purpose of what? As you wish. He needs to fulfill that purpose quite well um, uh, of what the character is meant to do. And so from that He's not superfluous either. He's not like, you know, redundant. He, he, th this is what I mean. You can't say that he's bad. At worst, you could say he's thin and people would be like, yeah, probably, but he's yeah, cool. And, and you could develop. So, well, this is the thing. If he said, by bad, I mean thin, I'd be like, right. He's... Well, then you need to just say thin. If by bad, you mean thin, <laughs> just say thin. Just say the word that you mean. No, no that's body shaming. Uh, but see, by oh, his own standard, that you know, you know the guy that you see press the lever on the Death Star. He was a bad character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do we know about his life? Does he have exactly. any hobbies? Does he play tennis? We're we gonna have another the Don situation here. We like, generate this whole thing for this guy. <laughs> You know, he was just having a good day at work. He called his daughter. He's like, yeah, I'll be home late. You know, I'm, I'm late at, w at work, but, you know, go, go to bed early. Tell your mom that I love her. You know, oh, like I love that unaware kid. Of what this, he's blissfully unaware of what the station even does. He's just like, exactly. yeah, I just work for the Empire, you know, trying to put food on the table. They tell me to push a button and pull a lever, and it makes and, a you know, funny my, new sound, and my, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I do. My, you know, my wife got injured on the job. <laughs> you know, Darth Vader comes by. He's like, "Good work, good, good job. You're doing a good job. You know, keep it up." He's like, lever. I don't know. Hey, honey, Darth Vader complimented me. <laughs> honey, make a cake for Vader. <laughs> I want to go visit <laughs> Vader's coming watch. over for dinner. Can you imagine, like, oh god, oh god, oh god, I got his house for dinner, and he's like, "Oh, hmm, that was very good. I'll pass my compliments on to the Emperor for you." <laughs> It's just like, I'm moving up, honey. You know, I might be working with the Emperor. I'm, I, I just got to go into work tomorrow and, you know, all I got to do is flick a lever. It's going to be great. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> then he blows up. And it's just like, his And his when you wife, work for Darth, those upper positions are always, you know, becoming available. So you're always moving up. In the <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of room for growth, a lot of potential for moving up. You have the celebration, the metal scene in, in A New Hope, it all works out. And then there's this epilogue scene where these series of stormtroopers arrive in a car and they come out with this little thing to this little house. And there's the, the wife a in folded em A folded empire flag. Yeah, you know? like, she's got a little cooking outfit on. She's like, I've just got the, the spaghetti bolognese is ready for Vader. Is he coming over? <laughs> Like, Better not be bloody ship, it's fine! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> God, imagine how many people they'd have to visit for that. They'd have, they'd have to go around like a million houses. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a good character too, so fuck him. You like the armor, and you like something that was said about the character. Okay, wait. I can tell you why I like him. Like... Beyond the arbor, I, I don't think because he's it, almost implying that he is like kind of superfluous. It's, it's it's more the look, but it's like he's pretty important. He makes um, things happen because of him. He makes the whole of like the beginning of Return of the Jedi happen. He's like the reason there's so much conflict in um, thing because you know even Darth Maul you can defend to a degree. He pulls the Jedi away from being able to help do anything else, and he kills Qui Gon, which you could say Qui Gon could have done a lot had he not been killed. Like, the, the, you know, Darth Maul's doing some stuff. And then you, the, the final comparison is Phasma, where it's like, oh, right, she was literally, like, pointless. She didn't change anything. In fact, their existence makes it so they're able to take the shields down. It's... She's, like, the, she's just the worst out of all of them, and, and a lot of people like to say, like, oh, Phasma, Darth Maul, Boba Fett, they're all the same. That argument drives me crazy. I've had a video about this in the back of my mind for, like, the last year that I've wanted to do to argue this point that they just like to compare them and it's like it's one extreme to the other like Bubba Fett does things have you heard how he talks to Darth Vader 
Oh, like he's got some balls on him. Yeah, but you know, there's absolutely the cool factor. It's just like if you're not getting that from him, from him, that's fine. It's just that uh, fucking cool. I hated how he died. It's a flat. Yeah, I don't like how he died died like a little bee. Just well, he didn't. He, a, he wasn't supposed to die in canon. There, that's the thing. So I don't know if that's a part that Disney retconned or not. Oh, Disney will bring him back if they can. Like I'm assuming in the expanded universe, he's he's alive. He set off like right, a. We all know that that's the case because people want him to have a better death than that, or at least to go on. It's just funny because uh, isn't it, isn't it like George didn't like Boba? Is that the case? I remember reading that somewhere. Oh, what's not to like? <laughs> I don't know. It might be like it would be kind of annoying if you threw like a random character in and you worked really hard on the other ones, and then everyone's like, "My favorite is that one." You'd be like, <laughs> "I don't fucking give him a humiliated death." You like him then? It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> flat character. You like the armor, and you like something that was said about the character. Other than that, the character doesn't do anything. But you that don't know why yeah, he does. Like he does a lot. Yeah, he does. He does is he telling us me. why we like the character? <laughs> this is this is what I nearly he, jumped He's to. reading our mind and telling us we like the character because of these reasons. Doesn't he trick Han Solo? He does a lot. He's sense. the reason <laughs> that Han gets captured. Yeah. He's the. the <sighs> He's also he's just tough. He's like a, you know, he's like a tough, confident, bad character. Is just like I'm gonna do what I want, kind of thing. You know, like there, mm -hmm. like we don't get a lot of screen time to develop him much, but he fulfills the purpose the character was meant to fulfill quite effectively. And there's a lot of famous characters like that. Jaws out of James Bond is just. It's not yeah. the deepest character, but, you know, we, we love that sort of character. Yeah, it's meant to be a bit weird, intimidating, freaky, mm. tough, hard to beat, you know? Like, sometimes... And the go-to when you want something got a done. happy ending, too. Yeah. You do, every character doesn't need to be fleshed out. They need to be just enough to fulfill the role they're meant to do in the narrative to move it forward. And, of course, you want the main characters to be fleshed out and, you know, engaging in some measure. But even having said that, sometimes having a two-dimensional character can be fun if it's just meant to be the type that they are. Like, have you seen um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Commando? Character's pretty thin, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stick great. around. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Wait, no, that was that was Predator. It was um, what was it? Oh, remember when I told you I'd kill you last? Yeah, that's right, you did. I lied. Oh my god! Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. Let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> oh so shit! So, I, I think an example of a badly written character that's just brilliant. Right? And in that <laughs> sense, guys... he could be brilliantly written because is uh, achieving the purpose what you want for that type of film, you know? But don't you think that's one of the problems with the new films is the characters like Bubba Fett created this universe where other stories were going on and this cool character yep. comes in that everyone's scared of. So when you watch that, your mind goes, oh, there's this big world out there. I wonder what else he did, you know, it's, especially it's, when you're uh... a kid. It's, it's really a great thing about the original ones and even the prequels, and it's a really bad thing with the sequels. The sequel, it feels like this isn't a galaxy. It doesn't feel no, like there's anything else going on. Everything is about like, these characters. Even when you first see Bubba Fett, like, there's, there's all those bounty hunters. It's like, this world they live in, this is what goes on. These are the guys they can call on, and there's, they're all over the universe. It just gives it that sense of scale. But now everything's uh, so yeah. shrunk down. I think it's it's yeah. all about when you're creating a world, you have to establish that there are other things happening. Not everything is about the main thing. Like, you know, this for Boba Fett, this is just another job. It's just he's got another mm. job. He's got another thing that he's doing. It's um it just it creates the idea of something bigger than uh than what we see. And that's that's and the great. Cantina like does that and yeah? Jabba's yeah. Palace does that. Like there's all these people coming and going that are having their own adventures. And I don't feel that at all with yeah, the new films. I don't what makes no. the world feel alive and we're just looking at one part of it. While in the new ones it's like there's nothing everything else is dead. Yeah, nothing else is happening. Except for gambling on camel horse things. <laughs> Gambling <laughs> sanctioned by the Republic that enforces slave yes. labor. <laughs> we want these guys back, everyone. Remember, I think guys, those kids should have been horrified. Bad. Bad. When Rose showed that ring to the kids, they should have screamed and, see, and been horrified that they'd come oh, back. Oh no, to... our oppressors. 
please don't hurt <laughs> that see that to me i would have been like oh shit this is interesting like how are they going to deal with this the, the people of the world hate the republic that would be interesting we can't have that. Imagine the, the Empire ran a better system than the Republic did in power and that the world was starting to become testy that they want they want it back. Yeah, well, I think that's what was awesome. happening. That's why, that's why when Leia sends out the signal for help, no one comes. Because like, they fuck hate you, it. I hope you die. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's like, why are they Even called the Resistance? Like, fuck you. They're the Resistance, but they're like the actual army. It would be like if the US army was called the Resistance. It's retarded. They're the army. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, You're man. allowed to like that character. Thank you. I like Lobot. There's no reason to like Lobot. He doesn't do anything. There's probably a reason you like something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Think I'm about it a little bit. Just think a little bit why. He might be sexually attracted to him. Yeah. I mean, just, well, maybe, maybe, you know, there could be a number of reasons. Like, that, that thing around his head. It's like a handle. Shape. Shapes his head. Mm. He says... You get a good grip on that thing. He doesn't say anything, does he? Does he, does he, does he ever say anything? I, I don't think so. He's kind of, kind of mysterious. Oh, You're makes him more attractive. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I feel like he, he maybe he doesn't actually like Lobot. He just chose him because it's like such a hard character to actually pick things <laughs> well, up. He for. hasn't thought about Lobot in fucking ages. <laughs> I don't see a Lobot figure back there. <laughs> don't you All lie right. to me. Maybe you could read the comics and be like, well, the character's really in-depth and has a lot of great things. Yeah, great. But in the movie, in the context of the movie, I liked the character separate from that. I read all the comic books. I read the books. It's like, I'm, I'm there with you. We're, we're fanboys together. But I'm also a fangirl. And I love being a fangirl. <laughs> Oh! Oh! Uh, Is that a sponsor? That sound of effect of his balls just leaving his body, <laughs> going up and, up and hopping in an Uber and leaving. I don't know how to react to this. <laughs> I need help. <laughs> look at look at chat, huh? What? What the fuck? What? <laughs> I'm I'm a, I am a fan girl. We know, we know you are. Oh, this is video to come out you and a uh... You're a proud diva queen. We know. <laughs> yes, girl, slay. Okay. And, you know, he's so over the place. He's saying, you know, we're guys who like, you know, we're geeks that like this stuff, and I'm there with you. He's like, no, you're not. The whole point of this video <laughs> is to separate him from the toxic males who, who hate Star Wars. I'm just a happy fangirl. I'm not one of those men. <laughs> I'm a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you said, is this a sponsor? <laughs> Fangirl.com. Well, is it? Com. I mean, is it? Because it's fun. Or I don't know. Because oh, no, there's it's no not. judgment. Okay. It's just discussion. I love it. And, and What is ju discussion without judgment? <laughs> I think that's a good point. Discussion without judgment. Like, How, you've already... you are judging it. You're judging it positively. Already, if you have a position... Then you've already made judgments. Yeah. And you've judged the opposing side to either be wrong or inferior to that's your a, own. That's a big idiot's line there, Fringy. What is discussion without yeah. judgment? What is discussion? Yeah, that's uh judgment? put Noise. you can put that on a t shirt, Fringy, <laughs> yeah. with uh, you know, 2019. <laughs> because it, it sounds like it'd be pretty bland when, to me. Well, it's a bit of a sing song. You're all saying the same thing at once. Yeah. If, if no judgment is made, then no then you have no take, you have no perspective, because a positive judgment is a judgment. Like, a positive opinion is a judgment. Like, it's just positive. To relate to the, the Lobot thing, right, the reason I would ask, why do you like Robo Lobot, is because I already am aware that he's barely on screen and he has barely any characteristics. So I'm curious, because I've judged him to be a pretty thin character, but you really like Attack. him. Attack. I'd like to know what I'm missing. And then it turns out I'm not missing anything, he's just insane. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's nice to know the answer. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting video. And yeah, no, we're right. going to lose Star Wars. Like, I don't know what's what going to We've do. already okay. lost Star Wars. Man. It's over. It's gone. I'd rather, it's gone. I'd rather lose it than have it turn to shit. Yeah, you know, kill it or something. Oh, yeah, you, kill remember, it you have to. This was is it? weird after saying our opinions don't matter. I can't remember who's, whose point it was, but someone did say something along the lines of like, Better we have Disney Star Wars than no Star Wars. And I was like, um... No. 
I would rather <laughs> them rather stop. Have no Star Wars. Just stop, okay? No, 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 no. At le- even if it's shit, at least we have it. Enough like, man, is oh. enough! <laughs> <laughs> I have had it! Motherfucking Disney Star Wars films. <laughs> On this motherfucking plane. <laughs> Of existence. This plane of reality. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to lose Star Wars. <laughs> Getting tired of it, but not because of the films. I enjoy Solo so much. It's a ton of fun. Rogue One, ton of fun. Last Jedi, ton yeah, of they're fun. They're all just great. It's all just great. They're all just tons of fun. They're all just tons Ton. of fun. I'd like, I'd Ton like to displace him saying, ton of fun with all the people getting murdered in Rogue One and then Darth Vader puts it in the I think that's an interesting way to describe it. Or t- <laughs> ton of fun and then just play the clip where Han Solo's getting tortured. You know, it's a ton of fun. <laughs> you know, it's screaming. Always, <laughs> all he says is ton of fun. Like, they're just, that's just, they're just fun. They're just fun. They're great. They're fun. It's a just ton of fun and the, the, the scorched skeletons of, <laughs> of Luke, Sartre, and Uncle. <laughs> It's a ton of fun. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 moment where Edgar's like, I hate you. Ton of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, ton of fun is he's getting cooked. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> it's, it seems like he's of the opinion that anything Star Wars is good. No, 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 no. What, we, we just don't want Star Wars. We want good Star Wars. Yeah, that's, that's, I'd rather have no Star Wars than bad Star Wars. That's yeah. that's it. And to test that yep. theory theory further, it's just like, have Tommy Wiseau direct a Star Wars film and see what he says then. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad idea. Uh, it's just, no, guys, it's just a space wizard movie. God. And for children, kids, get over yourself. Children I, I'm always too. amazed with these guys that have these channels on talking about movies but they seem so disinterested in having interesting movies like they just yeah like they they don't want to discuss it they don't want to judge it they it's just fun that's it let's move on it's fun i just just consume making videos (laughs) Uh, yeah i know right it's it's like it's like they don't care at all which makes it all the more strange that they talk about it yeah do they care you know like to hope unreal Star, Star Wars is fun. It's about oh. space wizards. No! It's about oh! space wizards. What are you arguing about? <laughs> I wish we could take space, space wizards. Williams. Take space wizards <laughs> away from their vocabulary. It's like, <laughs> explain what you really mean when you're saying that. Well, they, because I always assume that they're trying to say it's stupid and retarded, so who cares? It's like, that's not. Right, Lord of the Rings is stupid and retarded. You got <laughs> light feeded dwarf, light feeded elf people and dwarves. No, but- they're and just midgets. land wizards. There's a difference between land wizards <laughs> and land space wizards. wizards. <laughs> land wizards! Oh. <laughs> As if the natural state of wizard doesn't have a plane. It's just like, <laughs> you have to specify. You know, I gotta say, I never heard anybody call Star Wars silly space wizards for kids until the Disney Star Wars films. Yeah. I never heard anybody say that. Oh, yeah. yeah I, never sure. heard it. I never said that. I never said that about the movies, because no, no, that's no. stupid and dumb. I mean, I, you know, I'll be honest like, with you, when, um, I think I've said this before, kid. but when I saw Revenge of the Sith in the cinema, and, um, I'd have to, when did Revenge of the Sith come out, 2004? Uh, 2005. 2005. I would have been 12. Uh, when I saw Count Dooku's hands get chopped off, I was like, whoa. Like, and then, and then the yeah. moment where he's just, like, cut off his head, it's just like, geez. Do it! Yeah, yeah you know, as that much movie's as the, quite dark. Yeah, there's a lot of things that happen where I was kind of like, Man, I'm, I'm good to see this, oh, right? Chris I'm face when he cuts the hands off. When he looks down at his right. hands being cut off, it's fantastic. <laughs> and then you just see this guy dressed as a cloud running around in the cinema going, It's just for space with Zoom! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand, like, why anybody would say that. There's so much death in, uh, in Star Wars, and not just, like, kitty death. People getting their heads cut off, people getting burnt to death, people getting blown up in space, and seeing them the scream as they get yeah. blown up. It's not really for... Like, it, okay, it's uh, kids enjoy it. Is it really for kids necessarily, fundamentally, or is it for everyone? Well, this is a complicated question. Because you'd be like, is it marketed for a particular demographic or multiple ones? And what's the, what are they mainly going for? And I, I'd, I'd happily say maybe teenagers, younger teenagers. Yeah, I'd say so. And could they I be considered kids? I think they're trying kids? to cast yes. a broad net. They they want to get a broad kind of audience to get well, you know the most views on. Yeah, this is kind of what I'm getting at. Yep. Like me being twelve, I, you'd be like, "Am I a kid?" Then like, "Well, yeah." But when when they say for kids, I always assume they're talking about like six year olds or something. Or it just doesn't make any sense. So who cares? And it, I think another element to this stupid statement is that 
because there is you know fantasy uh, elements in a movie or even fictional elements you it's like then they're trying to say you don't have a right to take it seriously because of this yeah. one thing that is unrealistic which is just it's, uh, it's completely quite a fucked up dumb yeah. because of course you can take it seriously and in actual fact the concept of a space wizard if executed in an interesting fun way can absolutely be taken seriously well, like the I, idea I don't of the like force the implication. is cool right and then if you are consistent with how the force works you can have it work in a very satisfying way almost like a physical law if you're if you remain true to it they're not they aren't always true to how the force works but it, oh, it's just such a cop-out, weak, nothing argument to say, oh, it has this fantasy element, ergo, everything is not, you can't take it seriously at all because that's unrealistic. Fiction, by definition, is unrealistic because it's fiction, let alone they fantasy. Love Star- they love Star Wars, but they want to make fun of the thing that makes Star Wars magic. And the yeah. magic is <clears throat> it touches everyone. And even if it was made for kids, it doesn't matter. Adults lined up to see it. People took days off work to go, you know, to see when Empire Strikes Back comes out. That's the magic. And, and then they stuff. love this thing. Popping up all they... over the place because some children's content's amazing. Not to mention that yeah. there's, there's content in these films that just don't necessarily seem to be for children. They'll, they'll be happy if someone says, I adore it. And then if someone says, I hate it, they'll be like, uh, dude, it's for kids. You'll yeah. Like, and, Wait, and, uh, so why is he other, allowed to love it? <laughs> yeah. The, the other thing, the like the addition of a fantastical element in and of itself is not an inherent thing that makes something more kid like or uh, unreal or well, unrealistic, yes, but like unserious is what I'm saying. In actual fact, uh, adding an interesting fantastical element can elevate a story to be able to achieve things that a purely realistic story would not be able to do. The whole idea of the force with the dark side and the light side elevates the theme, dare I say, of the battle between good and evil to a new place which you wouldn't have been able to achieve if you kept it just in a completely realistic thing. And so it doesn't mean that because it has a fantastical element, it's more rid- ridiculous and you can't take it seriously. It's just such a st- stupid thing to say and these are often people who will point out the deep themes as well yeah exactly like they're contradicted by their own argument and like ah oh. lord of the rings is a movie about lad wizards written for children <laughs> <laughs> and the hate and the <clears throat> antis it's just like oh oh you're ruining it hayden Christensen what didn't the hell uh, well, right you over then <laughs> Write uh, your scripts. Come up with jokes. Don't just awkward. say stupid shit. Noises, head, though. Noises are enough. funny. Um, and yeah, Disney and ruined it, it first, uh, but well before we did. And the idea that people shouldn't take movies seriously is also yeah. dumb because movies can have strong influence on how people frame themselves, how they grow up and everything like that. Like superhero comic books had a big influence on me on helping me be a better person. And so people create deep connections with these fictional characters that do mean a lot to them. And to try uh, and I mean, say what you shouldn't is, take it seriously because it's fiction is what written. is what is the role of fiction if not to make us learn things about ourselves potentially and learn things about the world and like affect us emotionally. It's um and I, I don't like this uh this this sort of interpretation of if it's not realistic, like if it's not, if it's if it's uh, speculative fiction, it's childish slash immature slash dumb. That's so bizarre to me. That's so stupid, and it really devalues the work of people who work in those genres. I mean, like, what is what is the Lord of the Rings if not you know? It's speculative. It's fantasy. It's it's got fantastical elements. Is it childish? Like, fuck no. It's one of the best stories ever told. Like, what the fuck? Why are you devaluing it? <clears throat> because for kids. And kids suck. Because, 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 because by devaluing it, it yeah, by devaluing it, he then thinks it's devaluing and illegitimizing right. our logical arguments that we're applying to it, saying you shouldn't even be taking it seriously because it's an unrealistic movie, so you're Well, dumb. I, you know, I feel like Tolkien took it seriously when he wrote it, so yeah, yeah and, fuck yourself. And would you not agree, <laughs> Shad, that in doing so, he is hoisting himself by his own petard? Oz, oh, indeed. He is highlighting reasons for why he Get shouldn't be even making these arguments. Exactly. I mean, why is he arguing yeah. about this if it's just a movie about space wizards? Why, why is he yeah. taking it so seriously? Why do you care? Now? Why do you care, yeah. friend? Why, why don't you care about things that aren't for children, like Zelda? Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> yeah. It, well, it's funny, right? Because this is going to come up in the next video that we discuss. <laughs> if we get there. Next year. Yeah, if we get there at this rate. You got, keep going. I, I got to use uh, the loop, so I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm going to quickly go too. Carry on, Fringy. Oh, uh, where was I going with that? I brought up Zelda sure with Ulysses of Elsa. Oh, right, all I said was it's going to be relevant right, to yeah. uh it's, it's funny, though, because he's got a statue of Link in the background. Link doesn't have a character, necessarily. He's a blank slate by design. So when he's shitting on Boba Fett, that's real <laughs> interesting. When he has a Link thing in the background. I like Link, too, but he's basically a vessel for the, the player. He doesn't really have... Uh, other than, I guess, noble and heroic, but yeah. By the way, uh, Fring, you, I, watch, you watch Community. The reason I, I actually said... Yep. Hoisted by your own petard is because of the uh, the episode where Jeff calls Britta on it. He uses it oh, wrong, yeah, and then he says, yeah. "Do you know what that means?" And she says, "It's when they're trying like old timey folk and put it on their clothes, and they get like the hoist of it stuck or something like that." <laughs> and uh, and I was and he was like, "You need to look up what that means." And I remember being myself being like, "I don't even know what it means. I just use it." And then I looked into it. I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." And now I want to make Shad make a video on it. <laughs> you can talk about well, opinions I mean, and stuff yeah. while doing it, and you can make it all medieval style because you'd be like, most people don't even know what a petard is. You know, back back in medieval days, I imagine that they didn't have these arguments about opinions. You know, I, think I would like to believe that they, they had better yeah. things to do, like surviving. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's what? interesting. I just recently made a video on the medieval judicial dueling, and uh, it's, yeah, so many really comments were like saying, "Bring it back! This would resolve cancel culture completely." <laughs> um, <laughs> many medieval <laughs> dueling. Someone is like, "If you really mean to accuse me, I'll prove my innocence by fighting you to the death." Do you want to keep accusing me? <laughs> medieval dueling is uh really. I learned about it for like um law history related to my degree um that was a few years ago but yeah no i found it really interesting the idea of like you know trial by combat you can you know do try what was the other one that's trial by combat trial by um it was like putting your body under extreme stress and seeing if you survived was another option um maybe you talked about that in your video uh no no just the the combat side of things. Yeah, the combat one's really cool though, isn't it? It's just uh well, I mean, it's 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 trickles down into the way that our legal system works today because it is a combative. You know, it's combative. You have your prosecution, your your plaintiff, your defense. I like how <clears throat> you uh, talked about how people were using it as a way to steal people's fucking stuff. <laughs> it's like I can I can yeah. take your shit from you if I can get this right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's in the Holm Gang uh, tradition because it uh, in, uh, it varies, of course, between culture. But in some instances, you could you would get all the property and things their person uh, who you beat. Like if you defeated someone, you would get everything that they owned. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's feudalism right there. You know, we've gone from that to this guy on screen <laughs> who feels attacked <laughs> if you ask him his opinion on a character in a movie. <laughs> Time what has, has happened? certainly changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, man, history is so cool, isn't it? History is just the coolest thing. <laughs> I love history. It's awesome. Imagine him thinking he's going to lose his Funko Pops if someone beats him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would put it in the specifications or the, 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 the pre fight. He'd be like, you cannot take my Funko Pop. All right, fine. <laughs> I was only going to burn them anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. Ruin Saga, you are. Really? We've got a bunch of Anakin Skywalkers out there who are giving into the fear. They're giving into giving their into the oh fear. Don't let the, don't let the dark side win, guys. Does this remind you of this anyone, just... Rex? Oh. Star Wars <laughs> is about finding the hope. Nobody's doing that anymore. <laughs> Wow, that impression uh, is remarkably <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Wait, Shad, you know who I'm talking about, do you? I know exactly who you're talking who about. Who is it? Prove it. <laughs> uh, I hate everything. Shit, nice. I didn't think, yeah. oh, yeah, that was, what, that was a really you, embarrassing You doubt idea. me, Mola? Sometimes. I, uh, and I, I really so hate wrong that appeal to emotion there. Like, oh, this is what Star Wars is about, loving things. Bring it's like, fucking... Hatred. You don't like the prequels, shut up. If you don't like <laughs> Star Wars, then the Emperor wins. It was just bullshit coming from yeah. I hit everything anyway, because he hated the prequels. <laughs> he was like, prequels are full of yeah. shit. It's like, are you supposed to be fighting the hope? 
<laughs> it, like, unironically, if someone says that to you, how do you take that seriously? It's like, it's a, it's a franchise about finding the hope. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's still, it can right. still be bad. <laughs> this, what, what happens if there's a film about just being a good film, then what? Just the desperation. Like, <laughs> how, how is this for a, a look back, Rags? Right? Like, the amount of arguments we have seen in favor of TLJ and just Disney Star Wars in general, it's just like, there's no so way cute. they won't go... Oh, like, he's reverting to basic inane gibberish now. Don't, they're giving in to their fear. And, what? <laughs> it's uh, we're it's just, really... We're just pointing it's, out that the movie's shit. I do like so the idea that they're like, the, the movies that you love say you shouldn't do this. It's like, dude, stop it. <laughs> this is not a good <laughs> argument. Please stop. Anger. And they're going hateful. <laughs> If you love Star Wars, did you see that moment there where he was just like, "I cannot believe they're doing this. Unbelievable! This is so to my wrong. Star Wars. I have Funko Pops. Like he looks genuinely like perturbed. He's like, this is wrong. Much follow the rules that you learn in Star Wars about how to be a better person. Are you paying oh! no attention? To Star Wars? Oh, let, me, let me replay that. Don't tell I, me to like shitty things. Oh, no, fuck. I'm just going to play that again. If you love Star Wars so much, follow the rules that you learn in Star Wars about how to be a better person. What? You and your, better your implication per if you don't like Star Wars, person. you're a bad person. Yeah, wow. yeah. If you don't there like Star Wars, you're a bad good person. person. According to Star Wars. Star Wars. I want to follow this rabbit hole all the way through. Like, what does Star Wars actually the, teach okay if, if, if it does establish any like themes or statements about how a person should behave what are they and then i want to apply it to him and see if you know this is just a contradictory mess I i'm really hearing go, he tells go, us go what kill the my rules father are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no 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 Straight no, after no, 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 no. To you're go. supposed to go into your nephew's bedroom while he's asleep Get out your kitchen. Ooh, and then yo, try and cut his head off. <laughs> and then as soon as he realizes, go, I'm sorry, I had a bad dream. <laughs> <laughs> bad dream. <laughs> sorry, moment of weakness. But then, if it's you are funny. the nephew in that scenario, you need to learn that you need to kill every child in the house at that point, if that ever happens. <laughs> the deed must be completed. <laughs> you, need, you need the old grandpa to wear a black cape saying, do it. <laughs> I wonder if he's re referencing, you know, the Emperor's words where given to your hatred and your journey mm. to the dark side will be complete. Will be complete. I can't and believe You know what's stuff. interesting about this? That's actually contradicted because Luke technically does give in to his hatred and he w grabs his lightsaber and goes to kill him. Darth Vader stops him. Luke uses his passion to defeat Darth Vader and he doesn't turn to the dark side as a result. Just, a, just an interesting thing there, and so it would almost seem like that the uh, the emperor, the evil emperor, was lying about that. Maybe, just maybe. No, Ridiculous. it's almost like they were good movies. What happened to good movies? Dead. <laughs> <laughs> they died because there's no such thing as bad movies now. They're all great. Stop judging things. You paying no attention? You attack women on the internet. Complaining oh, about women. There we go. Oh, what what woman is I on the internet? When did we come to that again? So there are some things we call telling statements, and what we mean by that is they say something, and we can draw a lot out of their character yeah, from when that. When you say them, it says a lot about you. It's uh, a good old Freudian slip. Thanks, Freudian, for coming up with that. I mean, Freudian, I, even, Freud? I think he very much intended to say that. I, I think his name was Freud. Not Freudian. Oh, okay, Thanks, Freud. Freud. <laughs> Thanks, Freud. <laughs> Thanks, Freudian. <laughs> that was actually funny, though. That was a good catch, Rags. I would have missed that funny if not. I didn't know that, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Freudian. Thanks, Big Freudian. Idiot. Knowledge, mate. <laughs> I actually like Please, Someone take that. Just do something with that. <laughs> Come up with something. Big Idiot's <laughs> biggest inspiration was Freudian. <laughs> Oh, what was Freudian about him? It's like, no, it was it was Freudian. And just going back on what he was saying, you know, about learning from Star Wars, 
Star Wars, at its most basic form, is a story between good and evil, and specifically about good opposing evil, and that also means good hating evil, okay? Again, people thinking that hate is a universal bad. No, if you hate evil, that's a good thing, and you can easily make an argument that that's exactly what Star Wars is trying to tell, oppose what is wrong. Um, and, you take know, a stand. I, 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 take, take a stand, stand on what is right. That seems to be what I'm doing, or what we're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, ooh. Trying to big ooh. yourself up as a good guy, Shad. Is that right? Well, I, I don't know. Like, people might say this is... Because, like, I don't know this guy personally, and he could be a really friendly, nice guy, but I disagree with what he's you saying. You are a man. And, and he is vilifying <laughs> a lot of people here, particularly a whole gender, and he is making these huge... False equivalence. You hate Star Wars equals you are attacking women online and you hate women. Like what he said here. Where the hell is that connection coming from? <laughs> it reminds from? me of the Quentin oh. Trump quote. You're just like, whoa, uh, like, where does this come from? And he might think Ryan Johnson's a woman. Oh. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> that's yeah. the only person I've been attacking. Luke Skywalker complaining about Raylo. You want Luke to be Luke, but you're not even acting like a Luke. You're not being a good person. I don't need to act like a character to want them to be consistent. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. And again, it, <laughs> imagine he's acting like the new everyone. Luke. Bizarre. Yeah, I'll act like the new everyone. Luke. I'll be weak. I'll give up on people. Try and kill yeah. them. I'll act yeah, just exactly. like him. The slightest, hint, the, the slightest hint of weakness means we need to, you know, probably kill them, even though he tries, he stops himself. But still, I mean, uh, that's a lesson we could take from Luke. Like, don't give, you know, don't try and bring, because like Luke tried to always save people. He tried to save his, you know, Darth Vader, his father, who was like a genocidal mass murderer. The but, idea uh, is that he would be willing to put himself in such peril that he would very likely die because he wouldn't give up on somebody. And yet he had a bad dream. He wouldn't give up on kill Darth a child. Vader. <laughs> and again, he's all basing this on this vilifying false equivalence that you dislike Star Wars or now the Last Jedi means you hate women. Stop hating women. It's like it's come dude, off it. It's uncanny how As many people actually that. feel that way. Like it's insane. Oh, it's so now I'm retarded. thinking about Luke. It's I can't imagine like the betrayal of Luke's character. As I just said that out loud. It's just like he, man, Ryan Johnson just did not give a fuck. Like when he wrote that, he didn't give a shit. No, he did not. Be like Luke, stay home, hate everyone, <laughs> hate when women turn up at your door, drink tea milk, <laughs> just be a prick and be just like Luke. Turn your back on everyone. I think the best sentence to just refer to is I came to this island to die. Like, oh. <laughs> Why don't you just kill yourself? Just jump off the fucking mountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, act like Luke. Give up when you have a setback, you know? Um, uh, just get, abandon the world. Yeah, because that's what Luke does. He gives up. Mm -hmm. That's his yep. character. He gives up on things. We all Famous know giver I mean, upper. Oh my god. I'm Dude, having a mental breakdown here. <laughs> like, as I think <laughs> about the betrayal of his character. <laughs> Treating people well, like who, like did you learn nothing? Do you literally watch it and you're like, it's about wars? Uh, <laughs> there are wars in it. Uh, he's uh, a man anymore. Holy crap! Interesting. You do. That also seems that a lot of people there. consider it criticism of fascism and capitalism, like, and that the wars are representative of those systems being brought to their negative conclusion. Like, a lot of people feel that way, including his, let's say team, the people who think that we hate women often say that it's trying to be critical of capitalism uh, through war profiteering and so when he's like, it's about wars it's like, yeah, a lot of them would say that it's trying to be critical of warfare <laughs> like, even I do like the idea that uh, the biggest media franchise in the world that makes billions of dollars is about, you know, the badness of profiteering oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, okay <laughs> It's a, it's a struggle to understand from me, from this guy. I just, like he's, like, he's trying to be like, you're all dumb, you're not seeing Star Wars for what it is. Uh, and I, I'm assuming he's gunning for subtext slash the truth of the characters. I In the stars. Is that, is that as much as you can receive? I can't wait until he says, people just hate Star Wars because there was definitely enough room on that door for Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's a message there. 
about acceptance, about tolerance. I don't think uh, it's no, very because very tolerant. You, you don't, it doesn't the seem dark very side tolerant at all. <laughs> this is hilarious. The dark side cannot be tolerated. It is a paradigm that does not work. The dark side cannot coexist with the well, light can you side. Say this when it's every shite, Star Wars mate. film is about trying to eradicate somebody, someone's faction. Like it's about tolerance. It's like, oh, excuse me. No, <laughs> like, it's, it's never been about that. No. Whenever like he hits the one of these virtue could... signaling words, he gives himself a little pat on the back. Like there's a little break in after the word because he's so happy he's hit that word. Tolerance. Yeah. tolerance. I said tolerance, which means I am tolerant, and tolerances are good. This uh you remember that South Park episode where they went to the uh the Museum of Tolerance and then and then like <laughs> they're like, you know, it's good to be tolerant, and then they see somebody smoking a cigarette outside, and they're like, get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> filthy smoker. <laughs> you know, top breath. And it's just that, like, yeah. That's almost exactly what we're seeing here. He just promoted tolerance when he is like so vilifying people. Men, just, men like, are ruining movie. Star Wars. Be tolerant, men are guys. Ruining men Star are ruining Wars. Star Wars. Be tolerant. Be tolerant. Be tolerant. Well, it's the it's hilarious like, hypocrisy, it's... right? Be tolerant of everything except intolerance. And then you're like, but if you're intolerant of people who are intolerant, that aren't you intolerant, and therefore we should be intolerant, you're intolerant of you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And he's done the redneck voice. He's done a lisp. Yeah, like he he's done voice. the retarded like, yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> so tolerant. So it's, this is the voice only I'm... bad people use. Also, no one I'm... ever uses that voice in a good context. It's always negative. <laughs> I'm sure it's bad, stupid, ugly people who have this voice. <laughs> only bad, stupid people. Isn't it hilarious like that like, Trump had this voice? I find it funny that uh, the redneck voice is just the voice that Americans often do for stupid. It's so, That's a little bit mean. It's an accent. There's a message. It would be like if uh, if you presented bad message. arguments as like I I you know this this is what I think of this movie. I think it is a good movie, you know, or something like that. It'd just be like, wow, that's a bit racist. racist. Jesus Christ! And then he just did something about racism. Can we go back He's a bit? He's nothing in like. Oh, there's a message racism. about racism. Is he implying people who dislike the movie are now racist Tolerance. as well? I don't there's even a get message. It. I don't even know what the there's a message, message is. about the racism that the humans are to, like the empire is racist towards other aliens. Uh, is it? Uh, what? Is, is it? it? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, <laughs> the empire just doesn't like anybody. I mean, if you really think about it, what does the empire do? It's like it's trying to get the layers captured a weak spot, technically for their giant super weapon, so they kill a bunch of people in order to try and to coax it out of here. That's like the first major evil act we see in it. Um, but that's not because they're aliens. Yeah, pretty that's, non-discriminant. Yeah, like that they're, 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 they're not trying to the wipe out other races yeah. because races are inferior. They're trying to conquer races and bring them all under their yeah. umbrella rule. I was like, saying, look at the bounty hunters. They seem pretty diverse. You had like a reptile yeah. man and a robot. <laughs> they seem to be okay. Them on board. <laughs> Didn't mind them coming on board. I mean, the Empire grew out of the Republic, which was a unifying, a, 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 a unified nation of all these different <laughs> races in one. And essentially, if that is what turned into the Empire, the Empire is a unification of all these races under, you know, a dictator. But there, is, there has not never racist. been an implication. There has never been an implication of uh, human supremacy in Star Wars. I um, don't know where two, he could have gotten that from. Two things from chat. DeFrosty Robot said that it's, in the, it's definitely covered in the expanded universe that they have racism toward aliens. Um, but this guy's already oh. specified that we're talking about the oh. movies, so... Let's talk about the movies only. Uh, Jay said the fact that the Empire is entirely human could be an implication of the human supremacist angle of the Empire, perhaps? Maybe. I don't uh, know. I didn't... Yeah, you'd, you like, would think that there'd be a lot more race, especially considering how diverse the Rebels are. But is Snoke human? I think <laughs> so. We'll is. never know. I think so. <laughs> yeah, we don't know, yeah. Well, are there any, are there the any aliens troopers. in the employ of the Empire? Ever. Uh, not that you see you in the original trilogy or that I remember of. Rocky relationships with people like Jabba, right? Like, they're, they're on the Outer Rims, so they just leave him alone. But then again, that doesn't really mm -hmm. mean they don't hate him. Um, but, it is worthwhile to remember that these movies are made by human beings, so you're gonna have more human characters just by default, because that's just your actors, well, that's what like you've got. How Rags just said, you know, like, in the Rebel team, you, you do get a selection of aliens, you got Chewbacca on the, uh... Yes, but it is mostly human beings, because it's a movie, it's practical.
Yeah. To have more people. It's just that uh, I don't think but we there are leaders the amongst the rebels, like. Akbar. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That I uh, not so, but it's more just like I'm thinking about the fact that it is a film that ha you know it's the same as like in Star Trek how all the aliens are just like humans with weird prosthetic yeah, makeup. Yeah. A lot of people, so, you know, like the Thrawn. only implication. Yeah, yeah I was about to say Thrawn. Thrawn, yeah. But if we're only considering the movies, then we can't count Thrawn. Yeah. Yeah, but well, Thrawn is a uh, part of the the oh, new wait, expanded Darth universe as well. Does he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's not a he's, he's not a human. Yep. Is Grievous is human? It... Oh, is he not uh, he, he's no, he wasn't. He was not a human. Technically, not Grievous a... wasn't in the Empire. I don't know if this matters. Well, he was well, part of the, the Confederates. Yeah, he was a CIS, wasn't it? But uh, mm -hmm. and then Maul was only a Sith, not necessarily Empire. But I doubt that if Anakin didn't follow through and he still had Maul, that that the Emperor would have ditched Maul when he became part of the Empire. No. This is interesting to think about. If they'd had a scene like at the start of Force Awakens where they went into a village and kill all the aliens, take the humans captured, maybe... Yeah, that might have been the point. But there's, ne that. there's never anything like that. They, they think, just blow up whole planet. The important point is that they um, I wouldn't say there's an overt message of the Empire hating aliens. No. Uh, no. To, to sort of reflect racism bad. I don't think that's well, really Well, the... I, I think, uh, I think um, unlike... Because the Nazis, one of the main goals was to purge certain races, and that was obvious, whereas the Empire's principal goal is to establish complete control over the technically, galaxy. Technically, there's only grounds to say that the Empire might be not racist, but is it speciesist? Because... Maybe. Because... Uh, I there were black people in higher up positions in the empire. Uncle Tom's, wasn't there? you mean? Race traitors. <laughs> well, I think I think the idea would be that in in a in a world where you have aliens, like races in between, you know, like of a species, it's less relevant because you have a lot more in common than you do with an alien. You know, it's true. But uh, if he's trying to say there's a message about racism that's overt in Star Wars. I, uh, I don't it's not see overt. It I don't know what to say. It's yeah. not overt. I can't yeah. see it. Yeah, it's I when I, I know when I was a kid, especially, I didn't even think about it. It was never even a thing that came to my mind. Yeah. A bear and so I wish when the you have to I wish when the there emperor were, there were many aliens in the Galactic Senate, and the Senate was only dissolved as of yeah. a New Hope. So, yes, arguably, that's right. I was about to say, I wish when the emperor got power, he just stood up there and went, "I can't wait to kill half you fuckers." <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think it exists. I mean, if anything, humans are portrayed as being a little inferior to other races who are either stronger, more capable, more force, you know, uh, yeah, connected Chewie's and pretty stuff strong. like that. Yep. Maybe like, humans don't. Is it Yoda's race only... that, like, just linked with the force better? I'm not sure about I don't but know. That might be a similar... that one. Yeah, I don't well, know. Force is racist, then. Well, Maybe well, humans are only the, the weak ones that go to the bad side. All the other aliens are too strong and too pure. Darth Maul. Well, except for Darth Maul. Yeah. Grievous. Yeah. Well, Grievous isn't connected the Empire to the Force. Is yeah, Grievous he doesn't have any Force abilities. Force. I'd have to no. but, uh, look into the EU. Grievous, man. Grievous is one of my favorite characters. If 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 I got the opportunity to make a General Grievous movie, I would jump at the opportunity. I think you could do a really cool story with him. Races towards other aliens. Region. They're regionalist against center worlds or core worlds. Do you think there's uh, a uh, that is isn't racial, that's political and pragmatic? This isn't really explored in the movies that extensively. Like, if you ask the average viewer, what's the difference between the deep core and the core worlds? They'd be like, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Well, most people wouldn't know because it's it's not like a major... Like, that's really the thing for the big Star Wars fans. You know? Like... Yeah. Yeah, the only time it's really even hinted at for weird. the most part is in episode one, where we learn, oh, Tatooine's far away. They don't accept Republic Yeah, and Coruscant and all that. Yeah. yeah, they must be far away. Credits are no good here. Man, then remember when they're... world building was a thing? I love Mason world building. They're racist against droids. Luke is... They're racist um, against exactly. droids. That's interesting. Droids aren't even a race, first off. They're arguably not even sentient. Well, the implication is that droids don't have free will. They will do what they're told. Even though they have personalities and stuff, yeah. they always obey their orders. It depends on which yeah. one. Only in the original trilogy. It depends yes. They're just robots. Well, some of them are just robots, and then some of them have implied sentience. Like, a, a lot of people would like to think that R2-D2 is uh, sentient to a degree. The fact that he seems to be uh, playful to a degree. 
Well, I think uh, I think the 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 droids, the uh, the, the Confederate droids, which I love. I think they're great. Uh, the, they have personalities and they make jokes and they are afraid of death, but they still obey orders and they're not valued. So, like, what the, are um, they? B2SO, and <clears throat> if we're considering Disney as well. Well, I, I mean, I don't even know if he's just referencing the OT here. I don't know. I like how we're getting so much more discussion out of just the things that he blasts by. <laughs> we're just like, let's talk about this for 10 years. <laughs> Kind of racist against droids. The way he treats them, Leia, Han, all of them—they all no. That's because they're robots. It's like saying you're racist against your toaster or your oven. I was gonna say this is complicated. This is a weird because you remember they like we don't. Is it they don't? Do they say we don't serve your kind here? Uh, in the even in the a droid way? tells yeah. another droid that we don't serve droids here. Droids don't give a fuck because they're just robots. They're not like AI. I just think it's, at it least depends the on vast, which one we're vast, talking about. vast majority seems, of the ones that yeah. we're talking about. I'm just not sure if that is definitively established if they're fully sentient and self aware. No, I, I don't know if we know. Well, I was going to say, Solo kind of just lets the cat out of the bag with that one. It's like, look, if you take the things off them, they all want to be free. It's like, uh. No, no, this fucks. No, yeah, it's like this no. fucks with everything. Well, because I, I just wonder, it's like, how the fuck did that even happen? It's literally like a droid with a single purpose. Did you program it to have sentience? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you That's put cruel, sentience in your toaster? I have no mouth and I must toast. <laughs> I mean, you can toast. I have no bread and I must toast. It reminds me of, uh, you know, Rick and Morty. What is my purpose? You pass butter. <laughs> and oh my god. There would only be a message in Star Wars. Way, the Clone Wars would probably give people reason to not like droids. Yeah, really. A whole yeah. army of well, evil droids who want to destroy that's the That's what Republic? I was getting at. Like, if he's going to say that there is a message against, you know, racism because droids are mistreated in Star Wars, in actual Star Wars, no one's, like, there's no nothing mentioned in the original trilogy to imply that mistreating droids was bad. It's <laughs> like that they either deserved it or they're just, you know, you know. Oh, they definitely deserve it. Things. <laughs> the only time when anyone brings up that this might be bad is in the Solo movie with that weird droid that's like, droid liberation yeah right? and then but it's in not every other movie it, like they star wars isn't saying that mistreating droids is bad they mistreat the droids and say yeah it, it's perfectly but, fine yeah, that the, seems the to be the message much tools it, it would almost yeah. be like if an alien watched a movie where, where a, a man and his dog are doing hunting and stuff and then the alien is like this movie's trying to tell us that it's uh, it's bad to be speciesist to the, to the dog because the dog doesn't want to be there the dog's being mistreated it's put on a leash and you'd be like i don't think you're grasping that's not yeah, I think you're drawing something out of there that's not there. Like, I don't think I mean, that there was enough material in the OT about <laughs> the position of droids in society and whether or not they, like, what what the systems are, how they're established, like, what even which droids? Because you can't establish that every droid is sentient. Is a fork with a little battery attached? I don't know. What's what's the lowest degree of robot? Does it? Do they all have sentience? Well, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's our, our, what about what what about clones? Were the clones? Like uh, the clones have the, a chip in their head that makes them respond directly to the commands of the Emperor when Order 66 happens. So they don't technically have free will. They have free will up until it comes to that. They That's have kind free of will clearly even established. That, they're all put into, like, none of them decide. Well, to... it depends on, because uh, remember the Clone Wars. <clears throat> in the Clone Wars, there are certain things that happen that imply sentience. Oh, no, yeah, I agree with decisions. you on that, but again, I think we're restricted to the films with this discussion, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I, if we are, then, yeah, that's just not enough about the clones to tell us they do what yeah, they're told. Doesn't, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing that's mentioned about, like, clone rebellions where they want to not be soldiers. Well, no, it's, it's only in the expanded universe where that kind of stuff happens, yeah. or the, the show. Because in the show, there are clones who are like, no, nah, fuck the status quo, we're slaves, this is not right. Hmm. But even if they are sentient, Star Wars isn't making a statement that it, you should not mistreat them. It's actually saying that, yeah, you can mistreat droids because they're not human. It's not... Just well, this metal. is the thing. It's like, tell me why it's bad. And then they go, well, because C-3PO is clearly sentient. And I'd be like, is he? How do you know that that's not his programming exactly? Is there a part in the... Well, he could be programmed that... to make himself look like that. Yeah, you know? I was going to say, we have really competent AI today that can come across as human-ish. Like, and Han, when he gets annoyed with CP3PO, he just turns him off and just shut him up. And that, and yeah, I know, right? Again, I mean, like, you know, we, we never quite get enough information. And, and I said Solo kind of just 
goes nuts. Ah, uh, so large! Yeah, it's like, it just all of a sudden <laughs> pops up that all droids are sentient and they want to be free. It's like, whoa, whoa. But don't they treat, yeah, don't they treat that droid that she's malfunctioning? She's not behaving in the way that, that like, it should? And that they're like, you know, only um, Lando is the only one that's letting her behave that way. And anyone else is like, you should probably just wipe her memory and reprogram her. And so th I think that even in Solo implies that it's not real sentience. It's just malfunctioning. And the, by no, the but it's when she there. takes off the um, the bolts off the other robots and they go Which into a like, dance party uh, mode. And they are in the OC, okay. they establish them as like, they make it so that they're essentially leashed, like enslaved. Yeah. Well, they, they do what they do what you say. If that's they're, the yeah, main they're bound thing. to an owner, right? That's kind of what it does. Yeah, I mean, they don't really go into it that much, though, because you know these are actually really serious questions to ask about artificial intelligence, and this they just don't have the time. I don't think. Yeah, at least no, in the main Star movies. Wars wasn't trying to answer um, that question. Exactly, the exactly. Maybe <laughs> Star Wars wasn't. You know, the whole purpose behind it wasn't to make a statement about. AI and self determination. No, which maybe, is fine. Maybe I, it wanted to be yeah. a movie about good versus evil with these, you know, themes and stuff, dare I say, um, with cool action adventure and all, you know, all these cool things. And any implications of racism might just be com a completely no. non issue. No, everything is political. Oh, every, yes. <laughs> Well, I mean, this is the, these are the video essays we often criticize, but they'll be like, if you can't draw something like that out of a film, then you're not very good at film criticism. As in, it can't, right, it can't okay. just be the surface level. What if it's not what in the was film? Actually there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, is that they'll be like, it can't just be what was there. It has to be something you've derived out of it in terms of a pure meaning upon what uh, life is itself. Stupid, stupid, well, stupid, like, dumb. I'm on board for people giving their ideas of how they interpreted something. I just don't like the idea that if you, you don't do that, you've missed the point. It's like, you just invented the point. <laughs> exactly, and especially when they try and say this is definitively what that scene or this movie means. This is what it's saying. It's like, no, it's not. I mean, you I mean, can interpret just, it. We just said it right now. Way. He's like, you've missed the part where it's about racism, and we've just discussed for ages. Like, is it? Is it really? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, the thing is, do you think he's even fucking thought about this? <laughs> no, no, he hasn't probably had a not. All day. He doesn't think. No, he's got a fucking it, Lando was... Calrissian Funko Pop. You think he thinks? <laughs> I'm trying to work out how he's getting from this point back to his men ru ruining Star Wars. I thought with that heading we were going to, I don't right, know, talk yeah. about the influence yeah, I thought this of video the filmmakers. Would be much more Very well structured, this video. Droids. It's wow, he probably should have written a script. Lando is one of the first people I've ever seen not talk down to a droid. Everyone talks down to droids in the Star Wars universe. Well, maybe he is... fucking should. Um... Does, uh, does Leia talk down to C-3PO and R2-D2 or is it just C-3PO? I don't think Luke does. Luke values Luke the doesn't. Droid. He he loves R two D two, and he's always happy to see R two. And he cares when R two D two is in trouble. Well, you know, we when he's say going, the same Wah! thing about pets. R two. Right, like we own so them, our, but we so still our pets, care about them. Yeah, our our what is higher in I guess in the humanity tier is it pets or droids? And it goes back to what we were saying before. He's openly admitting that droids are mistreated in Star Wars. So that would imply if Star Wars was intending to make a statement about how droids should be treated, is that they should be treated bad, not that they should be treated good. So, yeah. Well, it's like, what is... Uh, fuck, this is stupid. Let's move on. <laughs> he's, he's not thought about this. Yeah, we, we've, we've been delving so deep into something yeah. he brought up, but he doesn't actually give a shit about it at all. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, Always been an allegory and a metaphor for racism. No, it hasn't. <laughs> no, it no, it has allegory. <laughs> everything's a metaphor. Everything's an allegory. Nothing is actually what it is. It's something else that's different than if what you, it like, is. Can you picture that they were generating this universe? There's going to be high tech in it, meaning there's probably going to be robots because everybody likes robots. Artificial intelligence tools that are designed to be able to be discussed with and, and apply. They can do jobs without you having to control them. And then you have this C-3PO and R2-D2 characters, and this guy on set is like, Ah, so this is about racism. <laughs> you, could you imagine the beard like, Sorry? He's like, Oh, these are C-3PO. You're trying to say that you shouldn't be racist to people. I imagine could just see saying to someone, like, have you, Who are you? <laughs> like, why are you have here? you seen that film that t tackles racism? And people would be thinking of Mississippi Burning or American <laughs> History X. <laughs> 
no, no, Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> the, the new hope, but it was the hope of the robots to one day be free. Because remember, Darth Vader is black or it wears black. Oh, well, they, yeah, the they do make that yeah, argument. He's good. He got whitewashed. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one. <laughs> Burn the black right off him. Uh, that must have been hot. Like I said, there's no place they won't go. Star Wars is about racism. The thing people, the problem people had about episode one is it was, people felt it was what? racist when it's supposed what? to be is about not being racist. What? Is that the problem people had with this? Uh, Hang on. Uh, I have never uh, heard that criticism. I have uh, several uh, questions. <laughs> when has people been saying that? Is he referring to the fact that there's George a lot of stereotypical George? voices for aliens? People had a problem with George doing that, but... Uh, but how is yeah. it... <laughs> How would it be racist to have them be characters? Is he talking about how like the stereotypical Jewish accent comes from a character with a big nose? Is that is that what he's gunning for? Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> is it? Uh... Are those the big problems with the movie? <laughs> I like that he I... he set this up by saying that Star Wars is all about trying to say racism bad, and then Episode One does the racism. <laughs> and you're like, uh... It was so confusing how he said it because he was just saying how important the issue of racism was in A New Hope. But then in episode one, it wasn't meant to be about race and it turned into it and that's bad. It was just such a confusing line he said then. Yeah. And at a stretch, if he, he at a stretch, if they try and say it's racist because of certain racial stereotypes and things like that. It would be no more so than nearly every other movie made of that time either. And so why is it standing out? It shouldn't. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, even, even then, this isn't exactly the issue people took with it. Not that of I remember, all the no. problems that episode one had, I think that the potential racism of the movie, kind of down in the list. <laughs> <laughs> felt that the Viceroy were racist. They felt that Jar Jar Binks was a racist character because it played into stereotypes. Now we're in a time where people are saying they wish Jar Jar Binks is back. Uh... Yeah, the new ones must be really shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He, he played into stereotypes and, and he's, he's a make-believe character. Like, even that's... You're the one well, that's been racist. You know what's right? interesting about it? To claim Jar Jar Binks is a stereotype of black people is coming from a racist position because that's, that's I mean. them like, saying they think black people act that yeah, way. Yeah, what and the this character, yeah. who is clearly not black, they're associated... <laughs> and stupid and falls over. Is like, that, that's, he's the one that? being racist. Did people say that? that, that is, a lot of people Binks. do that's, say that. The... What? How did the fuck do they see that? What is going because on? They must be racist if they think that's the way black people act to co to create the connection between Jar Jar and black people. Oh my god! I never. I can't. What the? Huh. He, what, wasn't he voiced by a black um, guy? A black uh, actor? Yeah, well, I, I figured that wasn't relevant. I figured it wasn't relevant. You know. <laughs> I mean, well, this is the thing. Like the Chantanarians, what I think they're called. Uh, is like they're Asian stereotypes because they they talk like this, and it's just like um, you have to highlight exactly how that becomes racism exactly, like a stereotype voice where you can't actually claim that the creator did it because he wanted to. Like you saying George Lucas wants to make fun of an Asian stereotype. Is that where we're going? It's strange. And then how do you get around that if 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 all the good people have English accents. Like, there's no way around that. That means you can't do any accents, so no one's going to be happy. And I like the the way he brings it around, back to the, the, the folks of the argument, is and people want hit Jar Jar, Jar Jar racist, people want him back over what we're getting in new Star Wars. Like, that's so <laughs> bad. You're like, right, okay. <laughs> Does anyone actually want him back? I haven't really I mean, got on that one. Yeah. I'd I say fuck it's it. Yeah, I would, I They're only doing it, it to troll <laughs> to comment on how bad the new ones are because Jar Jar is a terrible character, and uh, so like I don't think anyone in like non sarcastically wants Jar Jar back, but they do. I, it I non sarcastically troll. want him back. You see, there we go. <laughs> uh, oh, it was Nimodians. Is that what I was? Nimodians uh, are the Asian. Yeah. yeah. What are Chantanarians? What am I thinking of when I said? Maybe I'm making that up. 
Someone in chat, tell me what I'm tell me what I'm referring to because I clearly don't know what I'm referring to. Down chat. Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> I don't know why Droid Rebellion. <laughs> it has nothing like. <laughs> Come on. What? If you what? think what? What are you Droid saying? Rebellion. Sorry, it <laughs> worse. Sorry. Get worse. <laughs> Just get there. Well, I, I'm interested. Is he's no, talking about the Droid Rebellion <laughs> in Solo now? I think, which we we have mentioned, is an outlier regarding how droids generally behave in Star Wars. It was very confusing indeed. Any like anything more than about freeing slaves, um, which you should be for, just so no, you know. I, I fucking love Thanks slaves. For <laughs> Thank you for telling us. <laughs> Without him telling us, I would not have known that. And you're seeing the parallels. You are seeing deeper into a message. Writers don't always have the intention that we see in their messages. What are you even talking about? What, what is this video even right now? Like what what are what is this guy actually Men are ruining Star Wars? You don't follow it, Rex? We're hey, talking about droid he's, slavery. He's saying even if the writers didn't intend it, this is what it is saying. Yeah. Now I think the droid yeah. rebellion was fairly intentional in making a statement about slavery. That one was, but the original Star Wars? No. I'd say not not no. The slave labor in the capitalist planet was probably making some form of a state. Slavement? There because probably. there was no slavery before capitalism. That's correct. It doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It was under republic control and the whole film is fighting to get the republic back in charge. It's just like, okay, so we want capitalism, I guess. Well, assuming that's what they're referring to, because if you remember, the whole point of Canto Bight is war profiteering, but it's like, the war's only been happening for two days, hasn't it? <laughs> so you can take something from a message that's separate from the, what the writer intended, but it's still applicable. If you see something that, and you think like, oh, this is, uh, this is feminist propaganda, yeah. Because Lord forbid there is equal grounds for men and women. <laughs> what do you. You can't say that when you've made this video. <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> equal ground for men and women, Mr. Men suck. God forbid. We have Again, equal rights. Come on. There's a lot of there's a lot of false equivalents, false you know statements here and stuff like that. When the, certain feminist messages that are injected into pop culture these days aren't about equality between men and women. Generally, it's a bit more about female supremacy. Very like, female supremacy. My next video at, is gonna dip into this pretty heavily because it's yeah, it's it's pretty blatant. When people say, "Oh, you." Feminism is just about equal rights. They're fucking lying to your face. You like how we have this whole, uh, we want to start renaming words that have men or man in them. Like, mankind needs to be turned into people kind. I'm curious if we can <laughs> apply that with feminism. We should call it everyoneism. Mm. Don't want to be blocking sure out anybody, do we? No, Midwife? No. Um, that should be mid-person. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, because you get a lot of feminists are upset when people say like I'm an egalitarian. They'll be like, "Oh, you should be, you should just be a feminist. Why are you doing that?" And you're like, "Because I just don't like what the term implies." And they'll be like, "Jo." Oh. But they well, do the same thing. Called, so. He called himself sorry. a fangirl, so anything's possible. Yeah. So <laughs> a feminist message nowadays that's being injected into pop culture does not perfectly equate to a message about equality, okay? But that's what he's taking there. It's like, how dare you object to, you know, feminist propaganda because it's all about equality. It's like, no, you should take it by case by case and have a look at what the, you know, message is actually implying. Um, uh, but again, he likes to uh, make false equivalents and broad statements and straw manning and things. I don't know what you mean, Chad. This video has been gloriously honest and straightforward and logical. I'm I'm just shocked at how accurately he gets my points. Yeah. The fact that women would need propaganda means there's a disparity. It's fine. Women do not need <laughs> propaganda. What are you talking about? Yeah. Have you never oh, met like a woman in your it, life sir. that is proactive that that gets shit done? Because <laughs> I don't know, man. Like. Those poor women, they need Star Wars to tell them they can do better in life. And how like he's just up on his own video. that is. Yeah. We get it. I shouldn't have even made the video. You're never going to learn. Yeah, you can tell that when he uploaded this, he was like, I hope this was good. <laughs> I hope something uh -huh. happened in this video. You don't get it. 
we've already established that that's okay keep not getting it we're, we're not gonna Wars... that's not how you get people to get it okay if you just say okay. you hate women that's star not no Wars one's gonna is start everyone. getting it no. i want to unpack that a bit okay because anyone is free to enjoy star wars but that is not an equivalent thing to saying star wars is for everyone there are certain uh elements and beats in that story in which caters it to a certain audience okay that doesn't mean it's for everyone in fact you would say because it's action adventure and stuff like that originally perhaps a larger male audience enjoyed star wars over uh, over women enjoying it Sexist. just like interestingly enough more women tend to like pride and prejudice than men and uh, like i can read pride and prejudice and acknowledge it is one of the best written novels of our time okay but guess what even though Pride and Prejudice probably structurally, um, sociologically, and all these elements of to how deep it gets into the uh, so many you know commentaries on certain things, I could say that Pride and Prejudice is far more technically um, uh, completed and executed. So it's a better written book or story than Star Wars. But guess what? I like Star Wars more because I like laser swords. Just, just saying. You, you know? just like space wizards. You just admit no, you're I just, a child. I was right about you. Yeah, I must be a child because I actually like space wizards, right? And that Thank is because people Shad. do tend to like different things. And surprisingly enough, there is some um, similarity between the things that men like. Men, so, so surprising, I know, tend to some like similar like things as other men. And women tend to like similar things as some other women. It's not <laughs> universal, but it does happen. You actually Gadgets. fall into general standards of what men and women like differently. And general Star Wars standards are sexist. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it just amazes me that people try and argue this so obvious fact of life that men and women tend to like different things on average. Yes, a woman is more than free to like Star Wars. That doesn't mean Star Wars was particularly catered to appeal to women more than men. It's not Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is a movie about space wizards intended for children. Clearly, it must be sexist. There are people out there who literally have been basically brainwashed into thinking that there's absolutely no difference at all between men and women. Well, and, but, and I mean, any, a lot any of them sort will of simultaneously difference argue that men ruin everything. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the very premise of this video is implying there's a difference between men and women. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess you would agree, because it's easy to talk about Star Wars with uh, with women these days, you know? They don't hate. Yeah. Hate is bad. I like to yeah, remind sorry. everybody about I mean, I would I would flatly disagree with him with the statement that Star Wars is for everyone. No, anyone is free to like Star Wars. That's true, but it's not made so everyone will enjoy it. Because I know a lot of people who really love Pride and Prejudice Regency romances who think Star Wars is stupid as anything. Yeah. Some, people, yeah, some people like Pred and Prejudice, and they're totally straight. A good meme. Yeah. Finds the extra credits <laughs> meme with the... Uh, if you don't like Disney Star Wars, you're a bad. <laughs> you didn't ask for it. But I guess this was a suggestion for Freudian. A depiction. Freudian. Yeah, that one's good. <laughs> <laughs> good old Patrick making it back into me. Tabletop game about land wizards intended for children. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, because it needs, it needs a visual representation. Is it space? <laughs> <laughs> what about sea wizards, though? They've missed the sea wizards. And uh, I guess land, sea, space, what else could we get? Uh, is that the three important elements? What I think they're the three big ones. An air wizard. Limitless potential for this. Truly, truly. Land wizard, space wizard. I like that art. That's very cute. <laughs> Supposed to be about creating a universe it is for everyone. everyone. What is the that? Empire? What is that aerial picture? No, it's that made not. Me cringe. <sighs> um, you can't make something that's made for everyone. Like they don't want to have nothing everyone. in it. Like 
as soon as you add anything into a story, you're adding something that just through, you know, dispersion is going to fall into categories of certain groups of people. Demographics tend to appreciate it more than others. It's like... I was going to say, uh, my mum does not like Star Wars at all and probably never will. She really gets turned off immediately by, like, exactly. base lasers and ships and stuff. She's just like, this is... Certainly not made for her. If you wanted to make a Star Wars movie for her, it's not going to look a thing like Star Wars, is it? But Shad, it's for everyone. It's, it's clearly like... for everyone. <laughs> I'm curious. I talked about it in my EA survey video, but these people, they're, they just want to change things so that, like, literally everybody will play them and everybody will like them. And yeah, Is it so bad just... that we have certain things that only appeal to certain people? That's yeah. not bad. No, that's not bad at all. But it's sexist or and racist and stuff. If 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 it is because because you know you shouldn't make something that's intended for a female audience or a male audience because you need to be inclusive. But if you try and make something that everyone will like, you'll make something no one likes. I just realized well, when when something this, is predominantly Larson male say that um the wrinkle in time is not meant for white people. As well. White men, at least, and it's meant for black people. That's what she meant. That's what she meant. So, I guess not every. Well, I wonder what this guy would have to say about that. Yeah. When you have a a a series like Star Wars, like Star Trek, like anything, any video games especially, and they're predominantly male, that's the problem. It's always a problem if something is predominantly male. That's an issue. That's a problem. Even YouTube being predominantly male, that's a problem. But whenever something is predominantly female. They never bat an eye about it. Also, There's no say, issue. Mm -hmm. There's no problem. Only when something that. is mostly male is it wrong. Is it a is problem it that sewage workers are mostly male, right? No, it's a problem that there aren't enough women CEOs. Yeah. We, we mentioned that last time. It's just... Mm -hmm. None of this shit stands up to scrutiny. <laughs> it's, it's so nah. contradictive. Bad, because they aren't for everyone. Luke and the Jedi are good because they are for everyone. But they're not for the Were Sith. They they're not yeah. for the Sith, no. And the Empire does seem to want to conquer everyone. They, they want everyone under <laughs> yeah, they unified. They want to unify there. everyone. <laughs> they, so the, the Empire seems pretty inclusive in that regard. It's, uh, it's such a, I don't think I've even heard this take about Star Wars before, you know? It's like... That was just for everybody. This is proven by the rebels being for everyone and the empire being anti everyone. Except slave children. Yeah, they can't be saving them. Even Jedi the people that make that. the films say they don't owe anything to the old fans from 40 years ago. So and they're not even trying everyone. to make the films for everyone. Anymore. Mm. These yes. are the people that make them. Were they evil? No. <laughs> Sorry, what was the Mace Windu picture for? I don't know. Uh, yes. a black person, Were yeah. they evil? No. <laughs> the Sith want to rule everything, which is which is evil. And <laughs> wanting to rule everything isn't inherently racist. Nor is it and inherently there's... evil. You could be very much no. uh, interested in creating the best world for everybody. Fucking Bran wanted to be king in Game of Thrones. Most people seem to think that he was a good guy. Mm. And then he's taking the thing that, like, it's an assumption. It's not ever stated in Star Wars canon, to my knowledge, that the leaders of the Empire or the Sith can only be humans or of certain race. Because, uh, again, Darth Maul disproves the Sith thing. They have no problem having powerful, you know, Sith members of other races. And, uh, like... I'm sure if uh, Mace Windu went to the dark side that he would have been welcomed with open arms and no one would have said, nah, he's not allowed in because it's black. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah, man, we, we, we got low numbers. You, you, can, you can give us a hand. <laughs> so again, he's, he's making assumptions and then uh, trying to qualify his argument based on things that are not rule everything which is evil and also racist because they want their people to rule everything the jedi did not rule this video uh, has no that's points a, that is this a video has very no point. interesting thing to say that the jedi didn't rule yeah, yeah, yeah. like um, what would you guys say is the point tried, of this video technically the jedi tried to oh, uh, uh, you know usurp a uh uh, legally established government, like even though it was a bad decision, the empire was voted for and stuff, um, and so yeah, 
Like, yeah, the idea that the Jedi didn't want to rule, I was like, uh, they no, I'm not, I'm not mm, buying that. I don't think I'm I'd not saying that, it's though. evil. Oh, I'm not saying it's evil to want to rule, but man, they don't say they didn't want to rule. Yeah, they were quite supremacist in their um uh, in the uh, uh, enforcement of their ideology. Um, hey, Mola, where saying... are you up to? Because because when you paused, it mine kept playing. Oh, uh, you just I... say mine camp. <laughs> Uh, eight eight fifty. I'll just draw it back. Go to eight fifty. Yeah, I'm at nine twenty. Because they want their people. Hold you back. Yeah, yeah. People to rule everything. The Jedi did not rule over the galaxy. Again, <laughs> these are the messages and things that you can learn, and then you apply them in real hey, life. Hey guys, it's guys! Outstanding drama series, Game of Thrones one. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, what, what can you say? What can you do? What was the D&D there? Are they accepting the award? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. What a oh. sad state of affairs. <laughs> the, the best drama. I, how can they honestly deliver that with the outcry they saw from everyone? <laughs> Like, do you think it's just fixed? Yeah, they're rigged. They're totally rigged. Like, is there Because, like, this is what I mean. Like, never have I seen more of a disconnect. It's like, why are you doing that when you know that everyone hated it? <laughs> why are you... What are you doing? Now, let me double check, because now I want to confirm, because I went to Wikipedia and it said that. Let me double check. Oh, yeah, no, Game of Thrones 1. Game of Thrones 1 best drama series right now. Else? Like... Uh, that's the only one, I think. It didn't win writing. Uh, Thank writing God. was a show called Succession. I mean, you know succession. what? Outstanding? It, 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 it made an impression. I can say that much. <laughs> <laughs> it did stand out. That is true. I was tension-filled seeing how terrible it would get. But, I mean, that, how funny is that? It's so widely considered to be bad, and yet it won. It's like, um... Mm -hmm. Remember the whole, um... Shakespeare in Love beat Saving Private Ryan. And mm -hmm. like, everybody was just like, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's like, eh, it's just really... uh, I mean, it's kind of the same for me. Like, LA Confidential came out the same year as Titanic. It's just like, pff, LA Confidential is better. I don't know what to say. It's a better oh, movie. It's better, yeah. it should have won. Um, Chernobyl won Outstanding Limited Series. That's okay. I'm happy. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now here here are the wins. So, comedy series is a show called Fleabag that I've never heard of. Um, that's L. That's the robot oh. from Solo. Is Fleabag. it? What do you mean? Yeah, she, oh. it's the, it's that actress. She oh. writes that show. Yeah, the one that they're bringing but, yeah. on to James Bond. Oh, uh, here's one. Peter Dinklage won for Tyrion Lannister for Game of Thrones episode The Iron Throne for outstanding supporting actor. Hey, what? He, was, he, he was, just stood around. Well, well there's, there's two two things I would reference for doing some decent acting, but I seriously doubt... <sighs> I would have given it to Daenerys uh, instead of him. I feel I felt really bad for Amelia Clark throughout episode 5, because she's doing her darndest to portray that character. <laughs> she, it reminds me of Luke in TLJ. It's like, you're doing such a good job, and that's so sad I that know. you're doing such a good job. Uh, my respect for Mark Hamill has grown tremendously with the amount of crap he had to put up with, and he, he did his best to, you know, stay true to, like, and he even made the, you know, comments and stuff that I'm sure Disney just lost their crap about. Um, he's a true fan, Mark Hamill, and I feel sorry for what he had to go through, but he, he did it. He, he did what he had to. I mean, he was contracted. I imagine he had no choice. Yeah. True, but yep. he could have he could have phoned it in. So is it yeah, true? yeah, true. <laughs> oh, well. Let's, let's carry on. It's like learning. You can do it through movies and TV shows by listening to the message. And you are you're you're saying you're going on the internet being like, I'm losing Star Wars I'm losing Star Wars look at what it's yeah, turned it's into yeah because it's turning to shit yeah it's turning to shit into he seems very invested in the idea of disseminating information from it through discussion and learning and growing and stuff it's like I wonder if you'd actually be willing to hear out anybody's criticisms for these films from a bunch of woman haters 
I doubt oh, right. it. Yeah, why bother? He 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 in this video said like, oh yeah, you guys don't get it. Why bother? So did this idiot <laughs> learn about racism through the Last Jedi? Because he's saying you can learn things from these films. This is where he gets all he's learning from. I think I think he learned that racism is not good from Star Wars. <laughs> and I learned every something. Bad. That, you know, at least he got the message. Something you never had Star Wars, okay? It was never what? yours because you don't get it. <laughs> it was never yours because you don't get it. <laughs> wow, what a what an actual prick. Uh -huh. What a worthless human being, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that these people, I'm so glad he's a tiny oh, gentleman. You just don't get it, okay? You it's don't yours, you get, didn't get it. The, it because I am arguing against a straw man that doesn't exist, and uh, he just doesn't get it. This is hilarious. Yeah, I don't really have much to say other than just like, God, look at you. <laughs> look at you, girl. <laughs> and that is okay. Like so and if you would precious. like to get it, Join us in conversation. <laughs> You'd like to get it. Agree with my this perspective. This really feels uh, like, you know, a dark side. Come join us. Yeah, this is like pro this is like a propaganda film. Well, if you would like to, you propaganda. may join us. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. He's essentially saying you will not be a bad person if you join I will us. teach you to if, understand. If you don't join me, you are inherently a bad person. You're evil. Come join us. Don't attack us. It's a lo logical fallacy to don't attack as he what? says. Oh, oh, wow. oh my god, he's actually oh, gonna talk about the ad hominem. <laughs> Holy oh crap. my god, the balls on this guy! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh Wait, man, you guys were slightly ahead of me. Let me play it for the audience. Oh so you god. just lose your argument from the get go. Oh, okay, sorry. He's I, th I think I know what he said. Don't attack us. <clears throat> it's a lo logical fallacy to attack the individual in an argument. Whoa, oh my god, right I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Holy crap. He's been doing that the whole video. Vilifying and just minimizing everyone who dislikes Star Wars <laughs> as evil bad men who have these... Retarded rednecks. They're, they're, they're racist, they're sexist because you dislike this. You, are, you hate women. He is saying women. you hate slavery. women if you dislike Star Wars. He said that uh, multiple times. The fucking cojones on this motherfucker. <laughs> this worthless <laughs> of shit YouTuber. Just just because this seems like the moment to probably remind everybody, leave him alone. Don't do anything to him because he's <laughs> this is the kind of person that would probably love to have a bunch of comments to screenshot and put on his Twitter exactly. for how men are ruining Star exactly. Wars. So he leave him alone. That's just what he wants. Yep. What uh, amazing! That's yeah. How the lack of self awareness. We're reaching celestial levels of lack of self awareness. <laughs> I might even say it's pretty epic. It is very epic. And so you just lose your argument from the get go. Have a conversation. No, that Have doesn't mean you off. lose the argument. <laughs> he just said it, by that definition he lost the argument from the get go because he is doing ad hominem constantly and attacking the people he disagrees with. So good, he thinks he lost the argument by by his own words and logic. Oh my goodness. Points. Have actual reasons. You need facts. to make a point. Have some examples. You need to have a fact. How can, how can you say any of this? <laughs> You're like the opposite <laughs> of all the things you just said. Actual facts. facts. He what watched do you this mean? back and thought, yep, this is good. I'm putting this up. <laughs> good lord. That could point to better options that they could have chosen the film. That is fun to do. What do you think people do? have been doing since the Li fucking movie came out, you mongoloid? Exactly. There's legions of people rewriting it. <laughs> it seems like, I, I don't know how he could have missed the thousands of people who would have done exactly what he's saying that they should do. is like, talk about what they could have done better, what specifics were wrong, and just interpret all the criticism and response to Last Jedi as they hate You just hate you're different. You just hate women. You know, it's just something different. You, hate that. you didn't understand the themes. Oh my goodness. Wow! How do you like? How do you, just, how do you be this person? <laughs> like you, the cognitive dissonance, like, but he's just completely unaware. It is insane to how we can whine say that. and complain. What have you done through this whole video except whine and complain? Your video was called "Men Are Ruining Star Wars." <laughs> 
Like, this is the peak of whining. And you're one of them. <sighs> About All the losing Star Wars. Just as telling everyone that you never had Star Wars and you don't get Star Wars. Wait, I thought it was different, you... though. So is it different or is it the same and we never got it? I don't understand. And again, coming from the guy who said that the prequels were already different, so what does the same even mean? Like, what does it even mean to be the... Just mad about who you are and you know what oh geez it's we'll about still <laughs> we're mad about who we are <laughs> now he's trying to do the whole righteous compassionate we'll yeah, armchair it. psychologist you know oh my when you have goodness. a lot of hate for something maybe you hate yourself <laughs> no wow. my God. the hubris and oh this is astronomical he's got a lot of balls for someone with no good arguments <laughs> and no bull oh. and no bulls and no balls, yes. What can you even say, you know? Like, this this video's been incredibly bad a, for the amount of time. What a train wreck. This, this has reached new levels for me. Like, I, ah, uh, oh, oof. God, what are you, wow. new to EFAP? God. Ah, uh, I yeah, know, okay. I should, should expect it. But I haven't been on an EFAP where we have looked at a video like this. That's the, I guess that's the difference for me. We'll be there for you. I'll still be there for you. I will talk to you. I will communicate with you. We would love you. to talk to you You're people, but you won't go on. Fat. You won't come yeah. with us. He would if, never, whoever this guy is, you want to let me know if you want to come onto EFAP to discuss how men are ruining Star Wars. Me and Rags will be happy to talk about it with you. I am a man, or at least I identify as such. As do I. Gas Mask Man is still a man. Well, we will go through each of your points and your facts. I will reply to your messages. I will try to give you my point of view, and I would like to know your point of view because I'm not going to ban you. I'm not going to ignore you. Really? I'll hear you out, but you could be wrong, and I might be wrong, and that's okay. But we need to hear you. <laughs> Does this not feel like we're listening to a completely different person now? I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, Who are you? Like, when did you come you've, up with you've this? You told me that because I'm a man. I'm ruining Star Wars because, like, I'm a man. And now you're like, we just need to understand each other and come together. And just like I, 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 I suppose that we well, we supposedly hate women because we dislike Last Jedi. Um, uh, gosh, but he's here for us. And communicate and not attack. It's just so exhausting. It's ruining Star it's Wars. Not ru it's not ruining. No, the shitty movies are ruining Star <laughs> Wars. You just need Star to get it through Wars. your skull. Whether the or not shitty you... movies are ruining Star Wars. Whether or not this man has an argument with some other guy on Twitter does not affect Star Wars. <laughs> I guess Star Wars will be fine. What the hell? It not fun. Join me and make Star Wars fun again. No, we want it to be good, not fun. Exactly. Yes. Let's make it good again. Yeah, it's, let's get good sorted, then we'll worry about fun, assuming it isn't fun as a result. It's shit, but is it fun? Does it make no sense at all? Is it literally nonsensical? Oh, sure, but it's fun. I don't I know, we have, we have gotten a lot of fun out himself. of The Last Jedi. Yeah, we have, tangentially. Yeah. I was gonna say, it couldn't make it any more fun at the moment. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know more people, I'm online well, talking, I'm making videos. Just thinking back to that Red Light Media quote, the, the Looney Tunes of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, sure it's yeah. fun, woo! Everything's <laughs> fucking insane, nothing makes any sense, I'm sure someone's having fun. By not attacking each other over Star Wars, but by talking about the thing that we obviously really love and are passionate about, because that's why you're going on videos that you already know you don't agree with, and commenting is because you're passionate and you love it. Hey, we heard you out. We didn't just yeah. You know, your your video was fucking garbage, mate. Like you should <laughs> be really you should be ashamed video. of this. Like, this is this is really bad. I had a better view this of you before I'd listened to this video. So <laughs> there we go. But this and ending, this. The this, moral posturing after of the everything you've life. said. <laughs> oh, Regardless of everything I've said, listen to this. Love it too. Wouldn't it be nice if we were just better people and we could all just enjoy we're Star better Wars? people. I, I really, I really don't like this implication that you're worse because of the opinion that you have on Star Wars. If you enjoy it's Star really Wars, you're a better person. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so Whoa. guess what? Hold up. Oh, your, your mother is a terrible person. Yep. 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 <laughs> Rip mum. No, no redemption there. Sorry, mom. His version on the internet told me that uh, you're a bad man. <laughs> a bad man? <laughs> That's insane. amazing. 
I'm always amazed with these people. Like, does he think he lives in a bubble because there's not people like this actually around him? Like, where, or does he know people that men that hate women? Like, I just. And why is it always the most pathetic looking people? Yeah. Like, the first to morally posture to you about how terrible and awful you are. Like, did his dad not hit him enough or too much? (laughs) Something happened. Not enough. It's not those, enough. It's one of the situations where it dropped down the stairs and the stairs was really long. <laughs> I had to fight with the staircase and the staircase won. I want the video to finish with the dad coming in going, I fucking told you about wearing that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment down below and tell me Nuh-uh. what you think. I want to continue this discussion. Better. Hit the dislike, hit the like. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Dislike. Because... It's your opinion, and you're allowed to have no. Nope, our opinions don't matter. Your opinion could be right. For your opinion, he said vote. our opinions don't matter. <laughs> Didn't he say that in the video? <laughs> this is what they I mean. Matter, I feel like at the end do. of the video, he's doing like a, a boilerplate sort of response the, that he has at the end of every video. He doesn't, he doesn't remember <laughs> what he said in this video. <laughs> like, it reminds me of um, the whole when people say like everything I say in this video is subjective. And then later on, they'll say something like, you cannot deny that blah, 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 is blah, blah, blah. And you'll be like, I thought you said it was subjective. <laughs> like, he shouldn't have any grounds to complain about, the, you know, this video <laughs> response because he's, uh, he's been inviting it now. He's, uh, he, he wants the interaction and the feedback. So he They're should wrong. have no problem coming on EFAP. Bye, double hand wave. What was his oh. point? Well, that's that. <laughs> yeah, no, right. what was his was- point? There was Sex no is the bad. Racist like, is the bad. Real, slavery is bad. Racist is bad. Like, basically, <laughs> slavery is bad. <laughs> um, if you are ruining Star Wars, if you don't like the new movies, uh, you don't like women, if you don't like the new movies, um, and you should make it fun again. Um, th- th- I, that's what I'm getting. For- oh, that Star Wars was about. Uh, racism and that you know, oh, yeah, you, it should course. make you a better person, better person like him who openly vilifies <laughs> people like who him. disagree with him. Uh, that, that's what Star Wars is about. I think that, that these are the takeaways that I got from his logic. Man is the, the pinnacle of morality. There is no God. person more virtuous than I, um, the guy who made this video. There's nothing more virtuous than liking Star Wars. But I, I thought at the start he, he didn't want to hear about the problems or if he didn't like it, you meant to just shut up and go away. And then he finishes with, come and talk to me about it. Like, Yeah, you're sending me mixed messages <laughs> here, man. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not sure what I'm meant to do next. Yeah, the first <clears throat> 90% of your video makes me feel like the last 10%. Kind of a fucking lie. <laughs> yeah, just getting uh, that impression. Additional law there. So we got our, our sea wizard and air wizard. Ha! <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Only a little mermaid wizard. <laughs> Under the sea. And remember, this needs to expand. We need like a trailer park wizard, a a city wizard, you know. And someone said wizard. wizard. You got to get a swamp wizard. Yep. Someone, someone said in the chat, pinball wizard. So <laughs> yep. That was a good one to add. Desert wizard. You got to get the biomes in now. Volcano Sand wizard. wizard. And remember, if any piece of media has any of these, they are automatically children. Yeah, and and are immune to logical criticism because it's all fantasy anyway, so it shouldn't be taken yeah, seriously. Yeah, what's logical about a sea wizard? Ah, gotcha. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, we so have. So what if uh, what, what if you're really a wizard in real life? You should never be taken seriously. Then I'll you're, take you're a real children. wizard serious. Yeah. So is the Bible for children? <gasps> nope. Oh. Not for mine. <laughs> Jesus was totally a wizard. Right. He was a land wizard. <laughs> he was a land. Land. But he was a sea wizard because he could walk you know, in the water. Oh shit. I might be the I might be the only practicing Christian here, but that's one valid way of interpreting it, I think, you know? He's well, a wizard. Uh, according to this I'm guy, it's for kids then. So He's good. a soul bender. <laughs> Bible is about a sea wizard and it's meant for children. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense because it's a sea wizard story. Um, but yeah, I was going to say, we did plan to watch another video. I don't know. How much time have I got any of you for now? Oh, yeah. I'm reaching the limit. I could probably pull out another hour or two at the most. 
He said two hours. Like you heard him. He said two hours. You heard him. A couple of hours. I like the limits in the air or two. <laughs> and Fringy? Yep. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. I actually have like work I need to do <laughs> at some point today. Well, then um, I should probably get into the, the, the Super Chats part, so at least I can get a few out maybe that address some people specifically rather than... Uh, yeah. Um, but I mean, it literally, we're at five hours almost. And, um, oh, jeez. We took an hour and 17 minutes on intro, I think. And that means that that video, 11 minute video, took. Um, took oh, that time. next one, we're not going to finish. We are not going to finish that next one. No, I'm saying like that we have to save that for another time now. Cause... <laughs> yeah, that's fine. What's the next video? Just so I know, because if it's juicy. I'm well, it was, a, it was a content creator talking about like the nature of opinions. Oh, I'd love that. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I said, that that one could probably go for a whole leaf app. Yeah, I was gonna say it could long. take a long yeah. time, but if you guys are leaving it an hour, that we probably we might not be able to fit. We might have to yeah. do super chats and uh, yeah, and sign off. But uh, all right, I'll try and be available for the next time. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll I'll put it on the like, a back burner because it's a timeless discussion, as I'm sure. Everyone it is. I agree. actually really like the phil the philosophical implications of all, all that stuff. Yeah, it's funny. He doesn't really get into that in the video, well, unfortunately. The thing is, oh, we really? can, you know, so it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just it's just so interesting to see all everyone's different takes on uh, how we should all speak to each other. I guess because, of course, not everyone's <laughs> going to agree, but it's, see how it goes, regardless, because. Everybody's doing like all takes on subjectivity as well. How can you criticize something definitively? Answer me that, Batman. <laughs> These people will die. In your opinion. It's interesting how uh, like deeply um almost sociological the, these concepts are about the the negative kind of backlash and attack on objective standards and uh, being a reviewing things objectively and how it can even be linked back to the fact that no one can be bad at anything and everyone has to be a winner and stuff and how dare you criticize or offend anyone and all these things and it's really affecting fundamental philosophical standards i mean my goodness really I mean, it's good, it's just, you know, even the fact that people are still willing to have the conversations, at least we're that far, opposed to just locking it off. I mean, still, there's still people who do. People who are like, I will not listen to you because you're a bad man. Yeah, like, they are associating criticism with personal attacks and that they're, you're being, you're a bad person who hates women then because you say Ray is a Mary Sue. It's like, no, there are lots of, oh. And it's and, uh, you'd think that it doesn't take that much thought to realize how disingenuous and contradictory they're being. Like all the comments that that were trying to claim that Captain Marvel was one of the first female action heroes, and people just hated that it was going to be a woman. It's like, are you kidding me? Where like, oh, I, 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 it's hard for me to understand how people could come to a conclusion when it's so obviously false with the basic, the most basic level of consideration on the matter. When you look at all these other female action heroes that heaps of men have loved for years, and then they come out with these grossly incorrect things, I just can't understand it. Um, politics. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to say that uh, the most common way I see it is they really want to find out your politics as soon as possible, just so they know that they can stop listening. Oh yeah, because once you're a part of the bad team, then any idea that comes from you is is originating from a, a, a rotten set of values anyway. Wouldn't matter. Label and dismiss. That's what I always say. That's what they're all about. Label and dismiss. It's just crazy. It, like uh, even from my own sort of perspective as an up and coming YouTuber, when I I knew about all this stuff, like seeing discussions online where people are like, "What what what are Mola's uh, politics?" Like why? Why is everyone obsessed with knowing what what policies I hold on certain elements? Like, I'm talking about that. It's like they need to know whether or not they can take you seriously. Um, yeah, I was just setting up. Um, got a whole series of eight bit images. Good old Mister. This is, so this is like eight bit art, if you will. And, uh, Bad. Oh, <laughs> I feel very, very impressed. Uh, privileged. Oh, it looks like, it looks, like uh, looks like Mega Man. Oh yeah, yeah I, think, I think that might be maybe what it's basing it slightly on. It looks like Mega Man's jump. Very cool. Uh, 
this would be robot head. Doing they're not entirely sure of what your body would look like, so <laughs> No, that's pretty accurate. That's pretty good. <laughs> Except for the no genitalia, but <laughs> maybe next you did mention your attachments as this would be Theo. So you guys may not get every one of these because there's some guests you may. Oh, I've never heard that. <laughs> Smiler Al. Creepy face. So <laughs> his warrior That's outfit. Great. Is that what his is that what his body's like? Um, he's got another drawing of fan art that gave him a body like that. So I guess it's becoming canon. That would be his body. I, I, I you know, I can't control these things. Mud boy with his based on the um Mass Effect dude, so the Mass Effect dude that's correct. Bringy. Ah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I like that. I'm saving that. Logic. <laughs> that's a good one. Mr. TRO himself. That gentleman. Blue Iron Man that is for tier until he figures out exactly what he wants to do with his PFP. <laughs> but that, uh, <laughs> he could adopt that one, who knows? Then, of course, there is me, and I think I have the Infinity Gauntlet gun. I'm okay with this. <laughs> Mr. 8 Bit Wolf. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. Nicely, like, shaded as well. That's and good. 8-bit rag. There you go. <laughs> I think the, the last bonus one, the one that we all really wanted to see, was uh, bike rags uh. with the Dawn riding in. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. This Lucky is uh, rags. The lore is complete. <laughs> This is something that somebody sent me. Let me double check the uh L Lesia Blackbird did this one. I, I like that's it a lot. Impressive. Ooh, yeah, that's really good. That's I really good. like that. Oh wow. I don't really like EFAP fan art, it's more like me fan art, but it's great. Oh yeah, I I'm, like I'm, I'm cool with sharing that. Is it a Fanny of Channels uh, made it, is it? Uh I guess so, yeah. Um I probably mispronounced the name. It was Lesia Blackbird. Thank you. That's that's great. I really like that. Hopefully, they know that you are uh, you're on this stream, <laughs> so they can see yeah. you reacting to it. Or mm. not. Well, apparently, it got sent to me by uh, someone else. It wasn't sent by. Uh, it was sent by Glib. Oh. So, but he said that it was from her or him. I'm not sure. I don't know. That's what I mean. But it's it's great. Well, we hate women, so I hope it's a he. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Women. They need propaganda in order to like and dislike things. Oh, no, what? It's a he. Sorry, I fucked that up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Thanks, though. Alright, then. I'm gonna start reading now some Super Chats. Here we go. Uh... Didn't miss Mola, do you agree that we should ban death? Um, what do you guys think? Banning death? But I mean banning death the reaper. The, yeah, the reaper or the condition that comes upon us at the end of our life. We can do that legally, right? It prevents it. I I just don't know why they haven't banned it. It's shit. You'd think, morally speaking, they would have banned it by now. Death bad. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get some Star Wars movies to reaffirm that for us because maybe some people think death good. Hi, Rags. Hello! Hey, Muesli, how goes Brexit? <laughs> um, uh, from, from my understanding, not great. I, 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 I'm just waiting to see what happens. I was just saying there would be no EFAP this week. No, no just, a, just a late one. Um, hello, Shad. Oh, hello. Oi, Muesli, Iron Man 3 and Unbridled Praise when? It wouldn't be a praise. But, uh... I do actually want to make that video someday. I'm not sure in what way it would come out. One day. Oh, sweet Sunday EFAP. Thanks, notification. 
Oh dear Don, it's three Aussies versus one long Brit. May the cosmic chicken have mercy on us all. No, 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 this was a team effort. We teamed up. It was no Britain versus Aussie, uh, Australia. Yeah, we're allies. Technically, Australians are just second-hand Brits, so... <clears throat> well, you guys are, are happier to be there than with us. <laughs> I don't know. You guys get your own island with crazy monsters on it. Well, that's true, I do get to fight the monsters. Get your own Jurassic Park. So. <laughs> Noise. EFAP without burping every five minutes. Also, hi. You saying Hello. that Rags is a burper? I haven't had really any sodi pop or anything, but yeah, there there has not been a lot of burpage going on. Try to get that secret course, burp once, in at one point. Once I pretty much once I got home, I came to EFAP. So yeah, I didn't. That might you to, be a reason to why be able to make it, but you did, which is. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad you got to see um, that video. It was, uh... <laughs> that was terrible. Holy fuck. Don't you feel more fulfilled from having seen it? I feel so much more self-confident about myself. I'm glad... It's, it's another one of those videos that just makes me so glad that I'm me, and not them. Them? Who is this mysterious then? The man. Well, that, that might be giving him a lot of credit. The, the, the guy in that thing with the Lando Calrissian Funko Pop. <laughs> the other. You'll never let that go, will you? <laughs> the dude had a Lando Calrissian Funko Pop. What the fuck? Um, How do you do that? They're not even the right Lando. Yeah, and it was shitty Donald Glover, Glover, Glove Lando. <laughs> Donald, Donald Glove Glover, Lando. Glover, Glover. Um, Robot I, fucker. There's this... Ooh. There's two more memes I'm gonna show, even though I've got a collection of memes for another for another stream potentially. But I do mm. actually want to show these because uh, I think I think me and Rags will definitely love both of them. Oh my. Uh, this is the first one, Rags. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> he asked to be drawn Shadow beautiful at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Shadowmire drew me beautiful. Shadowmire did draw you beautiful. Yes, uh, he drew me so Rags. beautiful. Have forgotten. This is Efapopoli. Yes, and oh. um, let's, let's get <laughs> the some... dog with a hat, yay! We got me in the car, which makes sense. Skull on wheels, dog on hat. We got Velociraptor slash T Rex. You mean wolf. hat hat on dog? And Jay is the shoe. <laughs> 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 um, I guess if we go around from the top left, you got free parking from uh, the Dodd, which. I think that's perfect. But let me try and fit this on screen. Uh, an orphan's spider fortune. Sword like. Did I say sword like on. Objects? Objects? Oh. This is onject, right? <laughs> I think that's supposed to be object. Uh, yellow pole. Nice. Art is subjective. And the other trains are themes, space wizards for children, and you hate women. So they're all the train stations. Um, <laughs> verified fag girl. Oh wow, this is gonna be new then. Nice. Uh, There's sexual harassment up in the corner. Oh yeah, that's great. That, would that be the equivalent of pass go in this? No, pass go is collect 200 salaries, you pass cosmic chicken. Um... Verified fangirl, apex homosexual, looking at women. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, all my n words. <laughs> High rags. So that's a good set of three. Fortune critical analysis, subjectivity, monopoly. How ironic. <laughs> Bigotiesisms. You're a Nazi. What aboutism tax? Base wizards are for children. One of them's the letter six. <laughs> So it's very up to date. 1.2 billion. Just visiting artificial barriers of blockage. That's, this is actually really well put together reference wise. I'm, I'm impressed. Racism's elevator music, good rat. Mary Sue, narrative tripling, kick J. Donald Loke. A fast dealing criticism trading card game. Yeah. Well. I mean, it would probably work out. Pretty much make a monopoly out of anything. I like it, good shit. Um. All right. Uh, what is what is yellow pole? 
That is Sausage Man. Sausage Dude. Oh, right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Captain Marvel's powers is just Super Saiyan minus the years of work, mastery, application, talent that a lot of characters from Dragon Ball did to earn it. Yeah, that was celestially epic. Oh, there's two for Shad, but I think he's popped out for a second. We'll wait till he comes. Hey, Mole, are any plans on making a video on a Metroid game? Also, favorite Metroid game? Uh, it's tough to choose between Metroid Prime and Super Metroid, but they're my favorites. And yeah, I'd like to make a video on Metroid sometime. I did. I don't know how long it would take, because I'd want to do everything and make sure I cover exactly... <sighs> Me and Fring have been watching some uh, Metroid analysis uh, videos lately. <laughs> it's yep. been great. Yep. That old shit. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars, more like Incorrect Wars. No, no we watched one. I have to start collecting these bad ones. I think I've got some back I'm back! Ah, alright. Let me look at my backlog of Shad questions that I saved. Um, hello Shad, have you read Stormlight Archive? <laughs> have I? I'm consulting for Brandon Sanderson on his next Stormlight book. So yes, I have. So you have? Point. Okay, alright, just make sure. Correct me if I've read this before, I feel like I might have, but um, it says, If so, who's your favorite character, and why is it Dalinar? <laughs> Because <laughs> it is Dalinar, is right. <laughs> oh, Dalinar is just uh, like I love his, how you know strong he is, how authoritative and sure, and is just a decently good character who gets tested really in a hard way and comes out on top. And he still struggles and is just a good leader. And so, yeah, brilliant character. I love him. Um. Chad, what are your thoughts on all seven lightsaber forms, if you know them? See, my thoughts are, like, they seem to only have stances, and then they go into kind of a vague way of describing how they fight without going into detail of what the specific moves are. Now, that can be a safe way to do it, because if someone who is unfamiliar with sword fighting tries to explain in detail you attack this specific way from the sword move from this direction to this direction, can sometimes, like, write or create some very bad styles of fighting. Having said that, I haven't looked into it in detail, so if there is that level of detail, I'm just completely contrary predicting uh, my understanding of it, uh, or just the, how it is depicted. They recommend um, checking uh, out Jen Sare's mm. video on it. Okay, I might have to have a look. <clears throat> and they'd love to know your thoughts on your favorite slash best duel from Star Wars. I've been actually thinking about that recently. I'm going to launch a new series on my channel called Fight Scene Autopsy, where I actually plan to break down iconic fight scenes frame by frame. You can kind of guess where I got my inspiration for that. Mm. Um, but really, like it, the most detailed fight scene breakdown analysis that I can do. And I'm going to start with the Last Jedi throne room scene, but then I'm going to move to... Uh, um, fight scene between Obi-Wan and, uh, and Anakin, and then Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, and then I'll expand to other, pro you know, um, pop culture stuff, fight scenes and things. So at the moment, it's hard for me to say, but it would be uh, a fight between Anakin versus Obi-Wan or Luke versus Darth Vader, but I need to give them a much closer look to compare. All right, sounds good. It's good to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um... And this is a saved question I had for you, Fringy. What's your favorite Daredevil season? Mine is three, but one is a close second from... Uh, probably season one. I think it'd go one, three, two. Um, I think two... Two is kind of hard because the Punisher stuff, like Daredevil and Punisher stuff is really great, but the hand stuff is a little bit... Eh, it's a bit iffy. Um, they all kind of have problems, but I... I do think it would go one, three, two. Uh, I think three is pretty good. And one is probably my favorite. And so that does it for the old questions that I need to make sure you were asked. Now, back with the main ones. Actually, I'm going to cover all of the Streamlabs things that I've missed. Uh, I'll just go from seven days back. Any uh, five of them. Just before you do that, Mel, I'm going to take off. I only thought I could Take stay two or three hours, so... <laughs> I'm glad it worked out. Right. <laughs> um, well, before you go, <laughs> would you like to maybe talk a bit about your channel and why everybody in the chat should subscribe to you? 
Yes, come subscribe, Robot Head, where uh, we'll make fun of movies, Star Wars, Game of Thrones. I've got a second channel now, Robot Head Reload, where I'm going to uh, upload some live streams and some extra content. And I've got membership on the channel now, if anyone wants to come and be a member. But um, thank you again for having me. And Absolutely. once I work out what I'm doing with the live stream, you all have to come on. So oh, yeah, I look forward to it. Have me and Rags on at the yes. same time. It'll be a nice little cross. Yes, well, that's what I'm hoping. So Jay pointed out a video of someone uh, ripping into one of my videos. I might have to copy the EFAP format and just get you all over for it. Oh, go for it. I, I see it as encouraging <laughs> the idea of conversation. Uh, like cynical people might see it as bullying or something, but I mean, in the aid of actually trying to open up a dialogue, maybe a few insults get thrown, maybe a little bit of anger and animosity is spread, but ultimately, hopefully, some answers are reached. And you can defend yourself, which would be uh, good for you, I imagine. Mm, yeah, I'd like that. I'd like yeah. to see what they say. I haven't watched it yet, because I want to wait for the prize to see what they say. So, uh, yeah, we might have to do that one day. But the rest of you, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you again for having me on. Thanks for coming, man. It's been fun. Gotcha, dude. No yeah, worries. I shall speak to you all, I shall speak to you all yeah. soon. See ya. <clears throat> bye, 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 bye. You can find bye, a link bye. to his channel in the description. Good old Mr. Robot Head. I believe that's his third appearance now. He's hmm. climbing that ladder. You know how it be. Um, happy birthday to Shad. I love your videos. Oh. And when I write my fantasy world, I'm definitely going, giving one of my Minotaur a door as a tower shield. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Dad, we come from the same country and have the same birthday. Are you just me from the future? In other news, EFAP at a reasonable hour for my birthday. Thank you, my Aussie brothers. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, that, that could be true, but we'll have to wait in a few years to find out. We'll see. Happy birthday, Shad. I just got your book off Amazon, and I'm, ho I'm looking forward to getting into it. Oh, legend. Hope you enjoy. Shad, congrats on becoming a consultant for Stormlight Archive. Sanderson chose wisely. I know it's pretty awesome, like crazy stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Um. How did Rags not see Pacific Rim One? This I I haven't seen it. Yeah, it happens. I just have there's a lot of I haven't seen most movies. Uh, they said hi, by the way. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, the Don is in it. That's true, actually. Yeah, I forgot he's actually in that film. Um, a limerick. There once was a long man who's bad, a wolf and a doggo named Rag. There, being the toxic brood, demand for things to be good, drove people objectively mad. That works. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't even, a donation for mental? May he be able to buy more pawntisms and they specify. Maybe it's metal? Yeah, I th so you know genres of porn. He was he was blissfully unaware of um of nugget uh, of a variety of what that refers to. I don't even know what that is. Well, it's better that people don't probably. And and it was just, his his chat were very surprised. I guess since we just went over how rags didn't see Pacific Rim, there's lots of things people just don't know about, and we have to accept that. But I will I will make a note. Um, I think that was from the stream I did with him on uh, Friday. Yeah. Um, happy birthday, Shad. Oh, thank you very much. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Like the could be. Wait, you're in Greece. You're asking what my weight is in Greece, or what somebody's weight is in Greece? I'm not. I'm failing you on the reference. You've been Greece. It says, wait, you're in Greece. Not sure about that. What is the chance The Simpsons goes on for so long it unironically becomes good again? I mean, it's possible. Maybe. possible. Maybe. Yeah. Wait, I was supposed to be reading the uh, Streamlabs ones. Uh, right, uh, what is up all my N-words, also high rags? Hello? Oh, hi. Hey, hello. 
Hi. Lord of the Rings battles often end with one trump card. Riders of Rohan at Helm's Deep, the ghosts at Minas Tirith. They're and... established, they're established. No, yeah, of course. They're what probably about referring... Amon Hen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Amon Hen wouldn't count, but um, yeah. Helm's Deep, Minas Tirith, and the Black Gate would all count, but I don't have... The... That's not a flaw, right? Like, But he presents it as a flaw in the video we covered. Um... Mola, please say Bun Bun has the best butt. The world needs to know the truth. Thanks for getting me through my first year of college. Mola, I have a crush on your sexy voice. And hi, Rags. Hello. Hello, I start my medicine degree tomorrow, and thanks to all of you being there when I needed laughs and great entertainment. Oh, and thanks to all of you for that, sorry. Uh, you're all hilarious, and please keep up the great work, you marvelous toxic brood, you. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Who needs rhino milk when you can have Jar Jar's breast milk? Um, <laughs> I bet, it, bet it comes out <laughs> cold and clammy. Um, what if it's just water? I'm gonna cover these in case I didn't cover them. Um... Just finished my second playthrough of Sekiro in hard, demon clock active, while listening to you. Awesome. Ever considered having Razor Fist as a guest? Uh, probably in future, there's no reason why not, as long as he's game. Opinions on Dead Poet Society? Great. I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Haven't seen it. The more Dead Poets, the better I say. Put it on the list. That's the one where they stand on the desks, isn't it? Yes, yes. Captain my yep. Captain. Seize the day! Mm-hmm. Also, hi, Jay. Kick Metal. Rags, have you activated Windows yet? I think I do have an activated Windows on my computer, yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah, I did think so. Did you not before? I'm pretty sure I also did, yeah. I don't actually know where that's coming from. I think it's, uh, I think they swapped them all around. The idea is, hi, Rags. Kick... Pick J and Metal if you activate Windows, maybe? Because it says... I think I think it's supposed to just be a fuck-up of, of things. Somebody hasn't activated Windows. I don't think it's Rags. We, I'll be right back in just a second. Uh, just a second. <clears throat> then zapping my Ninja Turtle so annoying, which is a reference to Tonals. Alright, they're caught up. Uh, which curse is worse? Having teeth that slowly grow hair, or having facial hair that bleeds when you shave it? Really, Mr. Probably depends how much blood, probably. Because teeth that slowly grow hair, that sounds, uh. Sounds really horrible. Inconvenience. Yeah. Like, how does it come off? Do you have to, like, shave that? <clears throat> I would probably take the, the bleeding. Assuming it's not too much, just bleed when you shave, probably. Um. Hey, Muller, I've been watching your content since before EFAP was created. I've been able to stay caught up until now. I'm leaving for Marines Boot Camp. I expect several EFAPs that I can binge when I get back. Oh, yeah, there I'm will back. be. I'm back. I'm back. Glad you've enjoyed up to this point. Wonderful. Howdy, Massives. Listening to Rag's video about Mundane Matt and Vox while cleaning my record collection. Having fun tonight. Have fun tonight, sorry. Um, Have lots of fun. Well, cool, good stuff. <clears throat> Battle Angel Alita Last Order has a character that sold the rights to his blood, organs, body, brain, and genetic code. Is he an apex orphan? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's pretty much peak orphan right there. Um, happy birthday, Shad. Listened to your audiobook and loved it. Give these five schmuckers to Shad. Very well. Oh. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. And it's very awesome to hear you enjoyed the uh, my book with the audio version of my book, which is available. Just just throwing that I out. Have there it. While yeah, I do. I do have it. Uh, it's on my list. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Pick J. Oops, he's not even there yet. Pick in J when he's not even. First ever super chat. Great to see Shad. Oh. Oh, Good. thank you, sir. <laughs> Rise of Skywalker ending. Rey hooks up with Kylo's ghost. They go back in time and conceive Anakin. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much on Rags' side with this. I'm like, go for it. Do everything. Everything's... <laughs> who cares anymore? Just do anything. Hello to all my favorite massives and n-words. Also, hi, Rags. Hi, hey! Hi, Mauler, bye, Mauler. Oh, hi, bye. Good night, you massives. I'll return during breakfast. 
Yeah, because this is pretty late for a lot of people. Uh, I'm gonna get drunk and enjoy the fab. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. In the is the inside of a zebra's butt black or white? I assume it'd be black because it's dark. Yeah, possibly. I haven't checked, um, nor have I asked a scientician in the field. The answer is surely to be found. The rat in Scott's van was not CGI, but real. Does this indeed make good rat? I feel like the answer to what makes good rat is much more complicated. I certainly believe that rat. Yes. There's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of work to do in terms of science to figure out what makes good rat, ultimately. I, feel like I believe that rat. Like we're going to have to wait a while, get a lot of testimony. I mean, has Brown Table made any more videos about what makes a good rat? Because he was kind of our go-to guy for sources of information. Failed us in that. Um, Matriculations, ah, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you legend. <laughs> oh my god, an Australian friendly timed EFAP? Take my money. Oh. <laughs> See, our Australian audience is all popping out tonight. There you go. It needs to happen more often. Well, well, we'll do the Australian triple threat again sometime. I think it works out. Nice. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. Hey. Are you ever going to have Griffin Gaming or It's a Gundam on EFAP as a guest? Uh, not against it. I'm not sure who Griffin Gaming is. I've heard of It's a Gundam, but I don't know uh, what they do or what the channel is. But again, we're not opposed to pretty much any guest most. Also, I love your voice. It makes me pee-pee hard. Aw. Yeah. Adorable. My dream fab. All Aussies. Mauler slash rags. The Nirvana song they should have used for Captain Marvel. Um, is there a Nirvana song called Rape Me? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I would not know. I don't know. <laughs> they Rape said they should have used that. Rape me up inside. <laughs> 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 If someone is requesting, Why won't does that you mean it's not technically rape? Just Well, they're requesting that that's the song be used, because that's how they felt watching Captain Marvel, apparently. <laughs> okay. Also, oh. chat, chat are all saying there is, and yes. Oh, okay. Well, Goes to show dark. everyone's knowledge on Nirvana, apparently. <laughs> oh, I don't know shit about Nirvana. Yeah, I don't either. One of their best songs. All right. Uh, if you guys thought Ray's folding saber was silly, then look up the lightsaber whip. I would take a oh, lightsaber no. whip over his silly lightsaber. I feel like a lightsaber whip could be cool. I feel like I'd kill myself. accepted. Might I feel like I'd fucking it. kill myself with a lightsaber whip. That sounds insanely dangerous. Yeah, if you're not talented with a lightsaber whip, shh. Sure. You've got to be... Oh, my God. <laughs> they have the what force, are... rags. Oh, man. They got... <laughs> rags doesn't have faith in them. I don't have faith in them. There's so much... Hey Rags, enjoyed your brown table video. Will you work on a video about ESRB giving the latest NBA game an E rating instead of T for simulated gambling? Hmm. Rags. Oh well, I don't. I don't know anything about it. Maybe if they did, well, because of course they did. Because there's no way they're going to act. The ESRB's got, Lord knows the kind of money that's being funneled into the ESRB, but. I mean, the idea that you can have you can have actual gambling. I mean, there's like slot machines in the whole nine yards. So it's it's absolutely messed up that this would have a kid's rating on it. It's, I'm not surprised because, of course, they would. They're not going to they're not going to put a T rating on an NBA game, especially with not one this big. Um, hi, Rags. Hey. It was super smart of Finn to drag Rose back to the base with him. Her massive form easily covered his tracks in their wake. Oh, that's, I didn't think about it that way. That's good, yeah. Was it some cover from fire as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Duck. Wolf introduced me to Rags. Rags introduced me to Bola. Bola introduced me to EFAP. EFAP introduced me to Jay. Jay made me quit YouTube. Aw. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Also, uh, have a fap where y'all get drunk, because that would be extra, uh, very entertaining. Also, lovely weather we have. I don't know what else to say. Um, 
I every time Critical Drinker has come on, I've I've been drinking alcohol. I'm pretty sure we did the two parter with him, or I was I was pretty drunk. We've done it. It's happened. Um, I don't get why they didn't have Mara Jade in the movies. If you want to have a good female character, there's one on a platter. I don't think their ideas of what makes a good female character yeah. line up with what you with the think. normal persons, with a talented person, yeah, with someone who's right, yeah. Everyone forgot Looper even existed until after TLJ came out, and now Knives Out is getting all this praise before it came out. Yeah, I don't buy it. Yeah, um, I don't buy it either. We'll have to give that a bit of time, because uh, I'm curious to see if it's truly a 100% kind of film. You know, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's that good. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit skeptical about it. Uh, people who say belch when they burp should be burned. What do you mean? I don't know, that's all it says. <laughs> More, yeah, is it just... I don't, uh, I don't know about that one. More, is it just the mind-controlled troopers that you have a problem with, or is it the awful execution of the idea? The mind-controlled like troopers? The clones are like the... I'm cool with clones. It... Um... Yeah, the clones, yeah, but like normal? The normal men? The First Order soldiers? Yeah, if you're talking about uh, Disney Star Wars, then yeah, it's absolutely the execution of the idea. And also not really explaining how it works. Like, how did Finn become a trooper that managed to break from the conditioning? You know, I go over all that in my TFA Part 1, I think, but... Uh, if you're talking about prequel stuff... I don't think I have a problem with the clones for the most part. So, it says something like that. Patrick Willems says he doesn't regret saying you're watching movies wrong, and he says that quote is almost always taken out of context. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I quote tweeted him. He says, he said it was partly a joke. How do you have that be partly a joke? How does that make sense? <laughs> you're watching movies wrong. It's like, that's binary, it's right or wrong. So how, do, how is it that that's partly a joke? That doesn't make any sense. And I actually think it would have benefited him to say it was a joke, instead of saying it was partly a joke, because I was just confused. My friend saw... It's partly a joke? Well, he just uses that as cover. Yeah. Like, he absolutely meant that. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's no way he didn't mean that. That's ridiculous. Uh, my friend saw Ryan's Knives Out, and she doesn't care about Star Wars, so she didn't pay attention to TLJ discussion. She said Knives Out was terrible. To be seen? I am curious. Memes say 2019 is a year of clowns. It's Joker and Beto. All right. Beto O'Rourke, I'm guessing that's a reference to. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I see the AR-15 guy, right? He's uh, yeah. He's one of the ones that yeah. speak a different language in the debates randomly, right? Ah, uh, I can't remember. There's like three of those ones. He's a crazy authoritarian monster. Guy. Like he's actually a disgusting person. The uh, four beers, and it says this is for the Aussies. They can't drink, it's too early. But, uh, well, they appreciate it. Thank God you guys are here to cheer me up after my Chicago Cubs kept blowing games. Also, Rags, what would it take for you to have sex with Brown Table? I mean, you have to be looking the other way, bag on his head, <laughs> anonymous, I don't know. Uh, I just, I don't like him. He doesn't, he's not a lot, he doesn't come across as a likable guy or an intelligent guy. You know, I, I really don't know if he has any qualities to my knowledge <laughs> well he just doesn't <laughs> even have quality <laughs> i mean like he has like height and like dimensions <laughs> but i i from his videos I, he's so aloof and stupid and i just i i legit i'm kind of just bit a bit at a loss Uh, praise be the dawn, Sands is in Smash. Hi, Mauler. Yeah, I heard. Uh, I think we mentioned that on the last EFAB. Good stuff for big fans of, uh, Undertale. So, yeah, cool. Haven't EFAPed in a while. Any new on Wolf? Uh, Wolf's doing fine. He's just, um, <clears throat> obviously not, not on EFAP, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. It's just, uh, any updates that were, like, super significant that you guys would need to know about, we, we would, uh, we would let you know. No worries. Keep Mara Jade away from new Star Wars canon, they just ruin her. She's my favorite EU character, don't touch her ever. I was actually gonna bring up the fact that it's like, you guys sometimes suggest, like, they should do blah blah blah. It's like, maybe... don't 
have them destroy that <laughs> thing that you like. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it sad that our confidence in Hollywood has fallen so low that we would rather them not even attempt it? Like, <laughs> don't nah, even just, try. Just, leave it. <laughs> just don't try. We know you'll fuck it up. Just don't even do it. I love you guys, especially you, Morley. Your videos have inspired me to start my own YouTube channel where I talk about manga and weeaboo things. Good stuff. One oh. question for you all. Is Lollicon and CP the same? No. Uh, what, what are no, they? What, what, so what, what's Lolly? What that's, is that? It's gonna be an awkward Lolly thing is... to discuss, honestly. <laughs> Lolly yeah, is like, okay. it drawn, like, drawn anime children. Okay. He's um, asking, I mean... are, is, are they especially equivalent? And I'm like, no, obviously, because one is depiction, just drawings of it, of children, and one is actually children. Right. See, one is okay. obviously okay. worse than the other. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a discussion, isn't it? <laughs> you say, that'll, that'll probably be a discussion that will go on for a long time in terms of <laughs> defining parameters of everything and ethics. So, well, I, no, I, th I think it should, no, I think this is one of those really quick, easy to sum up things. Obviously, child porn is worse than lollycon because one is real children and the other isn't. I guess it depends on what you what the basis is for good or bad. Like, is it bad because of what the effect is on the child of the real one, or is it bad on the principle that it's bad to, you know, in general? Because depending on how you draw the line, then it's like then it would change. I mean, I think they're both bad based on what based on what I've heard about uh, Lolly off of that description. But yeah. But that's, yeah, that's that's a whole topic, isn't it? Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm not touching that shit. I don't know anything <laughs> yeah. about it, like, I'm just like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> um, I agree with Angel Rin 89 Mar Mara Jade is too good for Disney Star Wars. Uh, they would only ruin her like everything else. Keep her out. Yeah, I, I, I assume a lot of people would have that perspective. Uh, do any of you guys listen to Hello Internet? They've done episodes on each of the Star Wars films. Thankfully, they aren't fans of TLJ. That is the CGP Grey podcast uh, he does with, is it Minute Physics? Is that the other guy who does that? Um, I used to listen to it. I I don't know. I just I, I didn't stop because I thought it was bad or anything. I just sort of fell out with it. But um, yeah, it's a cool podcast and it's cool that they've done ones on the films. Yeah, I've heard of it. Haven't listened to anything from him yet. People in chat are saying Dale is here. Who's Dale? I don't know. What, like Dale from The Walking Dead? Oh, Dale. No, I think he's the, <laughs> the guy that we covered the video on. Oh. I think he's... Ah! Dale, right? Is yeah, Dale, was... you're moving shit. His name was Dale? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't... Like, it's terrible. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> shit! Oh my goodness, Dale. Like, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> hey, how you doing, Dale? <laughs> what's, uh, what's the account name? Is it Dale, or is it something else? Dale Carnegie. Um, I'm just waiting to see if it pops up or not. Yeah, I wonder if the chat might just say someone's here for the f lols now. Just to fuck with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's why I'm waiting for the good old-fashioned proof. <laughs> Dale knows? Because uh... you can check anyway, right? You can literally just, it takes you to their channel. You should, yeah. Because the channel them, name yeah. is, is like Network1901 or something like that. Oh, that could actually be him. He says, nah, it's just, it's me. Just recover from all the crying of my takedown. Uh, okay. He looks like a <laughs> crier. Yeah, it's, it's, it's oh, the same it icon him? as the one from Twitter. And yeah, uh, it's a link to a channel that's like Let's Plays and it's the same guy. I guess that is him. Ah, well, it is. If you want to jump on Discord to have a chat with us, you'd be welcome to, Dale. Uh... There is, a, there is a link to my Discord in the description. From there you can find my account on the top right, and then just send me a message and I'll get you in this conversation, if you'd like to discuss how men are ruining Star Wars. That'd be cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to oh, stick yeah. around, I'm not sure I'd have the time. Oh, well, I mean, uh, you, you don't have to stay, but um, I'm assuming you'd be curious about this. Very curious. Because <laughs> I have to say, like, nothing against him personal. Well, he did make some interestingly <laughs> personal kind of 
you know, implications in your argument there, Dale, that yeah. I felt. If were you don't a, want it to be personal, bit, then a uh, bit disingenuous, um, as to say the least. That it would be interesting to hear your thoughts or explanation for. Dale saying anything? I don't think so. I can't even find. Where did, where did he say anything in chat? I can't see it. It was. It was the account was Dale knows. It's something about crying about his takedown. I assume that that's, like, sarcastic. Oh, well, he could just be uh, handling it in good fun, which would be... Oh, yeah, no, that's nice that, that's fine. I'm oh, not... It's, uh... Because if he, if he hopped in, that'd be cool to just talk about it. Though, I too don't know how long I can stick around. I'm, I'm just working on, like, an assignment while you're reading out Super Chats. How long have you got, Ranks? I'd be alone. Pretty much all night. All right, good stuff. We'll be able to talk to Dale if he if he wishes. I mean, you said yes. I can come chat. All right. If you wanna just, oh cool. Like I said just pop me a message on Discord. You can find my account through the description. And, uh, I will get you in. Um. Uh, do any of you guys? Oh wait, uh, Muller. I make videos uh, critiquing films by dismantling flaws. I want to make. Videos critiquing good movies, but I don't know how to make it interesting. Any tips? So, like, do you mean like explaining why good movies are good, or explaining the flaws in good movies? Because it's essentially the same format. There's almost like a flip, though. So, like, a lot of what a lot of what people like when you rip something down is the um sort of jabs. Once you've explained the logic of how it doesn't make sense, and then you then you have like a maybe a hyperbolic like uh, uh, insult or something like that. You try and find the inverse. So it's like. You can praise it. You could say like, "This is fucking brilliant." You know, this is this is amazing. This is such great work, especially for things that really are like tough to achieve. Um, it's not easy though. I understand that. I was very concerned about my Infinity War video working because it was um, a praise, and I do want to make more in the future. So, I guess um, I'm going to be experimenting with it as time goes on as well. Also, tell everyone to watch my videos. Everyone, go watch Evan Monroe. He's got an icon from Blade Runner 2049. I think so, anyway. Just got a big old check from working all weekend, so here, have some money poos. Please buy everyone Miss Monopoly with this mubshly. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's the thing. Uh, hello, Raggled Shad. Hello. Just got myself a great sword. Any tips on somewhat practical use? Well, there are <laughs> interesting things, but I'd, I'd want to see uh, what type of great sword. There are many swords that claim to be great swords, but are... Uh, uh, they're not actually great swords. Uh, so I feel know. like we've uh, glossed over the question of the practical use of a great sword <laughs> in like a. Well, I mean, if you live in Australia, day. it goes without saying. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, Stab right. French. Snakes and emus and any other invaders oh, trying yeah, that's, to. That's very weird. Well, um, especially we gotta, now that snow's coming up. Shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, keep an eye out in your shed. And I mean, you know. You can have everyday use when you're walking down the street, and let's say a robber is trying to take someone's purse. You can bring out your great sword. I think that there's there's a possible use of it in that way. Just you need to have your permit for carrying the great sword, of course. Mm -hmm. Love to carry sword again in public. Be great. Hi, Robert Head and Friggled. Australia is an <laughs> inside job. <laughs> um. Yeah. The meme this point. Is that Dale? It is. Yeah. Uh. Hello. Hey. Greetings. Hello. <clears throat> Your microphone doesn't sound as good as the one in the videos. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to change it up? Oh, I mean, we'd love to if you could.
uh, while he's sorting it out. Check this out. From Beowin. Oh, is it another... <laughs> Hello, love. Brought the boss home for supper. <laughs> well, I hope he's hungry. Is <laughs> it spaghetti bolognese? Shepherd's pie. What? <laughs> what, is, what is the thing with shepherd's pie? Is that like a... <laughs> oh, right. Is that like a... No, he, well, he wasn't Moore there for and it. I had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of Ephab's new memes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That the screen so bursts cool. the mask off. <laughs> Great work. Oh, that's priceless. Love it. I got, I got two more I can show. I feel like Dale's gonna be confused as fuck when he sees this, but uh, I just set it on Twitter. <laughs> like, no, I had I had no idea until Star Wars told me. <laughs> and uh, I guess I, I may have missed this one before, but this is obviously a reference to my DS2 videos. Yeah, this is better. Oh yeah, that was the um, yeah. It's taking it way back. Uh. Have you swapped microphones now? Yeah, or? yeah. Can you hear me better? Does that sound the same to you guys, or no? Not as echoey. Hmm. Yeah, it might be a little bit better. Slight yeah. Improvement. Um, I mean, it's probably good enough, right? Yeah, I was that, gonna say, if well, you want to double check that Discord is using the correct mic, like if you check your settings, it might. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a few more uh, wizards have been there. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Trail wizard! Spider wizard, you are called that. <laughs> that was the one that got mentioned earlier, remember? The trailer wizard. <laughs> so a little a toe These is sticking really out one of his socks. <laughs> His drawings are really good, they got that chalky kind of look to him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just noticed. Yeah, the, I feel like the spider the wizard cast. would be uh, exceptionally powerful. Well, yeah, I mean, right. he's got eight right. legs, so he's got eight eight legs yeah. to cast, you know, spells with. So, is it fixed up, Dale? How are we looking? <clears throat> I uh sorry, I'm just working on an assignment and I feel like I've just uh <laughs> I've just like missed the thing entirely until now and i I feel like I've just cost myself a lot of time and headache missed... over a stupid mistake. Wait, missed what? Oh just because I've been working I've been working on this assignment and I'm like, look, all the other questions are fine, but there's one and I just I couldn't figure it out. And now I feel like I've I've just I may have just figured it out. Off of just reading correctly and having basic <laughs> comprehension skills. And now I'm just like, I'm losing it. There we go. As, as is anything progressing, Dale? How uh, about the microphone? Oh, maybe he's uh, switched. Um... I'm not sure. Should we just should we just carry on reading these things until he says something? Oh, um, we might have oh. to. Oh yeah, we can uh, hear you now. If yeah, you yeah. switch microphones, can Discord needs. Oh, yeah. hey, there he is. Yeah. There Sorry about you that, go. That sounds better. That sounds better. How of you course, doing? I apologize. Good. I'm good. So, um, we we didn't enjoy your video very much. Was, <laughs> uh, I, um, we had some disagreements. Watching it either. No. Uh, we had we had some criticisms here and there. Uh, yeah, I suppose yeah, they were good ones. 
we uh we, we could start with the the title so men are ruining star wars do you, do you still think that's a fairly accurate statement um well like it's not it, you know it's inflammatory right well like, is it's it accurate a, a statement um no, I think I think for the person, obviously not, right? Like most men are not what uh, is being projected at this time. But at that time when the video was made, it thick and um, you know just leading with something provocative and just kind well, of more was, uh, from exploring. Isn't I didn't know the date. I just clicked on it. It's from June two thousand eighteen, so it's over a year old. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it was just kind of a. Uh, it was more of like a thought exercise similar to, you know, but I position my thought exercise as kind of as like a argument and character of the role, you know? Hmm. Well, I mean, what? maybe like, what, what's your, what's your opinion now, I guess, relative to the points that you made in the video? Like what's your, what's your position on the, on the topic as broadly defined as it is? Uh, it's, it's tricky, right? Like you talking about it and um, because you can, have like a assertive idea beforehand and then if you you know want to say anything different to that statement um you know it's backpedaling and all that stuff and but um no like men are not ruining star wars right like that's a, obviously clearly a like there's there's so many men in the world as uh, you guys uh, pointed out um and uh yeah people i was just at home uh watching uh, some movies with the family and uh, people on Twitter had mentioned that you guys were the video. And um, so I thought I'd come on and just uh, be open to chatting about it. Cause that's all it was meant to do is to strike conversation. Absolutely. I was going to say, since Shad doesn't have a lot of time, is there anything you would want to ask before you don't have a chance? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, first of all, good on you, Dale, for coming on and uh, coming in the lion's den uh, as it were, and uh, being willing to have a chat. So uh, uh, I'm impressed. Well, well ah, good on you. Um, thanks. I, I had to eat a couple soy packs to get ready for it. But. <laughs> so I guess there's a couple of very uh, strong and uh, I would almost call vilifying positions that you took just almost mm. for granted without really establishing their validity. Like you, you, you know, had said that if you don't like, and I assume you were talking about new Star Wars, particularly The Last Jedi, you then don't like women. Now, what are your views on that statement and and now compared to then and uh, and also how did you get to that position because that's that's a very big thing to say yeah um so from the little kind of segment and niche that my world revolved in being like a, a disney podcaster and youtuber um and uh working with uh younger like a younger woman and uh, and myself, I just kind of looked at how I was treated on the internet versus how she was treated on the internet. And I found that, um, this video, you know, the, it, it, and it's so backwards on this video. I'm tell, like, I'm calling out men and people are like commenting on it. If you look like, right. The people are like, Oh, that's so brave. And that's amazing. Um, but then if you look at a video that, network would make um it would be like about her liking a character and all the comments would just be about like you're like a piece of shit ugly whore you know shave like and just like super mean things um and uh i started meeting more women who were uh running podcasts and things like that who they were being treated the same so i had this like hyper exposure to this uh, niche um, and whether they're troll accounts or um, which some of them mo like a, probably a lot of them were um, there was still um, this distinctive role that uh, I had noticed um, the, the people who were coming out were predominantly male and just women's experiences being new to the fandom um, uh was predominantly male but then i would also have my point of like i enjoyed the prequels growing up and i also had to defend myself to men who called me an who called me an idiot and said i didn't know what i was talking about because uh i liked you know i liked the phantom menace when i was 13 right so 
uh, I just kind of related to it from that from that viewpoint. So we've acknowledged that probably they were mostly troll accounts. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't actually know if that's true or not. Like, I don't, I don't have any facts or information about that. But, but you know what I mean. Like, we do know that troll accounts are a problem. Um, you know, uh, I don't uh, know if they're a problem. Um, what I think is interesting is that the Star Wars community, and especially if you cross it over with Star Wars fandoms on YouTube specifically, it's going to be predominantly male, just demographics wise. Yep. So pretty much everything that's going to happen is going to be predominantly male anyway. No. And then when you, but when you continue on that thought exercise, right, that's always the case, right? Like it is that, um, I guess the culturalization or how social um, structures and how like well, society is constructed, just, right? I think men are, it's just mostly appealing generally to men, you know, Star Wars, the action, lightsabers, fights, mm -hmm. wars, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I would. I would disagree. I, I would. I actually would. I, I would just would disagree on that. You think generally that it appeals more to women? No, I think that. Um, it's got to be one or the other. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I, I I think, think that entertainment uh, can be perceived or art can be perceived by whoever wants to perceive it. Oh, I, 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 I say that. I think I the. Uh, I think the point that's being made is that. Because that naturally, you know, any media can be can be enjoyed by anybody, but they do generally tend to be trends in terms of like most most men aren't that interested in watching like yeah. romance films, and you know most and and it's because uh, I think with Star Wars, it's probably got a decent chunk that are female, but it would still be like majority male interest in the same way that majority male interest in like the MCU or Lord of the Rings, of course, just, right? And it all derives yeah. from the seventies, and right, yeah, like it, it's all. I, 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 uh, I, I just figure it's kind of like predisposed to certain things. Like it's, it probably isn't much of a surprise that men, on average, tend to be more interested in action-oriented um, things than than women, and conversely, women tend to be more interested in the interpersonal kind of like. It does seem to be a bit of a like universal grounded. standard we notice. Yes. Yeah. It's, and it's, there it's are, there's really some individuals. Yeah. There is know, some to, like uh, debate to where that trend comes from, but the trend does exist, right? The analytics can't lie. Do you, uh, right. do you think it's a problem? I think what's a problem. Sorry. That, that men are, uh, that generally Star Wars and the MCU, other similar universes and such, you know, Warhammer, things like that. Do you think it's a, it's something to be fixed or solved that it is mostly appealing to men. Um, well, you know, I grew up in a comic book store, as you can tell, I'm a huge geek. It's, uh, um, uh, the way it's, you know, just the way it is. I was around men. I com built computers when I was a teenager, uh, kind of grew up in the same area my whole life. And, um, yeah, it was like all when I was in those environments. Cause I also did other things as well. When I was in those environments, yeah, it was super, super predominantly males and when a girl would walk into the comic book store all the guys would be weird and like all that all that stuff um but definitely now um uh you do see it at the comic book store like again like this is like an, like this is totally anecdotal but i you know you you're it's 50 50 and i um yeah and it's it's really enjoyable like it's in, it's enjoyable to um see now my kid, uh, my oldest son, uh, play Dungeons and Dragons, you know, in a mixed like group and not feel so uh, much anxiety talking to women or or feeling such a separation um, from women. I think that's super important for our genders not to be feel super separated from each other all the time. So does that boil down to a yes or no or? Um, it's a complex question and I'd like I don't know how comfortable I like feel making like a. I don't know. Like I, I know you guys. I know. I, I know you guys kind of like made fun of me for um, being open to the idea that I was part of the problem of like causing Star Wars, and I, I'm kind of equating that to the Me Too movement in the sense where we all, um, whether or not any man uh, had committed. Uh, sexual sexual assault uh, against a woman. It, I think it was important for all men to take a moment to think to really think about if they if they had. Um, I and haven't. I don't have anything to feel guilty about. 
Yeah, neither do have I. So good, good, good. Um, I, I but, kinda don't like the the gendered framing thing. I mean, sexual assault totally. and stuff is like, yeah, but I, I mean, I guess like it depends on what like if if you were in Hollywood and you knew about the stuff that was happening, you know, that that's one thing, but like I don't I have uh, it's got nothing to do with me, you know, like I'm not there, I haven't done anything wrong. So it was more of just a thing to observe rather than think about for me because it's like i haven't done anything wrong if you know what i mean like um yeah like when i was in high when i was in high school uh we had a teacher who um some years later was fired um for the way he was with women and we witnessed that in class um some of us actually had like had um received like let like worse grades um uh because we weren't women um and this guy um was uh it was pretty bad and we we went to the when we went to the administration staff about it um as a as a guy i was i was laughed at yeah, yeah so up. sexism so, exists yeah sexism yeah. exists towards men and women in different situations right. and circumstances and stuff um 100%. but does that does that how does that apply to the i guess the point of discussion that's being made here necessarily um because generally if uh, star wars for instance mm. appeals to guys more generally I, I, there's no harm that most guys tend to like that just like there's no harm that most girls tend to like twilight and pride and prejudice and right. uh, i personally don't think these things need to change or should change to appeal to different demographics or, or sexes because if you change twilight to appeal more to guys less girls are going to like it because you're changing certain like core elements away from what it originally was. And so that's kind of some of the, I guess, perspective and point of view that we can't see this stuff. Do you think that Star Wars should be changed to appeal to new demographics that aren't interested in it originally? Um, well, I think a private company like Disney, um, you know, if they want to make a change uh, to their parks, everyone who's a fan of the parks raises their arms up in the air and flips out. Um, and I think the same can be done with any of the content that they own. If they want to I didn't, do I didn't, well, research. Just to, just to stop, just in no, case. No, no, hold on. If they want to do research and they want to be like, hey, this is a market we want to grab or we do want to be more inclusive or we want to do these things for X number of reasons, it always ending up being for money or branding. Uh, then, then they should go ahead and do it, right? And if we want to like it, we we pay our money. And if we don't like it, we stop watching Star Wars and we move on to something so, else. Uh, You're but saying see, they just... should if they can. It's like or... with comedians, right? If with comedians, you don't judge comedy. You either we you judge really them by laughing the or not laughing. No, I'm, yeah, that's pretty much answering the question. Like, yeah, no, they can really. do whatever they I want with it. No, no, that's not what I asked. That's why I tried to stop you and you went on where I thought you were going. I'm asking you, should they? Uh, right, they, they should do whatever would make them the most money. Well, okay, I'm interesting. All right. I'm okay. That, okay. very interesting. All right, all right. Um, just got also yeah. the the thing that you said about um, if they don't like it, they just don't watch it and stuff. Because in your video, you went a bit further than that. <clears throat> you were basically saying if you don't like it, you shouldn't criticize it. Well, that's what I was getting from the video. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it problem isn't whether or not you as a man or uh, anybody else likes Star Wars. It well, well, was just, the, the problem that I was highlighting was how um, you handled it, how people were handling it. Uh, not you, obviously, but how people were handling it after they didn't like it and some of the tirades and attacks that they went on afterwards. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of one of my bigger issues with it is that equating that with everyone who dislikes star wars and oh, i guess course, it's based yeah. off your experience because i know from my experience i've ne i haven't come across a single person who um disliked the new you know movies and stuff because they dislike women in actual fact i don't even think i know a single man in my entire sphere who dislikes women like a true legitimate sexist you know in in air quotes and stuff as it's defined um 
it just seems like a complete caricature. And that's why when you do see comments like this rise on the internet, usually it's done as trolling because people like to trigger other people who get really offended easily by it. Um, I guess it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's like an instance of, uh, I guess, addressing a demographic that's so small and clearly wrong that it's not even really worth discussing it. Yeah, like, I wonder if there's anyone who hates it. TLJ because they hate men. <laughs> well, like, okay, it would be, so, it'd be so negligible at that point. Oh, it, it's uh, like, um, I know it seems like I'm kind of walking on the fence, but like, what I'd, uh, what kind of came from the, this video actually? Part of this whole discovery was me ending up leaving uh, the network, um, and uh, was because you know, um, for you for you guys uh being skeptical about um some of the things that are being said out there and 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 uh going over it and breaking it down and and uh, obviously um thinking that uh social justice warriors have gone too far um well i just uh, I, I, mean, I got it i got it i got it little to do with i got it i got it i got it from that other side um with like the people that i worked with um you know when i had i had there's a video that i made just like questioning whether or not kylo ren and ray was like a good healthy relationship for people to have and um i i got the this like the same type of like super negative reaction for and i got called an anti i got uh I got like basically it was like um my one of my closest friends she didn't even know who I was it was like who are like I don't even know who you are anymore and it it I ended up that I couldn't end up working with her cuz it was just so impossible cuz she just hated me for the rest of the time uh, and all I did was like I'm I'm just asking the question um and uh I, I like I'm I just like to hear people's opinions and I would yeah and and, and I kind of formulate my opinions through them but sometimes it it I can um, it happens after a conversation, right? Like we formulate our opin opinions after a conversation, um, and I'm always open to to being wrong. Well, see, that didn't kind of come across in, in the video. In well, actual, yeah. There's a part of the video where I think you said either you you your opinion is invalid or you can't have an opinion. Um, I can't remember exactly. Didn't matter. The you word. said your yeah. opinions don't. Matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, and that was in regards to uh, your opinions of how uh, shitty um l337 is doesn't really matter to the girl who's just like oh my god i love like this i love this character and it made me feel really good and that's i like this movie said, that's not what you said yeah no i i yeah of course yeah it, i that, guess that, in that instance it would just be about conveying it clearer um i don't even like, think it, pro probably... that wasn't, i don't think that was the framing at all from what i remember in the video it right. was an implication that um yeah. disney don't give oh, a shit about yeah, your opinions right. it's your money right. that matters Oh, oh, that that statement. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah which, sorry, I was just kind of trying to describe the place I'm coming from. But yeah, no, they yeah. they don't really care what your opinions you are. They don't care about I the money. It, wait, wait, wait. Do you honestly believe that? That Disney don't care? Um, the, the Disney doesn't care about the opinions, only about the money. Cool. Uh, no, they do. Yeah, that's right. I, they don't care about it. Uh, make... Hang on, hang on. I want to take this one. <laughs> so did they make? You know oh, that... God, so are you aware that uh, of reviewers? being paid to create reviews are you aware that reviewers are paid to go out and watch the movies that disney are very concerned with getting influencers to be pro disney in order to make more money i.e their opinions matter because of the money yes yeah therefore if being an influencer let's just say pewdiepie watches the new star wars like tlj and hates it and you think Disney will be very concerned that his opinion would be so low of their film? Uh, some people's opinions matter. Right. I, I, I think um <laughs> I think I think one of the, the things because I'm mostly interested in like video games and um in the video game industry, we often see instances of um public pressure that doesn't necessarily equate to monetary like monetary you know, what influences the decisions of a company are often monetary. It's like, is this going to be better for sales? Is reputation feed into sales? But there, there are a lot of instances where, like, i.e., it's a, it's a live service game. So it's a game that's constantly getting updated. And then the community's like, hey, this is bad. This isn't working for us. This uh, There's problems with this. 
and they'll listen to the feedback and then they'll implement those changes. And even in instances where it's like uh like Star Wars Battlefront 2, there was definitely a monetary factor there. That game still sold pretty well though, but it was definitely the backlash and the public, you know, public pushback against it and saying what they didn't like was important because if if it's just money, then you don't necessarily know what you did wrong as a company. Like if Star Wars The Last Jedi came out and it didn't do that well at the box office, how, how would they know what was wrong with it unless they were listening to public opinion and feedback? Especially when Solo didn't make money. Well, Solo is probably a good example of that because uh, that film didn't make money and it seems like there's been a misinterpret... Like, Solo isn't good, but Solo is better than, uh, like, The Last Jedi. It's better than The Last Jedi, but it, yeah. seems like, but it seems like that communication has been lost, and it would be lost if it was only looking at the, the monetary... I think there are just enough instances of um, companies listening to people, even though there's definitely a monetary factor behind it, but they do they definitely will listen to what people we just, have to say. We just had one yesterday with YouTube. Yeah, yeah I guess, like, the, the, the opinion of any one individual... Is probably not that important, but the collective opinion, I got to imagine, absolutely. I got to imagine that there are people at Disney who are well aware of why people don't like the sequel trilogy. I'm guessing your your whole point was to try and discourage people from being so vocal about hating Disney because their opinion is not going to change anything. But we were going with it. Um, uh, to the point of uh, attacking people for liking it. Well, sure, but what if what if that wasn't even their goal, though? What if they just wanted to express the the damage that has been dealt to a once great franchise? Um, yeah, then right, th then you wouldn't uh, tag certain people in it, or you're replying to other people's comments, right? It, it is kind of, I guess, how you would position your well, argument. That goes both ways, right? The people who are pro TLJ will often tag or quote or screenshot people who are making what they consider to be poor arguments or poor takes, as in, I hate this movie because it's terrible, they'll be like, yeah, okay, you don't understand film. Just, it goes yeah, I mean, ways. There, are, there are people who go out on Twitter and say that if you talk about Mary Sue's, then you hate women. Yeah, yeah. Um, they would say that we don't understand how to follow up story narrative because we can't see ourselves in it. What do you think about that? But Mary Sue's? No, like the yeah. idea that if someone's complaining about Mary Sue's and stuff, oh right, that you you have to be a you have to be a sexist because you've complained about Mary Sue's. Well, like, would you yeah. say that that person is a woman hater or someone who hates women? No, but um, in certain circles, yeah, they'd be labeled as such. <laughs> you wouldn't what kind say of that. Circles? But you wouldn't know. Is it is the important thing, right? <laughs> like you you wouldn't label them as a sexist for that. Um, oh, I probably it like it, like I. I go pretty hard at men in general, um, just in a, like in a, yeah, I, I go pretty hard in men in a, in a, yeah, in an entertainment piece. Well, from Disney you go stars. as, would you oh, go no, as hard more... as on women in the same regard? Um, so I it should be obvious, right? I don't, most people wouldn't even start that with an um. Most people would say, of course I would treat the genders equally. Do go oh. ahead though. Uh, well, no, it, <laughs> it, it, it like it, it the at, again, too, I'm trying to put it in the context of uh, when I made the video, because, um, you know, uh, recent comedians like Bill Burr and uh, Dave Chappelle have talked about it where, um, yeah, like and, and again, too, like, like there was this group of women who were calling out um, everybody for a lot of different things. And um lot of causes for their own causes and uh uh i was more nervous um about a video that i released that was king um kylo ren and ray's relationship than i was about releasing a video about um how men are ruining star wars that's disheartening to hear honestly yeah oh. <laughs> that sucks yeah well like I'm again too like I know people are like tearing me apart in the chat and everything. Um, oh, just uh, ignore them. Uh, no, yeah, I know, I know, I know, just, I know. Yeah. I, but uh, I just, um, I'm just like I'm just an open person, and I'm uh, actually genuinely willing. Like I know I present my arguments as an argument as such because like that's just how I was uh, trained to do. Even though I know I use uh, several logical fallacies 
uh, in it. Right, but well, to uh, level with you, right? No. You made a tweet saying that if someone, if a man complains about Mary Sue's, they one hundred percent hate women and don't understand narrative and look dumb. Oh. That's pretty. I, awful. Admittedly, though, like the the t <laughs> tweets uh, can sometimes be. Oh yeah, there's, there's plenty of context. Maybe you were angry. Maybe you're referring to a specific set of people. Maybe this is maybe it's a fake account. And you never actually said it. Who knows? It's um... no. It, it was. It was. I said it uh, in regards to um, all of the tweets I was seeing about uh, everyone going off. I think at that time <laughs> everyone was going off when about Ray. Ben complained about it. Ah, no, because that was when women um... complain. It's. So like I'm, again, so, I'm uh, someone again who's, to, like I've made again videos to, going over the whole like, Mary Sue thing about Ray. It's a serious problem with her character. She's she's possibly you're, the you're prime going, example. But, so like you know you've you've all been on Twitter, right? When you're going on Twitter and stuff, right? You're just seeing what you're seeing, and so if you're you're seeing you, and if you're uh, following or being followed or being or having people like that are in a, a certain group, uh, that's all the content you're going to see. And then we all have to be wary of. Well, that. no, you have the ability to go out and see whatever content you want. Oh, it, it's not. It's not always so easy to right, just break the algorithm. Back so break the algorithm. Hang on. So to it's give you an example, right? We've ran this is the fifty third episode of EFAP. We've had, I believe, one female guest, and that's not for the, for the lack of our desire to have female guests. It's just that in, upon reaching out, that's that's what we get back in return. Does this mean I should put out a tweet saying women don't like discussion? Uh, no, but, uh, like, your guys' discussion, um, like, you know, it could be, like, is really hurtful sometimes, and, uh, wow. sure. um, yeah, and so we'll know, but, you know, and, and, you can't handle that? I, just don't I think we can. Oh, it. people are of saying Anna as can. well. Anna's not been on an EFAP episode. Yeah, she's, she's not been technically on, um, a guest. She's been, she spot. will be, she will be, but, yeah. yeah, Jay Longbone's the only email that's been on a full episode. Um, Jay Longbone's probably the most controversial person on EFAP as a whole. She beats out possibly everybody, and she uh, just, if she heard that women might not want to come on because it can be hurtful, would uh, probably surprise it. You, you get where I'm getting at though, right? Like, you, you would admit this, this tweet is of poor phrasing, at the very least. I'm not trying to, like, string you up by your tweet, I'm just like, you, you, you would agree, right? This is a pretty crappy tweet. Right. Um, yeah. You're, yeah. Again, okay, that's it's, cool. it's that's all, cool. all just a, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it's, uh, uh, I just think it's not to... people will say things on Twitter that they don't, <laughs> that if you, if you give them a little bit more time to like mull it over, I think many of us here that. are of the opinion that Twitter is a shithole. Yes. Oh, I, I hate so Twitter. We, I uh, hate Twitter. <laughs> we definitely get that all the time. I'm glad I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm banned from Twitter because yeah, it's I only use it for context, a terrible place. And yeah. snarking every once in a while, which is not exactly helping, but I usually counter snark. <laughs> and I think one of the key things to remember about Twitter is it does not represent, you know, the world. Oh, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the Twitter, Twitter is not real life. Um, um, and because that seems to be where you got your impression that uh, if a guy criticizes Mary Sue's their sexist um which is um, a, a that's a pretty you know extreme entirely. place to find yourself in not yeah. not entirely not it, at it, all. It, would, it would oh not at all absolutely not how well how would you distinguish a man who says uh, who is a sexist who says raise a Mary Sue from someone who isn't a sexist who says raise a Mary Sue yeah. how would you distinguish them and quantify them to see which group was larger than the other I, I don't know how you could. I don't know how you can tell the difference well, between yeah. a, a a comment versus an a, like a, someone's uh, actual viewpoint or like a so, mistake. So like, what hmm. about this? How many legitimate full blown sexists do you know in real life that just hate women because they're women? Could you uh, could you count one in your um, in your actual real life? You've met them in real life. I've come across guys who um, probably don't think they hate women, but by the way they talk about them, they do. Um, but I don't like, I don't like, that's not my circle, obviously. So, And I would assume that's a very small minority amongst all the men you know. Of course. 
So if you were to just go off even your own anecdotal experience of men in general, wouldn't that inform you somewhat that uh, therefore most men who criticize Ray as being a Mary Sue would perhaps match the same dispersion of sexist men you meet in your own real life, that that might be a very small minority that actually are that sexist, that most people are criticizing Ray, uh, criticizing because for legitimate reasons. Basically, would you extrapolate the real world into the arguments being made on the internet? Like when I listen to your criticism, it sounds the same as someone saying, I don't like big hunky action heroes. And if a woman says that, I assume she hates men. Um, like I would yeah, at least I think, Mary, I think hear them develop it, right? Like at least, like if I just said, I hate Mary Sue's or something, you go, why? Like, cause they're all women. Like, whoa, that's clearly a female statement. But if I said, because they, often never have to work for anything and I, I prefer my characters earning their victories. That has nothing to do with sex, right? Or gender. Well, would you say that there are legitimate reasons why people would say that Ray is a Mary Sue? Of all the um, arguments you've heard, would you say Oh, well, that? yeah, like you can see why people can get hot about it is because they can see um, the points. And if you do know about characters and storytelling, the, like it's not, if you look at the definition of a Mary Sue, you do have to, uh, it does require further explanation sometimes, right? Um, but you could also argue that Luke got his powers very quickly as well, right? So... You did try and know. I think right, that we I, don't. We, I, I know. I know the time they they screw up everything with the timeline in the Last Jedi. Right, the the short timeline kind of ruins the narrative because it doesn't make. She doesn't have any there's, there's, anyway beyond Luke. It, there's the there's no you could yeah other than <clears throat> other than where the movie positions the rest of the film. You there are a lot. There's a lot that you could just leave out of the Star Wars narrative, and it would have no impact. Unfortunately. Doesn't, do yeah, that, I, like, I don't really think it fits in a trilogy. Do you think that you if think Luke that, was right? a Mary Sue, you know, that would I mean she it. isn't? Was a Mary Sue? My point being that just because if Luke was, does that change the fact that Rey is? Uh, no, no, but I don't think that he is thought of as one. And so just in the same way that you can point to the Mary Sue archetype as a reason um, to say that she is, you could point at a similar character like Luke to point how she isn't. I imagine that people use it as a shorthand for trying to bring a several set of criticisms on board quickly to translate the idea. Because when someone says it to you, I imagine I, you think like, oh, so they're powerful slash can solve problems. They're liked by a lot of people. They're an author insert. These things will probably be applicable. Probably not all and probably to varying degrees, but that's all it's for. And so that's what I mean by you ask them to develop what they're saying um, to figure out if they're sexist or not. I honestly, in my time on the internet, I really don't know many people who hate women because women are just they, they, half they, the they, population. They're just everywhere. You know, it's just I like, I don't know anyone who hates mean, women. But like nothing like 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 in the same way that um, the, this this hatred for a lot of different groups in a in a meme format. But like genuinely convincing me that someone hates a woman and they can't enjoy Star Wars for it is confusing to me. I don't know what they were enjoying in Star Wars in the first place, considering Leia was a thing. Oh. <laughs> just just yeah, right. on a side note, I just want to add in, Luke isn't a Mary Sue or Gary Stu uh, at, at all. Um, and I think that can be argued very strongly uh, to establish that. Yeah, he's I was going to say, that would take Sue. us down yeah. a, a different set of argument, but all four yeah. of us here would, but, would disagree with you vehemently that Luke is a Mary Sue. Uh, yeah, I don't think he is either. Right, I'm, I, but I using a similar character that uh, he does have a similar archetype. Obviously, like he he does have the hero's journey, and they um, attempted the hero's hero. journey. Uh, oof, does she? She's the um, protagonist, I, but I don't think she has a hero's journey. Yeah, I mean, you said it. I was, I'm curious uh, if that just slipped out or if you really. Well, mean I it. actually, I, I don't actually think he has much of a hero. I, I kind of think yeah. um, Kylo Ren more has the hero's journey. Well, it's interesting yeah. you say that, right? Because a lot of people seem to be on Kylo Ren's side when it comes to like who they want to be the protagonist in this yeah. series. And it's like that's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I would say if I like really had to like pick one of them, it probably like it kind of almost started off as Finn, but the main character of the story like shifted halfway through. Uh, 
Right. Uh, the narr- again, the story. Um, do you, um, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, do you think it makes you a better person to enjoy media rather than being pissed off by it, let's say? Um, okay, so like, as, like if we take the extremes, like if someone just likes everything they watch, are they better than someone who well, well, gives it a critical so eye? Me and you watch a film, um, I come away going, that was shit, I fucking hated that. You were like, oh, I enjoyed it. Are you the better person? No. No. If you like, but every move, um, are you finding another one of my tweets to tear me apart against? No, I think well, that you said this at the end of your video. video. Uh, yeah, it you said seems, let's all be better like people were... and just enjoy yeah. it. Well, again, too, and and uh, I, I haven't watched that video. Uh, um, but again, I, I I just watched. Yeah, I know. I, a year ago. Yeah, uh, it's old. It's old. Right. I, mean, I don't like. I get yeah, it. And, 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 and I watch parts. Year, but... I, I watch. I watch parts of your of the stuff that you had uh, said. But you know, you can only handle so much of uh, boy talk. It can, yeah, it can be rough. I I get it. And uh, again, I think um, it shows good quality that you're willing to talk about it. Cause... Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. All I was gonna say is, it's a like I expect you to say that you don't actually believe that statement i do not know what possessed you to say that in your video because again again it was all coming from the place of um attacking people online for liking star wars and like and i i i know that uh it may not have uh got across enough um but uh that was really the place so, i was coming so for because that's what i was inundated by when yeah when you say attacking like because I know there was a big, you know, uh, Twitter storm and everything of people criticizing The Last Jedi and uh, saying it's crap and everything like that. I don't, you know, translate that as personal attacks. It's just people voicing how much they disliked it. And even if they are particularly oh, yeah. the way they say it, like, you know, Ray is a this and that or Rose is a this and that and stuff, and that's just an outlet to express how deeply they disliked the, these, the depiction of these characters in the movies – that's very different to uh, being overtly sexist or attacking people and things, but it seems like so many people interpret that as people are attacking and they're bullying and stuff, and it's like they're sharing an honest opinion. I would agree with you on in that framework, but again, my experience with that framework was um, I like Childish Gambino, uh, Donald Glover, um, and if I was to say, uh, share a picture of the, Don, uh, child, the, uh, Lando Calrissian Funko pop that I got, oh, no. um, no, but right. If, right. If, <laughs> if, if just carry on, carry on, you're fine. Well, no, but like, so I just like something. I, I like the musician. I love his music, uh, in the background of the video, <laughs> you can see, I have like, uh, his vinyl, uh, at the, uh, at the back it's behind me. Um, I just. It's just stuff on display that I like, um, and I and I and I got you know made fun of for it a bunch, um, and so these people are going on Twitter saying something they like, and uh, then the replies in it or the comments are like, "Oh, you're a dumb whore for liking that," and okay, so that's it, 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 but it is like that. Like I don't get. I know. Like I don't. I didn't experience that type of talk about Star Wars, but when I would watch uh, colleagues of mine who were women. Uh, talk about Star Wars. That was the replies they get, and uh, yeah, and it, and it, it kind of exposed me to this, so like, this this way they're treated. To, so to try maybe try and provide like a scenario here, like I've got a Tywin figurine. Um, my parents picked it up because they like Game of Thrones too, and they were like, "Oh, you like Tywin? There you go." Like I don't collect these things, but I was just like, "Yeah, yeah, cool, thank you, appreciate the gift, whatever." And I put it on Twitter because like, hey, Tywin figurine. If I had someone say, man, that is awesome, and it's, it's cool that you, you got a gift of something that you actually, like, have a sort of investment in, and, um, you know, it's a nice, nice kept figurine well made, it's like, that's, that's great, cool stuff. And then I get another one that says, um, I'm really disappointed that you would buy plastic tat that means fucking nothing, when it's just the show is what's meaningful, the, the message, the ideas, why are you buying this crap, when all it's gonna do is <laughs> encourage the industry. And, and just take space that you're not even going to use. Like, oh, is it really so you can just look over there and go, ooh, that's nice. Is it on me to be like, well, the first comment was from a better person. Mm. You th- like, just genuine question. Do you think that the second person was kind of being a bad person, or do you think that they were just expressing their perspective that they probably have a lot of reasons to be informed by? 
Maybe they could have an argument with you. What I'm trying to imply here is just <laughs> the negativity. Well, but, but but so but what you're doing though is taking like a nicer situation and applying it to like. Oh, well, I'm giving uh, the person reason, right? As yeah, opposed a to someone more. saying you're a dumb whore. But like like yeah, because the three of us, for all of us, we we get shit all the time on the internet for not liking it. Like people tell us all the time that we hate women, we hate minorities, we hate this, we hate that. We're terrible people. We get told that we're like garbage people just because we don't like it, and we just laugh at that shit because it's hilarious. Like if if you're if you're you take any position on the internet, then people are just gonna hate you for it. That goes of for course. basically yeah. everything. Yeah. So the idea that this is exclusive to women. Or and that women sig supposedly get it way rougher is just no. This is stuff we all have to deal with. That's just the internet. Oh, well, and right, and I essentially was doing the same thing, making this video, right? Like I was creating an inflammatory comment for for well, interest okay, draw, yeah. and but for reference, right? So like, if me and Rags post a picture each of a figurine we have, and someone responds, "Dumb whore." We laugh at it because there's nothing there. There's no through right, line. How could we be unintelligent and like pouring ourselves out when it's like there's there's so little connection to that? And so, in the same way, your video, like we watch it, we we we'd laugh at a lot of the statements because we don't know how you got there. Um, and so in a in a way, you're becoming the very people you support to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would. Th there's yeah, there would be a bit of that in there for sure. Yeah, uh, see that. Uh, have you? Sorry, met any... I'm interested. Oh, sorry. I was okay. just gonna say quickly. Have you met any women who hate TLJ? Um, I haven't uh, really thought about that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess. Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I certainly know of more, like, in my direct sphere, uh, I know more girls who dislike Star Wars generally because it doesn't appeal to them, and therefore they would like, uh, sorry, dislike uh, Last Jedi probably equally as much or probably more, if they even bothered to watch it, um, than men. So I'm assuming there's a, that would be somewhat paralleled by you, that you know women that just don't like Star Wars in general? Um, well... You know, I I think when The Force Awakens came out, I, at least for me, um, noticed uh, more women talking about Star Wars. That was the one thing I had uh, noticed. But I think it could ju it probably more equates to just a younger generation um, than women in general, right? Like, I don't think it was necessarily a woman movement. I think it was just young people. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really think about it. I Like, it's funny to make a video like that. I don't really try to, like, think about it always in like that type of context, I guess. Well, I mean, I would encourage you to always try and follow it, the logic through of any statement, just to make sure you're being consistent and perhaps not. You know, you're going to make sweeping statements about bed. Like you might want to you know, take it easy. Or, <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. But yeah, but you know, again, too, the same could be said about uh, individuals that you see on YouTube. The same could mean? be. What do you mean? Well, you take it easy on right, like you right, like you guys went pretty hard uh, at me, and and it's all in fun and entertainment, essentially. Yeah, on on an individual based on things that they said specifically, not on a group extrapolated from data that I could yeah, possibly. We made our judgments of your statements specifically. We didn't say because of your statements, men suck. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally, you know, always take issue and resent comments saying that because I dislike Star Wars, I hate women. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, how could I you think, not uh, be grossly offended just, um, by su such a statement? You know, it's uh, people are not going to be very receptive to judgments of their character based on what immutable you know, characteristics that have like, yeah, to do with them. Yeah. It's um, it's uh, it's it's not it's not particularly nice. Um, and because yeah, if we're talking about, I guess it's like throwing stones. Like you threw the first stone with the title of your video. <laughs> I know, hundred yeah. percent. And 
my main issue is with the statement because I, I I've said multiple times I don't know you personally and honestly just from our interaction now you seem like a very pleasant chap I'm sure we could have had fun playing D and D and all that and because I have heaps of friends that I disagree with heaps and stuff and so my my kind of you know issue are with your uh, certain opinions you've shared statements you've made and things. Uh, of course, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah I, I, I was saying and in very inflammatory, um, aggressive, accusatory uh and one-sided arguments some that you would say are incorrect from your perspective now um some yeah like well like, well, like, ob like <laughs> yeah like it, it, it's like obviously like obviously like the um to make a, a statement and i used logical fallacies to try to prove a point oh so, well good on um, you for admitting that at least yeah, but yeah, like we all use logical fallacies. It's not. Yeah, I mean, when you say something wrong, you just say, "Well, I goofed up. That was wrong. I was stupid. I'm glad I know better now." And it shows good quality of character if you can just guess, say, uh, "Yeah, I was really wrong." The, the main thing, I guess, was uh, because the main the main issue that was with the video was more of like the broad sweeping statements, I guess, mm. about like it's um, it's just it's it doesn't feel nice, um. <laughs> To have a have a perspective on a film and then sort of and then have it inferred, I guess, to like oh, a yeah. person's judgment of of character yeah, yeah. And, and like important things, like important things like whether or not they're prejudiced or anything like that. It's just kind of like a oh. it's um the thing is is again it I think it's just like there probably are like a handful of people who may well fall into the category of just taking umbrage with the film based on the the gender and the race of characters in it but there's such a small portion of the of the population that i'm not even sure it would be worthwhile like to cover that if it's, you find um, one point that out to me because i've never met anyone who unironically actually holds that position and that the age. thing is like even even if they did right even if they did um it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with whether or not their criticisms of the film are valid or not like the intention shouldn't be as important i think i think that was the main pitfall of the video was you're a bit too caught up yeah. on intent rather than um i guess what what they were saying or what they were trying to get across or their issues with the film yeah someone like, can uh, legit hate women but they could still have valid points about the they course, just wouldn't yeah. have valid points about their perspective yeah, on women. Yeah, no i i, mean, I, just, I, I oh yeah. sorry go no, it's it's all good. I, I I hear what uh, I hear kind of, I hear what you're coming from, and I hear what you're saying. Um, my experience with the Last Jedi was a weird one too, in the sense like when I was watching it, uh, I had thought I'm like, oh, do I do I not like Star Wars anymore? That's like, why did I think? Why did that thought pop up in my head? Watching it, and I was kind of like, oh, and everyone around me was like, oh, that was sweet, you know, like everyone's jacked up on opening night adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, yeah, and, and and then I had to watch it again and I had to watch the documentary and I had to watch the commentary before I actually really liked the movie. Um, and that's really? never a good sign of a wow. movie. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, just, just <laughs> FYI, like watching those things made me even more like blown away oh. by all of the lost potential. Yeah, well, like I just fell in love with the set pieces and um, I it was... When actually, when the when the film first came out too, I have a like a, I, I talk about it when it first came out and how pissed off I was about how literally all the plots, uh, device like all the plot devices from the previous story were literally thrown out. Um, so that was kind of a slap in your face because Star Wars is so much about the plot devices <laughs> uh and um yeah I, I i it uh it took me a while before i could enjoy it and then I, but i yeah i do kind of enjoy it now i don't you know but it, it, it's like i don't totally hate jar jar anymore either so <laughs> would you like to speak you... to a woman who hates the film um well it yeah like why wouldn't i want to talk oh, i'm just it? like chat a raving about how that star wars girl is in in the chat and i guess they want to, to have you two meet. I don't I don't think they'll get what they're looking for, but the idea is <laughs> that 
I think there's an assumption that people who are ripping into the film are the people that you look at as being almost oh, unreasonable, and that the women you speak to are all very positive about the film, and therefore you conclude that men ruining Star Wars and women are keeping it going. And what Chat want, I think, is to have Anna come in oh, as... and yeah, and her destroy my arguments, but I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super on the same page, so... I mean... Yeah, like I, I'm not trying to be condescending. You're, whatever, you're we, aware we, whatever, that we some can... women do not like that film for for very extended and explained reasons that all relate to Star Wars specifically. I.e., I, I would never want is... it. If, I would never want it to be construed that I like that. I would think other. You know what I mean? Like it, it's. I know that I am saying men are ruining Star Wars in the video, but I don't like outside of that, which I know is a huge uh, brush to uh, paint with. Um, I'm not, I don't think that like all women love, like, like, like sure. everyone's, uh, everyone's a unique individual. I know I'm, I understand what I was doing with my title. Yeah. I, I, I think, just... uh, I think, I well, think the well, gender oriented lens of the, of the title in the <laughs> video itself was what threw you off really. Um, I, I mean, from, yeah, that uh, was, but that was the goal. That there, was there's also like, a couple of other that. things I was wanting to ask you about. Um, uh, if you guys are fine for me jumping to a different subject of the video. Yeah. Well, uh, what oh, I was going to say real quick then was that um, the 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 idea that men are ruining Star Wars. Her argument to you would be that TLJ has ruined Star Wars, and would you think that that's an, almost an impossibility, or do you think that could be valid? I think oversaturation ruined Star Wars. Like I think they f they totally missed the point that what we loved most about Star Wars was anticipating the next one and talking about the lore and breaking it all down. Not for me. No, I don't know about that. She would probably argue. Oh, you that don't think that you don't think that adds added to the hysteria it, and excitement of no, the, no, each no, film. If it's good, like that. if if it's good, give me as much of it as you can. Yeah, I would. And the MCU that. gets away with it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And. Yeah, I think she would argue like the damage to the characters, the law, even just the plot within the film, and the the lack of coherency is what damages itself and its franchise that it's a part of. You think that you could be convinced by that, or do you think that that's uh, a bit hyperbolic? Um. Well, it it just stands out. That movie stands out so separate from a lot of other Star Wars films that yeah, you could. Well, I that's could, for certain. You could. You could obviously. Um, yeah, I see that for sure. But I can see why people love it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that difference is why a lot of people do love it the way they love it. So, well, this kind of goes into one of my questions. And I'm not sure do you still want to get a uh, Star Wars girl on Mola. Um, um, well, I don't want to like waste your time that. or anything. I don't want to have it brought on yeah. just to have uh, Dale here be like, that's fair. <laughs> like, if she says, like, <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, I was just going to say, you could go ahead with uh, what you've got to. To move on. Oh, well, this should be a brief one, I would hope, is your comments about space wizards. That was just kind of a flippant remark that wasn't really serious, I hope. Uh, it's actually, uh, it, I think it's a, it's a reference to, um, like, a, 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 I can't, like, I don't know what the reference is to thing. anymore, right? But it's become a meme in my mind that it, you know, it just making for fun of, like, it's about space wizards. What do you think that means? Um, Star Wars is about space wizards. Sure. What does it imply? Does it imply that it's not to be taken that seriously? Um, that it, it uh, that uh, well, it's it's kind of it's almost an entendre in the sense of that it's um, uh, it it's the it's derived from fantasy elements. You know, like they are like knights and it, it's you know medieval or samurais in space. Um, it so it's part that and then part that serious like i love star wars a lot and i've loved it for a really long time and um you know See, but it, you know at the same time like well the context in which you use it in the yeah. video is that because it has space wizards in it there's no point in taking it seriously or having uh, valid criticism against it because the what was implied by that is that well it's silly from the get-go so why even bother trying to argue about it well yeah like i think you know, when you especially talked about like some of the plot holes um, that they made an entire movie to explain the pot plot hole of the Death Star, um, you know, it's like not a plot hole, the convenience, the best. OK, right. But it, yeah, but, you know, it was commonly joked as as a, as a plot hole. 
Yeah, I've um, called it a pothole in the past. Um, but so yeah, well, sorry. What what's your point here? Um, just that. Uh... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I've lost my point. I guess. Yeah, I, I guess because like that's why I was hoping it was just a, a flippant kind of statement because just because something has you know a fantastical element, as we were saying in our kind of um, uh, criticism and review of your video, doesn't undermine any serious validity it might hold or serious themes or the fact that older people can't enjoy it or anything like I I, I hate that statement when people try and use that as a means to dismiss an argument because well, yeah. it means yeah. nothing. Of course, like I had an entire YouTube channel, two years of my life dedicated to just talking about Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar. Like I obviously uh, feel the same way, feel very passionate about Star Wars. I was, you know, known as a, the Star Wars guy and um, I you read the comics and I read the book, lots of the books. Obviously, who could read all of the books? Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm deep into Star Wars and it's super important to me, you know, um, taking my kids to see star wars so i can create little clones of myself is like one of my so favorite things to do <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like that type of statement then would offend even someone like you well, why do you love it it's just about silly yeah. space wizards right yeah like you know if it's, you know sometimes uh being subversive and uh how is that being subversive like i have a sarcastic nature um so and i tend to poke fun at myself a bit too which is why i probably seem like such a beta um but really at the end of the day i'm just uh i don't know i just don't I try i'm trying not to take myself so seriously because i took myself i wouldn't have been I mean, able to come on come on here and uh, talk to you guys and that's really cool of you. And I do like, again, I think that's great. Um, yeah, because uh, that statement just seems to attack yourself. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm in on the joke, I guess, essentially, like I'm in on. Because the only way that we ever see the movie, ref just a movie about space wizards, is a way to devalue any kind of criticism of it. And yeah, like to take deflect away so from criticism made for it. The cool. idea that, oh, you found so a kind criticism of criticism with it. Yeah. So, but it's just a space wizard movie meant for children or whatever. So, we yeah, have and I, criticism. That's the only yeah. way that we ever see it framed. There's a lot of things that are happening out there that are um, upsetting a lot of people, uh, right? With how whatever their take is. And, um, we all have a crazy platform to, to share our opinions. And so now we're all, um, getting upset about everybody's takes and opinions. Well, no, no, just um, disagreeing. I mean, I'm yeah, not, up, not, not really upset. Me somewhat because I think it's, uh, honestly a disingenuine way to try and address someone's opinion or criticism and stuff. And it just struck me as odd because it's the same thing that would be applied to you. And I don't think you would appreciate someone trying to dismiss your views or passion or love for Star Wars because it has space wizards in it. When in actual fact, space wizards are awesome, but yeah, we all want to be a space wizard. Mm -hmm. um, I know. I, I and again, too, I, I, I was, I, I grew up uh, during the prequels, right? So I had a, I had to deal with it in real life uh, with like 40 year old dudes. What? I'm sorry. What? What is the context of that? You actually had to debate as a child against 40 year old dudes about whether or not the prequels yeah. were any good. Yeah, like you're at a comic book store, or you're at like, you know, you're building computers, like, you know, like you're just hanging out with geeks all the time. And uh, yeah, they, you know, you, you, you come back from Attack of the Clones or whatever, you're all stoked on it. And they're like, that movie's terrible. You're an idiot. Like, Boba Fett's the greatest and J Django Fett's an idiot or whatever, you know? And you're like, you just enjoyed your experience and you're just, um, you know, trying now trying to defend yourself. I remember having. To I do guess that uh, maybe afternoon. maybe that might be the influence for like the uh, the I guess the perception of the way that criticism yeah. is directed because for us it's not about like uh, it's it's more it, like it's it's trying to be more focused on the the content itself rather than I guess making character judgments and like whether or not that like because because the whole the whole camp of the the EFAP thing is like trying to determine objective quality for like film stories and stuff and and the idea being that um remove all biases objective qualities uh yeah separate from like personal so i.e venom is bad like it's a bad movie but i like it 
and I'm aware that it's bad, but I still like it. Um, whereas if somebody were to, I think a good example would be John Wick 2. I love John Wick 2, and then Maul is like talking about how it's no good. Fucking hate and it. then that starts to, and that <laughs> starts like to like, annoyed me too. Just... yeah. And so, and so then that influences me into like liking John Wick 2 less. I still like it, but it's not like that's Maul's fault. Like I <laughs> decided to dislike the movie more because it became a problem for me. Um, and so, so when it comes to discussing the film, the goal is not to change the way that people feel about it because what people feel is up to them and it's not like, you know, it's not up for anybody to decide how you feel about a film. But if it, if it results in the opinion of the film decreasing, then that, that's just what happened. You know, it's, it's different to the example you had where it seemed like people were just being downright mean-spirited. Yeah. Yeah, like and and you know, and so I I took that lens and saw what was happening to other people who were close to me. Right. And um and uh you know, in a vacuum. Yeah, like it's probably just uh, an instance of um I guess uh I you know, but like it's different... just exp- it's ex- yeah. it, for for me uh I always handled videos as like exploratory, right? Um Mm-hmm. When I was making a video, I realized that I thought something different by the end, and then I would edit this video and be like, "I don't agree with any of this anymore," you know, like or 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 what have you. Or uh, you have a guest on, and they totally change your opinion about something, or you listen to you know Skeptics Guide to the Universe, and you're like, "Oh, geez, uh, organic food's been bullshit the whole time," like you know, like stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying. I just uh, I'm always trying to explore and. Uh, grow from other people's experiences mm-hmm. and uh, at that time i was growing through making videos um and uh my opinion and and uh, at that time when i made that video that was an opinion i had and um i i, I don't uh i don't think i would uh go no i wouldn't um i don't agree with everything i was watching and uh yeah it was you know part of why i came and came what would you disagree with in particular um could like have i think that, that i could made, still or? i think i could have still achieved what i was trying to do like like so creatively i still could have um I like I, I still could be inflammatory and I could still say everything that I wanted to say. Um, been... I'm interested on what that would be now. Yeah. Like, what's your current views? Do you still feel men are trying to ruin Star Wars? And that if we criticize the movie, we're trying to rob people from enjoying it and uh, those kind of things? You no, know, once I stepped away, um, which was about a year ago. It was around that time. Um, a, I, you know, after muting and, and removing people and stuff, you kind of uh, get out of it. And I don't want to say that this doesn't mean that it still didn't happen to them. And like a lot of people have been made to feel very shitty about their enjoyment for star Wars. Um, and I do think that's really important for us to put in context. Like there are always going to be, ex- yes, there's always going to be examples of, goodness and badness but there are people out there who have experienced a lot of badness at times uh and it has surrounded about just their enjoyment over star wars um uh did but all this, uh did all this spawn from me just asking what you disagreed with that we said i'm curious I'm what we like sure. what, what we yeah what what it, what we said in our our response that you would disagree with what you said that you'd still you know, hold firm to, or do you think we made any no, criticism in terms of, you know, something that you think is just, just wrong? Cause we, I'd like to hear that. Like the general principle, like the whole basis of the argument is completely wrong, right? Like what is the basis uh, of the uh, argument? Aren't ruining star Wars. Oh, you mean the basis of your video is, uh, like the, the men are, yeah. the men are ruining star Wars. One is wrong. Right. Oh, so oh, okay. we, right. So we were, incorrect by oh i'm not saying no. that you're incorrect no no he's Sorry. talking about he's talking his video right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was there, was but, there anything I, that you did disagree with that we made that you think is an illegitimate point or 
one that you would refute? Is there anything we would be interesting? Through? Interesting to dive into that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like again, I didn't watch everything you said, uh, just because again, a lot of it was personal attacks on me. Um, but I would say the personal attacks were minority. I know it can seem like that because well, like, it wasn't that many. We were we were firing back, not you know, we weren't the first to shoot across the bow either. Oh, I wasn't having like a one on one conversation with you, right? Like it's not that's you don't have yeah. to. Yeah, Broad right. generalizations Rags normally are man. Made in a so if you say the a generalization yeah. against men, you hit him. Yeah, um, ain't gotta be a one v one. I'm not sure we could get into the minutia because I know there's but, an argument we had about yeah, but, if Star Wars is uh, making a statement about racism, and I know the original trilogies. I I don't feel that's the case, but um, yeah. Sorry, but, are you going to say something, Rags? What was there, like the, anything in the video you disagreed with that we made that was point wise? It, I honestly, I don't, I don't know the video well enough anymore to to right. answer that one for you. Fair enough. Right. Yeah, I like I, again, like the I think you can take the the W on the entire concept of <laughs> the video was okay. is not right. Well, right, like like the the men ruining Star Wars, like that's obviously not true. Um, a, you know, um, you, don't, you don't feel weird about that, like the idea that you yeah. make a statement purely to get people to listen to you when it's um it wasn't it's not it again it was uh, it's oh, it, hard having a debate with four people um and it, it, it was I, I i no like again for me too like it, there is i know a lot of people like it like i know you probably like the video looks like you know trash or whatever right but uh yeah. there was like a, a like there's an artistic side of myself that uh, you're trying to express, um, you know, th though a lot of the times, you know, when you're doing these types of things, you have your opinions, um, but, you know, they can be, they're like amped up. Would you so, say that opinions could be wrong? Of course. Opinions are usually All right. wrong. All right. Because, we, well, I, well, I don't I've know, never heard usually that wrong. Really? Usually. Oh. Facts are right. Opinions are always, always what, always subject to being wrong. Right, like an opinion can always be subject to being wrong. Yeah, they're subject to being wrong. You said they're usually wrong. Oh. That's interesting. I never heard that. Do do explore. I'm interested in that. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I think opinions kind of can change with the wind a bit. Um, sure, they can. But you said they're usually wrong. So like. Most opinions out there are incorrect. Maybe it's just something that you misspoke. I'm not sure. Maybe. No, I think it uh, gets interesting. You qualified it though, Dale. You said opinion, you, you changed that to saying opinions can be subject to being wrong, which right. I think we all agree with. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I just. I now. Uh, yeah. You're just. You know. Deconstructing my. Like, yeah, you're just holding me to the things I'm saying. I understand what you're doing. Um, So, you know, I guess I need curious. to... Uh... You just said some curious, that's all. But, yeah, like, Dale... Like, again, too, again, too I, I... It, it comes from the place, again, it comes from the place, like, I know you, it's your backup where, like, oh, so you're saying all my opinions are wrong. It's I'd more of, that. it's more of me projecting uh society right where i'm taking my experiences where i'm open to all my opinions kind of being wrong um and uh and then kind of projecting that in, in, as like a almost like a, a catch-all for myself to be like you know my opinion anyway i respect that you're you know willing to admit that some of the things you said were grossly inaccurate and stuff and uh, and good on you for for doing so mate oh, i am well. um yeah, most people don't. Uh, most people don't show up. Yeah, well, I just, um, I, uh, you guys were uh, being pretty funny, and uh, yeah, I was just watching Clue <laughs> um, with uh, uh, with the family, and uh, th it was kind of wrapping up. And I just, I saw on Twitter that um, you guys were talking about it, and I, I know nothing about the show, and uh, I thought I'd just come on and, and chat about it. But um, well, well, I mean, that's, uh, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> What do you, um, out of curiosity, what do you think episode nine will be about or 
Do you have um, any sort of any observations that you might make or what well, what's your I guess what's your attitude or what's your opinion on the upcoming episode 9? Think it'll be good, bad, could can't even hazard a guess. Um well, I like Force Awakens uh with JJ Abrams directing it because I kind of feel like it has a lot of those quote unquote Star Wars moments in it, so it's a bit of again a catch-all kind of film, but I also enjoyed the way it was shot. Um so I'm excited to see Star Wars go more back to the style of uh, The Force Awakens. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, they're probably going to lean pretty heavy on Kylo and Rey. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that means yeah. characters like Finn are going to take a back seat again. Um, and hopefully they have a better storyline for him. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's going to be Super Jedi. That's, you know, because I, you know, I think that there, she's going to be able to channel the dark side and uh, do both like how Luke was able to do the force choke. And uh, we'll have a bit of like a super Jedi battle, hopefully. Hey, guys, I'm going to have to get going. Um, unfortunately, my time is running out. That's OK, man. You've been out <laughs> for uh, nearly seven hours. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun though and i can't wait to do it again all right uh well do you mm -hmm. want to quickly give your channel good old pluggeroo well if any of you guys watching like swords and how they are adapted into pop culture and also how they're used historically not just swords just really how medieval history is adapted into pop culture and other things and how it was really like and all that stuff as well as uh you know fantasy discussions and science fiction and things yeah go go over and check out shadowversity or you could even check out my novel shadow of the conqueror it's available Shad wrote a novel i did i'm just gonna share that again and um Available in print, ebook, uh, and also audiobook, narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. Mm. They are awesome. Indeed. Always wonderful to have you. Yeah, he's, he's, he's quite good. Yeah. Thanks for coming on again, and we'll have to have you back for that opinions video, yeah? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be good. Oh. Cool. All right. Thanks, fellas. I'll see you around. Yeah, yeah, nice <laughs> meeting you. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, Dale, is there anything else you'd like to uh, talk about? We are open yeah. books. <laughs> I th well, I, this, it seems like uh, the chat's annoyed that you guys are being so soft on me. Um, but that was, uh, you know, you guys uh, held me to the coals. And I, um, and I, you know, you probably could have been harsher. But uh, no, it was a good oh, yeah. conversation. And, well, I mean, uh, you're here. That's, that's like the important thing. I'll probably be thing, thinking about of... it for weeks. You've achieved more oh, well. than the majority of people we ever criticize. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, I'm nothing but a people pleaser, I guess. No, um, obviously not. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's true. Yeah, I, it's. Uh, I, I, I do. I feel bad uh, if I like. I feel bad if I made any. Um, it knew I was going to make some men feel bad about that. Um, and I what just men just because we're, I'm singling them out. Oh, I oh, right. women would have a all right. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was gonna say, we've got we've got super chats to read that are all very context specific, so I'm happy to let you uh, well, escape if you know, of course. No, I, that's that's great. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm done. Thanks for having me on, and uh. Yeah, I, I, I hope, um, I hope, uh, I hope, uh, I, anyone, uh, feelings too badly and, um, yeah, thanks. Um, oh, you'll have to try more on. harder than that for us. <laughs> it's all good. Man. <laughs> thanks for coming on. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I catch it. To Lou. And there were three. And there were three. Um, all right. So that brief interlude. We can now carry on with the super chat. It's like a brief weird. interlude. I think it was. I think it was like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> this sure. is what I mean. It's like a, like specific sections of this podcast are sometimes longer than like just regular podcasts. I know. <laughs> it's like oh, we're quickly gonna do X, and it's like oh, the size of one and a half normal podcasts. <laughs> like oh, okay. Um. But yeah, you know, this is, we're coming up to seven hours. It's, it's another one of them chunky, you never know what's going to happen, EFAPs. Um, it seems like that's going to become the norm soon. It just seems to, like, it 
grows on its own. It goes in many directions. Terrifying in its own way. Um, but, you know, ch chat, judging from chat's reactions to all of that, I think they were frustrated that he, he wasn't more... Um, he was very non-committal. Very yeah. dodgy. Very dodgy. Wouldn't answer questions think very precisely or clearly. Very skittery on his toes. Um, um, I think I think he was thinking about it more. I think I think would so be too. The main explanation: it was sort of like mulling over it, and I guess trying to figure out where exactly he falls on the, on those particular things. Because the video is a year and a half old, but at the same time, it's, there's probably some things in there that you'd you'd still like agree with. And I guess it's like trying to mull over it and figure out. Yeah, like, I Figure actually think he is so dance. disconnected from that video that he made that it's almost like one of us having to defend that video as if we had made it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think right. he actually agrees with most of what he said in that video. I don't think many people would, and that he was probably just... It, it came from a place of a lot of negative influence from what he would perceive as essentially just men. Because, like, it, it sounded... A lot of his responses sounded like the kind of things we might end up being like. We'd just be like, I don't... That's not... <laughs> like, that's just not right. a position I could defend. Because <laughs> most people... That, that, was, that was why it was... Um, all those questions were coming up, right? Uh, it was... But, yeah, you know, he came on, and um, he was he was civil. And I want... I want us to be appreciative of that, rather than... Well, I mean, you should be. I mean, like, like Joseph Anderson won't come on because you called him a massive once. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and and now you can't, can't talk to him about stuff. One you thing know? I notice is that when, when we seem to bring people on, they really, like, won't stand up for their video. They're really... Uh, a lot of people think that yeah. the angle of it being, quote-unquote, three to five on one is... is to do with this, and I know for a fact that if me and Rags were sent into a lion's den of five people saying that TLJ was amazing, wouldn't catch us folding. <laughs> like we would yeah, man, it's like, that's the thing, is like, I'd still have I'd have ideas to defend, I would have information that I could put out, like, I, like, I wouldn't just be like, oh, you know, now that now I'm being asked about it, now that they're asking me really actually rather simple questions, I'm just gonna not say anything, or avoid the question, or not present my you know, like, surely you had like a statement to make and you're going to make that statement until it's proved wrong you know i just i wish people were more oomph this is what i believe here is why i believe it and i think the uh if you compare these two scenarios right like five people love tlj and you simply do not like it you don't really have any strong positions you just don't like it and you have all of them being like but it's so good it's so awesome here's a thing that's awesome here's the thing and you just sit there being like okay yeah fine 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 like cool but like a lot of our references are literal like cognitive dissonance for ourselves. We're like, this doesn't make sense. And so we present it to them. What can they do other than go, it doesn't oh, matter. But the themes, but yeah, it doesn't matter because da to toe or because this other thing is, oh, it's not about making sense or it's about space wizards. Or... And yeah, well, so the thing is, is um, I think when you commit, you're exposing yourself to direct criticism. Like when you yeah, commit you that to shield specific of points. Ambiguity. Well, it's, it's exactly right. It's like, if you're talking about a video game and you say, you know, like, this this mechanic doesn't work well, and then someone says, um, that mechanic's not in the game, or like, oh, that you you've got something wrong there. It's like, cool, you've now exposed yourself to criticism that's just valid. It's not arguable, it's not iffy, it's not an opinion, it's valid. And that makes you look bad, sort of. So it's like you kind of you you when you commit to a position, you're just ex exposing yourself to real criticism, like really just in undebatable criticism. It's the idea of a hot take, by the way, that kind of bothers me. It's like the idea that you've guessed a position and you're hoping it's going to be the one that turns out to be right. That's almost what people seem right. to look at as hot takes. It's like, because... Uh, yeah, yeah. Because like, when they have them in videos, they're like, this is my hot take, and it's that Game of Thrones is really bad because of uh, the fact that it, it can send poor messages about communism or some stupid thing like that. And they're like, that's my hot take. And then years from now, we all agree. It's like, actually, yeah, there's loads of information to support. So there's loads of an analysis. It's like that hot take was on point, even though it was more constructed from just how they felt about it or something. I'm just like, why have hot takes in yeah, the first like, place? I, <laughs> the, I mean, just... there were some interesting things that were almost instantly backed down for the whole... Um, 
opinions are usually wrong. I'm like, whoa, that's interesting. I haven't heard that before. Well, you, you, I would you like heard to how he nearly that. got there, right? He was like, well, facts are always right. Opinions. And it was like, are always wrong? <laughs> like, you... it's like, I, I think it's, um, I think, because like, I, I can see, I can see where you go there. Like, okay, facts are normally right. So if your opinion is the same as the fact, then I suppose that just by proxy, it's correct. Like if you say, I think the sun is a star, it's like, yeah, all right. Fine. I think, like Whereas, most um, times people's opinions about things are wrong like that is an interesting con i've i i that, that it is, is interesting, interesting isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah like, like it, it how, is tell me how you arrived at that and part and of the reason why we couldn't pursue that is because we'd have to go through with him exactly what he means by opinion because opinion changes for every fucking person's perspective of, of the actual definition right. you know what i mean yeah, yeah, of course. Because, like, uh, he might have been the kind of person that says opinion is almost synonymous with feeling, and a feeling... I That was interesting, the idea that, like, your feeling can change, and therefore it would then be decided that the previous one is now wrong. I don't know if that would have been right. where you take it or not. That's the thing, uh, I don't think we had time I mean? to go through all of that. No. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was going to say, the, the other variable I think is worth considering is that some people, I'm not saying it applies to him, or that it doesn't apply to me and Rags, or Fringy, but uh, there's confidence levels in, in what you could call public speaking as well as debate. Um, yep. You can have someone who's excellent at writing an argument in a script, and then in person they're like... I mean, I, uh, I, would, I think yep. I was going to ask him at one point, but I forgot if he had scripted that video. I um, I, I don't, I don't me. think it was scripted. I, yeah. I just got that impression because I think if you, but th this is the thing I was about to say, if it was scripted, it would have had a better structure. But I mean, there are videos that are scripted, but have absolutely well, horrendous structures yeah. still. Some people just write stuff and then say, that's my script. And then they speak it out uh, loud. Hold on. Um, I just saw somebody say, Fringy, care to comment on how you and Maul are screwed up the size of the galaxy with Captain Marvel? I did not screw that up. Maul has screwed that up. He got it wrong. It wasn't me. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. You, if any, you really if don't remember me and you looking into it. Yes. No, we did. But you, you misquoted. Like, we did look into no, it. No, no, but no. then We agreed on the 500. And you're still not off the hook because you watched the video. 500. No, hold on. Be specific. You what what are you watched. talking about in this instance? Yeah, no. What? Which? Which part? Remind me. Like, the, the, what, so what I did said we say? that there were five hundred planets in the galaxy. Five hundred suns. Sorry. I. No, but <laughs> but I obviously didn't agree with that. I must have missed. No, we it did. The, we we, we had found like a website how the or something. Fuck, how the how Someone did in my comment no section way. found it? They they found the website that we got the <laughs> and the, they said that like what we'd looked at was um. I but a portion by the way, guys, I was galaxy. I was <laughs> I was I was joking with the throwing him under the bus. It was a joke. Yeah, I was gonna say like the <laughs> the thing with that one I find fascinating is that um I had someone on Twitter say. That um, if you get that wrong, like why would I watch any of your videos? And I was like, well, I don't know, it was a mistake. And they were like, yeah, but if you get basic things like that wrong, why would I ever watch any of your videos? I was like, <laughs> I mean, like what do you want me to say? Um, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I don't know. Unfortunately, how that got through. Yeah, it went we, through we Rags, did, did you, Jay, it. and yeah. uh, Fortia. Rags, shut the fuck up. We're trying to speak. Wait, yeah, no, now now I've got it right, because I think somebody, I think people were criticizing, I'm mixing it up with two things, because there were two criticisms. One was the the, the planets one, or the, the star systems one. The other one was the size of the solar system, where it seemed like yeah, no, they're, people they're, didn't understand. That's not, yeah, people don't understand that there's two, there's many ways you can define what makes yeah, the solar system. The, the, we went with and, everything well, that the sun has influence on. Yeah, which well, is that, the odd well, cloud. That's the, law, that's the law of universal gravitation really fair most people are like it's solar planets and stuff in it but the point is that even with both of your fuck up um doesn't that actually make the point of the film worse yes! that's the whole yes, problem with this they're like even well, worse you fucked people up. say you're wrong which makes the movie even worse because of it exactly. like you, un you <laughs> accidentally you accidentally gave the film more credit than it deserved yeah it was bad right it's bad if it's 500 suns but if it's more like if it's significantly more to a to a certain degree well it is significantly more it's 100 billion <laughs> So like, that's there you go. Is. So like the idea that like I was trying to explain <laughs> that to travel through one galaxy, which by the way, yeah, people either do or do not consider the Oort cloud, and they said we were wrong for considering it, which is not true. It's not defined as wrong to consider that in the entire solar system. 
Like, this, so that's this, the Milky well, Way the is 100,000 um, light years in diameter. The, the issue is that where, the, where you define the boundary is, it, it doesn't matter because the nearest <laughs> star is 4.2 light years away. So right. regardless of that, she's still going to take 4.2 years to get to the nearest star. Yeah, it's utterly like, insane. And people are like, we got that wrong. And it's like, yeah, I, I, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's, it's still, but like, isn't yes. that funny that there's a, a fact that's wrong in the video? It's almost like there is such a thing as objective standards. Yeah, my opinion Whoops. on how many stars there are in the galaxy was fucking wrong. <laughs> And it happened because I either misread a quote or I got a quote that meant something that I didn't think it meant. But yes, no, there, there are a hundred billion stars in the in the Milky Way. And I'm sorry I didn't catch of that. Of I go through a lot of proofreading processes and I I'm don't surprised know why. we didn't catch that. Yeah, like that's I'm the thing. I'm surprised we didn't catch that. Like six of my friends watched it, I watched it, and I watched it a couple of times, obviously because of the editing process, and for some reason it slipped me until, and I, I found it myself when I was watching it on the day I released, I was like, 500 suns? That can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Five next months. time you make a video, Neil deGrasse Tyson will give it the little once over and let you know about all your celestial flaws. Fun, fun regardless. Um, but that's yeah. one of the ones that people always try and reference for how I don't do my research. I'm always like, Jesus Christ! Like I can make one like, mistake. We did, a lot, of, we, we did like, a lot of research for that video. Um, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> I was in several calls with Molo while he was working on that video. Yeah, that's why you've got, you've got a credit kept, at the end of the video. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse every single time we started to call. It's like, hey, so this thing in the movie, what the fuck? Oh, that Captain movie, so, so bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why, by so the way, Rags, because you did mention, like, Doctor Strange is probably objectively the worst. Like, do you really think it's objectively worse than Captain Marvel? <laughs> yeah, because I, I would say that Captain Marvel, 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 I would still say that Captain, <laughs> Captain Marvel still, like, sort of makes sense. But no, Doctor it Strange is, is just no. I mean, well, I mean, if you if you try to, I'd say it, it's it's less nonsensical than Doctor Strange is, because Doctor Strange is just say. flat out boom, it, just random magic. But the over the time stone fight at the isn't end a problem. It depends on what yeah, the system but, is. But Captain Marvel, conversely, is boom space powers. I was going to say you, how, you could still. <laughs> transpose that argument like, was, just just think about the, the scene where she gets blasted off the ship she's falling to the ground and she's like i'm gonna fly now how do you even know that that's something you could do like you that's, say, that's you say the same thing about magic and all the weird well, not really stuff. because oh, they train because they have books about it the time they machine have, like and the the powers working inconsistently here and there like in the final fight when kaecilius and his goons are being selectively moved back in time. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Yeah, you're right. That's that, bad. That's one that element. Bad. But, you know, that, that comes after learning that they have a whole series of people who have been training to use this. They have tools in this regard. They have books upon books about all of it. Like, that's a way better system than Captain Marvel just being like, I was hit by goo, now I can do all these things. You're like, okay. And well, she somehow knows how to do all of it, too. She is a pilot, so when she got hit by the goo, she became the plane in her mind. I guess I guess the logic would be that it was a light space, it was like a light speed engine. Um so it you can go was, light but, speed. But even then the, the light speed engine, it's like going at light speed. Cause because I think one of the, the really pedantic points we got on with the uh with her flying at light speed next to the ship, it's like if you if your trajectory is off by like one centimeter, you are going to You'll end up hundreds of the other side of the galaxy. Yeah. Apart. And how do they you fight each other again? I, <laughs> Next time we watch Doctor Strange, we'll I would like to go through and look at the way that powers and magic and all that stuff works but because I remember still, when we watched it, we were we were all just like, man, well, this is just even still the protagonist is intact, the plot is intact. Yeah, I, I definitely Strange. like Doctor Strange way more than Captain Marvel. Like, I'm not even talking about likability. No mistake I just mean being made. The character itself. The, yeah, even the character. I I think Doc. I want more Doctor Strange. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see. Dan Crabe or whatever name is ever again. Carol Danvers is her name. I don't ever ah. want to see Carol Danvers ever again, but I do, and I am legit excited for the next Doctor Strange. But you still maintain yeah, that I... it's objectively of poorer writing quality than Captain Marvel. Poor writing quality? Cool. Oh, I don't know. I mean, and, um, and remember, there's there's the other bad ones too, like Black Panther. Uh, yeah, I, um, we don't need to reference them because Captain Marvel has to be the worst, right, Fringy? Like, oh, yeah, maybe it's for the worst. Yeah. Maybe 
I don't, I don't know. They're both terrible. So I, I think we need I, to watch I, them back to back. I want to see him again. I want to see him again. <laughs> but you, like, I made a two-hour video of all the problems. Doctor Strange. I know you haven't made a two-hour video about Doctor Strange <laughs> because I wouldn't be able to. There's not that many problems. There's a lot of problems. Uh, I don't know. There's not that many problems. Well, I mean, I admittedly, because remember when we were watching Doctor Strange and we got up to. Because I, I distinctly remember, like, because you hadn't seen it yet, Rags, and we were watching it for, like, for the first 30, 40 minutes. We happy. I was that there, it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this this is going well. And then, like, it just started falling exactly. apart. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. Captain there, Marvel there never all, fell apart because it was it. never structured to begin <laughs> with. It we, fell we, apart. And we all for turned second. on it. And then we were yeah, all like, oh, I like Doctor Strange, but man, this movie's a mess. Yeah, but oh, Captain Marvel movie, never had a good scene. <laughs> Captain Marvel oh, I'm not, was bad I'm not from saying the start. Captain Marvel's better. You, what do you mean? You said it's objectively the I, worst I Doctor hate, Strange. I, I hate... No, I like Doctor Strange, and I would much rather see Doctor Strange than Captain Marvel. Oh, but asking. based on my memory, based on my memory, especially us watching it, I just feel like we had so much to talk about with Doctor Strange, and it was so out there that we were like, man, this is the worst thing fucking ever. But there's more to talk about with Captain Marvel. It's everything. Maybe. What we have to do is we're going to have to watch the both of these movies again, oh, back to back. Well, I'll watch Doctor watch Strange Captain again. Yeah. I don't need to watch <laughs> Captain Marvel again. I got a whole we, fucking we video about everything. Watch, we will have to watch. Doctor Strange we'll has to have, have more Marvel wrong again. in every Just scene in sure. order to be worse <laughs> than Captain Marvel. How is that going to be possible? We have to be possible? thorough. It's, this is what the no, people it, want. The thing is, is um, with Captain Marvel, every scene, every scene, there's something wrong with every Just because single something's scene. wrong with every scene doesn't mean it's the worst. There could be worse things, right? <laughs> no, but, but but it's it's not just that. It's every scene is bad, and there are several scenes where it just destroys everything. And not only yeah, does it but destroy just everything, everything in is the movie, destroyed by all the things around it, and it makes no sense ever. That are you, are you trolling? Are you, like, are you also, fucking with us? I think he was, and now he is. Listen, we need to watch. We need to watch Doctor Strange again because I feel as if that movie was just a mess. I don't is this, necessarily is this gonna disagree with that. Is this going to be a marathon of, of the bad ones? You know, we got, okay, Fucking first hell, up, really? Captain Marvel, then Iron Man 3, then Black Panther. We'll have to do an EFAM movies Strange. for Doctor Strange, right? We'll make a fun yes, out of Yes, we, we can, let's do, I think that Doctor Strange is EFAP movieable. I agree. Because we can talk I about think all that, yeah. Yes, we can talk about all the problems that make it awful. It's still but not as bad time, as Captain Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It might be. No, it, I, no, I already know the answer to that question. It's just no. It absolutely might be. No. I think that your your love of Bindi Snatch Cumberbunk <laughs> is clouding your judgment. You just want to like. Uh, Don't you Dr. remember? Strange. I was the poo pooer when we were watching Doctor Strange. I was the one who was I saying was the this is terrible. No, 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 no. I was remind poo him because you, you, yeah, you guys no, were I, ripping I, into I, me for being like, oh, you have a problem with all these things. These things are good. I actually had a problem with no, how much of a he was. No. What what happened was um we were watching yeah, it and I came into it like <laughs> I I enjoyed no 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 what what happened was it became apparent to me that my opinion of the film was wrong as I was watching it because like it got worse and worse and worse oh sure and then I was just like but oh, I was the one who was shit. saying that it was really bad from I the agree, start it's yes really bad no no we, yeah but when we first saw well when you first saw it and then when we were first watching it and getting into it and stuff. Like I was getting comments like it's not. I don't think it's gonna be as bad as you're saying it is. And then I, I kept that. I kept repeating to you guys. You I know that. it's the ghost fight scene. The ghost fight scene. I kept saying to you guys the ghost fight scene. I remember <laughs> uh, that being. So awful. You remember the ghost fight scene? That was terrible. Um, and then there was the. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ghost fight scene was really dumb. I agree. Um, but yeah, but then there was the scene where um the ancient one fell from a skyscraper and yeah, like and don't forget didn't die the immediately. Amount of times they don't escape the mirror world when they can. They just keep waiting around, and then Kaiselia stops them. Remember, there's like several moments where they just look at everything being mirrored, and it's like guys, 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 use the spinny mm -hmm. thing, guys, guys, and they can use them in midair, and they can move them, as we know, like so. And uh, the fact that he beat those guys. Is kind of like a stretch. The yeah, fact yeah, that no, he I managed that to beat those guys in his first fight is like, yeah. But Captain Marvel is a literal disaster. There's just nothing about it that works. And so I actually yeah, agree I that these all go into like a tier. If you put them in like a tier list, they'd be like the bottom tier. But I don't think any Marvel movie will be as bad as Captain Marvel unless you get like Captain yeah, Marvel Two. <laughs> like it's really. Bad. I still think like Captain I still Strange think will be worse. No, I still, th I, th I still think that like even even Doctor Strange probably ranks higher than like Age of Ultron on that list. I would say. Yeah, I maybe, think Age yeah, of Ultron maybe. is completely riddled. 
The problem um, with Doctor Strange's one is that you could argue... I'm trying to think of, like... Is there any damage to the MCU from Doctor Strange? Um, well, I guess the idea would be that he could just do a time loop for every villain, you know? Thanos, I've come to bargain, you know? Thanos, I've come to bargain. He didn't even try that. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. But I guess the thing is, is that you could always contrive a reason, whereas with Captain Marvel, it's like, you're impervious to damage, you're impervious to harm, like, you can and never they be beaten. directly contradict things that are established. Mm -hmm. And they made her the inspiration for the Team Avengers, which is just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just like one of those retcons. It's like, the Avengers are named after her. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> what? That movie's so bad. I'm surprised I managed to get it all out in that two hours, thinking about it. It's like, it's tough to talk about all those things. Because, I mean, I spent longer on an episode of Game of Thrones. Yeah, and Game of Thrones, as as it turns out, you got it wrong, because Game of Thrones is the most outstanding drama of the year. Yeah, Mahler. <laughs> Why can't, we can't trust you about that. How come we can't, we can't, we can't trust you about, uh, Dr. Strangle? Dr. Strangle. I mean, people, people talk about the disconnect between, uh, between, like, professional mainstream critics and audience. I mean, what better example than that? Everybody who watches that. it. Everyone hated yeah. that. And yet it still won. What did it win for? What did it do that warrants that win? Because the writing is to, awful. They should have to explain why something won something. Be in like, yeah, they're never going to do that. To get a paragraph, even. <clears throat> just a paragraph to explain something. Yes. A minimum 100-word paragraph explaining <laughs> why this film slash show won this category. Or explaining the criteria, right, for for the category. So explain what <laughs> you mean by outstanding. Know what their criteria is. Well, I, I think this was uh because when we went through the game awards categories, it's like it's also nebulous and vague that you can't figure yeah. out what they're looking for, and it's probably the same at the Emmys and stuff. Like, what is the criteria for most outstanding uh, drama? Like, what what's different from best direction, best writing, or is it meant to be everything combined? Writing, acting directing, special effects, all that. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That's not me. I don't know. Probably not going to tell us. I mean, I think they'd, no. they'd see it as a bad thing to tell us. This, oh, is a, okay. this super chat section is going really well. Yeah, we've gotten through a whole none since just establishing <laughs> that we're going to. There's more memes as well. Um, oh, no. I'll just collect them as, as we're going. There are any picture ones. I won't take that one. Uh, all right. Anyway. Rey could have killed Kylo in The Last Jedi. After they both got knocked out, Rey was the first to wake up. And don't tell me she's not a killer. Five minutes after, she killed three TIE fighters with a big toothy smile. <laughs> yeah, but those were, those were strange men in spaceships. She didn't give a fucking... She didn't give a shit about them. You, you know for a fact, when they, in terms of the filmmaking, and like this applies to a lot of films, certainly Captain Marvel, and I, I would say Rey in that scenario. Killing TIE fighters or destroying TIE fighters is, is not registering with a lot of filmmakers that that's actually killing someone difficult yeah and like these are the, well, the same murder. side of those in the same way that killing a stormtrooper with a random blast is kind of not murder because they're it reminds me they of like all a got Morty. helmets on that why do you think they all have helmets on you can't see their so skin and their you don't see any blood yeah. generally if they're they're all just anonymous like robots they're just bullet fodder they're yeah. not like people with hopes and dreams and emotions and families and <laughs> faces even yeah. even the one who does have a face and emotions and he, he's barely a person it reminds me of, uh... Now it's not because he's black, it's because he's underdeveloped before I get shat on. Rick and Morty where he says, Shoot them, Morty, they're, they're robots! <laughs> and he shoots them with flesh blood, and he goes, I meant the... I don't respect them, or something like that, like they're corporate. <laughs> Well, it's just, uh, yeah, because he, he shoots me, he's like, HE'S bleeding TO DEATH! CALL HIS WIFE AND CHILDREN! <laughs> and yeah, I, I think that if you asked Ray, would she ever murder someone, uh, as in Daisy Ridley, she might actually go as far as being like, no, and then remember like, oh wait, no I have, I've oh, shot oh, wait. literal stormtroopers. Oh, <laughs> <Like, laughs> the idea, just, just the idea that three and then, and then a fourth ship line up in a perfect straight line with ah. one person with a laser turret aimed precisely at the intersecting point intersecting line where all of them will be that is like insane yeah, and it's, that's well, actually they insane casually give her the greatest shot ever performed on the millennium falcon 
It's her first you fucking if, shot. Could you imagine, like, if in Saving Private Ryan, you know, when, um... What was the name of the sniper? I I, I should know this. Um, yeah, and, like, if the sniper got three people in one, it'd just take you out of it completely. It's just, like, one of the things I off. really like about Saving Private Ryan, that sniper is awesome, and he misses several shots he in the final He misses occasionally, fight. yeah. Yeah, like, like uh, guys, uh, right? Sniper. Marksmanship is hard. <laughs> No, like, it's really. hard. It, it is it... hard to do. As someone who does it, it is difficult to do. Well, I mean, it's the it's the kind of thing that's um. I was rewatching battles from Lord of the Rings. I think I mentioned it before, but um, in the Battle of Amon Hen, you can see like uh, Aragon getting tired as it progresses. Like he gets progressively more tired oh, and exhausted. Sure, yeah. And um, and it's the same in like Daredevil with the the hallway fight scene in season one. He's getting tired, and it's that kind of thing that really like sells the thing. Because it's like, oh, this is a person. This is actually a human being. He's not invincible. Even in John he Wick, have... they do a good job of that. Yeah, John Wick has it too. He he can't do it forever. <laughs> yeah, he he does very clearly. He gets tired. It's uh, it's that really important humanizing element. Um, and when you f kill three tie fighters that line up perfectly, it just takes you out of it. Because it's like a video game. Um. Anyway. Next one is, uh, there goes my child dating channel. Thanks, YouTube. Bye-bye. You know, what do, uh, Shad was talking about. Morning yeah. Massives, good to see so many fellow colonists on EFAP. Oh, I'm not a cop. What? <laughs> I guess everyone in a Australia cop? counts as well. I'm not sure. Um, oh, even, even me, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Still loving the content. Slice and dice, you massives. Of course. Yeah, slice and dice. Slice and dice. With a saber. Uh, EFAP especially hates orphan kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shad, would you recommend a chainsword versus a spider? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I imagine it would work good against a spider because spiders aren't particularly like, tough. Next time we have him on, I'm going to ask him what would actually be the greatest weapon in his, in his collection that would be best against a spider. Uh, I guess it depends on what spider we're talking about if we're talking about Australian spiders. Yeah, are we talking about Australian spiders or the slightly smaller spiders from Lord of the Rings? Elephant spiders. Yeah. Rhino spiders. Uh, <laughs> the Zevent just ended, an event that featured over 50 French streamers slash YouTubers. They raised over 3.5 million euros for the Astur Institute. Go Team Baguette. All right. Also, hi, Rags. All right. Hello. Hi. Stop streaming while I'm at work. I mean, but... but we don't have a choice. Have a choice. Someone's, al someone's always at work. True. There's always someone at work. What do you, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? Rags, you just don't appreciate good rat. I do appreciate good rat. I like rat. Um, Rags, I still poop with the door open, and I'm going to do it at your house one day. That's the strangest threat I've ever heard. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to your house and <laughs> Is poop it a with threat? the door open. <laughs> I, I guess if someone's saying they're going to come to my house and poop with the door open, like, come on, no one wants to, you know, no one wants to see that shit. Uh, I, don't can, you, I don't want to see your door poop. How can Peppa use her armor when, by Tony's admission, she never wears anything he makes for her? I mean, I, I doubt, I think it's fair to assume that she's been trained to use the armor in the five years. <coughs> um, and I'm sure he was referring more to casual clothing rather than she wouldn't wear the suit because she doesn't like it. Like, she would obviously wear it when she has to help people. That's, I'm sure it's uh, nice. Now, lads, it's been very fun, but I will have to leave now after, like, nearly eight hours. <laughs> yeah. uh, would you like Lightly. to plug your channel, sir? Uh, yeah. sure. I got the Fringy channel. I'm sure I'll do something with it at some point. It's only been, like, a year and a half. <laughs> um, I'm doing a podcast, Cosmoronic. I'll be <gasps> recording episode six in about a week. On location, so that'll be an exciting one. Um, and I'm working on an animation that I teased on Twitter, and probably follow me on Twitter for that. Um, I'm on Twitter too much. I fucking hate it, but I'm. It's like it's like a train wreck. That you know that uh scene in Call of Duty like World War Two where yeah. that train gets derailed <laughs> and just keeps coming and it doesn't stop and then it hits every single thing. That's what Twitter is like to me. Um. But yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. So hopefully a cartoon soon, and then hopefully some more cartoons after that. 
I'm quite excited, but it, it's a lot of work and a lot of stuff going on at the minute. But this was a good reprieve from that, uh, yeah. from like assignments and work. So thank you. I hope you had fun, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. All right, have a good rest of the stream, guys. I'll catch you later. You, you bet. See you later. <laughs> what a nerd. What you, what Doctor you, Strange isn't you. terrible. I love it. <laughs> I enjoy Carol Denver. Terrible. Very good. Oh, yeah, that ended with also high rags. Oh, hi there. Hello, how are you? Oh, and Shad, what fictional sword would you like to own? I will keep that question for him. I do my best with keeping the questions, but even I can fuck that up, so I'm sorry if I don't get answered eventually. Um, e fapping into my birthday, best present so far. I raise a glass of sparkling <gasps> rhino milk to all you massives. Also, Hooray. the Doctor Strange ghost fight was just Disney testing for episode 9 Force Ghost Fights. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That might be true, though. <laughs> I was about to say, like, you know, the whole... It's like, oh no, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm like, no, no. We no, want this to might. happen now, no. okay? We they, have... might. they might, though. They actually might. We want to have fun yeah. with it, so maybe, it, maybe it it's a good thing. Afraid. It's a good thing that... It makes us a... Go with the flow. Um, and accept what they want to do. Uh, hey, you massives. Today's my birthday, so how about a shout-out? May the memes and tisms flow freely. Um, happy birthday, Vasa. Yeah, happy have birthday. Uh, why are you guys talking about Doctor Strange? Spider-Man came out. What? Sometimes you just you get to a point in your life where you decide you got to talk about one or the other. Yeah. Uh, we chose Doctor Strange. I'm sorry. Spider-Man's gone, guys. Gotta get over it. He's not in the MCU. I'm still curious if they're actually going to bring him back because uh, the money they'll lose, you know? Then I think there's been talk about whether or not Apple's going to buy Sony. Have you heard about that? I've heard of it. Oh god! The idea no. being that they buy them and then they force them to let Spider-Man back into the MCU. I was just like, oh, goodness, what a strange timeline we're in. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Muller and Company. Could you please say things will get better? Don't give up. Things will get better. Don't give up. Things will get better. Don't give up. Yeah, things will get better. Don't give up. Things will get better. Don't give up. Things will get better. Don't give up. <laughs> I enjoy the work I've seen and could use words of encouragement for people I respect, so thank you. Worth $10. Yeah, man. Keep at what work it is that you're doing. I hope, I hope it works yeah. out. Yeah. Don't give up. Um, haha. I made EFAP a little bit longer. Also, hi, Jay. Well... <laughs> Well, Time Stone luckily is most... Jay wasn't around for this one. Time Stone is the most underused and OP MacGuffin in the MCU. There's a ton of OP time manipulation powers, like Doctor Strange could have sped up Thanos' time so he'd age into dust. Yeah, who knows what... Oh shit, yeah, because he can move it forward and back. He does that in his film. Yeah, Time Stone is fucking broken. Yeah, and now that we know how Endgame goes, Infinity War is so able to be scrutinized even more so because that was apparently the best outcome it's like dude they were better outcome get gamatron on you massive I, I i don't take kindly to such horrific demands gamatron's the one that that has requested a couple of times to come on um it, i don't know well maybe it'll get around to one day i just it's Guest lists. We got we got a lot of a lot of things to get through. Uh, currently making a Buffy Angel viewing order. How did you both? How did you view both shows back to back by airing order through crossovers, online guides? So obviously I watched all of Buffy and then all of Angel because that's how they came out back in the day. Um, and I didn't get into Angel until after Buffy had finished. But there is a viewing order you can Google. It's um, it's like a a blogspot page that was made in 2012, but it basically has a listing that'll explain to you how to watch the episodes in order from both seasons to stay in continuity, so... Uh, just Google it. It is findable. Um, <clears throat> my brother almost walked out of 
I am th I'm on three after the Mandarin twist because Mandarin is his favorite character, but he loves Luke and TLJ. I don't get it. I don't get it either, man. Yeah, that's weird. Um, just don't seem right. Love the new Rags video. I want to pat you furiously. Yay! That was from uh, Kibikins, the app website creator. Oh, I'm doubly glad then. I'm really, I really am glad you liked it. You had the, uh, that new, is like a new animation in the, in the beginning, right? Or at least a new video. Yes, yeah. And Wonderful. hopefully that one will get slowly but surely added to as time goes on. Hmm. Uh, Muller, in your videos, you like to have characters lip read to what you are saying. How do you know? How do you know character and what moment to use? Must take forever. Yes, yeah, lots of experimentation, and then there's lots of like, I remembered a character saying something f similar, or um, an expression they have that'll be suitable. Um, it's tough, but I I always like kind of doing it. It's, a lot of ones that sync up can be very satisfying. With the wick. Uh, it's interesting how the MCU kind of mirrors the varying quality in the comics, how different writers can ignore or even change things between books. Yeah, and I wish they took it much more seriously, like what they're dealing with, in terms of you take on someone else's work and your work will be something someone else has to continue. So be careful, like, try and leave things in a position that makes sense, otherwise someone else is going to have to try and make your work make sense instead of working on their own thing, which is, you know lame for them uh was trudeau's prince ali audition better or worse than the guy who actually got the role in aladdin live action remake yeah have you seen that rags uh fucking what's his name the canadian prime minister is it justin trudeau, trudeau? yeah he, uh that picture got leaked of him like, wearing blackface yeah <laughs> I don't know what's gonna, how he's gonna be able to deal with that from the people on his his team, if you will, because that's a purity testing nightmare. But uh, mm. yes, I'm, I'm sure he could have starred in Aladdin. Uh, also, hi rags. Hello, Muller. I remember in EFAB 40, you were really looking forward to a post end game Thor and how they're gonna treat him. How do you feel about Love and Thunder? Is it gonna be any good? Um. So like, my position on Thor has probably soured a little bit more since. That EFAP. Oh. But um, I'm still, like, they could still do a good job for him in a theoretical fourth or four. I mean, if they if, if they explore him a whole lot more, then, I mean, they could, in Guardians, if he has a prominent, really prominent role and a lot of it is focused around him, sure. I don't think it's an irredeemable thing. It'll be tough. Yeah, and there's lots to be concerned about Love and Thunder, but gotta wait until we get some, some more info, I, I think. It's gonna be shit. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. The only reason Dormammu came close to absorbing Earth was because an evil wizard helped him. Fewer wizards equals fewer chances that happens. No, it's not. It's the destruction of the the like the four things that prevent him from entering the dimension. The idea that <laughs> the idea that the the Mordo was doing it in order to prevent a Dormammu in future isn't even the case. He literally just argues that it's about large power shouldn't be able to be used by people. And he's going to use his power to take it from people, while simultaneously having to reconcile the fact that this large power just saved his own universe. It is the most nonsensical thing ever, and I hear it. Um, and the film doesn't... The do most enough... nonsensical thing ever? Maybe I was being hyperbolic. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's the, you, you, had a, you had a Freudian slip. I mean, have you never that said Freudian anything invented. hyperbog if lil 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 Hmm? No, it's too late. It's on camera. It's the most nonsensical thing ever. You heard him say it, chat. Wait, you Back just said me up. it. Yeah, I did. I was referring to you saying it. Too late. You just said it. Yeah, that's right. I did. Because you said it. And Contact it should be said. An intention more doesn't more. matter, Rags. You've just said yes, it. Yes, it too. does. Nope. Yep. Mine didn't, so neither does yeah, yours. It do. Yeah, it does. Nope. You said exactly what you meant. That was a Fre that was a Freudian slip, like Fringy said. No, I meant it hyperbolically. It was supposed to be you taken. Had a, you had a Freudian ingest. slip. You, you had the, a... the slip of Freudian. You talking about the philosopher Freudian? Freudian, the no, the psychologist Freudian. No, philosopher, because he worked with no, Bacchus, he... who's also a philosopher. No, 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 no. We're talking about Freudian, the psychologist. Oh, the psychologist. Yeah, no, I'm okay. Fine, fine. You win. I fucked up. 
I, I didn't know you were speaking about the psychologist. What other, what other Freudian could there be? You know what? No Freudian could ever match up. You're right. There's only one Freudian in my life, and that's Sigmund Freudian. God damn it, I'm late. Hello, gentlemen. Oh. <gasps> Hello. Hi. My friend says she doesn't have the patience to watch Lord of the Rings. How do I convince her to watch him? Let's fucking slap her and <laughs> tie her to the chair. Doesn't have the patience. Patience? I, uh, I don't know. Has she watched um, two movies before in a row? Because that's yeah, the, man. You could argue that just Clockwork Orange the is is the Clockwork Orange, okay? Uh, wasn't Disney being yeah, investigated the Ludovico for allegedly cooking their books? I think it calls into question how much their live action remakes actually make. I'm I'm happily convinced that they make money. I I'm sure people go to see them. What I don't think is that people, a lot of people, come away loving them as much as what they fell in love with back in the day, because they're really just just a hollow remix. But it, I can believe they're making a lot of money, sadly. It's the reputation of something like The Lion King that people go and see it again. It's like, yay, recapture childhood, yay, introduce my children to it. And it's like, you already can, you can use the old movie. I mean, it doesn't matter what they make the movie, it doesn't matter how good or how shitty they are, because you people buy the tickets. You'll just buy those tickets. People will just beat him up. Num, 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 Milan, Lady and the Tramp, Lion King. Fuck it, it doesn't matter how shitty it is. Gotta buy those tickets. Gotta, gotta watch those Disney films. I imagine the people in our audience probably don't. Yeah, but, and people uh, in our, yeah, it wasn't people in our, our chat. But I had this discussion actually this weekend, yesterday, at a, at a party. Uh, there were some people there talking about some Disney movies and stuff. And they were all just talking about how excited they are and whether or not one of them said, I hope it's good. And I said, it doesn't fucking let's be honest. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. You you guys, you bought, you guys have already decided that you're going to see them and you're going to spend all the money on the tickets. It doesn't even matter if it's good or not. They went well. <sighs> Bad truths, but you know, that's why episode. Probably will. the end of the Skywalker saga. It's like, uh, was yeah, it this is oh it, oh is that, that way, it, oh this is that what we're calling it now <laughs> all right sure if have gaming trouble in terrorist town when oh <gasps> yes we have to play ttt maybe yeah maybe in the future then i love ttt what are your thoughts on three-dimensional moms m-o-m-s Mo yeah my mom's three-dimensional she's all right i think, I think most of them are aren't they yeah yeah, they're cool. Uh, thoughts on Rambo and critical reception. I'm hopefully going to go see it in the next days-ish, and I find what people have been saying about it pretty funny, and I want to go see it just to, to see what made them say what they said. The what, it, what was it, Rags? The quote? Like, it's a bag of hat wearing racist... It's, it's, a, it's a Trump dystopian nightmare that hates Mexicans. And it's pro Trump and it's MAGA country and all sorts of stuff. I can't wait to see it. I've heard from multiple people now that it's good and I'm legit. I legit want to see it. Yeah, there you go. Um, are the criteria used to evaluate objective quality in media established as a valid criteria a priori by the nature of the medium, like elements necessary for a story, or a post priori conclusions reached via mutual agreement? It would be uh, pre, as in. What's intrinsic to what makes a story can be broken down, and then the degree to which it falls away from being that. It, it, uh, it was actually, I was talking to Frank about this yesterday. It's um, a, a, a quality argument made from quantity. It is um, an ought derived from an is. It, it, it is, is a couple of ways to try and translate it, but if I was to go into more detail to explain the fundamental sort of way I try and line it all up, uh, we'd be here for a lot longer. But um, it's a fair question. And uh, the, the mutual agreement one, like the idea that that's, that's what's happening, I mean, it, there'll be certain arguments that'll probably be reliant on that. Like the, a group of people come to a conclusion about what something should be and then you have like a fifth person jumps in way later. Like that's bullshit though because blah, blah, blah. And then the, the four people might be like, oh, right, yeah. And they missed something because of the fact that of a, <clears throat> a bias that they didn't quite see, but the criteria is essentially established before we've even seen the movie, um, typically. 
especially with storytelling. Dad, what do you think well, about... Oh, wait. Yeah, well, opinions are usually wrong, so... We get a lot of interesting quotes on this show, don't we? We do. It's strange. Like, I wish people would stand by them once in a while. <laughs> weirds only have one definition, and opinions are that typically was so wrong. We that was a weird one. <laughs> Words only have one definition. Man, that was a weird one. That's like... Mm. Yeah, oh, uh, give me a second. I'll be right back. So, that's a question for... Uh... Pronounced Adeptus Custodis. Dumb Mola. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'll, I'll read it for him once he's, uh, once he's back. I mean, Shad. Uh, hey, Mola, Shad, Fringian, Robot Head. I think that's everyone. Oh! I can say hi back to that. Um, how come being in shape and looking good is a power fantasy for men, but not for women? I think that there'd be an argument to be made for women have power fantasies as well. It's just not something that typically gets talked about, I think. Like, um, not because we don't want to talk about it, but because, uh, like, it seems, maybe it's unseemly, like, some people don't think that it should be uh, discussed because it's almost like a criticism of the person. In some way, people often use um, men looking for a power fantasy as, as like, a bad thing. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know, like, you can have women who play Doom and fucking love the power fantasy they get from that. It doesn't have to be the, uh, Doom guy is not a girl. But the idea that you probably get some form of a power fantasy out of any kind of strong female character in a lot of different, uh, pieces of media is, yeah, it's definitely possible. Would it be better if everyone was topless? Fringo Crokins. Wait, did Fringy say that? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, finally caught one of these properly, and with some of my favorite guests, no less. Hurrah for Australia! Also, hi, Shad. I'm sure he would have said hi back. Hey, Mola, what's something about the OT you can admit is objectively bad? The fucking nonsense in Jabba's palace at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. Um, the fact that the A-Wings would fly toward the walkers at the beginning of Empire when they take like a million years to turn around. So the obvious thing would be to fly around the back of them. <clears throat> uh, flying toward them, their view is probably not the best. And then, um, no. Yeah, there's probably more, but you only asked for one, so I did it. Um, <coughs> Dad, very much like Shadow the Conqueror, picked the audio vision up and recommended it to other people. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Uh, my Jedi Outcast review is going up on Geeks and Gamers this week in time for the console ports and has a montage of Star Wars amputations set to Patrick Willems preaching the films are for kids. <laughs> Excellent work, Mark. So high rags. He, he'll, he'll pick those up once. Okay, I'm back. We just had a high rags. Oh, hello! I've always liked the female-led action. Just look at my stuff I've animated, and I've distinctively recalled during university a classmate got tilted at me because the girl I made had cleavage and exposed thighs. <gasps> 2014. No oh, women wow. show their cleavage. In yeah, no, public I mean, especially. People don't, women don't do that. Yeah, if you go out in real life, all women are very much, pretty much hiding everything. Giant blankets. See them shifting through the streets. Uh, the people actually think that it's unusual for humans to want to display their assets. Their yeah, assets, say? Yeah, their assets. It's like the like a liability, but it's like a weird liability. Those are snow speeders, Mola, not wings. Oh, did, I said a wings. Yeah, I meant I'm I'm running on low energy right now. But um, <clears throat> the ships in in the beginning of Empire, they're not a wings. You're Okay, uh, late 70s, early 80s, John Byrne for the win. I'm not sure what that's referenced. He must be a comic book artist. Oh yeah, that would make sense. When Linkara does the Last Jedi comic, EFAP it please. Why? <laughs> the um, comic? Yeah, he, yeah? he reviews comics. Oh. I'm haunted by Phasma saying actions and character. Actions and actions. character. Actions. 
Would you say One Punch Man is objectively bad because a normal person can't become that OP with his strength training, or is it okay because it's consistent in the laws of the story's universe? Well, if we're going strictly by Season 1, then I think we all assume that there's something else going on and that we're going to figure out what the truth of the matter is, because no, you can't become that strong from just the, the regiment that he talks about. Um, if they never explained it, it wouldn't necessarily be a contradiction, because everything is running as it's been displayed to be, and that we just we don't know what truly gave him that power. But we wouldn't necessarily need to, though I, I think yeah, that would be a good really opportunity to... change anything, as far as I understand about the story. Uh, men ruin Star Wars, women ruin society. Perfect balance does all things should be. Okay. Clearly women would improve everything if they were men. Look at the Why women. Give them something to work for. If Captain Marvel had to fight Superman, who'd win? I mean, she's immune to everything. He's not immune to everything because of Kryptonite, so she'd just get Kryptonite. She'd stab yeah, him through I, his heart with Kryptonite. She would just me to him. He's got some old tweets that are very controversial. Say very that. controversial Superman tweets. Back on, oh. He he was you know he was criticizing all kinds of things. Dig them all up. Dale's video is basically please don't hashtag me to me. One one could argue. Jews are running X, ruining X, but I'm not attacking Jews. Well, that's the thing. If you just traded out men for another group, uh, the video suddenly becomes. Totally not allowed, which is interesting. Well, yeah, you could you could blanket statement men and white people all you want. You never get you know it's fine. Don't worry about that. Do the same to blacks or Jews or women. Oh man, watch yourself. It's good to catch a live one. Perfect timing for Fringyland people. Have any of you guys bought slash played Borderlands Three yet? I'm morally torn on it. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it, and I'm not buying anything from the Epic Games Store. <laughs> yeah, fuck that Really? Shit. Really? That's simple as it is for me. Hello to EFAP's best boy o -borf. Hello! My experience is, people with a proper understanding of anatomy can pull off the same movement and idealization. Bad anatomy for style is no excuse. Hmm. Well, I don't know about bad anatomy for style. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I think there's... Uh, yeah, I think if if you change people's proportions in order to have a style or each character is supposed to be, you know, if they look a certain way because you want to portray a certain, I guess, physique type, you know, that's one thing. But where it, but if you're going to be inconsistent with it just to. I, I, I don't know, um, like if if someone has to do something plot related and you change their physique to do that, like if oh, right, a guy's yeah. supposed to be big and buff and then all of a sudden he has to fit through like a like a ventilation shaft or something, so you uh, you sort of size you know, just so we can fit through, then oh that's where you have a problem. Yeah, I but think that you, was if, more if directed really at Fringy and Shad. I think in their conversation they said that um you can sacrifice anatomy for a style, I think. But uh yeah. It's an interesting conversation to say that. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't get those Funko Pops. They're like, they're like nano, nendo droids. Nendo droids. Nen Nendroids. Nendroids. I think I've heard of them. I think there's something similar. Nendoroids. Yeah, I'm not sure. But poor and intellectually deficient. Nendos are at least cute. These pops are creepy. Eh, you know, these are. Cre People love them, man. I don't. I don't know. Like. <laughs> This is the thing, I don't have any, uh, from what I remember, but I, I feel like everyone sees them as a sort of um, easy gift and cool thing to have in terms of the media you like. And there are psychos out there who will literally go out and buy every single version of every single thing of every single set. Of which, I'm not even sure if, like... I wonder if there's, like, a list online. There probably is, and I'm, I'm curious how many Funko Pops there are now. No. A lot. Hmm. Uh, don't make fun of Lando Funko rags. That's his wife's black son's favorite toy. He oh, I noticed he said my family. He didn't. He wasn't like a kid. So yeah, you know, maybe he lives with his parents. Maybe not. I don't know. Could be both. The question is still up in the air. Oh yeah, I don't know. We didn't really see uh, see about what like financial slash career was. Cause he said 
that he was a part of like a network for YouTube, right? I'm assuming that was his career. He used to be, well, no, he used to be part of the network. That was Network 1901 was uh, the name of the channel that it, it, it was on. That's why it was different. And honestly, you can't make a video like that and expect, that's the thing. Like videos like that are all over the place. You're a bad person if you hate Star Wars or you hate women if you would do that. I was like, how do you think people are going to react to it? And do you think a lot of networks want to have that kind of message on their channel and stuff? It was like BuzzFeed, who apparently like rather foster that rather than avoid it. Yeah, I think that um, I would I wouldn't say that most places are like BuzzFeed. Oh, absolutely. I'm just saying there are a few out there, and I don't know what oh, this, yeah, this some. network was like. Maybe this network and a lot of them is... are and a lot of them are dying too. Yes. So there's always that. Remember that one time where there was a devil's advocate to keep the conversation fresh? If you're being sarcastic, Steiner, at the very least, the guy came on. So what more do you want? <laughs> like, I mean, he, he had the chance to come on on the podcast, knowing what he was getting into, to uh, ideally defend his ideas. He didn't really do that, but, you know, he could have, you know, that was an option. And plus, it's not like we were going hard on him. Yeah, and a lot of what we were talking about in in the section covering his video was a, a lot of just discussion about a lot of his, uh, like, thing, he was a vehicle for discussions between us about things. Uh, yeah, we weren't really getting on. much out of him. Yeah, like, it wasn't like he required an advocate. We would just, like, he would say something, and we'd be like, okay, let's try and break this down and talk about it. Um, and yeah, he didn't exactly seem to want to support what was the, the broad statements of his video anyway, so I don't know what advocate you'd be looking for exactly. Catman Joe is not responsible for this. Please leave his stream alone. I guess that's Cat in relation. We were getting Catman Joe spammed a lot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't know. I have no idea what that's about. I, I don't. I don't really either. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Rags, what is your problem with Funko Pops? Oh, it's ju it's just like the meme um, like reputation that they have. They're they're the stereotypical thing that you know nerd shill types have all the time. Yeah, they're always in like. I don't actually think lesser of one's character if you own Funk Pops. Yeah, and that's I was bringing up earlier. There are arguments people can make against like merchandising and buying into it and all that stuff, but like I don't myself, I don't really have an issue. You can have like excessive amounts. Like there's people who walk into their house and it's just Funko Pops everywhere, and you'd be like, okay. I mean, yeah, whatever, float the boat, but um. Yeah, there, there, there is just the whole. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like you look at Red Letter Media's podcast set, right, for Nerd Crew, and it's just stuff. Yeah, stuff everywhere. This figure it just. Um. So the guy is apparently a Minecraft YouTuber, and he has no idea what's happening. Just wanted to let you know. Well, yeah, he came. Who? Uh, that was about the. Uh, oh, is he a Minecrafter? I think he now. Play, playing I think that's Minecraft. Where he's, he's at now. All right. Hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, the stream you did with Sargon last week about the Al Jazeera video was outstanding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a fun one. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, for real, I really appreciate the wit and directness with which you opposed what the video was advancing. Oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you liked it. We, did, we, we, uh, we tackled it with all the fun and me could tackle a video, uh, subtly implying there should be a race war. Uh, I'm glad we get to hear crazy, drunk, or just silly rags. Oh, I'm you... I'm not drunk. I'm I'm not drinking at all. I had way too much to drink last night. I am not touching another drop. Uh, when, not for now, at least. When Ray meets Kylo, she'll just Thanos snap. Fucking who knows? They might get married and have children. Like we, you never know what's gonna happen. It's insane. Yeah, because remember, th Ray, she's beaten him like three times, sort of now, like two and a half times at this point. Like, man, what are they going to do? Yeah, man, I'll be walking to that cinema like, oh god, here we go. <laughs> we're about to get the answers of what the fuck were they going to do with episode 9. Um, I'm so excited. I really am so excited for episode 9. I want to know what happens. I want to know how it ties together all of these uh, loose threads. It's something. I just watched EFAP 9. Luke milking the alien makes sense because it's Disney milking Star Wars for all it's worth. I can't disagree with that. It's, it's the, you can't dis, you see, it's the, it's the adjacent meta narrative. 
of the milking scene that you can't ignore. <laughs> I wonder, if, I wonder if Movie Bob would appreciate that if I said it's a meta narrative. It describes the Disney milkings. Well, it's like you, there's nothing that you can't say, oh, it's a meta narrative in defense of. And once they say, uh uh, they're like, oh, so there's criteria and standards by which you yeah. judge whether or not something is either a good or a, or a sufficient meta narrative. Boogie Deadass said a Chris Ray gun joke seriously. Well, this is the thing. I feel like we would make jokes like that on EFAP. Like, at least rapists believe in themselves or something like that. Yeah. But he said it in defense of, like, an argument. And it's like, no. Uh, Internet trolls are the apex evil. At least rapists believe in spreading too much bread over butter. Boogie boo oh, no. bag fail. <laughs> yes, boogie boo bag fail would have said that. Uh, the critic is the risk. You take the critic out and you have some round-headed moron making people mad. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Saying that the cre or the critic doesn't take any risks, I'd be like, oh, there's times like where the critic does. Yeah, people's reputations can live and die on their criticism. You gotta, you gotta make sure you, your takes are accurate or you've done the work, you, you maintain integrity. There's lots of uh, risky elements to being a critic. Um, the complaint about movie critics is just commies trying to push the labor theory of value. Doesn't matter how much you worked on it. Uh, the tweet from Stuckman is ripped from the end of Ratatouille. Yeah, I saw a couple of people on Twitter saying that he's essentially just uh, ripped off the speech at the end of Ratatouille, the whole, like, appreciate the, 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 the work, anyone could be a cook. The, 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 the wonderful sort of elements of Ratatouille. Um, Stuckman, however, doesn't quite maintain the charm of the, of the film. Stuckman is extremely uncharming and uninteresting. He mixes the two together. In a way, he, he, he has the perfect amount of uninteresting bread that is being scraped over with the uninteresting butter. It's like a butter that's clear. You're like, what is this? Is, is this water? And you're like, yep. Clear butter. <laughs> uh, I used to be a Chris Stuckman fan until his TLJ review came out. That's when I woke up to his BS. An EFAP on his video would be a good idea. Um, maybe. We've said before that if ever we were to cover him, it would probably be preferable to wait for a subject we're familiar with, um, and maybe something new that sort of encompasses a lot of what I have in terms of issues with this. But, um, I don't know. This is the problem with Chris Stuckman videos. They are... He just... He's the, the bottom of the barrel meh criticism, if you can call it that. Like, if you think that you are good enough to do what Chris Muck... Uh, Chris Tuckman does, then yeah, you're correct. You are. Thank the dawn you guys streamed. I just finished the last episode and needed my rhino milk fix. Keep being as epic and, as and celestial as always, guys. Thank you. Will, more of it. Amola, thank you for the great content. No problemo, King Animus. Thank you for pulling it great. Um, Stuckman has a series called Hilariosity. I think he can understand there are shit movies and that should be laughed at. Well, yeah. Oh, so... oh yeah, they all do. It just <laughs> exactly, sort of yeah. contradictory to their whole thing. It's they, they, they have this mindset where they're like, it's all subjective until you bring ones like the room in, then they're like, okay, we know that one's not subjective, and you're like, what do you mean? You can't say that. You can't just. Like, do you not understand by saying that you've established a criteria? And it's like, no. This is, that was bad, though. All the ones I like, though. i to find a critic who loves the room and explains the themes of the room. Um, are women fans either fans of Star Wars who are women or fans of women who are into Star Wars? Women... Women like to... What? Wait, what? Uh, well, I mean, it's in reference to his video, the confusing, like, thing about women fans. The fans of Star Wars who are women, or fans of women who are into Star Wars. I'm not even sure, like, what do you mean the second one? <laughs> um, I mean, he didn't, sta he didn't necessarily stand by those statements anyway. So we could just no, it's kind of a shame. Uh, wish Meme Repository happy birthday too. Yeah, happy birthday, dude. Oh, Meme Repository, happy birthday. Uh, don't have time to watch now, but I need more Mola content, and I'm still mad my EFAP50 super chat was missed. It said, hi, raggers and Meowla. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, hello. Hello, hello for that one. Uh, Dale's a mansplainer, saying women love Disney Star Wars. Dirty, dirty man. 
Thanks for covering the vid I sent you. Thanks, Maul. No problem if you were the one who sent it, yeah. I, um, I get a, a couple of different sources I get and I try and just check out enough of a video to be like, is this gonna work, is it not, and... Man, just, yeah, that was, that was an interesting... Um, creators should be honored that their work is analyzed to such a degree so that they can improve. Many people don't even get that attention or help. Yeah, someone would say that the worst thing is just to be ignored. Yeah. Uh, oops, misspelled my last chat. Meant to say it was misread, not missed. Oh, yeah. No oh. Uh, I knew Shad would be on EFAP after a 30-minute video covering four minutes of anime. Yay. <laughs> uh, only girls I've seen liking TLJ are Tumblr tier Raylo shipper commies. You know, Disney target audience. I mean, I mean the whole Raylo thing. I don't know why people are so into that. But Yeah, I don't... What do you guys see? Is it purely just a sexual fantasy thing where it doesn't have any grounds at all in reality? Logic? You're just thinking with your lady dick? Uh, great stream, bro. Also say hi to Rags for me. Hi, Rags. Oh, hi, Mahler. <laughs> Wait, Shad is back? I thought he's dead. Trex roar. Well, yeah, he, he apparently did survive. I mean, we watched the, um, the meme video where he came back, right? I think we what happens next to him in the, uh, in the was When you hold the position that everything is subjective, your arguments will resemble an Escher painting. Every argument will loop back illogically. Well, yeah, when you've maintained that as a foundation, all of the arguments are going to eventually cross over and contradict each other because you'll be doing everything in the moment. So, like, you end, like, like H. Bomber guy saying that DS2 was complete in its incompleteness. It's like, sorry, what? Like, double take? And uh, the longer it goes on with a critic, the more you'll find things like, hey, wait, but they said this before, now this, this, I'm co No, it doesn't matter, it's just my opinion. You're like, oh, I subscribed because I thought you were really good at, you know, like, breaking the thing down, not just because you happened to like it, or didn't like it at the time, you know, it gets... Uh, English is the best, screw all other languages. Yeah, English is the tits. I mean, I've, I, I just, I don't really mind what language it would be. I just wish that it pretty much was just one language across Earth for clarity, because most of the time people who use English don't even really get how to use it. And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not one of those people. Like, if it was all just one language, we'd probably be at a point where we can focus on actually getting better at using it instead of trying to figure out translations for everything. But that has a lot of cult cultural implications um, and historical ones. But yes, English is. Uh, you know, I agree useful. with Baller. Um, yeah, British Empire version two. <laughs> Let's give it another shot, gents. Yeah, Jolly just, good. Just, just yeah, give it another. There's no no harm in trying it again. I'd say. Nothing really. Uh, the first one was a warm up. Uh, training to be an electrician. Good wiring, like anything, is a form of art. Therefore, if I fix a breaker with a subjective theme that it won't kill me, I'll be fine. Oh. Be careful, Mister Electrician. Um, I won't be watching live, just wanted to pop in and say thanks for making my commute to college every day bearable. Have a great stream. Also, hi, Rags. Hello! Hi. Sesame Street was brought to you today by the letter 6 and the number E. <laughs> hmm. Since the original six movies were based on World War II, any decent sequel trilogy should have been based on the Cold War. Imagine the remnants of the Empire or the New Republic descending into communism. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for, like... The growing frustration of maybe a an awkward peace that was established with a faction of an empire that was still trying to just maintain a planet, let's say, or a selection, and then maybe mm -hmm. a, a thing could be that several planets start to join their union, and the concern for the Republic is that by there being peace, they're getting more powerful, you know, and then you can have elements of the Cold War happening there. Um, I think. Yeah, imagine it was it, it was actually character based, and neither faction was you know good or evil necessarily. Yeah, you could be watching Lord of the Rings right now. Yes, he could. That's true. You could have. Screw me! I missed two hours of EFAP because I was rewatching that good but subversive show called The Boys. Start watching two seconds ago. Judging from the title, this guy sounds like a a homo that deserves to be decapitated by lasers. Jesus right. Christ. Well, you can guess that that's raw, right? Oh yeah, I was Good about to say. 
If the only reason we dislike TLJ is we hate women, could one argue the reason they like it is they're racist? Finn is a bumbling stereotyped caricature. I, I suppose that would have been an interesting one to throw back when you talk about the prequel thing, actually. Um, if they said the only reason they like it is because black people are in it, I don't know if that makes them racist. It would be a, a weird fucking thing, though. But I guess they kind of do say that, right? The whole diversity thing. They're more concerned with what the people look like rather than they are. So, um, Definitely. Yeah. Well, well if we said if we said we only like it because there's a white person in it, you know what they? Oh yeah. Well, we'd be we'd be uh, that that yeah. wouldn't look. Yeah, we we talk to be like, how could you say that? It's so disgusting. Wrong. Uh, thoughts on one division leading directly into Doctor Strange two? I'd be more annoyed if both weren't my most anticipated things of Phase four, as Wanda and Vision are my favorite Avengers. Objectively, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try out the one division thing. Seems like it could be cool. It's gonna be dependent on the trailer for it. I don't know what they're up to, and then Doctor Strange two is the one out of all the things in Phase four that I actually wouldn't mind seeing from name alone. Again, trailers are probably gonna direct me on these ones. Um, also, the wallet uh, to criticism thing only applies to the studio. People like Ryan Johnson and Dumb and Dumber get paid the same amount regardless. Yeah, that was weird because when he said matters, I like it was really dependent on who he was saying that in reference to. Like matters to what? Disney matters to the bottom line. Matters to the creators. Matters to the people. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if people, I mean, people's attitudes and the money are inextricably tied to one another. It would be insane to imply that they're not the same. Or not, well, not the same, but they're not related. Thoughts on new Joker movie? Watch MDE World Peace. I have not seen it, and I'm probably now going to wait until it's released. I did want to see it in the cinema, but uh, too many things got in the way, and I'm not sure if it's still there, but... Either I'll see it this week, or I'll wait until it's out. There's a possibility. And I don't, I'm assuming you haven't seen it, right? No, I haven't. He needs to have a chat with me. I'll let him know how terribly bad TLJ actually was from a woman's point of view. P.S. L337 was garbage. This is the thing. Oh, I, I should have asked him, does he think that L337 was a parody character or not? <laughs> he, I, I have no idea. He seemed uh, very nervous in general, and so I had, a, I had a sense that he might have wanted to just uh, sort of get the conversation finished and establish that he's, he doesn't really hold the positions of a lot of the things he said in that video. And so stuff like... Yeah, I think we established that pretty clearly. Yeah, like the whole women do X or think X and men do X and think X, like all of that, you could just... Eh. Um, I just watched Kung Fu Panda Trilogy and loved revisiting that series, but got sad because so many brands have damaged nowadays that it's only a matter of time until this one's ruined too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, well... Isn't there a Kung Fu Panda, like, a TV show? I don't know, actually. There might be. I know that there's three movies? Is there four movies? I think there's three. Uh, and I can't... Man, like, I haven't seen them in ages, so... Like, I kind of don't even really remember them much. Yeah, but, um, but the idea that there's concern over, um... them being ruined, uh... I was on a podcast the other day talking about, like, it's like, what else is even left to ruin? And I was like, the two that I've waited to be ruined are um, Back to the Future and Gremlins. Those are two that I'm waiting by reboots, remakes, sequels, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm surprised they haven't been touched for this long. And I know that Gremlins 3 has been back and forth in production. They're trying to get a thing started with that. So it's only a matter of time. Really? And this is the thing. If, it. if it's going to be like... CGI gremlins and like missing the tone of the originals. There's a lot of things that could happen. And I know that um, Mike loves gremlins, so that's, that would be a, probably a pretty good plinket video on the way if, if something like that happened, at least. You gotta think I of the think good. So too. Yeah. I like gremlins a lot, but if a bad gremlins remake came out, I probably wouldn't make any videos on it. I'd just be like, well, another one bites the dust. Yep. Hope you enjoy. You can still enjoy the first two. I went to get food and you're still going, lol. Yes. <laughs> How long do you eat? I, I I guess a long time. Also, I read that one out of out of order. Fine. Uh -huh. I'll just read the rest. I just rewatched. Oh wait, yeah, we got that one. Hi, Shad. Or he'd say hi back. This Kajuk. He spelled 
I guess Ra goes with Kajuk instead of Kuk. Do they actually block Kuk? I would have thought they'd let you say that. Really, you can't say Kuk. Why? Stop it, Ra. Please stop being mean and critical. Me and my Chad super soldiers. We will drive you and your soy boy ilk to... And he wrote Sue and then space side. Like Sue is in... Oh, you uh, can't say Sue. Well, maybe he can't actually say suicide. No, of course, but the way he did it, so like Sue is in S U E, like Women's Day, but then side is in like a side of a war, like like not. Because I figure you could just put a space between in in the middle of suicide and it'll work. But yeah, yeah, maybe. I like I like these uh, tactics to get past limitations. Um, I'm sorry to inform you all that I hate women. This guy on the internet told me because I think Last Jedi was bad. Well. That was targeted at the Mary Sue thing. That was that was really awkward, by the way. Um, I thought he knew that he'd said that, if you know what I mean. The whole um, yeah, like I think that he hated the fact that that was a tweet he had done. He was like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" You know what I mean about the whole like like me and you having to defend that position when we know that that's not our position. Yeah, we're like, Ugh, yes, I said that. Yes, it's stupid. okay. Fine. Yeah, but we can generally defend the things we say, that's the thing. And, and I do want to clarify that, like, if you say something stupid for whatever reason, you should be able to be like, yeah, that thing was stupid, and I don't think that anymore. Like, right, right. Yeah, that's all you had to say. That's uh, all you had to say. Yeah. Uh, if you ever pause every frame of a movie bob video again, please join forces with Razor Fist to do it. Few can dismantle that charlatan as well as him. Sure. Yeah, um, we could save a movie Bob thing for there, uh, him. We do Literally. have. There was one we were going to cover in the fiftieth that never got around to it. So if we have Razor Fist, we can have a movie Bob video, I guess. Um, yeah. If you know forty k, then argue Caldor Drago isn't a Mary Sue. Try. I'm guessing that's. I'm going to save that for Shad. Shad knew forty k. I do not know if he knows forty k much. You know, you I know forty k, right? I know of it. I, I have a journeyman understanding of it, but I don't really know who he is. I don't know a lot of the individual characters. Um, so if I told this brave and stunning orphan that I didn't like Boba Fett, he'd blow me. But if I said Rey had no development or logical reasoning behind her power, he'd spit instead of swallow? That's sexist. Yeah. I mean, I think he, he sounded like he'd be willing to hear arguments for why she was a poor character. And it sounded like, with the criticisms he had of Boba, that there is such a thing as a bad character, according to him. So, maybe there's a discussion to be had there, hopefully. Yeah, maybe. Uh, starting from the beginning, because I'm pooping in late. Popping in late. <laughs> Happy Ooh. birthday, Shad. Have fun with your spaghetti. Your mm -hmm. Yes, women are stupid and irrational and weak. Fag boy? Oh, I guess that's supposed to be fag boy, probably. What are you going to do about it? Going to cry, shit your pants? This guy's legs should be crushed. Ah, No leg crushing. What are you throwing people off rooms for he does Always it anyway? violence. Hey, Rags, you handsome doggo. Hey! I want to absorb your bone density over and over and over. Hmm. There's a lot of bone in there, though. If I met this guy IRL, I would make him listen to Mauler's entire TLJ critique while I crushed him and stuffed him into a single tiny Funko Pop box. Raw again. The crushing and the stuffing. Uh, Yujo Senki movie has a Mary Sue as an antagonist. Enough. Um, it would probably be good uh, around the discussion of what makes one good or not, I imagine. Um, <clears throat> why are you talking about women when you get to look at women? I don't know. Sometimes it's just not enough. No, that's controversial to say. What can I say? Superman is also weak to magic and red sun energy, as well as countless characters who can match him physically. Bad writers will make him OP and uninteresting, but a lot of good writers give him plenty of great stories. Oh. Um, Shad, literally every dip who's been covered on EFAP that's disagreed with me is an ugly, retard, subhuman, who should be sliced in half with lasers. I guess Ra's using lasers. Ra's? All right. Daddy won't make good violence. <laughs> Such violence. Daddy won't make good rat. Well, when a plot and a character love each other very much, they get together and make a bunch of little themes. Oh. Yeah. Any thoughts about the new article from comicbook.com? Disney's first Star Wars plans were too much too fast, according to Chairman Bog I Bog, Bog Iger. <laughs> Bob Iger. Um, I it's thought weird. we knew that. I guess, 
Because... I mean, it's weird because you look at the MCU and they got movies coming out all the time. Yeah. Maybe, it's, maybe the idea is that it wasn't it wasn't good. And I think thought... the, wasn't the whole like they they planned to do a whole bunch of things and then they pulled it all back because oh yeah they so pulled well. out they pulled back a bunch of stuff yeah but yeah I I guess we already knew that Bob Iger felt that way because of those actions but um yeah it makes sense yeah. that they they think that they're obviously wrong about what's wrong just make good shit and we'll watch it it doesn't yeah if it's, it's not good about... we're, you got a whole fan base here we're we're ready for it we're ready for that good stuff. But if you don't make the good stuff, then, well, what do you think's going to happen? Uh, literally every Kuzk, uh, Kuk has, has simps. And what is this, Ra? <laughs> There's so many <laughs> words that are all spelt wrong. To be cleansed from the earth. All right. <clears throat> the, the end of the message was, of course, that a bunch of the, the badmans need to be cleansed from the earth. Uh, chat, if you ever meet someone like this IRL, remember, do not reason with them or validate them with arguments. Bully them relentlessly and make them weep. <laughs> oh, Ra. I'm not Mexican, Martha. Also, put these sexy shoes on, Bola. Hey. So put on the sexy shoes. There. Hey, Rags. Hey. How do you like your position as the gay world president? The gay world president? Yeah, I don't remember you, being I don't remember being elected. I don't remember you even nominated in like a way, shape, or form. But apparently, you got it. Nice work, man. Oh, thanks. I worked really hard on it. Yeah, really worked long and hard on it <clears throat> to to get this coveted position in Gay World. <laughs> it's not canon, but there's some law about the guy who operated the laser and his guilt. Yavin wasn't blown up instantly because he couldn't do it again. It's not canon, but there's some lore. Are you saying like fan fiction? Or... I mean, I would imagine that it there, there could be some psychological trauma that goes into. It would be pretty that. cool as a. It, it may have been a cool idea to have that be something that plays into the finale of A New Hope, in the the guy couldn't get over that that's what he'd become a part of and sabotages a portion of the system or something. You know? Maybe. Um. When Shad says, um, it sounds like armor. I guess because the Australian accent, they say, um, 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 um armor. <laughs> fat today. Crikey. Bilbo Fett, my favorite Lord of the Wars character. Oh, yeah. Lord of the Wars. <clears throat> Lobot reminds him of that Argentinian pool boy that pierced his maidenhood over margaritas. <laughs> oh, no. Better I have syphilis than be a virgin. Fair enough. You know, everyone... You get to choose what you want, you know? I don't hold any of that against you. Uh, Luke traumatizes his nephew when he was about to kill him. This guy. This is a ton of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just drop it in during my break. Have a great stream, guys. Thank you. Or Murdering younglings. Total fun. Sad Luke. Uh -huh. Fun. <laughs> the clown emojis as a uh, theme is a word film elitists use to in invent value where none exists, like how modern artists use obscurantism to present to pretend their work isn't shit. Oh no, there's just an obscure particular nature of the piece that's supposed to represent kind of net net. You see, supposed to be something underlying the, the, the what you can see. You see. But you can't see. You have to smell it. And smell it. Smell Dad, the obscurity. Are you aware of the Netflix movie coming out in November called The King? I'll save this question. The Kong. The King. Also, is this thing I told you about in EFAB 52? Is this the thing I told you about? I, I Maybe. I don't know. But not so anyway, it's now been covered. The Call of Cthulhu contains fiction and therefore is a silly fantasy book for kids. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I don't think he would stand by the argument. I don't think Patrick Willems would stand by whatever the argument he's trying to make is when he says all that. Because if, if I was ever able to probe him on his stupid It's a Space Wizards movie for children, I'd be like, are you saying we, don't, we shouldn't take it seriously? I don't think he'd want to answer yes to that. Like, are you saying children's content shouldn't be crafted to a certain standard. Wouldn't agree with that. And so she's like, so what the fuck was the point in you saying all this? No. 
Having some fun, leave me alone, in my opinion. I'm so fun, so fun. Uh, four children falls apart when we know that Star Wars was written with archetypal mythology and ancient lore from real world. It was liked by young ones, but the structure itself is universal. Cretans like this can shove his. All right. Uh, last time I checked, nobody defended the Phantom Menace, saying it was for kids, and the movie has Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, like people didn't. I don't think I, I saw any arguments in favor of Phantom Menace, saying, "Hey, it's for." Ch it's interesting that that sort of seemed to really come to pass with, with TLJ. Like, I don't think I've ever seen that argument more so than with TLJ. People are desperate to make excuses for this movie. Trial by combat and holding a piece of hot iron. Damn, common law is cool. Yeah. Would you consider having an EFAP on discussing how you could have fixed or rewritten the sequels after 9 is out? I'd be happy to hear ideas of hate and passion flow for 7, 8, and 9. Um, it's a lot of expended effort for what is essentially a process that you'd probably rather put into the, like actually writing your own story instead. I mean, I like discussions on tweaks and then maybe a premise for a trilogy, but like the first thing we probably do is like, yeah, just wipe what we had go from the beginning again and ignore everything they do. But a complete rewrite, it would take a long time. We'd probably just talk in concepts, but it's, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. it's impossible. Um, will you make another video game analysis? I love them. I would say yes for the future, but I don't know when exactly. Like, I don't want to promise anything about anything, so... But, but I'd like to cover games again, for sure. Yeah. Uh, they take games what you... are fun. Sorry? Yeah, games are fun. Yes. Fun times. Fun stuff. Very fun. They take what you created away from you because they're inferior and can't make anything half as good. Then they muck it all up because they're, they're worthless subhumans filled with spite. Then, once they've ruined everything, they tell you it was silly space wizards or racist misogyny or dumb western civilization all along. None of it ever really mattered in the first place. Kind of, yeah. Be the case with a, with a bunch of media. Um, this guy is why the Germans have the word Frem... Fremden Shaman? Shaman? I'm... I know that's not how you pronounce that, but, um... You should remember. Fair enough. Uh, follow Star Wars. In other words, love all Star Wars movies, no matter how bad. Doom product. And get excited for next product. Maul's Opinion of 2001. ASO, Clockwork Orange, The Shining. Uh, I like all of them. The Shining's probably my favorite. 2001 and Clockwork Orange were, um, probably use the word fascinating. And, uh, I guess I can't really go on further for any of them, because it would, it would, I would have to open up a lot, but, um, yeah, there's a reason why they're classics or influential movies. Good shit. Dr. Sigmund Freudian. Dr. Sigmund Freudian. I like that. That seems so genuine that this whole time Fringy thought his name was Freudian because of Freudian. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can see how that happened and I like it. <laughs> uh, why don't we hear Iron Giant has great themes of not judging others and you are who you choose to be, followed by her the space robot movie for kids. <laughs> because that movie's good. <laughs> so it does, this argument only is ever used on shit movies, so. Yeah, it's weird how that works. Yoda, train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose. Maybe we should start let Star Wars and all these franchises go so we can get new ones. Um, the, the whole, but it's Star Wars! The whole letting go thing is like... Uh, the, the, the main portion of money these franchises make are from people who probably aren't doing any kind of critical analysis. And I'm not saying that as a derogatory thing. Like, I want to watch movies. So, um... Probably never going to go away. Like, these franchises will continue to make money. I see that with, like, Alien, Predator, and um, Terminator. They just keep coming back because of how good the originals were, and they'll never be let go. Like, how many years have to pass before the general public don't know what Star Wars is? Like, uh, you have to wait for a while. Never. Yeah, it'll <clears throat> take ages. Also, high rags. Hello! Feminists want to eliminate the male gaze. <laughs> Get it? The, the gays that are male. <laughs> <laughs> Me too.
Luke killed most of his enemies. Be like Luke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Peter Dinklage won Best Supporting Actor for Drama. Like I said, I'm okay with that. The one that I just didn't want them to get was Best Writing. And it sounds like they may not have gotten that one, but they got Best Drama, which is bad. Yeah. <sighs> what are you gonna do? I'm not defending the Star Wars guy in any way, but I see where he might come from. Men and women think differently. Their brains are not are different. Women don't care for substance as men, but optics. Style over substance, in a lot of ways. Oh yeah, there's definitely differences. <laughs> there's no way I'd be denying that. Um, <laughs> be a pie. That is a reference to my video. Me, Shad. Six is not a letter. Shad, come off it. <laughs> we'll we'll have to see if he can make a full video about it, explaining the the letterness. But uh, TLJ fandom is Scientology for poor people. Change my mind. Oh no, Scientology for poor people is just the worst. Because don't you have to like buy a whole bunch of shit when it comes to Scientology? Pretty much. You actually have to like. Buy your tears and then buy like materials and feed or whatever. It's like the biggest thing ever. It's like college. It's a scam. I was gonna say. I think that Star Wars probably has better lessons than Scientology does. In a very broad sense, I shouldn't really say that because I don't know nothing, barely anything about Scientology apart from Scientology is um, like the fakest thing ever. I just know the bit about um, you know, and <laughs> the aliens or whatever. Like. <laughs> <clears throat> they don't tell you that till you start forking out the books. I imagine that. Like, you really believed it, and then they told you that bit after you paid, like, tens of thousands or whatever. And you're like, ah, <laughs> not really, guys. Um, Morley, you missed my super chat from last week. Oh, no. Your one from last week? Was just wanted to say thank you, Morley, for converting me from loving TLJ to death to despising it passionately. We removed, you removed joy from the world, Mahler. <clears throat> I definitely read that out, because uh, I found that funny. I remember finding it funny. can't believe you removed joy from the world. But yes, I did remove joy from the world. I am so sorry. Also, let's stop bullying Jay, also high rags. Hello! And <clears throat> no, we're not going to stop bullying Jay. Why would you request that? That is the gay. Uh, I'm imagining myself repeatedly smashing this balding cuck's head in on a bathroom sink while yelling... Gosh, Raw, fuck, I know, hell. yeah. <laughs> if my name was Sage Hyden, all those people who call me a, a, a faggot would be right. Also, hi, <laughs> Rags. Hi, Mola. Hello. Hi, hey, Fringy, hi, Shad, and hi, Robohead. They'd all say hi back. Uh, I bid thee all adieu. I must do a bedtism. Sleep well. Have a good night. Sleep tight. And do not allow the bedbugs to bite you. Yes. I unironically won't be surprised at this point if this guy said that Star Wars teaches us to have open borders, kill babies, and get rid of guns. Just do what Star Wars tells you. All of my political <laughs> positions I take from Star Wars. Like watching the OT as a, kid, as a kid, he's like, racism is bad. That's right, sweetie. I'm glad, we, I'm glad you watched Star Wars so we didn't have to teach you that racism's a bad. Uh, that's why Thrawn was such an interesting character in the Empire. They didn't like aliens, but he worked his way to be one of the highest ranked officers in the Empire. That sounds like it would make for a really good story. Like, in a fully-fledged, high-production film. But I simultaneously am like, but if Disney do it... So... Hmm. Yeah, Disney, Disney's gonna fuck it up. Uh, in the original canon, very few aliens ever got into the Empire. That's why Thrawn was so famous, because he was a high rank non-human. All right. Uh, this dude looks like a massive faggot. Also, hi, Rex. Hello! The Empire should exterminate that Xeno scum. Oof. CIS were militant anarcho-capitalists. Yeah, I'd, uh, uh, maybe. You know, you, maybe who they was, don't identify. Who was militant anarcho-capitalists? The, uh, the CIS being the droids in the... Ra rampant anarcho-capitalists? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'd have to read more into their like actual policy positions. Yeah, because uh, this is the thing. Do we even know much about them outside of them being a rebelling force? Yeah, all I know about them really politically is that they didn't want to be subservient to the Republic. Hmm. 
they basically they wanted independence. So I'd have to look further into their actual political and economic positions to make that judgment, because I don't know. Uh, I was radicalized by Darth Vader. Silly rags, the force is female. Also, hi, rags. Hello. Yeah, the whole force is female thing is like... <laughs> Sorry, boys. Well, see, force Star Wars is for guys, but if we make it for girls... It's fine. Because you remember how in the OT they keep saying the force is male? Uh, do you remember all the times they uh, say... Oh, the... yeah, the, the famous scene with the, um, the, the stuff. Yeah. All those guys oh, yeah, all those many, those many this scenes. This is only for us. I remember that. And then there's that woman that turned up, and then they all hit her, and they were like, go away. This is... Lots of like, weird scenes like that that a lot of people oh, yeah, don't yeah. remember. I, I often forget that, that mm. thing that happened. Uh, okay, that was epic. Grand Moff Tarkin upon nuking Alderaan. <laughs> <laughs> my toaster is Alderaan, racist. That was it epic. My toaster is racist. It never burns my bread. Oh, it is. I don't... I guess because I the, the bread never... is never I black. Guess bread's blackish, I guess? Um, what is what does being black and racism have to do with anything? I don't understand the connection. Nope. I don't really, I mean, I don't get it. I'm going to hook up a Roomba to a lawnmower, paint it to look like R2-D2, and program it to run over this guy's head while it reads the bell curve out loud. Jesus, Rock, come on. Oh. Violence. Star Wars droids aren't sentient because of constant lobotomy they receive. R2-D2 is one of the few droids that was never memory wiped. Yeah, I think they, 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 they mentioned that, because, like, C-3PO keeps getting his memory wiped, right? But they just don't with R2-D2 for some reason. I, I don't remember the memory wipe stuff. Well, they, they say in Revenge of the Sith uh, at the end, because obviously C-3PO and R2-D2, well, at least C-3PO should remember Obi-Wan. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it, better one. My toaster is racist. It always burns my Jewish eye. Your Jewish eye? Interesting. What would that mean? Uh, Yoda was an orphan trained in the way of the Force by the Dawn. Well, that would explain a lot. I was going to say, that actually does fill in a lot of blanks. Um, it should be legal to kill people like this guy. Come on, Ra, that's not even creative. <clears throat> you yeah. just want to make a law to you're kill slip, this particular slipping. guy. You're slipping, you're slipping. Uh, Emmy for drama writing, The Iron Throne Lost. Oh, hey, there you go. Apparently The Iron Throne didn't get the writing. The fact that it was even nominated. <laughs> I know. What the hell is happening that that's the case? Uh, what are you like, do? who honestly watched that and they're like, yeah, this is good writing. This is good stuff, this writing. It's just a shame that that's where we're at, where that can happen, but I don't know why I'm complaining, because I guess... It's all subjective. Well, no, what I, are, there I are no actually, standards, there is no quality. I was actually gunning for the whole, like, this isn't the first time, and most of the time, whenever someone's like, oh, you're going to watch the Oscars? I'm like, no. Why? Yeah. So that I can watch them get it fucking wrong? And this is the thing, you could be like, how do how, you know, you're not, you don't know what their standards are, you're like, you're right, I don't. They're not going to tell anyone, so why do they mean anything anyway? It's like, prestige. Prestige. Uh, hey, Rags. Hello. Interesting fact, there was a dog in World <laughs> War I named Rags that was the mascot for the U.S. 1st Infantry Division. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Yeah. Is that where the name's from, or? Nope. But uh, I do know of it. That is, that is very nifty. If droids could think, there would be none of us here, would there? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Seems pretty definitive droids don't have proper AI. I've always seen that as the films leaving it ambiguous. And that's part of my issue with Solo, was that it seems way too definitive. I like to think about R2-D2 being sentient. I don't like it if a character says... This thing is uh, sentient. Droid rights. Droid rights. I'd be like, oh. Uh. Movies didn't really go into it besides a few snide comments. The EU covered it a lot more. Thrawn is a kiss, and his whole world story revolves around the idea of it. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, fair enough. A lot of people have been talking about that, that storyline with Thrawn. 
Regarding what you say about these people expecting everyone to have a woke interpretation of everything, during Dartmouth undergrad, I had to write countless papers with the correct takes. To get good grades... Uh, to get good grades. If we're to fix this mess, we need to kill professors in Minecraft. I, th I think the... The Bully them off their own <laughs> Minecraft servers. <laughs> I like the idea you kill the professors in Minecraft and it changes their ideas. Um, yeah, I've seen I, I, the error of my ways. Yes, Ra. This mother effer has the same energy as Carl, Carl the C Cuck and AIDS Skrillex? AIDS Skrillex? I know what he's talking about. Uh, not saying I'd F his mouth, but his mouth is wide open. You guys send weird super Jesus, chats. that is fucking weird. Y'all are gonna give us a bad reputation. Yeah. Throw him off a roof already, Ra. Oh no. Too much roof throwing. We need trampolines and and suicide nets and stuff. Just nets in general. Or flood the whole place so they just fall in water. I find it both amusing and sad that throughout all EFAP, someone this wee Todd did isn't even top 10 dumbest takes. Oh, right. We, we, this we totted. Retarded, I get it. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit slow right We totted. Um, yeah. what, what do you reckon in terms of, this, this is the thing, um, I was gonna say that I'd be willing to do this down the line, but if, if someone made like, one of those tier listings with all the people we've covered, um, It'll be interesting to see how it all stacks up, but this guy's probably pretty bad, right? Out of all the videos we've covered. Yeah. It's definitely was... a bad video. Not a very not a very interesting um attempt to defend it either. Well, I, I yeah, I'm not even including that part. I'm just going from the takes in the video a uh, probably top five worst takes of like EFAP. Probably. There were some weird ones in there. Um the fact that robbers steal shit means they need it. That in reference to. Hmm. What is that in reference to? I don't actually think I know. Oh, it was from Ra, and Ra's in chat. Ra, what did that mean? Tell yeah. Me, tell me the truth, sir. Is that like a bike cuck thing? <laughs> Robot head should comment more. Love his incredulously amused voice. Also, Rag's bane impression busts me up. Huh. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not sure. I might have. I can't remember, though. Oh, Ra's saying it's the fact that he said women need propaganda means there's a discrepancy. Implying that if someone's stealing something, then hey, they need that something. I follow. Um, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Robot Head was having trouble with his microphone a couple of times, and um, I think. There was probably a couple of times where, like, being five people make, makes it tough for some people to jump in. I know that I was trying to basically leave the um, the debate part to uh, less people to make him feel like less of a pylon, if you will. But some of those things I just had to get, like, questions in, you know? Some of those takes I just needed to there are some weird ones. get some answers. Um, the fact that grapists need to grape people means there's a need for them to grape people. I suppose you could extend this, the, the propaganda thing, very far. The fact people need to steal cars means there's a disparity because they don't have cars, so they need to steal them because they need it. If women love Star Wars, why do they leave when they see my Empire Strikes Back bedsheets? I don't know, man. That's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, Anto Bite could have been about the military-industrial complex, Rip Eisenhower, but no, they went full Marxist. Well, this is the thing, um... The criticism is so threadbare. You profit off creating weapons that are assisting wars. That's bad. Like, oh. There are films that, or at least stories that tackle that in a much more um, detailed way and explore the, the whys and hows and where the faults lie and what kind of... Um, participation each person involved has, instead of just going, that person's rich because they sold a gun to somebody, boo! Anyway. As if it's just that simple. <laughs> yeah. Selling weapons is good. Emmy for drama directing Game of Thrones season 8 all episodes, lost. 
Oh, did I thought that they'd won for one of the directing ones. I thought Fringy mentioned that, did they not? I'm assuming they didn't from uh, that super chat. Again, I'm happy for them to not get that. Yeah, Emmy for Outstanding Drama Game of Thrones Season 8 won. It's just, like I said, man, outstanding could be a lot of things. Uh, when I stab like, hobos... It's outstanding over there with all the other shitty ones. When I stab hobos in the street, axe colleagues in the head in my apartment, and throw chainsaws onto the heads of whores from atop stairwells, I'm gonna tell them all I did it because of this guy's video. You're a strange man, Ra. Very strange man. Well, you're taking someone down with you. He's a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Stuff, His yeah. arguments are plastic because he's a spastic. <laughs> Not hit that one before. Uh, that last one was a Patrick Bateman reference to Christopher Nolan's serial killer movies. Oh yeah, I, I caught that. Um, the it's it's an it's an interesting film, no doubt. Um, American Psycho is one of those ones where most people probably benefit from watching it in terms of exploring uh, the, 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 the psychopath that is Christian Bale. Also, you said reference to Christopher Nolan's serial killer movies. Has Christopher Nolan made any serial killer movies? Might be wrong on that. I can't remember. Billy ones? I don't know. Either way. I went to get food. Oh, wait. There you go. This was the one I read out of order, by the way. Uh, I went to oh. get food. You're still going. That's, that, I should have read that in now. I've, I've caught up I, that I think this... I don't think this person understands the, the, the nature of the length of EFAP. Of course we're still going after you've returned from eating. You should be shocked if it was otherwise. True. Based season 8, best season reaffirmed once again. Chernobyl is trash after episode 2. All the great acting from Skarsgård and What? Harris. Couldn't save the garbage writing in a million years. Really? I don't. This is the thing. If if there is garbage writing, I'd have to be presented it because I I didn't see it. Um, if it's about like the yeah. realism, there may be elements of it that I'm completely unaware of. But it seemed really solid to me. Yeah, man, you're gonna have to. Yeah, because I I adored Chernobyl, which is not a statement you'd expect to make. It isn't. No, uh, typically most people did not enjoy the event of Chernobyl, but they made a TV show oh. that was pretty awesome. So. Oh yeah, the, the TV show is fantastic, but I also enjoy the fact that we got a lot of dead comedy. Just a second. Just oh, you should have said plus. that to, uh, to the guest we had. Instead of the Holocaust, you should have said, should people enjoy Chernobyl? And then wait for him to be like, what, the TV show? <laughs> You're like, no, the event. Yeah, it's like, no, no, of course not. Um, I'm about an that hour behind and I saw dead, chat though. explode about a Game of Thrones Emmy, I think. I don't know, but I'll find out when I get there. More importantly, I just beat Ori in the Blind Forest because Wolf said it was awesome. Good. Ori in the Blind Forest is awesome. Glad you beat it, because that probably means you liked it. Uh, Hollywood is as incestuous as the royalty in Game of Thrones. That's very possible. Screw Amelia Clark, laugh my ass off. Self insert for pit mommies, wine aunts, and woke roasties everywhere. Her, her wabendi, my rightful throne. I mean, I still think, like, I'm not, I don't know if that's criticism of the character or her acting, but I thought she did pretty well acting wise in, in the final season. Uh, he committed the fallacy fallacy. What a massive. Yeah, the fallacy fallacy is when reference a fallacy and dismiss every argument with it, as opposed to you should be dismissing the relevant one. I can't remember. This subversive mother effer being open to conversation, laugh my ass off, I'm not having a conversation with you. Hajuk, I'm beating you until I can stuff you inside a Funko Pop. You said that already, Ra. You gotta, you gotta swap it up. You can't be, keep stuffing people into Funko Pop boxes and throwing them off rooftops. Otherwise, people are going to accuse you of being boring. You can't have that. Oh, no. I like Shadowversity. His and Nidrotic's cases against MCU Spider-Man, despite not being very well expressed, changed my mind. So that's great. But that being said, he tends to be a bit long-winded and seems unaware of how he inappropriately dominates the conversation at times. I mean, uh, you could say that about any of us, honestly. A lot of us will go on what you could call a tangent or a rant or a, an explanation of, of a particular side, and EFAP is the format for that. We want 
literally everything to take as long as it needs to take. And um, if Shad is explaining something, um, I, I literally wouldn't mind him taking an hour. I'll just listen to what he has to say. I'll just be like, mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, you know, like I said, it, he's no more guilty of, like, running on with something that I think that I am as well. Like, I don't... I think it happens. It's fine. Do you think we just go on and on and on and just don't stop? Um, hey, you can't beat some spaghetti bolognese. True. When will, the, when will we end this charade? When will we finally say that enough is enough and quit this and go home to our Ooh. families? Dad? Your children. When? When? Don't you think we've just gone on long enough? Child Ren. Child Ren. Child Kylo Ren. Yep. Child Kylo Ren. Muller, I might hate this guy more than Patrick Willems. I mean, oh no. You know, Patrick Willems would. Can you imagine Patrick Willems coming on EFAP? Holy shit, that'd be so funny. You guys are watching movies wrong. I just feel like I can't believe you're here. Land. It's very strange. Very strange indeed. Uh, FKM this guy. Mundane Matt. Adam Conover. I don't know. Is that a question? Isn't that the Adam ruins everything guy? I don't know. I think and he is. Are you, is this guy asking to have them as guests? Mundane Matt and Adam Conover? Or? I can't imagine why Mundane Matt would be guesting on you, Fat Blader. Like... <laughs> What format do you think, or what, what, what envir uh, scenario do you think he'd come on EFAB for? Adam Conover? No, Mundane Matt. <laughs> what would I have him come on for? Like, I was trying to say, like, what reason would he come on to EFAB for? I'd be like, I don't know. Oh, Why? just some, some little, some, just some pathetic attempt at clawing his way back up into good graces, but he'd fuck. I was going to say, like, I can't even imagine picking his brain on anything. <laughs> like, it would just be a strange experience. Uh, yes, Shadowverse Steam makes great points, definitely. Yes. Uh, yeah, damn, I work tomorrow. Hope y'all are still live then. Well, uh, it'll be up on Moolah as soon as possible. That at least. Uh, I hate him so much, not even the Don will be able to pull me off this mewling soy guzzler once I chimp out and start going unga bunga on him. Okay, I take it back. You've been very creative, Ra. Uh, the Bible is a sword-like weapon. That's, that's, uh, that's like your opinion. One of the things that annoys me is that the big laser in TLJ is referred to as miniaturized Death Star tech. Then it's just a big heat laser. It is nothing like the Death Star laser. Did they not watch the OT? No, they probably actually didn't. <laughs> I was gonna no, say, like, I, I don't actually think know. that they did. Because Let me turn off my AC. If I, if, if I reference Death Star to uh, a lot of people who haven't seen the OT in more than a decade even, they probably still know what it is, but they also, if, if I showed like a consistent laser firing at a wall and said, uh, that's made of Death Star stuff, they'd probably be like, huh. Eh. Okay. Like, oh yeah, it's a red laser, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, and... It, it's a laser, go boom. That's interesting though, because I don't even think I brought that up in my TLJ stuff, that yeah, it's... Strange to call it Death Star tech when it doesn't operate at all like a Death Star. But I suppose they literally just mean laser. Look, laser. That one's a laser. That one's a laser. Okay. There you go. Um, hi, Dog Wizard. Dog Wizard? Ooh. Take the title, right? We're moving up the world. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready for this, but I mean, you know. Oh, I've... I've oh, I'm a wizard, Rags. <laughs> You're a wizard, doggo. Australia equals the deep fake continent created by the CIA. Have you ever seen Australia and reality in the same room? I haven't. Dad, people like Manichism. Manichinism? People like Manichinism. It's easier to make enemies out of people you disagree with than to try and see their perspectives and argue properly. Well, they certainly can't argue. Like, these people are never really able to articulate their points very well. Mola, to be a, thoughts a on Doomcock's report about Captain Marvel? MCU was my childhood, but watching it start to burn after going SJW does put a smile on my face. So, all I know about this is that Doomcock 
a, a, a source from Doomcock has said that Disney are now very concerned about the, the, the potential of Captain Marvel when she has no Spider-Man to help get her to be more likable. Spider-Man being booted is making them worry that Captain Marvel maybe isn't this and focus on or something like that. I think that's what his source said. Um, and that the MCU are not sure what they're doing right now with Captain Marvel. They're not sure. To me, I'd just be like, oh, they finally realized that that is the case. It's not a matter of whether or not you think that's the case. That is the case. She's a disaster of a character, so good luck with that. Again, I'll be curious to see how they deal with her. They try and make more movies for her. How they try and make her a leader. It's gonna. I say that I'm, even though I like yeah, the MCU. I, I think that she is just the harbinger of terrible things to come. Yeah. Uh, get Craig Neon and Geeky Sparkles from Clownfish TV on EFAP. I think people have mentioned Clownfish TV before. Um, again, we're on board with the, most guests. We'll just have to get around. To the name is familiar. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not familiar with their work, but... Oh, maybe. If by men you mean insecure man babies, then yeah. Um, he did seem to want to specify that whenever he said men, he was talking about a specific set of people he spoke to that seemed to be from what he even referred to himself as troll accounts. I found that interesting when you said... Yeah. This are their trolls, he was pretty... and he was like, maybe not. Yeah, he was. He was pretty. Yeah, he was. He pretty much said, "Oh yeah, it, uh, a lot of them are troll accounts." I was like, "Oh, so you know that a lot of them are troll accounts? So why do you even?" You know, yeah. it's just one of those things where you just like, "Oh, this is just you." Well, that was like three times in that he said something, and I'm like, "Oh, you just said, but but, but no, okay." I'm just going by what you say, mate. I'm just I'm just listening to your words. So I'm just I'm just listening. I think, I I think he acknowledged that as well, because he said at the end, it's like, you were holding my feet to the fire with, like, the quotes we're just, I used. Because remember I mean, when he just, was like, have you got a quote of me saying this thing at one point? And I was just like, oh, man, he seems so defeated. He was like, have I said this stupid thing? <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, is this, are you guys talking about another tweet that I said? It's like, I, does that matter? At this point, just defend it. Or just agree with it or disagree with it. And... I mean, just you know, sometimes it's okay to just in the moment. Well, even in even the star thing, bro. Should they do it? He didn't even. He gave the most pathetic answer to it. It's like, well, if it makes money, they should. He had like, a couple really? of meandering answers, and there were people in chat being like, "You need to stop him from doing it." And it's like you have to. There is a certain amount of etiquette sometimes where we can't do that every single time. Every time he tries to speak, and he immediately starts off at a, like, we got a different direction. I'll and like, I stop. stopped him once. Yeah, dead, like, well, I, I know where this is going. He's like, no, 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 let me. We'll see. He's like, yep, it went exactly where I thought it was going to go. And now we got to re-ask the question again. Yeah. And, this is the and thing. he didn't even really answer it. If we're going to have people on to talk about their perspective, we're going to have to let him talk, even if the answer isn't anything like what we were looking for sometimes. And then um, after his answer, we can be like, as I did like three times, like, yeah, answer the question and all that. Yeah, and I think I think we did try and point that out a bunch of times. We're just like, this is a strange way to avoid the question. You didn't really answer the question there, um, did you? But he did come on. I do want to uh, maintain that that was that was pretty awesome of him to do because most won't, and I want to encourage that more. Discussion good. Ignore and yeah. block bad. If if people are being very timid and non-committal in a lot of their answers. You can't just go full blast on them. They just won't know. They just won't know how to fucking deal with it, and they'll leave. And then it just, it isn't going to help. I mean, some sometimes you got to read the room, you know. Hmm. Um, Aussies are the Texans of Brits, but weaker. I've heard that said before. The Aussies are the Texans of Texans of Brits. Iron Man three better than mundane Matt. I agree. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, why would that have been a thing that. Why did Monday Matt come up twice? Did we mention Why him did at he all? come up? Why did he just <laughs> get pulled up out of where? Um, what do you guys think about the Netflix show Disenchantment? I watched one episode and I didn't like it, so I didn't continue it. I'm a huge fan of OG Simpsons and Futurama. So I was like, Disenchantment? Also, uh, CJ has a video on Disenchantment. 
And funnily enough, yeah, it was one I of the first that. videos I watched from him, and I was like, ooh, what he said, um, he says something in the video like, I'm gonna try and explain the objective flaws of this show. I was like, oh shit! Yay! <laughs> Molly, you're definitely on all the lists by now, so please, make plans to flee the Eurocuck Union before they abduct you and throw you into the Gulag. I'll be- Hopefully you'll fine. be out, eventually. Yeah, I mean- One of these days, will be free. They won't be able to put me in a Gulag if, if we're all independent and stuff, right? Right? Gulags yeah, you'll just right? go straight to the UK Gulags, because oh, you no. made a bad tweet. But at least there'll be UK Gulags, not EU Gulags. I am making a functioning EFAP monopoly when the card game is done. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. We could play that. Oh, but if it's like a live, like if it's yeah, a physical, say, how thing. would we do that? I guess now, if you if you were to give us if you were to give us like an overlay that we could put over the actual game, maybe, and let us have free control of the pieces, then we could pretty much do whatever rules we wanted. You like if we all had like a control monopoly? over everything. Yeah, like um. Like, if we were just able to move pieces around and we could control the numbers in our bank account, then we could we could play the game with whatever rules we wanted. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure how that would work exactly, because I, I assume the tabletop simulator game is capable of being modded, right? Have your own game? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we could do that. Uh, yay, EFAP having a tumbler of rhino milk whilst working late after a long afternoon of playing Dead Cells. Also, hi, Mola. Hello! Yeah, it's 2.30. It's I, late. It's 8.28 a.m. for me now. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yay, EFAP having a tumbler of... Oh, wait, I read that one already. Also, hi, Mola. Hello, Shad. Hello. Give us some SA4 detail. Oh, is that the, um... Well, I, I'll just... I'll save it so answer that himself in whatever way he wishes. Um, Leaf here. Do you Eurofags wish you had guns like rags? What's your favorite? Oh, well, I guess I'm the only person who can answer that now. Um, yeah, what's your favorite? Well, I mean, I can still have a favorite even if I can't use any of them. <laughs> Going strictly from, like, my knowledge from video games, it would probably be... Um, I don't know, though. I don't think I do have a favorite. I like the, like, six-shooter revolver-style things. They just, they have a cool factor. Yeah. Yeah, Very man. superficial reason, but... Um... Like... Guns from games that I gravitate towards. Whenever I play, like, uh, FPS games, I typically revolve towards rifles. Um... But I don't think that means much. And, um, do I wish we had guns? I mean, if I had, like, a, some form of a guarantee that it would improve things, sure. I don't think that, um, is, I, I, like, because I'm, I'm pretty much of the perspective that uh, banning all guns everywhere is probably not going to solve crazy murderers. But, like, are you asking if, if would I be, would I, do I think that, like, Britain should be able to legalize it and stuff? It'd be, like, it'd be interesting. It probably should be a slow, a slow process because just suddenly introducing, you know, that kind of thing might have, you know, bad repercussions. So, uh, I got my yeah. Armor Light Fifteen today. Do you know what that is? Done I do. Well, a AR stands for Armor Light Rifle, so he's probably referring to an AR Fifteen. Ah. In which case, uh, fine, fine guns. I've got two, and I probably will end up with more. Rags is based. I miss Wolf. MDE never dies. MDE. I mean, that's not to do with guns. MDE? Uh, I don't know. What, what was the con? Say that one more time. Well, it says Rags is based. I miss Wolf. MDE never dies. MDE never dies. Uh, I'll keep an eye on chat, see if anyone that would line up with it. Lib said million yeah. dollar extreme. Million dollar, million dollar extreme. I don't know what that is either. I don't know what. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh. 
I love that I have more EFAP to watch, but hate that I have more to catch up on because I'm back at 48, you massive long man. You're also an orphan. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. That bone density related result. Um, there, was, there was some people who posted on the subreddit, like, um, like I'm a new fan of EFAP. Do I have to watch all the episodes to get the new ones? And I can't believe we've made something that that's a question. Like, people are like, do I need to watch the older seasons in order to understand the character development in the new seasons? That sort of thing. Uh, yeah, there's people who are, like, trying to point out the episodes that have the most significant meme developments, I think. Or just ones that, um, fun as shit happen, so. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, doing a meme vid, can you say, I am Mauler, in a very dramatic way? You you looking for, like... The Iron Man one. Assuming it's gonna be when he snaps. He does the whole breath thing, so he's like... I... am... Iron Man. Um, do you see that they, they recorded that You can't that use that. Long? You can't use that because you said Iron Man instead of Mahler. Oh, I wasn't actually doing my one yet. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, pass first. The, uh... Like, there's a video where he does multiple takes of that, and it's like... Uh, also that it came the like a uh, extra filming shit like that wasn't it originally in the script and it's funny because of how it seems like it obviously would have been like do you know that the original was he says i am inevitable and then he just snaps wow that seems like the really? perfect slot for yeah and like um i think it was their sound designer or somebody who suggested they should have him say i am i am how did that not oh of course that's better <laughs> it's just like that seems perfect Oh, man. Um, Jack Saint tried to boot Rags off EFAP, but since Joe is the pro made Jay the e manager to keep him on during a potential debate that never happened. Is that the origins of uh, Jay being manager? Because I, we would have never had me not be on. That's the thing. Like, it was never, never going to happen. The idea that you could just kick off one of the hosts is... Yeah, no. It's not happening. That wasn't ever going to be a thing that ever happened. Yeah, and not to mention, we were like... There's not even, you know, like, say, for example, if you had, like, a really awkward uh, or, or back-and-forth history with, like, loads of bad blood, it would be like, oh, well, there's something to discuss there, but literally no reason. They were just like, oh, do it, rags. Like, you don't have to do yeah, better than that. Yeah, they were just like, it, we, we, know, we know why they won't. But there was no way that we were going to, yeah, it's just, come on. Um, I guess I should say, I am Mauler. Even though that sounds kind of really gay, but like, in a good way, like objectively gay. You know? I yeah. take rags aside. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I give that a moment to kind of process, and I, I think that, yeah, I think it works. I think you're good. I think that'll, this should be a keeper. This should be a keeper. Yeah, it's for metal, damn my dyslexitism. Oh yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, did you get hooked up with a bonsai? Saves that for him. Bonsai is a type of weapon, right? A bonsai, it's kind of tree. Yeah, but um, is it the name given to a... the kind of... Or am I thinking... Or is he actually getting a tree? I... All I know <laughs> is that... I just know that bonsai is a... It's a little tree, and you could trim them, and they're supposed to be all... You get all feng shui with your bonsai bushes. You Does know. it help keep a peaceful mind? I think it's supposed to be something like that. Something about, I don't know, maybe it's just calming and everything fits together and everything has its place and it's, it's feng shui. As people who have expressed... As people who have experienced discussing, criticizing, and explaining various topics... What would you say are the most important things to focus on when making those kinds of videos? Say one more time, just so I gather it all. As people who have experienced discussing, criticizing, and explaining various topics, what would you say are the most important things to, def to focus on when making those kinds of videos? I just say, make sure that you're not contradictory, and make sure that your logic... Um, when driven to its natural conclusions, kind of checks out. Um, just always be, yeah, I guess just be, just be consistent. Just have good, valid arguments and 
clearly, you know, clear structures to the things that you're saying. Accurate, don't, don't be ambiguous or messy. Thorough. Yeah. Yes. They'll, they'll lead you to a good place, typically. And as you're, as you're saying it out loud, as you're doing all that stuff, you know, try to poke holes into it. Always try to do like a, always have a little devil's advocate in your head, you know. Just says goodbye, Rags. Oh, goodbye. Happy Rhino Day, you massives. Happy Rhino Day. Happy Rhino Day. Hey, Fringle, I really like your brown table video. I'm sure he would appreciate that. Um, I think the helicopter lightsaber is a lot more... Have you seen that? Helicopter? One no, from, I haven't. Um, I think, is it Rebels? It's either Rebels or the Clone Wars. I think it's Rebels, but... They have like a circle sort of device. A lightsaber comes out of each end of it, and it can spin around and let them fly. Oh my god, are you fucking with me? <laughs> it's pretty silly, and I'd love it if they keep, like if they put what? it to episode nine. Was... How does it? How does it provide lift? The force. <laughs> how do you like? You can't just spin four things and expect it to zoom upwards. Um. I don't know if someone in chat might have a, like a, a, a law answer, or if it's absolute rubbish. <laughs> like, I don't... like are like is are the are the blades of the lightsaber like tilted like fans so they can provide lift upwards? Where does the power come from? I just so many. That's so fucking stupid. That's like a joke. That's like a joke somebody would do. That's like a Star Wars parody thing. I feel bad that you didn't know about that because that's been around for a long time now. And uh, it's just so silly. But this is the thing, it's in Rebels, and a lot of people do not like Rebels. And I haven't seen Rebels, so it's just like blissfully yeah. out of my mind. I don't know anything about Rebels, yeah. I, I know, I'm, also, I'm not Everybody's Rebel just saying aware. it's actually rubbish, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually rubbish. Well, I'm glad that we have confirmation. We've got confirmation. As a female fan, I despise new Star Wars, but okay, I guess I don't count to this guy because I'm not the right kind of woman. Apparently he didn't speak to um I guess no. those women. Or at least they were much more reasonable. Um partly a joke equals close to infinity. What? Okay, someone else said that Rebels is time travel canon. Yeah, I saw that thing from Rebels where they're like, time travel. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's uh let's tap the brakes there. Uh uh maybe slow this uh slow this crazy train down for a little so Archangel said, partly a joke is is equal to close to infinity. The reason why I wouldn't agree with that is because, let's say, a friend of yours is uh, getting a little drunk, maybe a bit too much, and you go, hey man, <laughs> calm down a little bit. And then they're like, like whoa dude, like, what, where are you coming from with this? And she's like, okay, I, I was just sort of kidding, just take it easy. Like, um, the idea that you can say something and you it from a place where it's like coming from a sort of serious place but you also are okay with it coming across as a, like a light criticism you're partly joking like close to infinity makes no sense but partly a joke i can see that being applicable in certain scenarios when you say like if i say an action rags is committing is wrong and then i go i was partly joking you're like so were you saying it's wrong or not like it doesn't make sense but um and partly joke about other things, I think, in certain scenarios. Um, I knew I wasn't the only one who heard it in its new Angel of the Morning playing. Also, your joke. Sorry, I, 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 I knew I wasn't the only one who heard it. It. Oh, it. Right. If you capitalize it, I'd be able to recognize it. I got totally confused. <laughs> um, in it too. Yeah, they play Angel of the Morning for like two seconds. It's bizarre. Um. Thing. Also, you're joking on the women's superiority thing, right? I am not 100% on which line, but if it sounded ridiculous, then probably yeah. Hi, Rags. Hello. And also, Mola. Hello. Also, Boo. Uh, I would like to say Yuka's not that bad. Alright, cool. Two dollars for you massives. Thanks for the vids. No problemo. Uh, Rags, would you mind saying for a meme, I'm on a pilgrimage and bigidious trail? Interesting phrase. <laughs> I need to say, 
I'm on a pilgrimage. I'm on a pilgrimage. And what is the what is the second one? Bigidious Trail. Bigidious Trail. Bigidious Trail. I guess I guess I, I got to think of the context in which we would say. Is it like you're reading Bigidious a sign? Trail. Like Maybe. The tr Maybe Bigidious I look at the trail. sign and you're like, oh, Bigidious Trail. Paula, thanks for all you do. By the way, chat member, when Epstein died in uh, Fed custody, right before testifying about an international pedo blackmail ring run by Maz Ozad, and then Kevin Spacey's accused of randomly died too. Ha ha he he poo poo. I think he's saying that. <laughs> the conspiracy around things ha -ha, seem very he -he. odd in relation to all that, do they not? Um. Lots of weird some shenanigans going on. At Mola, while your season 8 episode 3 rage was definitely unbridled, episode 4 was bridled, episode 5 was certainly thoughtfully considered. I love them all. Yeah, I guess progression became... The longer something takes, the more... the less emotional I suppose it becomes. Because yeah, I think... People see the episode 3 rage that I did as I'm more angry than I am with TLJ almost. It's interesting that, uh... That works. I know, but I was definitely pissed off in the um what they did with Game of Thrones. I love them all. Best wishes to Wolf and hi Rags. Hello. Uh, good job, Shad, on asking Brandon about TLJ. Save that. I now have six things for Ra as Shad to hear about. That's did you just okay? Right. Rags, fill me yeah. full of your hunk spunk. Hunk spunk. <laughs> Make me tight I as like a that. tick. A human water skin of doggo cum. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, Dale. Your video sucked, but hopefully you're a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, suspicious on whether this is actually Dale. I think it was. I think it was Dale, but I could get being suspicious at the beginning. I, I actually yeah. was. When he had like this really terrible microphone, I was like, uh-oh, did I just add some random person called Dale? <laughs> but, um, yeah, he seemed to recognize most of everything we are talking about. Um, I want Rags, Robot Head, and Doomcock, real voice, to narrate my life. Maybe you can put that out, get him to record a bazillion phrases, and then put them into some kind of AI. Did it with Jordan Peterson, right? And then he took a shit. <laughs> Dale's he decided video. to have himself a wank before bed. It went well. But you'd have variants like this one. Not so. Probably not the best idea. He would have to wank harder to get any results. Hey, that's like a, kind of like a cheat guide. You listen to your, the person narrating your life, like tips. And then you get really worried when he says something like, he was not prepared for what would happen next. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> what is Little it? Little did he know this would be one of the most memorable wanks of his life. Ooh. And then it turns out for really bad reasons. Um, yeah. He ripped his dick oh, clean no. off. Oh no. <sighs> Dale's new video, Men Are Ruining Microphones. Did oh, get no. it fixed, so maybe men are yeah. fixing my. Yeah, we're also the ones building them, so I think we have a bit of a. Oh, boo hoo, they're being mean to the holes. The holes? Oh, are you talking about women? <laughs> Roz referring to women as holes. <laughs> wow. Man. Men did ruin Star Wars. Their names? JJ and Ryan. Oh, like shit. It. Get Fox Scrub. Stupid holes. Either get into the Slave Layer costume <laughs> or get out of my Star Wars. Laugh my ass off. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, Shad, what's better at deflecting? This guy or a good old-fashioned shield? <laughs> That's not bad. I like it. It's funny. Yeah, it's deflecting. Hashtag never believe women. <laughs> what the... All right, Ra. <laughs> <clears throat> Dale, what would you tell the women who dislike Disney Star Wars, more particularly TLJ? I feel like I'm being preached to in these new movies. I think if he were here, he would have said they're absolutely allowed to dislike them, but even TLJ, for whatever reasons they have. This is, a, I was trying to say, like that's why I didn't want to bring on that Star Wars girl, to have her like make several arguments against TLJ, just to have him be like, 
That's fair. That's okay. I appreciate that. Like, if he had maintained that women enjoy Star Wars or something, uh, uh, it maybe would have been a better idea. But he didn't, he didn't seem to be the guy in that video. Um, come a long way since then, perhaps. Maybe. Dale, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Rags, what high-end mouse do you recommend? G600? Well, I don't know. I don't, that's the thing. I don't know if I'd call it high end because it's only like thirty five bucks or so. But that's the one I'm using right now, and I've got a, I got a spare just in case, and I really like them. Hmm. Mola, if Disney offered you five million dollars to give Episode Nine a glowing review, would you take it? No. And uh, you might be like, really? Why not? That would like set you for life as well as many of your friends and family. I'd be like, uh, probably, but, um, the, the way it would work, it's like, I'd have to completely ruin integrity-wise, because I'm assuming the whole point of this question, I would have to be doing it in a very unironic way, so making that video would be a nightmare, because I'd have to, like, assuming that the, the, the film isn't very good, and then to, like, defend that position... And it would totally kill my channel because I would have to make so many bad arguments. I'd probably kill a lot of my relationships. So yeah, I just uh, I, and I wouldn't be comfortable with myself. And you'd be like, "Why did you do it for money?" It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if someone I know isn't under life essential cancer treatment, it'd be a pretty tough sell. Yeah, I was gonna say there might pretty be tough. an exception to make. The only thing that could convince me is if you were like one hundred percent like this money is clean cut provided no taxes and it's, it's it's legal and that you can filter it out to all these different people care about yeah can i do trouble. anything i want with it it's like hmm, because I mean, ultimately you, like you could do a lot of good with five i might even make a video after that would be like i did it for these reasons and you know but like i'm assuming there would be a stipulation that i wouldn't be able to do that i don't know interesting question though I survived Movie Bob, Quinton, Jack Saint, Eric Taxon, Patrick Willems, Massive Anderson, Brown Table, yet this dude makes me tap out for the night. Can someone edit Brown Table's face on Homelander's body? Because he literally said that he would eye laser people to death over perceived slights. Could easily make that meme video, especially with certain scenes from. Uh, just when I think I can't stand Rags' anecdotes about gay sex anymore, he goes unga on intellectually slippery guests and brutally knifes them with the quickest, sharpest arguments. Based. That's from Ra. Apparently he oh, likes he liked well. what you did in the debate. There you go. Well, I, and I, I, I thought I heard that I was being too soft, but I'm, I'm glad. Some, I mean, some people, I you think, just I gotta, we some soft. people, you... Dude. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we all kind of were, but it's probably because, you know, it's because of his disposition. I think you could actually hear it in a lot of the ways we were saying things, that me, you, and Shad started to back off a little bit, because it was kind of like... I don't feel bad, you know? Which I shouldn't <laughs> yeah. have to feel bad for, like, a grown man in a Discord call, but, you know, it was like, uh... Especially compared to, like, some of the other debates we've had on this channel. <laughs> it's been different. Um, anyway, become what you must. Become the warrior of longness. Uh, for what that's referencing. Um, one sec. Okay. Well, while you're gone, chat and I will just. Uh, we got rags equals Dennis Reynolds. I don't know who that is. I hope it's a nice person. I hope he's handsome. He's got a big ass dick. Let's see. What we got okay. I will order that then. Thanks, Rags. Cheers. Oh yeah, I really like the G six hundred. One thing that's great about it is I really like the twelve buttons on the side. Very very helpful in games. But it also has that third mouse click button on the top for your ring finger. That has spoiled me, and it will spoil you too. That shit has come in handy. It's just so useful. The whole thing is useful. This mouse has spoiled me for other mice. So I would absolutely recommend the G600. Love it. I was saying I was brought uh, to the gulag. That's where were you? Well, we... we uh, uh, Rags, what is the hour on your end? It is 2.50 uh, a.m. 
And I have I woke up and I was in a car ride driving home. And once I got home, I pretty much hopped on EFAP. So I'm hungry. Uh, he'll probably leave by the time you read this, but please tell Shad that just like Theo, he's based and God bless his fam and the Shadlets. On your mate. The Shadlets. Sure, he appreciates that. The Shiglet. The Shiglets. Um, at Muller, have you seen The Loved Ones? Check your Discord for the link. Please watch with Wolf and Rags. I think you'll love it. It's, it's terrifying properties. Uh, is it a, a TV show? Or? It's got terrifying properties. Is it a food? It has terrifying properties? What about that? Man, I, I'm not sure. An eye, for the eye, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. No, it doesn't, because there's going to be one guy left with one eye. Because he That's needs true. to have an eye to be able to poke out the last other eye. Very true. Have you seen Seven, seven Psychopaths, Frank? I have not seen Seven Psychopaths. That, uh... I saw Jurassic Park, though. <laughs> what I just said is actually... It's very funny. Anyway, uh, Ret Them Fight. That is a reference to Gojira. Ret Them Fight? You don't get to vilify a whole group and chicken out when people directly confront the base of your argument. Be a man, you wimp. Well, Kinda, he said I wish. it to be incendiary, I believe. Yeah, I said it to be incendiary, and it wasn't true, and I don't mean it, but I... It's like, really? You don't mean it? Because your whole video implied that you kinda did. Just kinda. Just sorta kinda. Happy birthday, Shad. So glad you're not dead, but would have been interesting to see the rise of Shadlings to seek revenge on Spooderman. <laughs> Spooder. <laughs> How do you not watch Always Sunny Rags? I just don't watch a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather play games than watch shows. This is the most embarrassed I've ever been for another person. Dear aliens who want to help us evolve, I am sorry. Hashtag not my Dale. <laughs> Heck, not my Dale. Um, I came here from RK Outpost. You're cool to watch. RK Outpost? Mm, I don't know. Is that a content creator or a channel or a website? I, I, I really don't. I've been catching up on previous EFAP episodes and visiting the EFAP website. I have come to the conclusion that Rags is the best guest. Mahalo Uloa. Oh, there you go, Rags. You're the Ma best guest. Oh, I'm the best guest. And we've had many great guests. To be the Apex guest is, uh... Mm. I like it. I like it. Shad slash Fringy, when will Ranola Riot's 2 Electric Boogaloo happen? We'll save that question. I don't know if it's serious or a meme, but either way... A nice, chonky stream. Always satisfying to hear. Good. Hail, Mola, oh. shout out my channel, please. The Dire Wolf TV has what looks to be a ball for a head with one of them graduation caps on the top of it. Dire Wolf TV. Uh, Re, what you said about going into the lion's den and arguing with many people at once, I think the reason that people you cover genuinely don't like that is because they're usually people who don't argue with points but rely on feels, sophistry, crowd appeasement, etc. That's the framework, discourse, whatever in which they operate. And in that framework, strength always lies in numbers, not arguments. I actually think that's a pretty good point. And that's from Ra, by the way. <laughs> like, uh, when you have ten people saying something that's not substantiated, it doesn't matter. Because ten people have said it's or Yeah. True. And once, and once you... I mean, if you formulate your, your whole stance, your whole argument, your whole point on, you know, feelings and things like that, once someone says, I don't care, it's like, what do you have? You're just, you're done. Um, interview with Amelia Clark at the Emmys, Guy asked how she felt about the backlash. She said it was flattering how much the fans care about how the characters should have behaved based on previous seasons. It's a nice thing to say. She, um... I know for a fact that she doesn't want to say something along the lines of the fans need to calm down or the fans need to blah 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 because of the fact that her uh, she was over the moon with how free folk the subreddit set up a load of donations to her charity. 
um, because they, they wanted something good to come out of the fact that Season 8 was such a disaster, and I think she was aware of that connection, and so she's probably like, these aren't bad people, they just got something fucking nightmare for them to watch, so. Um, and I know for a fact that she didn't think that what happened to Daenerys was good. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, we know she was she was drinking and everything. I don't blame her at all. I mean, the same way. I'm like, this is the person that I've spent this with. This is what happened. What? Th what? Just like this? That was quick. Um. Yeah, if there's a clip for uh for that, I'll probably see it eventually. I'll make the rounds if it's something significant. But if not. You know, it's about space wizards for women you get to look at. For the <gasps> ultimate like piece of media there. Um, please upload this later, I only just woke up. Absolutely. We haven't covered anything that's copyrightable, so this will absolutely be going. Uh, EFAP in your house, bitch. You hear that shit? You punk ass essayists are going down, like way down, dead down. So down you ain't gonna know which way is up. Your That's ass down. is gonna be crying to your skank ass queen. Oh, Planky, don't let the long man review us. Fuck you, we gonna review your Planky ass. Woo. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> review your Planky ass. It uh, is rather Planky. Game of Thrones won best drama because of the drama from Backlash, not the actual show. <laughs> 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 That's fair. Uh, uh, also, it's a bit silly to criticize Doctor Strange, a movie for Doctor Wizards. Yes. Uh, it's a silly movie for Doctor Wizards. With Doctor Wizards. Y'all forget Spider-Man coming out is an EFAP meme. Oh, I mean... That's one of the most commonly mentioned memes. I don't think we would have forgotten. If it sounded like we took it seriously, we were probably in on a meme. Uh, an in-depth meme. Uh, Incredible Hulk is the most underrated MCU movie. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, because I, I did rewatch it for the MCU, and that movie is uh, the height of meh. Kind of like Thor two. Maybe. Are massives people? They're a kind of people. The massive kind. Get some rest, you lovely lads. Oh, soon, soon, sir, soon. Mola, what yeah, project hopefully are you, soon. What project are you currently working on? So, I have so. created six videos for, e, for, for, for the Mola channel. Two of them came out. One of them was, I think, me, Frags, and... Frags? Wow. Me, frags. Fringy, and Wolf looking at three trailers and uh, the highlights of Metal Stream. We still got me, Rags, and Fringy checking out the Lady in the Tramp trailer. Then I've got the debate between me and Wolf and Just Right. The debate between me and Wolf and that guy. I forget his name. The EFAP movies for Doom. EFAP movies for Fellowship of the Ring. And I'm still needing to edit the next two. And there's another one that is supposed to get partially secret. I don't know if he wants it to be a secret, but it's to do with Jay. Um, but I've edited up my side of it. He needs to just do something on releasing a video, but it's it's a Moolah reaction mini thing. Rags probably knows what I'm talking about. Sex Yay! Demon, Sex Demon, you know? Oh, I love Sex Demon. Sex Demon Alien. Um, I don't think I don't think Jay actually wants it to be a secret. I'm just gonna be careful to make sure I don't say it if he wanted it to be. Anyway, I've just been making all of them, and there's a couple more I want to make. Um, once they're done. I'm gonna get started on my next big project, so I need like another week or two, but um, they'll be coming out every Wednesday, I think, until they're all out, and it's just more supplementary content for EFAP, and it's honestly, amazing. You'll love it. Yeah, I was, I, I'm really happy with how the Fellowship of the Ring that movies turned out. It's, I'm hoping you guys will them, find it fucking I hilarious. was just, oh man, I loved rewatching it. And the Doom one. Even just, just <laughs> thinking about them. Both is oh, they're that stuff is gold. Um, 
And yeah, the uh, the debates that me and Wolf were in, they, they I've edited them up. I've cut out as much like silence and awkward double takes as much as I could, just to make it more streamlined. There were a few silences I had to keep though, because they're part of jokes or Wolf singing songs when things happen. And um, I don't know. It's just that I think I think I managed to cut about twenty plus minutes from both of them, and it was just adding like. Maybe concerned about. But yeah, they'll just be available through Moolah now. Um, but yes, I'm excited to get all of that stuff out. It'll happen over the next few weeks. Went to sleep 30 minutes before stream. Glad to see ending. Yes, yeah, we're nearly there. Uh, Rambo Last Blood was a letdown story-wise, just letting y'all know. Well... Oh no, not the story. I was gonna say, Rambo... I only remember watching Rambo for just the action, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that's all intact. Uh, TFA Critique 3 when? Uh, what was it? Next year, August, I believe. He, he does have an element of spider within him, so it's good to take that seriously. Oh, important to note, right? One of our problems with Godzilla, King of the Monsters! was that the story was shit, mm -hmm. but the fights were good. Yeah. We wanted but the more fights were like that. seven minutes of the whole movie? Damn, yeah, we didn't necessarily realize that until rewatching it. The fights were so little of King of the Monsters. Holy shit. Um, I think you have to get 41 minutes in for the first fight, and there's, just, there's barely any actual fighting. So really quick. With Rambo... If you're like, oh, you, oh, so maybe you like Rambo. Oh, if we like Rambo, you thought the action was good, but it was, but the story was shit. You said the same thing about Godzilla. I think there will probably be more than f like ten minutes of actual action and fighting in Rambo. I guarantee that the, the, the human shit in Rambo is probably gonna be a lot better than the human shit in King of the Monsters. Yeah, because the human shit in King of the Monsters was like Nonsense. terrible. Awful. The fact that they garbage. had to create a character that was pro end of the world and then suddenly not is like, oh, right, okay. They're gonna save the world, damn it. Uh, anyway, also, hi and bye, Rags. Bye. Rambo was meh, hoped for Logan, but I got hostile. Thing, you saying it's gonna be very gory? Well, the last one was. Yeah, I remember Rambo. There's four Rambos, right? Currently, well, there's five now. Um, I think there's. Is this the fifth one that's coming out? I don't know. Oh, someone in chat said Rambo Five was too short. So is this Rambo Six? I don't know, honestly. I guess I'll find out from chat. Um. I still believe mozzarella sticks with sauce is pizza. Uh, I don't see how that would be true at all. Have either of you played Papers, Please? Yes. I haven't. Um, I found it a lot of fun. It's a really cool game for uh, how small it is. And Am I crazy or did they intend to make a movie about it? I remember watching like a trailer. Five. This is Rambo 5. Okay, so this is... The one that's come out now is Rambo 5. I thought there was, because I remember watching four of them. You never know. Um, hi, Rags. Hello! Love the new video. Are either of you familiar oh, with the YouTuber Donut Operator? Yeah, I am. I've seen him on Twitter. I don't know much else. What do you know about Donut Operator, Rags? It's like a police kind of guy reviews... Police footage a lot of the times, things like that. Arrests and criminal stuff. Since Hollywood is I like him. Since Hollywood is dropping the ball on movies, I thought there would be a rise of internet interest in independent movies separated from film festival garbage, or maybe everyone just moved to YouTube and streaming shows. I don't think anyone's gonna hate mainstream movies so much that they'll never watch mainstream movies again, because you never know. It's always like a roll of the dice every time that we're like, oh, will this one be good? Hope it will. We hope it will. Because nothing's standing in their way, technically. They could bring out a good movie. Like, Lord of the Rings is mainstream. Fucking amazing. Well, it's like, the normally you'd think that obviously the professionals would be really good at what they do. 
You, it's like when you go to when you compare an NFL professional football game to like you know like a little league game or a bunch of children playing the game. Obviously, the professionals will be really good at it. But when you talk about film, man, the professionals are, do a really shit job so much. A breakfast now. I returned. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, morning. The longer the EFAP, the greater the tism. Bilbus. Mm. My name is Hitori Bocci. My favorite food is natto on rice. I prefer my natto finely crushed. Save the mustard that comes with it so it's not wasted. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah, that's fair enough, man. I don't know what any of that meant, but it seems like you got a plan. Baby and a man with a plan? I that. Daddy very happy. Not sure if that's referencing something or if it's a strange super chat. Either Probably way. Probably just a strange super chat. Hello, you two. I'm a trans woman here, even though I have the perfect profile to be an SJW. I think the sequel are terrible. Keep up the good content. I love it. Thank you. We shall do it. We will make sure that the good content flows like beer. In a place a... where beer flows a lot. Yes. It will continue to flow like the spice. When I heard you guys went starting until 6 here, I joked about prepping for EFAP to end at 2 a.m. It's almost 3. Expectations subverted. I didn't oh, know you yeah. guys were starting as late as you did. Well, yeah, I, uh, it was because of them being Australian. Uh, it, we were originally going to have just Fringy, and then I, uh, I asked if Shad was available, because I thought you'd be interested in the... Um, uh -huh. the angle. And then I was like, wait, if we've got two of the Australians, then we're going to be in prime time to have a third, of, well, other Australians. I was like, we can try Robot Head, the triple threat. But yeah, we can't necessarily run an EFAP at normal time and have Australian guests because it's like the worst time ever for them at that point. You know, they're terrible people is what I'm trying to say. They're on prison time. They only, they only get so many, so many hours out in the yard to fraternize. Yeah, yeah. After eight hours, I just don't have the stamina to keep e-fapping. Mauler and Rags, this is for both of you as thanks. For watching TLJ, I found you both while looking for the answer to why. Keep up the great content. Thank yeah, you very man. much. You bet. Glad you found what you were looking for, I suppose. I think that's the implication. Ate all the whelps. Rags, did you ever get your monthly thrust? I'm still waiting on mine. Also, hi, Mauler. Hello. I don't believe I got my monthly thrust, and I'm a very disappointed doggo. Going to bed. Thanks for the stream. Stay based, Ra. Oh, well, <laughs> you got a yeah, family. Yeah, Ra, you're a date. Mola, thoughts on Attack on Titan and its exceptionally good writing? I have not watched it, I'm afraid. But it looks neat. I haven't really either. Thoughts on Finn declaring he's rebel scum in TLJ? <laughs> I didn't understand. Because I thought they were the resistance. It's only like they, they swap between saying rebels and resistance a couple of times. It's just like, yeah, they're kind of interchangeable. Like you just, well, it's because they're just trying to exactly recreate the rebels. So. Yeah. Uh, I attempted to explain to a friend who thinks TLJ is good that you can measure that using you can measure that using objectivity. He claims it's a pointless exercise since when whatever standard we use wouldn't be his. Some are too far gone. Also, hi rags. And yeah, like, uh, you don't want to, there are some relationships that are not worth going into the philosophical side of how you judge art if you don't want to. You can just leave it alone. Like. And plus, he doesn't have to agree to the standard. Question, can Rags play Akbar's theme? I think we all know the answer to that. <laughs> also, hi, Bola. Hello. In the EU, IG-88 was programmed with super-advanced AI and almost led a droid rebellion, uploaded himself into the second Death Star, and conquered the galaxy. Really? I have no idea. <laughs> like, okay. When did that happen? Uh, the only thing in Chernobyl I'd call bad was certain conversations that felt goofy in Episode 2. The scene in the helicopter felt like The Dark Knight Rises. I like the helicopter like scene. scene. You talking about the yeah, one? Yeah, I like where that he, scene. he he explains how a nuclear reactor works. I don't know. Again, that was that wasn't just for the guy on the helicopter. Yeah, I thought it was kind of clever. That was for Juke. 
And plus, it shows like it shows a lot about the character of um, I forget his name, uh, but basically the um, the assistant or the guy, politician. yeah, the politician guy. It, it says a lot about you know how he tackles problems. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I thought he was great in that show, Stellan Skarsgård. Oh, I really liked it. You know, he's um, he's he's Will Turner's dad in the Pirates of the Caribbean film. Oh. It's been so long since I've seen those movies. Yeah. I didn't even think about it. Uh, if you had the choice to either fix season 8 of Game of Thrones or fix the sequel trilogy, um, ensuring great quality, which would you pick? Probably Star Wars. I, mm. I, I know that it's, it's honestly a tough choice, but the reason... I'm, I'm kind of aiming almost partially altruistic here in that I know it would mean more to... The world, if if Star Wars was what we wanted it to be, the the the, the continuation of the OT. Imagine like a perfect new trilogy. That would have made people go nuts. And we still always got the books for Game of Thrones, at least. Um, yeah, they're coming out, right? <laughs> one day. Would you rather make out with a predator or an alien? Predator. The predator seems to. Seems like it. That's that's what it's for. I don't know. Just saying. I mean, um, yeah, predator. I mean, plus the alien with the second mouth and everything is just. Uh, plus, I'm, I'm, I'm totally into to strong babes. You know. I'm the one who criticized Shadowvisty's verbosity, and I get that you like <laughs> him and want to give him free reign to say whatever. But I think there's a line he crosses. Your audience is more interested in hearing you and Rags go on at length. Southpaw has the same problem. Be aware you're a guest. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I, I would agree with that. The, uh, when, when Shad comes on, I'd say that a vast majority of the audience seem to be very invested in uh, his takes, as I think is fair because he's very informed on a lot of the subjects he talks about. Yeah, I think that people, I like, I like listening to what say i mean he's not he's not like a, a bad guest normally when he talks about stuff there's a point to it or he's trying to express an idea of some kind and he's certainly not wasting airtime. yeah like being genuine now i actually don't feel like he overspoke really at all he even um i think he even did a couple of times like when oh you know you go first sort of thing with some people um i, I think i think he gets the etiquette Honestly, that's, that's just my take. Yeah, I wouldn't have even thought about it. Uh, holy shit, you guys are still going? I should expect nothing less from the long man and the great doggo. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Did oh, Dis yeah, we going. We yeah, going we and going. This uh, crazy train ain't got no brakes. Did Disney copyright the last EFAP? They did, and uh, they've monetized it, which is fine because they allowed it to be viewed uh, worldwide, which is all I wanted. They blocked it at first. This is the funny thing. The two strikes that hit on it said that we monetize it and we block it. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, what if what are you give the monetized part's pretty pointless. You played then, yourself. It? And they were like, uh, once you appeal it, they're like, okay, fine, it's available, but uh, we monetize it. And it's funny because it's like nine hours or whatever, and they're monetizing literally like a, a 10 second straight part. And it's like, yeah, you guys, you, know, you really need that AdSense right there. The whole thing belongs to you because of that moment. And it's a meme video. That's the funny part. Like, it's literally a fucking parody mashup. It's got nothing to do... Whatever. It's fine. And, it's, and, and the other funny part, by the way, is that it's about Endgame. We were defending that film in that stream. Go ahead. Go ahead, Disney. Take it. Take it away. Take, you, take your fucking money. Uh, great show, guys. Hope you liked the site overhaul. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's Kibikins again. EFAP.me is uh, at updates looks... again. Look at Wanky. Most impressive. The, um, there's a section for uh, people we've covered now. And uh, they're, they've got how many videos we've covered and which EFAPs they were covered in. The amount of statistics developing on EFAP.me is insane. Like, statistics you didn't even know you wanted. You got them. So swanky. But, um... If I tweet you a video of my doggo, will you play it on EFAP for the cuteness? Well, um, we prefer... I mean, if it was a YouTube video and it was short, I'd consider it in the meme section. It, 
I'd consider it. But I, the thing is, if Maybe. I ever actually agreed to this fully, then I could start getting spammed with videos like that. So, thinking about it, I'd probably say uh, no. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to get, like, a tidal like wave. It's EFAP meme related. Hmm. Uh, greetings from the Russian essay community, my longmans. You two not speaking my language helps me sleep without fear. Oh! Alright, yeah. Wow, this the has Russian gone long. Hi, Rags. Hello. <laughs> Rags, king of the yes. massives. Hello. King of the massives. That you is two, true, though. You two watched Hardcore Henry? If so, thoughts? Uh, I have not seen I it. I haven't watched it, no. Rewatch Lord of the Rings. Cries so much at the end. Fifteen minutes. No, it is quite the yeah. nice uh, resolution and epilogue. Always gets me. Always gets me. I meant Finn says he's rebel scum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, he says it uh, after he's beaten down Phasma, right? Um, because she says, what, does she say you're like? Uh, something rebel that he's like, rebel scum. I, I can't even remember the context that he walks by braid is melting, and I haven't seen TLJ now in possibly over a year? Or nearly a year? I haven't seen it in ages. So long. It feels weird, actually. <laughs> like, yeah, like we talk way. about it so much, but we haven't seen it in so long. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cringe line. There's loads of fucking cringe dialogue throughout uh, Yo Mama. Um, Rags' bedtime was like three hours ago. Howdy from TX. Yeah, That's it Texas, was. Right? Yeah, TX. TX is Texas. And it was that long ago. Um, how much are you guys thinking of charging Dale for that therapy session? Seems you walked him through a lot of issues, Dr. Mauler and Nurse Rags. <laughs> I, uh... I don't know if we've we would have changed his mind on anything. He seemed to be against himself already to begin with, right? Like that. Like I think he could that have if responded he, to that video, if he went into another call with some other people who were arguing things from us, I think he would have had the exact same stuff to say. I think he would have just kind of subtly folded in a different direction. Yeah, probably it wasn't. Um, I don't think it was like like a huge moment for him coming on here or anything. Having to be like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with these things that I said that that while ago. I guess. Yeah, the the highlight for me was just the telling him like you would never say this thing, right? And he was like, no. And then it was like, oh, I did. <laughs> it's just like, whoops. Um, it happens. Um, and yeah, that was uh, the last super chat. So I've just got a couple me. Real quick. All right. Fully reviewing a movie about space wizards for children. Oh yeah, there's a. I was made aware there's a stretch goal, for uh, oh well, I guess a goal on Patreon, I think, for Patrick Willems, where once he'd reached a goal, he's gonna have his parents see Avengers Endgame. Like that was Patreon goal. I thought that was really strange. That is an odd one. Like okay, whatever floats your boat. That's. It. And we got this. You are from Upside Down Land. Well, from my point of view, you're Upside Down Land. <laughs> well, then, well, then you, you are, are lost. lost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sent. Mayo leads, leads to mayonnaise. Mayo leads, leads, leads to honey, honey mustard. Uh, a few more updated wizard takes, of course. Milk wizard and the geode wizard. See, there's going to be a whole family of wizards. These Can't are really take... cute. These drawings are really cute. Yeah, they are. They got loads of I character really like to them. them. <laughs> yeah, I really like them. The fucking cart of milk with a rhino on it. It's like that's that's like the symbol, the 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 dog whistle of EFAP. You're like that's EFAP, right? <laughs> rhino milk. You know that. Shit. If you hate Star Wars, you just hate yourself. Ismund Freudian, mentor of Bigidius. 
<laughs> like his eyes. How much lore? <laughs> if you hate Star Wars, you just hate yourself. That's insane. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, definitely. That you've solved it. I just hate myself. In the beginning is just the prelude to the extended middle. Freudian the Elder. Freudian. <laughs> uh, and yeah, don't panic. There are obviously more memes from today. I, I don't think I've gotten to every one of them from different sources. The annoying thing for me now is they don't just come through Twitter and I try to keep care of everything. Um but We'll, we'll try and maybe do a meme section next-ish time. Uh, Guest5 just said it's only the middle. It's, it is technically, but now I'm going to bring it in to the end. Um, thank you all for watching this 10-hour EFAP. For some reason, the EFAPs keep going really long now. And we didn't even cover the other video that was set to be today. And I thought it was going to be a short EFAP. Because of that. You say that. You say that every time. Yeah, and it just never, it never is. But like, where is that? It seems like that's gonna be the. I didn't think that we would have so much to talk about with this guy's video. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I thought he was. Oh. At least it blew my mind. But yeah. oh, Mahler, you and you and your thoughts. I am a naive man. Your e faps are only an attempt to disguise the fact that you hate yourself. <laughs> I'm so scary. Um, uh, no, everyone donate to keep read it out and so yes thank you all for watching thank you very much for the kind donations the wonderful memes and artwork and the um well for, for the, of course wonderful guests in for their respective moments and times the links are all in the description for the different things we talked about today on the different channels and um what do these say both you dumbos need to watch hardcore henry i'll probably watch it one day i'm sure i'm sure we'll the next 24-hour EFAP will be an accident. I don't think we'll ever accidentally do a 24-hour EFAP. I think that, I think, I think at one point during a potential accidental 24-hour EFAP will be... Oh, fuck. I need to, I need to, like, maintain bodily functions. Say, survival is kicking in. I need to do other things. <laughs> I need to eat, drink, sleep. Because I, I seriously do have to sleep. Like, I've been... I was away out of town when I woke up this morning, and I... We drove back, and once I got home, I was expecting to come into an EFAP midway in <laughs> the middle. But no, no, no. Oh, it, I was, was it was the middle. The it's entire thing. The middle. Oh, yeah, we're all, it's always the middle. Uh, I'm doing my part. Are you? I'm getting married today. Hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Sorry to hear that. But don't worry. It'll all turn out okay. Yes. Um, and yeah, with that... Thank you for watching, everybody. This will be live on Moolah as soon as it can be, and we will see you next week. Uh, toodle pip, cheerio. Bye bye.